Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 301 Crimson Hell was strong enough to give me trouble even after I grew stronger through the Beast King. They appeared from anywhere in the dungeon floor and put in great efforts to try and assimilate me. However, I already learned how to fight against them on the 81st floor. Using Death Knight's skill, Breath of Death, I created chaos flames wrapped in death energy. The moment they touched these flames, they were dyed gray, losing their mana and evaporating. I hate how they're so quiet. They didn't make any slimy or watery sound. They simply popped out of nowhere, assaulting me. What annoyed me the most was that just being in this place sucked mana out of me. Absolute Soul actively held its defense and protected my mind, but it couldn't stop them completely. It was a true hell. I am Dortu. Reinforcing Master's equipment. At that moment, Dortu suddenly muttered. Reinforce. I am Dortu. Reinforcing all metals. Immediately, pure black desire shone with a faint light. Small symbols appeared on its surface along with tiny bumps. It was the same for Chaotic Spear. The spear became slightly longer and a red symbol was engraved above the spear blade. Dortu, you. I am Dortu. I did well. Yeah, you did. It felt like he wanted me to compliment him, so I did. I still didn't know how he strengthened my equipment, but I soon found out. First, Pure Black Desire's defense went up. Not only its physical defense, but also its magical defense and mana resistance. This meant that Crimson Hell was now stealing less of my mana. Weight, strengthening pure black desire. Even though it was already a legend grade item. I am Dortu. Effect is temporary. Dortu can change it permanently by staying in it for a long time. Dortu you're the best. Chaotic Spear, on the other hand, had its reinforcement focused around its aura. The amount of aura I could draw out using the same amount of mana doubled. Crimson Hell seemed surprised by my sudden change, as they backed off before coming together into a giant wave these damned cowards. They're below us too, Master. Sharana. We're going to break through. Damn, why did I have to run through waves while climbing the dungeon? With my spear held out front, I activated Wind King's Rage. Sharana. Yes, Master. Just by having their names called, my elementals became happy and displayed greater power. Starting from the tip of my spear, a fierce whirlpool covering my entire body rose up. Sharana meticulously and elaborately strengthened this whirlpool, and flames the chaotic spear let out with an ominous light decorated the whirlpool. Wah! I screamed at the top of my lungs and charged forward into the wave of crimson hell. Don't be so cocky when you're not even the real thing. The wave rolled towards me. After clashing with the flaming whirlpool, most of it evaporated and fell apart as they were dyed gray. Although I could only see the fiercely spinning whirlpool in front of me, the sizzling sound of crimson hell put a wry smile on my face. If you suffered this much, you should know you aren't strong enough. Of course, with their mass, it was hard to maintain this whirlpool. But if I stopped, I knew I would only get engulfed. As such, I tightly shut my mouth and charged forward quickly. Absolute Soul, Pryuta Circuit, and Dortu and Sharana's power. This might be the first time I put this much concentration into manipulating so many powers. You cleared the first dungeon's 82nd floor. You obtained the qualification to challenge Beyond's 32nd floor. You obtained 5 bonus stats. After running with Wind King's rage for some incalculable amount of time, I stopped reflexively in response to a familiar message. As the whirlpool around my body subsided, I could finally see around me once again. Some distance away was a staircase, and closer by was a black shade, the gate leading to beyond. There was also Loretta, who was staring at me with a surprised face from the floor shop stall. Shin Nim, you changed your armor and weapon. Did you go see Lin? Ah, uh, no, it's my elemental. Elemental. An elemental that can transform a legend grade weapon and armor. Mm. I didn't think too much of it, but it seemed Loretta thought differently. However, after looking like she was hesitating, she didn't say anything more about it. 
Instead, she smiled and changed the subject. Good work. World's enemies aren't easy to deal with, right? Of course. Come here, they'll give you a massage. I feel like you'll massage me in inappropriate places. Don't be a wimp. Ehe. I felt like Loretta forgot all about running the floor shop, but seeing her face, I couldn't refuse her. Uhohu, I prepared a mattress in case something like this ever happened. If you touch me in weird places, I'm going straight to beyond. Contrary to Loretta's suspicious manner of speech, she really gave a genuine massage. When I lied down on the mattress with my armor and spear back to its bracelet and choker form, she got on top of me and pressed her thumbs down on my sore muscles. An ordinary person would have had his bones shattered, but I was now strong enough to withstand her strength. Every time she pressed her fingers down, a cool breeze seemed to flow into me. I even got these messages. Your magic stat increases by one. Your magic stat increases by two. Your luck stat increases by three. Your constitution stat increases by two. It's a special energy only the elf queen can use. I can't use it very often so you should enjoy it now. So. How is it? Refreshing, right? Mm, my stats are increasing permanently isn't this abusable? Normally, this technique can only be used on an elf queen spouse, so don't tell other elves. I grinned and fully relaxed my body for her massage. When I closed my eyes and untensed my body, Loretta laughed as she continued her massage. Hey yep, if it's Shin Nim Huhu. Did you say something? I said I love Shin Nim. Mm I love Loretta too. Hying, I didn't record it again. Loretta frowned while she continued to massage me diligently. I also laughed lightly. I knew that wasn't what Loretta initially said. I knew she was still hiding something from me, but I didn't ask. She was an elf queen that had lived for over 2000 years. She wasn't obligated to tell me everything she knew, and even if what she wasn't telling me was related to me, I knew she had my best interest in mind. This level of trust was already fully ingrained between the two of us. A pleasant silence flowed, and soon, we moved on to a different topic. Did Kane properly enter Shin Nim's guild? Yes. He decided to cooperate with me for a common goal. Really, I thought I knew everything about Shin Nim before I noticed, Shin Nim has been finding out about things even I didn't know about, and Shin Nim can now easily do things that seemed so hard for me. Her way of talking sounded like a mother proud of the children she raised. I couldn't help but laugh. You don't like it? No, I think having a secret or two can be more charming. I don't plan on interrogating Shin Nim about it. Loretta's charming too. You you, Mimi. Loretta became quiet. I continued the story about Kane. I think Kane might have lingering feelings for Loretta. I thought so. I'm very pretty, you see. Wow. Wow. What does that mean? It means I love you. That won't trick me. Loretta's acupressure got harder, but I simply laughed. If I hadn't obtained the Beast King's power, my bones would have broke undoubtedly. Your charm stat increases by three. Ah, this is enough. Just how much power do you plan on using? But. We can do it again next time. I have to go now. I got up and stretched. Her massage made me feel refreshed like the time I reformed my body. I lightly patted Loretta who seemed to want more and jumped into beyond without even wearing my armor. Then, in just thirty minutes, I jumped out of the gate. Loretta, who was yawning at the floor shop, widened her eyes in surprise. After examining me from head to toe, she called my name with a dumbfounded voice. Shin Nim. I waved my hand at her and ran up the stairs. I'll see you on the 83rd floor, Loretta. Eh. Shin Nim. Shin Nim. What was that? You went into beyond, right? How are you going up to the 83rd floor? What's going on? Even after I fully stepped into the 83rd floor, I felt like I could hear Loretta's panicked shouts. I found it very interesting. From the 81st floor to the 85th floor, I could practically skip beyond, so Crimson Hell was the only obstacle I had to deal with. Thankfully, 
crimson hell on the higher floors didn't come with strange added effects. They were simply stronger in the amount of mana they sucked in and the amount they appeared in. I was increasing my skill proficiencies more by fighting the crimson hell than I was by training in beyond. From what I felt, absolute soul seemed to be growing the most. It reached level 8 during my breakthrough of the 83rd floor, and in the 84th floor which had a wider hallway and increased aggressiveness of Crimson Hell, Absolute Soul finally reached level 9. Even I couldn't believe it. Hugh so it's not just my imagination. Peruta Circuit's efficiency is increasing too. Absolute Soul aimed to achieve the perfect soul. Its ability to absorb mana was a natural effect resulting from the increased league of my soul, but after it reached level 9, not only did it steal mana from monsters, it also naturally absorbed mana from all things in the universe. When I used Peruta Circuit to absorb mana, its efficiency even multiplied several fold. Moreover, I was getting more familiar with Dortu, who was born not too long ago, and I could now use his ability more efficiently. I also became more adept at using Peruta Circuit, which was too complex to be described as mastered. Crimson Hell might be the fallen state of an life form that tried to reach for a higher league. Perhaps, the pitiful creature might still be thinking it's reaching towards a whole soul. It wasn't just Crimson Hell. The world's enemies I've met were all continually evolving. What was their ultimate goal? Was it perfecting themselves like absolute soul? But even a world's power couldn't. Ugh, I almost thought of something again. It was probably too abstract for me to answer definitely. For a moment, however, I felt my heart drop and beat loudly. My instinct seemed to be telling me that I was walking the right path. That if I continued, I would be able to run quicker than anyone else. But why? Why only me? I didn't know. I wasn't allowed to know the answer right now, so I could only go on. One day, when I arrive at the destination, they'll be able to know. I kicked open the giant door in front of me. It was there waiting for me. Fight me, Crimson Hell. The 85th floor master battle was now beginning. Chapter, 302. I've been. Waiting. I heard a voice. It seemed to belong to a middle-aged man, but it also seemed to be that of an old man and a young boy. I shouted in surprise. You can talk. I've been watching you. Since the 81st floor. He pretended to not hear me and continued his speech. I looked around in case anyone else was here but there wasn't. In the floor master battle room, there were only flowing droplets of blood, which came together in mass to form a wave of blood. That person. Seemed to have high expectations of you. That person. Are you talking about the dungeon lord? In any case. It's great. If I kill you here. ITLL do as a small revenge. Sorry, but I don't plan on dying here. That's. An interesting thought. He smiled. Dungeon. In this place you call the dungeon. Do you know why you don't die even when you die? Like a predator eyeing its prey, waves of blood silently began to surround me. Before you actually die. That person removes you to a safer place. That's what I heard too. It was impossible to bring a dead person back to life. That was an ability in the domain of the gods. From my knowledge, only Caduceus was capable of doing so, and even Caduceus had strict requirements. Not even Sherafina should be able to bring so many explorers back to life. Not to mention, it was unlikely that Sherafina had his power similar to Hermes. The more I used Hermes' power, the more I felt that it was rare and special. Simple. Before that person can save you, I will kill you and absorb you. That person won't be able to do anything. Now that I thought about it, he wasn't wrong. The only reason the thought had never crossed my mind was that I had absolute trust in Sherafina. Until now, she had never made a mistake, almost like mistakes weren't allowed for her. During these countless years. Do you think? She never once made a mistake. Ichem. After a short contemplation, I held up my spear and began to breathe. A breathing different than normal humans, it was a breathing of a death knight who was about to face an enemy. As I utilized death energy from 81st floor to the 85th floor, I had gotten used to breath of death. 
Hey. Hmm. That was my voice. Even if you talk nonsense to scare me, nothing will change. Ho ho. Does it sound like nonsense? Crimson Hell's voice sounded like the combined voice of despair of all human beings. I didn't mean to have a fight of voices, but my current voice was nothing to scoff at. No, what I mean is, it doesn't matter whether your words are true or not. Dark blue aura came out of my mouth. The corner of a wave approaching me became dyed gray and crumbled down. Crimson Hell let out a faint groan. Until I conquer this dungeon, I don't plan on having my vitality hit zero. One death meant one week and, at the worst, one month. I didn't have even a single day to spare. I see, your mind. Is like an impregnable fortress. My body isn't so bad either. Though, you won't have the chance to experience it. With that, I charged towards him. Chaos flames ignited above my spear and mixed with my death energy. Using you as food. I will obtain a new power. The world's power inside you, I will obtain it. I didn't think I'd hear something like this in the dungeon, but as I said before, nothing he could say could scare me. Rather, I became more spirited. Even if you obtain my power, nothing will change for you. My spear shattered a wave not only that, but a portion of the wave became petrified after a clear flash in my eyes. Crimson Hell cried out in shock. What? If you're so weak as to be affected by my evil eyes, do you think you can overthrow the dungeon just by obtaining my power? If you do, then you're gravely mistaken. Evil eyes. When I first met you, I happened to think about why you lost without being able to steal the world's power. Crimson Hell had an ever-increasing body and sucked in more mana than a mana eater. He was quite close to being invincible. Plus, with his body being in a liquid state, he could freely go wherever he wanted. Since he absorbed magical attacks and nullified physical attacks, I couldn't help but wonder how the hero of the invaded world defeated him. Was the hero a death knight? Impossible. Even if there was someone who could wield death energy like me, just one person wouldn't have been enough to deal with Crimson Hell. Then how? The answer was simple. You're strong, but your league is extremely low in comparison. What that means is you aren't a powerful enemy that only the hero can contend against. Anyone could fight you. Right, you're a weakling that only relies on superiority in quantity. You didn't lose to the hero, right? You must have lost to an army. Against an enemy that fought against your quantity with quantity. I was probably correct. To be honest, it wasn't that he was weak. With his sheer size, I doubt the hero alone would have been able to stop him. Still, he wasn't so strong that only the hero could fight him. The fact that my evil eyes were working on him was proof. You see, even though my evil eyes got stronger, they shouldn't be strong enough to petrify a world's enemy. I smirked. My evil eyes currently carried death energy as well. Death aura could be wielded like any other mana. Naturally, it could be used to strengthen my evil eyes. This power really was all powerful. Anyways, evil eyes with death aura's power magnificently petrified all blood in my sight. The reason I didn't use my evil eyes in the previous floors was precisely to not give Crimson Hell the time to prepare against me. Though, in truth, it was also because I didn't think evil eyes would work against a world's enemy. When I began to ponder about how he could have been defeated, I realized that his league wasn't that high. The rest was easy. You. Evil eyes. Evil eyes of petrification. Right. I also added death energy, so it's technically not a pure evil eyes of petrification. Crimson Hell wasn't a singular being. He was a colony. It was the only logical conclusion, seeing as how waves of blood swept away the dead parts of its body. Only a colony could do such a thing. Mana Eater, which also moved freely and shot out hundreds of tentacles, could be seen as a colony, but it was a clear singular being. The Mana Eater shared senses and shared mana. If a part of its body was severed, it felt pain and needed to use the mana it stole from me to restore itself. But this wasn't the case for Crimson Hell. It stole mana from me, but killing it made the mana disappear or come back to me. 
Although a wave of blood sometimes swept through and took the mana, that only solidified my theory that it was a colony. That said, I did think that there was a singular being that controlled the entire colony. Like you said. I expand endlessly. The amount. This battle room can't possibly contain fully. Throughout these countless years, I restored myself. And this is the result. Pantaran's hero, in order to kill me. Sacrificed 10,000 mages and 20,000 warriors. I wonder. Will you be able to defeat me alone? Who said I was alone? A truly huge wave was rising up in the room. The 85th floor master room was bigger than any of the previous floor master rooms, but the wave that was rising up was big enough to fill up this entire room. Right, it was enough to drown an entire city. Elementals. You have those trivial things. Sharana, Dortu. I'm ready, master. I am Dortu. Executing master's commands. Immediately after Dortu replied, out of the near 700,000 mana I had, almost 300,000 mana disappeared. Then, countless metallic crystals became scattered in the air. Elementals, they are formed from mana. But they are still life forms. Our clones. Didn't have the power, but for us, the true body. They are nothing but food. Then try it. Let's see if you can devour Dortu. I replied with a grin, and borrowing Sharana's power, I breathed out breath of death. A portion of the wave froze in place, and while I bought time, the metallic crystals in the air transformed into mirrors. Sharana, I'll leave it to you. Yes, master. Sharana answered as confidently as always. She was a wind elemental, but her ability wasn't limited to affecting wind. Like Ryu's ice or Pika's lightning, Dorda's metal could also be strengthened by her ability. As Sharana's power spread through the mirrors, another 100,000 mana was drained from me. I put a mana potion in my mouth, but Breath of Death corroded the glass bottle and shattered it. The power of evil eyes. It's being scattered. Wrong. To be exact, it's being copied while holding on to the same strength. I replied as I flashed my two eyes. Small mirrors floated around me as if to guard me, receiving my evil eye's power and shooting it out in all directions like laser beams. Crimson hell that happened touched the beams turned to stone and died. Need I say more? If I were you, I would attack me before it's too late and try to separate me from these mirrors. I smiled provocatively and spun my spear in a circle. With that as the signal, the huge wave of blood swept towards me in full force. It'll do as you wish. Yeah, let's see which of us runs out of mana first. I kicked off the ground, petrifying more parts of crimson hell, and leaped up to the air. The metallic mirrors floating around me followed me, spinning around me in a circle. Just the rapid spinning of the mirrors seemed powerful enough to break apart most attacks. Qua. Be devoured by a wave of blood. Call me a new type from now, you loser. Absolute Soul's overwhelming energy fiercely combated Crimson Hell's attempts to steal my mana. At the same time, Pryuta Circuit's whirlpool incorporated the flames of death and rose up to the sky. Breaking the wave apart with a single thrust of my spear, I spread the falling of the wave using the power of the evil eyes reflected off the mirrors. Then, I jumped again in the air. Unable to withstand the urge rising from the depths of my heart, I shouted out. In my hand was a spear wrapped in flames of death, around my body were countless metallic mirrors guarding me like GN shields. Kong Shin, Engaging the Enemy Chapter, 303 Waves of blood descended towards me as if to overwrite my existence itself. Metallic mirrors spun rapidly, petrifying the waves, as I kicked the waves down to break them. Still, it didn't really matter how we clashed. When I reached out with my spear and reflected my evil eye's power with Dorda's mirrors, Crimson Hell turned to stone and broke. He also knew that he couldn't beat me in a direct confrontation, so from the moment we met, he's been endlessly using the one ability I've been on guard the most against. It was the ability to steal mana from me. Even now, as I was constantly moving my body, Crimson Hell was doing its best to try to steal my mana. Let's see how long you'll last. I'm curious. That's what I want to say. 
This was the first time I've put so much focus into absolute soul. If I let my guard down even for a second, Crimson Hell would take control over the initiative. Once my mana started being stolen, it would be too late. When I fought the SS rank mana eater in Pan and Continent, I didn't have absolute soul so I had no choice but to let it steal my mana. Now, however, I had a way to prevent my mana from being stolen, and I was gaining more insight into it as time went on. How persistent. Try harder, so I can get used to it more. You're saying you're still growing. You you dare to try to scare me. Did he think I was bluffing? Crimson Hell shouted in contempt and pushed towards me more vigorously. When I looked down from above, the colony of Crimson Hell was shooting up towards me like a tsunami and was extending invisible arms of depredation. With my eyes opened wide, I stabbed my spear into it. Dortu. I am Dortu. Spreading Master's power. A grey ripple ran down the wave beyond the wave that turned to stone and shattered a beat late, Crimson Hell's invisible hands tenaciously reached towards me. I set up a hard wall in my mind. I released the power of my soul, which not only protected me but also naturally dominated external mana. After I first obtained absolute soul, I believed I was doing my best to hone it, but that was naive thinking. In this dire situation where the only thing keeping me alive was absolute soul, I was breaking through all sorts of limits. Deep within me, there was something other than Pryuta circuit and hero's power that radiated a powerful light. It was the essence of my soul which not even the dungeon nor Sherafina could touch. I felt like this was the first time I was coming into contact with it. With an overflowing joy, the way to take the next step, the way to make absolute soul my own power flowed through me. Absolute soul was a process to form the perfect soul. There was something that light lacked. Since I was staring right at it, it would be wrong if I couldn't figure out what it was. I was certain. Perhaps because I was staring at that eye-catching light for too long, Crimson Hell was taking a huge chunk of my mana. 100,000, 150,000, 200,000 now, I only had 200,000 mana left. Did you give up? No way. I finished observing the light. I already obtained what I needed. I opened my eyes widely and struck my spear down strongly. A whirlpool of black flames cut through the wave of blood until it touched the ground hundreds of meters below. I had put all of my remaining mana in that attack. Qua! The huge blood tsunami split in half as the whirlpool of flames drove by, and a smile bloomed on my face. Blood poured down to the sides like a waterfall, and a blade-like pillar of blood shot up from the severed part once again. Foolish such useless move. Now, you're mine. I don't think so. I announced with a slight smile. Immediately, Crimson Hell's flying stream of greed was revealed clearly. What was previous invisible could now be seen. There was only one reason for it, that it was now under my control. Using the countless straws he placed in me to suck out my mana, I began to suck in his mana. What? My mana, he'll be taking it back. You mastered absolute soul. No, Sherafina, I haven't mastered it yet. I murmured in a voice she couldn't hear. You must not know. Otherwise. I could clearly see it. Absolute soul was just the foundation. It was the same for Overlord. These two skills born from the collector's pocket watch was nothing but a compass pointing me in the right direction. Today, I finally realized it. My mana how? My league overwhelmed your entire colony. Simple, right? I retorted bluntly. Was he unable to accept it? Or was he making a final struggle? Crimson Hell, which had used its mass to engulf me until now, changed its colony to hundreds of sharp tentacles which shot towards me. However, Dordis mirrors didn't let a single one of them through. With Dordis meticulous control, the light of my evil eyes, reflected by thousands of metallic mirrors, penetrated the tentacles and destroyed them. Crimson Hell finally screamed. I, I refuse to die like this I must take my revenge. Now that you mention it. The floor masters until now used Sherafina's mana to regenerate after death. Regeneration was similar to revival, yet completely different. If revivals perfectly retained one soul, 
then regeneration simply returned one to his previous condition using mana. Coming back to life with regeneration resulted in a completely different soul than before. Could someone before and after regeneration be considered the same person? No. This was also why Licorice negotiated with Sherafina to obtain an event dungeon, and Sherafina must have accepted Licorice's request because Licorice wasn't enthusiastic about the war. In truth, I thought it was entirely possible that Licorice cooperated with the defending side. I just never planned to talk to her about it. In any case, regeneration would still allow one to come back to life, but there had to be something that even Sherafina couldn't bring back to life. For example, I asked Sherafina, Does the 85th floor master regenerate? No. As a result, once cleared, you cannot challenge the 85th floor master again. From now on, it will always be like that. As I thought, it seemed not even Sherafina was capable of bringing a world's enemy back to life. A clone might be a different story, but it just wasn't possible for the true body. If a genius with the qualification to challenge Crimson Hell appeared in the future, Sherafina would have to prepare a different monster. Secret ill tell you a secret. So please, let me. No thanks. I closed my eyes and increased the radiance of my soul's light. When I increased Peruta circuit speed and amplified my mana absorption rate, Crimson Hell's meek resistance disappeared completely. Qua. That was his end. With a cry that could turn a good dream into a nightmare, Crimson Hell crumbled down completely. The remaining waves of blood turned into grey stones and fell down to the ground like a landslide. I smacked my lips. Contrary to my expectations, there wasn't much mana to steal from him. With my original amount being 700,000, adding the amount I gained from him probably only brought it up to 800,000. Well, I guess that's good too. I finally deactivated Breath of Death. As I used a huge amount of it while fighting Crimson Hell, I didn't have much of it left. Thinking that I should go around Earth cleaning up monsters, I opened my eyes. In the huge floor master room, I was the only one, hovering solitarily in the sky. Then, a fanfare I hadn't heard in a while tickled my ears. You became level 86. You obtained 5 bonus stats. You obtained the qualification to challenge Beyond's 35th floor. You became Platinum Rank 6. You obtained the right to appoint a new explorer. You succeeded in defeating Crimson Hell. No dungeon explorer would be capable of believing such feat. Having defeated a world's enemy fair and square in a direct confrontation, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to call you the dungeon's strongest. You obtained 5 skill points as a reward. Current skill points, 29. You obtained the title, Crimson Hell Killer. All stats increase by 5. The effect of the title will apply without having it equipped. You defeated Crimson Hell alone. You obtained Crimson Hell's tattoo as a special reward. You obtained 1 million gold. You received the unique reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations. Your luck stat increases by 10. Secret. Ultimate Avarice Magic Book. I simply smiled. I didn't think it mattered all that much anymore. Crimson Hell had fought me with all its power, and it was killed by me thoroughly. I planned to take all of its power, but Sherafina interfered and refined it to a more easy-to-learn form. That was the main reason the amount of mana I obtained was so small. That was how Dungeons Rewards worked. Secret rewards, special rewards, and event rewards were good because they were unique or few in number. The Orc Lord I faced on the fifth floor must have fought a countless number of explorers and regenerate a countless number of times. So how much power could it have left? Sherafina must have used a huge portion of her power to copy the Orc Lord's power and stitch it together. The result must have been the Orc Lord set and Orc Lord's war cry. To limit their number, she provided those who defeated the Orc Lord alone with a part that contained more of the Orc Lord's power and gifted them Orc Lord's war cry. By doing so, she had increased the value and league of the skill. This didn't change on higher floors. As the floor masters were copied less, the league increased, and when it came to secret rewards, they possessed power close to the original as they were unique. 
I only figure out something this simple after having broken through the 85th floor. And now, with Sherafina refining the reward using all of Crimson Hell's power, both the special reward and the secret reward were unique, and I ended up getting all of Crimson Hell's power with the help of Sherafina's power. Originally, rewards from the dungeon needed a long time to get used to the user. Even then, it wasn't guaranteed that the user could perfectly wield that power. But I'm different now. Not to mention, I have Crimson Hell's mana. I grinned and received Crimson Hell's tattoo. I somewhat expected it, but Crimson Hell's tattoo went on my fingers. When I was leisurely watching complex symbols being engraved on my ten fingers, a message rang in my ear. You obtained Crimson Hell's tattoo. Your magic power increases by 20%. When attacking an enemy with a weapon in hand, you will be able to steal a portion of the enemy's mana. You have Crimson Hell's mana and can wield it freely. The tattoo becomes invigorated to its peak. Now, Sherafina, tell me what I can do with a fully invigorated tattoo. Though, I already knew the answer. Chapter, 304 Crimson Hell's tattoo has been invigorated to its peak. You can steal a faint amount of mana from all opponents you are battling. Once per day, you can completely nullify any magic applied to you and absorb its mana. However, the magic cannot be of EX rank. Hmm, it was pretty much what I thought. Rather than saying I expected it, it was exactly what I thought I could do with Crimson Hell's power. Next, I learned the secret reward, Ultimate Avarice. It felt like a huge fireball entered my body. Hugh. This was what Crimson Hell left behind. I thought back to when I absorbed the Beast King's power and circulated Peruta circuit to calm my insides. Meanwhile, a message rang out. You obtained the unique skill, Ultimate Avarice. This skill doubles the amount of mana you steal from others and helps you convert all hostile mana to your own. If Crimson Hell's tattoo had the ability of its mana, this skill was the essence of Crimson Hell as a world's enemy. Before the ability of its mana, the reason it could become a world's enemy, the innate ability it was born with. Although it took on the name of a skill, in reality, it was nothing but a violent lump of energy. Unlike the tattoo, this power was more difficult for me to control. Still, this was a skill, and Sherafina's power would help in controlling it even if I didn't rein it in completely. But against enemies, whom the dungeon's power didn't work against, this skill would become useless. In that case, I wouldn't be able to call it my true power. I closed my eyes and focused on the energy that just entered my body. Then, I roused the power of Absolute Soul. Crimson Hell's power reacted to Absolute Soul and twitched. Soon, it began to move and point its thorns towards me. I blanketed it with my soul, and it squirmed here and there before finally becoming quiet. No matter how much it struggled, in the end, it was a power that lost and now belonged to me. There were no messages. That was to be expected. From the outside, it would seem as if nothing changed. But inside my body, I was using Peruta circuit to make this power become one with the power of Crimson Hell's tattoo. The difference between the powers being separate and one was the same as the difference between heaven and earth. Hugh Good. Feeling the tattoo on my fingers trembling lightly, I let out a breath. When I retrieved my mana, the tattoo lost its light and disappeared, while the energies swirling around my body all found their own place. Almost like they never rejected me, all energies sat quietly at rest. Alright, now there's one remaining problem. After obtaining ultimate avarice and seeing its information, there was only one thing on my mind. Staring at its skill window, I racked my brain. Absolute soul and ultimate avarice. They were both unique skills and skills that were engraved into my body rather than being stored in the collector's pocket watch. Not only did Ultimate Avarice perfectly support Absolute Soul's ability, but it also amplified by it by a terrifying amount. If these skills became one, the result could only be fearsome. Should I do it? If it succeeds? No, let's not. They already showed fantastic symbiosis. Although I had never suffered a loss from combining skills, the risk was too big to bet on this precedent. In truth, I got the urge to just do it. Even if I lost Absolute Soul, I felt like I could recreate it on my own. Still, I waited. 
using skill synthesis was inevitable, but it wouldn't be with absolute soul. I might change my mind later but now was at least not the time. A bit more. I just had to grow a bit more. The answer might be in this dungeon or perhaps the demon lord, who must be biting his nail waiting for the day he could cross over to earth. When I came out to the floor shop, I met with Loretta who was waiting for me yearningly. Shin Nim. Sorry, Loretta. They'll talk to you after I come back from beyond. I feel like you'll lose my momentum if I stay and talk with Loretta. You're leaving straight away. Mimi. Loretta's smiling face changed like a cat that was doused with water, but I wanted to challenge Lilith when my strength was at its peak. If I stayed and talked with Loretta, I felt like I would lose all the tension in my body, so she was currently no different than poison to me. Yu Yu, it's great knowing that I have such a big effect of Shin Nim, but it's also a very complicated feeling I want to be with Shin Nim more. And if you're with me, then I want to touch you. Ask me what I want to do next. Never. I retorted to play along with her just once, and Loretta didn't let me down. Dumbfounded, I asked. Are all elves that honest to their desires? No, it's just me. It'll be off. Hying. Leaving the tearful Loretta behind, I jumped into the gate. Although I didn't fight from beyond's 31st floor to 34th floor, 35th floor would be different. Not only the succubus queens, but the incubus kings also warned me. The one who led Enesis to invade Elysia, the world enemy. Lilith was waiting for me. The moment I entered beyond 35th floor, I felt that the air was a bit sticky. After taking a big breath, I raised Peruta circuit speed. I also felt it while I was fighting the Crimson Hell, but world's enemies all seemed capable of creating their own personal domain. A domain that was suited to empowering them while weakening the enemy. I felt like I could do something similar once I reached the absolute peak of Peruta circuit and absolute soul, but that wasn't possible currently. I didn't even open the door yet. Unlike the first dungeon, Beyond didn't have any limitation on the number of elementals I could bring out. As such, I summoned all four elementals, infusing Ryue into my armor, Sharana into my body, Pika into my spear, and Dortu. I am Dortu. I will protect Master. Yeah, yeah. I decided to leave it to him. Are you ready? I heard a voice, a truly captivating voice of a woman. I repeat. I still haven't opened the floor master room. Elementals will be useless against my power. I ignored her. I didn't believe that seduction was Lilith's only power. Just like Crimson Hell said on the 85th floor, if Lilith took my life quicker than Sheriffina could act, I would actually die. There was nothing wrong with thoroughly preparing for whatever might happen. Good. I took another breath and surrounded myself in a whirlpool created by Peruta Circuit. The whirlpool's radius was just small enough to barely surround me, but that was enough. Absolute Soul was also in full effect. To protect myself against Lilith's strongest bewitchment, I had prepared my best. Thank you for waiting. It'll come in as you wish. Just like always, I kicked open the door and marched in. Inside was a lavish palace. Filling up the large hall were jeweled decor and golden sculptures. If not for the fact that they were made out of gold, I would have believed that these sculptures of beauties and good-looking men were alive. Wow! I couldn't help but exclaim in wonder. Hearing my voice, someone snickered. Hoo-hoo, you're really interesting. How did a kid like you come all the way up here? I turned my head. From above, there was a swinging chair hanging by several chains dangling from the ceiling. Just like the palace hall, the chair was adorned luxuriously, and sitting on it was her, Lilith. Hugh. I subconsciously took a deep breath. It was to suppress the urge to run into her embrace, but it also served to swallow more of her mana permeating this area. Pryuta circuit slowed down and absolute soul's energy subsided slightly. At that moment, my ten fingers shone with a faint light and touched the energy that just came under my control. It was Crimson Hell's mana. This twisted lump of greed desired to make all mana into its own pool. Because of it, it was the sole existence that was unfazed by Lilith's charm. Don't tell me you were already going to bow down. If Crimson Hell were alive, 
it would have undoubtedly laughed and mocked me as such. I gritted my teeth and accelerated Peruta circuit once again. I thanked my fortune for defeating Crimson Hell before meeting Lilith. I stood tall and stared at her. Crimson Hell's violent mana filled my body through Peruta circuit, relentlessly absorbing Lilith's sticky mana and making it its own. Oh, you withstood it. She sounded surprised. She didn't just sound surprised, she acted surprised too, widening her diamond-like eyes and putting her hands over her mouth. Each of her movements and each of her glances was purely lovable. It was almost as knowing how to be loved was in her instincts. Not to mention, you looked at me straight in the eyes. Child, what do I look like to you? Don't you have a mirror? I gritted my teeth as I replied. Even now, Lilith was naturally showering me with her charm. Terrifying. Truly terrifying. I could barely hold on even after I used Crimson Hell's power. I felt like I could finally understand why the skill I created using skill synthesis had the name Lilith in it. In fact, I felt it was lacking, unworthy to bear the name of Lilith. Look around, does it look like there's a mirror? So tell me. Do you have any idea how long it's been since I saw my face? I was supposed to be her enemy, but Lilith pestered me lovingly like I was her boyfriend. She even bowed with her hands cutely on top of each other. In front of her enemy. But even knowing that this was the golden opportunity, I couldn't move my body. Her charm did not allow an unhonorable ambush. I was certain that even the demon lord would be in the same situation in front of her. Your red blonde hair is tangled, covering your forehead and cheeks. It's also flowing down over your chair like your Rapunzel. Ah, right. My hair color was red. Lilith clapped her hands like she finally found out and raised her head shamelessly. She should have been able to figure out her hair color by herself. You have big irises and I see some black patterns trapped in them. It looks like they're related to the foundation of your charm. Overall, you have big and deep eyes that are misty. You won't get dry eyes, but they're unnaturally moist, so you should go see a doctor. Right, right. I was born like this. So, aren't my eyes beautiful? Lilith laughed teasingly, while she bent over and shoved her face closer towards me. The chair she was sitting on began to slowly swing up and down. Closer, farther, closer, farther. I felt an instinctive thirstiness. Every time Lilith went farther away, impatience rose from my heart and I struggled to suppress it. Work, Crimson Hell's Tattoo. Ultimate Avarice. Do I need to go on? On. I want to hear more. But I don't plan to. I held my spear and aimed it at her face. Otherwise, I felt like I would charge towards her and shower her with kisses. Thankfully, I had learned to move before it was too late. Hurry up and tell me. How tall my nose is, how full my lips are, how much they sparkle, how my figure is, how large my breasts are, what shape they are, how slender my waist is, and how wide my hips are. I want to listen to them all. There's only one thing I can say. The chaos flames I shot out from the tip of my spear flashed past her due to her chair's reaction and hit the ceiling. The chains connecting the ceiling in the chair began to burn with chaos flames, turning soft and tender. I opened my mouth and announced to Lilith, who was looking at me with a shocked face. Fight me, Lilith. Chapter, 305 You you can really withstand me. I could immediately tell from her voice that she was stupefied. Looking at her, I grinned. Death collection. Immediately, black mist was released from my body. Lilith was wearing a thin, see-through dress that even a nail, much less a cursed weapon, could tear, but she only watched the weapons pop out of the mist with great interest. Her moist lips slowly opened, and her sweet voice tickled my ears once again. How can you point a weapon towards me? Die. I am Dortu. Reinforcing all weapons. Dortu infused his power into all the weapons coming out of the mist, and in the next instant, they flew towards Lilith faster than bullets. Truly numerous weapons cut through the air only to tear apart one frail woman. You'll really stab me? She shouted without thinking to dodge. I sneered. I could attack her. No matter how high her charm was compared to mine, 
with absolute soul and Puryuta circuit strengthening my resolve, she could do nothing against my sturdy willpower. No matter how much she pleaded, there was no way no way. Ho ho, that's what I thought. What is this? I murmured dumbfoundedly. Anyone would do the same. I couldn't believe what I was seeing with my eyes. There, there. You're all too kind. Death Collection's weapons, created through rage and resentment and existing only to kill their target, were stopping in the air one by one. A few of them even began to spin around Lilith as if to act as her guard. Unable to believe what was going on, I murmured. Did you just charm inanimate objects? Hoo-hoo, <laughs> smart. I really like you. Lilith sent me an alluring smile. It was as if she had expected my reaction. I am Dortu. Protecting Master. Dortu sounded hurried. Immediately afterwards, most of the weapons that popped out of the mist turned the opposite way and began hurling towards me. Dortu gave up controlling them and began to control the few that remained unaffected by Lilith. Ayak, I use this skill for the first time and am the one it's attacking. The hell. I am Dortu. Protecting Master's feelings. Dortu's power was truly immeasurable. Without me doing anything, Dorta controlled his weapons to counter and destroy the attacking weapons. Once broken, the weapons turned to a tar-like liquid and disappeared into the mist. However, Dorta's weapons only protected me as they revolved around me. They didn't think to attack Lilith again. It seemed Lilith realized something as she watched the weapons' movements. Oh, is that your power? Or could there be another elemental that I'm not aware of? How can you seduce inanimate objects? I couldn't help but ask. I knew that now wasn't the time, but it was just too shocking. No matter how high her charm was, charm referred to the external influence one person had towards another. From one living being to another. But Lilith had seduced weapons, whose only purpose was to kill their enemy. I couldn't understand her power at all. Doing so would be equivalent to arguing that a line was a polygon. Honey, do you know what my name means? Your name. On earth, Lilith was the first wife of Adam, who rejected him and even God to enter a relationship with a devil. Not only was this untrustworthy, but the story has also changed throughout the years. Now, Lilith was generally thought of as a high-ranking female devil who was similar to a succubus. Lilith spoke. Hoo-hoo, Lilith refers to the most charming woman in the world. That's in your world. Right, this is in my world. Lilith isn't a name, but a title. A title of honor, given to the most charming woman in the world. She extended her hand towards me and smiled sweetly. Out of the countless Mares in Enesis, I was the most beautiful and charming. Do you know what the word most means amongst devils? Does it look like I do? Hoo-hoo, you really are funny. As I retorted curtly, I inwardly asked Dortu how many equipment he could protect from that damned woman's influence. Dortu replied. I am Dortu. Between master's spear and armor, one must be abandoned. Immediately, I turned my armor back into a bracelet. When I suddenly became naked with only my underwear, Lilith's smile instantly became fuller. Now this is nice to see. You changed your mind. Good, come here. We don't need to fight. We can do more exciting things. Put away your spear too. Hoo-hoo you have an excellent weapon elsewhere. Please, you should know why I took my armor off. I snorted and drew lightning god's power into chaotic spear. Pika hummed cheerfully and increased its power. The enriched power of lightning easily took form, crackling with fiery sparks. Hoo-hoo. You say that, but in the end, you won't be able to escape my charm. Im Lilith. I have the power to seduce everything in the world. Everything except a few women. The hero that defeated you. Right, the hero was female. But even she was hesitant to kill me, and in the end, I was captured by Lord and ended up here. What an idiot, that hero. You're right, but she tried her best. Maybe the other warriors all gave their courage to her, because other than her, no one could do anything against me, especially male warriors. Lilith began to snicker. She reached out her hand towards me and spoke. Those guys who were so hell-bent on trying to kill me when my hand touched them. 
her hand softly wafted through the air. It was as if she was stroking my face, an alluring motion that wanted to make me hers. They happily gave their life for me. Ah, they were so boring. Really, too boring. But didn't they kill the succubi and incubi under your command to their heart's content? Hoo-hoo, that's because I had to wait a long time since the start of the invasion for the pathway to Elysia to be widened enough. But how did you know about oh, do you perhaps have a succubus queen with you? My heart dropped a beat. I didn't think she would see through me that much. But perhaps, this was a blessing in disguise. Lilith's expression turned ferocious. It was the first time I saw her with such a face since I met her. You have that despicable brat with you, that pink-haired bitch. So that thing was right. While I lost and stayed trapped in here for countless years, she found herself a new master and went to another world. Ha 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 ha. Lilith laughed out loud. Her laughter was full of rage. Soon after she started laughing, she suddenly stopped and spoke as she stared at me. Sweet child, stay with me. Cut off your contract with her. Stay with me here forever. No one can disturb us here. She continued. Her eyes shone like jewels, seducing me. I can give you everything other than freedom. Do you know the ecstasy a woman's body can give you? If you embrace me, no other woman will be able to satisfy you. Food? Here, I am no different than the creation god. Anything you want to eat, anything you want to drink, I can make it all. Battle? World's enemy? None of that's important. I'm being serious. Her power, her fragrance became stronger. I couldn't believe she wasn't at her limit. The power of seduction I believed I warded off came back stronger than ever. There was no room for doubt. This was the real her, the real Lilith. Nothing's more important than pleasure. Be with me. I can let you taste pleasure incomparable to the girl you took in. Here, forever with you. Yes, with me for all eternity. Her words made me quiver. She didn't possess absolute military force or unrelenting magic power. All she had was a terrifying charm. With this power of charm, she could seduce inanimate objects and create miracles. Absurd. Too absurd. Sherafina just what was she thinking, trapping her in Beyond's 35th floor. She was on a completely different league than Crimson Hell. Crimson Hell couldn't resist me physically, but Lilith. Critical hit. Kayak. A horrible shriek rang out in the palace. At the same time, the chains holding Lilith's chair finally broke off from Chaos Flame's continued blaze, and the chair plummeted to the ground. Lilith screamed with her hands on her face as she helplessly fell to the ground with her chair. I immediately shot my spear towards her, but the chains on the chair surprisingly came together and blocked my spear. For mere chains, they were incredibly tough, stopping my follow-up attack and preventing me from further injuring Lilith. In truth, this was also partly because I couldn't use my full strength as I was trouble moving my body. How how? Lilith staggered up. Her face was covered in blood. She was covering one side of her face with her hand, and I knew very well why. Crimson Hell could resist me physically. I barely held up my body trembling from her charm and retrieved the spear I shot at her face. At the end of the spear blade was her skewered eye. But you really only have charm. What a letdown. I pulled out her eye and squeezed it. The jewel-like eye exploded, and the power within it began to flow into me. You how, you're a man. You're a man. Mm -mm, now that you're one-eyed, you're not half bad. I smiled sweetly. Because I stole some of her power of charm, Lilith didn't look so fearsome and lovable anymore. In fact, looking at Lilith, whose magic power was leaking out in buckets, my fighting spirit was soaring. What a proper warrior should have was now standing tall. If that's your wish, it'll kill you. It'll kill you and erase that girl's existence too. Didn't I say it at the start? Fight me. I retorted lightly. When Lilith rolled her foot, her magic power spread out through the entire palace, and the dozens of golden statues that seemed to just be decorations began to move. Her godlike charm could even dominate inanimate objects. 
these golden statues were here to serve as her loyal soldiers. Great, now let's have some fun. Wearing nothing but my underwear, I held my spear up and grinned confidently. Then, I charged forward. Chapter, 306. Kill him. Don't leave even a single strand of hair of that arrogant brat. Lilith's sharp voice resonated within the palace. The statues flashed their golden muscles and charged towards me. As I was keeping my eye on them from the beginning, I could feel the giant lump of mana within them and how they were following Lilith's commands. I am Dortu. I can make them weaker for about zero. Seven seconds. Then when I give you the signal, weaken them in order. Dortu seemed to be upset because of Lilith stealing command over the weapons he controlled. He informed me that he could weaken the statues for a moment, and I immediately answered him as I fixed my grip on my spear. Although Dortu was only born recently, because I kept feeding him my mana when he was still an egg, I could communicate with him much quicker than with words. As such, zero. Seven seconds was more than enough. I first tried fighting a statue without borrowing Dorda's power. I thrusted my spear towards the statue's stomach, but a terrifying strength pushed back against it. Right, it was the statue's power. Of course, a part of the statue's power came from the mana within it, but there was something about it that went beyond my comprehension. If this mysterious force wasn't mana, it could only be one thing. This isn't gold. Who would use such a frail metal? I am Dortu. I've never experienced this metal. Dortu must eat it. My spear handle clashed with the statue's fist and an eerie creaking noise rang out. At the same time, Dortu went crazy over the metal he was seeing for the first time. Just in case, I asked him. What about weakening them? I am Dortu. Dortu must eat that metal. Sure, go ahead. If that's what you want to do, you shouldn't have brought my hopes up. With no other choice, I gave up cleanly. Immediately after I gave Dortu the okay sign, a small chunk disappeared from the fist of the statue I was facing. It was as though someone bit it off. An elemental. Humph, everyone attack. Lilith wasn't called a world's enemy for nothing. She instantly realized Dorda's identity and ordered her servants to attack me. It was naturally for the elemental to disappear once its contractor died. Even before Lilith gave the order, the statues were making their moves. I knew Ryue would protect me with ice barriers in the worst case, but considering the impact I felt when I clashed against one of them, Ryu's barrier probably wouldn't last more than one attack. Though shocking, even my enhanced body couldn't destroy one of these statues in one blow. In that case, I only had one choice left. It was what I was prepared for even before I entered the 35th floor. Overlord. Immediately, my body doubled in size. An unknown mana, Enigma, shot up from thin air and covered my body. As I felt the chilling and electrifying sensation from Enigma, a smile broke out on my face. Enigma was a mana I possessed. Not even Lilith could seduce mana under my control. Even if it materialized and formed an armor, it was still mana in the end. Consequently, I was no longer revealing my skin, as the armor of Enigma enshrouded me. Hua. When all directions were blocked off, it was best to take the initiative and break through. As such, I charged forward with a roar. There was a total of five statues in this direction. The rest chased after me from left, right, behind, and above to try and crush me. I clenched my teeth and shouted. Cock. The sound and breath I roared out became blazing flames and spread out. With the logic of metal being weak to fire, I had used crimson roar. Thankfully, things went as I expected. The temperature of the palace shot up and a blazing fire was ignited on all metal-bodied beings. It was most likely thanks to Enigma's power. This is a power beyond logic. Ayak. I could hear Lilith shrieking in frustration, but I couldn't see her well because of the statues surrounding me. In return, I drew in the surrounding flames to my spear and added lightning god's lightning to create a whirlpool. Break. In the past, the skill I could most easily use after learning Peruta Circuit was Tempest, a skill that only required 300 mana. But with Peruta Circuit mastered now, 
I felt sorry comparing the old tempest to the current tempest, as I could draw in surrounding mana and throw out an infinite number of tempests. Not to mention, I even had Ultimate Avarius and Crimson Hell's tattoo now. As Tempest was an extension of Pryuta Circuit, I was filled with more mana every time I used Tempest. This mana, in turn, transformed into Enigma and gushed out to my spear. An infinite cycle. No matter hard you might be, I doubt you can hold on when I suck out all the mana from you. I am Dortu. I will eat as quickly as possible. Dorta muttered as though he was scared I would take his food away. Immediately, the statue I believed Dortu was staying on became noticeably slow. I swung my spear around, freely shooting out tempests, then thrusted my spear towards a statue trying to punch me. The whirlpool of black mana enveloping my spear made the spear look triple its size. Like being slammed with a hammer, the statue shattered into pieces with a ear-piercing sound. You over there, don't move. It was at this moment that Lilith's voice rang out. As I expected her to prevent me from freely fighting the statues, after seeing Ryue form a barrier around me, I drew absolute soul's power to its peak. Lilith's magic was a type of mental magic but was closer to being a curse. Unfortunately for her, I was probably the most suited to block such an attack in all of Earth. Ill crush that handsome face of yours. Hugh. At the same time that Lilith's magic power began to restrain me, three statues shot towards me from the left, right, and above. To think she could restrain me to this extent when I was using Overlord. It was a power worthy of a world's enemy. It seemed I needed to take back what I said about her only having a high charm. If I was any weaker, I might have lost. No, I would have lost to her charm the moment I saw her. But it's too bad you met me a bit too late. After taking a short breath, I pulled my spear inward. Pryuta circuit stopped momentarily, and circulating it in reverse, I concentrated the discharging mana back towards my spear. This strange flow of mana also affected Lilith's mana flowing into me, causing its previously steady flow to shake and eventually be outed by absolute soul. At the same time, the tattoos on my fingers let out a radiant light and concentrated all sorts of mana into my spear. Lilith's mana quickly lost its purpose and was sucked into the spear. The ability to concentrate all power into one point. This was my unique ability resulting from my innate talents rather than being the result of Peruta's ability. More specifically, it was the principle behind the spear technique passed down in my clan. Right now, I was concentrating Peruta Circuit's power, Crimson Hell's power, and Absolute Soul's power together with the power of nature which didn't belong to me. Enigma gathered all these powers together and strengthened them. These powers, which originally should clash against each other, became docile under Enigma's command. Any ordinary spear would have been destroyed and I would have been injured by the recoil, but the spear I was holding was chaotic spear reinforced with Dorda's power. Rather than being destroyed, the concentration of several powers made it radiate with a brilliant light. Hap. Almost like pulling a rubber band and letting it go, I instantly returned Peruta circuit to its normal rotational direction and shot my spear forward. The concentrated energy blasted out like a laser, piercing through several statues and hurling towards Lilith, my real target. Kayak. I didn't check whether she was hurt. I didn't have the time. I used lightning spear storm at the statues coming towards me. With my eyes wide open, I accurately pinpointed the location of the statues surrounding me and thrusted my spear at the statues one by one while dodging their attacks. Wah! Although I couldn't break them with just one attack, my continuous barrage of spear thrusts drilled huge holes in the statues. Dortu spoke disappointedly. I am Dortu. There are less to eat. I must eat quicker. If you can, hurry, Dortu. I am Dortu. I can analyze the metal soon. I inwardly cheered Dortu on and took my spear back. Then, I jumped back and swung my spear fiercely. Two statutes swooping down on me from above fell after being cut in half. Impossible. Oriacalcos was so easily cut. Oriacalcos? I've heard that name before. If I remember correctly, a more common name for it was Oriacalcum. One of the most powerful metals comparable to Mithril. That means. Those statues are all Oricalcos. Lilith, you're filthy rich. 
It's simple. The mana I'm wielding now is a bit different than yours. I already know that your mana has reached a new realm, but you still shouldn't be able to cut Orichalcos so easily. If you just release your mana, of course it's impossible. But if you concentrate your mana like this. I effortlessly concentrated over 100,000 points worth of mana into my spear. An aura containing several energies mixed together was dizzying to look at originally, but with Enigma swallowing everything, I could control this aura easily. As I concentrated the aura along the spear blade, it stopped emitting light and became thin like a well-grinded edge of a blade. This wasn't possible in the past because of my lack of mana. But if it was simply concentrating mana to strengthen my attack, I was able to do it for a long time. With the addition of Overlord, I was now capable of fusing other mana into my own. Now, including the power of the dungeon, I had well over 900,000 mana. Using this technique to cut apart Orichalcos was easily done. You all better get out of the way. I thrusted my spear backwards. As I was getting closer to the wall of the palace, there weren't many attacking me from the back, and the attack just now incapacitated most of the statues that did. Then, I jumped on the wall. I could easily run in mid-air, but running was the wall on cooler. Pika, Sharana. Full power. For master. I gave closer to half of my remaining mana, an amount totaling 300,000, to my elementals. Immediately after they received my mana, Pika transformed into a giant lightning dragon coiled around air. Although I couldn't see Sharana, I could feel her inside Pika, strengthening her ability to the limit. A technique I learned after mastering Spirit Aura, the ability to make one elemental infuse into another. Of course, it wasn't possible with just any elemental. It was only possible for elementals like Pika, who had extremely high potential, and Sharana, who was optimized to strengthen others' ability. A truly powerful elemental. But will that be enough to injure me? At the very least, she can destroy everything other than you. I am Dortu. Analysis complete. Before Lilith could even finish talking, Dortu announced confidently. At the same time, the statue's movements became strange. They suddenly came to a stop in the middle of charging towards me as if their feet got stuck in place. Then, their human-shaped body began to distort. Dortu was getting his revenge for what Lilith had done to him before. I shouted. Now. Qua. Pika let out a fearsome roar and uncoiled herself to begin charging straight forward. The terrifying lightning she emitted shot out in all directions and cleanly erased the flames that were still burning. Not only that, but the statues that couldn't dodge her charge disappeared like they never existed. With her giant mouth wide open, Pika flew straight towards Lilith. With the metallic statues gone, I could finally see Lilith. Half of her face was still dripping with blood, and blood of shooting out from a small hole in her stomach. That hole must have been the result of the heroic strike I used before. However, facing Pika's terrifying charge, Lilith smiled faintly. When I saw her smile, I immediately knew. Someone who could seduce inanimate objects was surely capable of seducing elementals. As chills ran down my back, Lilith opened her mouth. Elemental, you can see me, can't you? I can. No, you're not yet. When Pika retorted, Lilith made a definitive rebuttal. Immediately afterwards, Lilith's magic power billowed out like a blooming flower. The palace, burning from crimson roar and crumbling from the tempests I shot out, became filled with Lilith's magic power. Even I, who was preparing an attack, suddenly felt suffocated because of it. Should I unsummon Pika and just attack by myself? Just when I was thinking about my next move and drawing up Absolute Soul's power, Lilith's voice rang out sonorously throughout the palace. I will show you why I am Lilith. Before I noticed, the injuries on her body was gone. The blood on her face evaporated, and the eyeball I plucked out was properly adorning her face. She began to radiate light. Although my charm stat was amplified to an absurd level with Overlord, I lost grip of my spear when I saw Lilith's face. Damn it! I'm still lacking in training. Indeed, you're a special human. I didn't think you had the ability to cut Orichalcos, really. I was caught off guard quite a bit, and even suffered some injuries. Pika's charge stopped. 
It felt like my heart was stopping too. You tried your best, and it was quite enjoyable, but in the end, you can't defeat me. There's only way to beat me, and that's. To. Surpass. My. Charm. How did she recover from all those injuries? Thinking that I had to fight her from the beginning again, strength left my body as I let out a hollow laugh. Just when I was thinking about giving up, I realized what was happening. This was all just Lilith's magic. Lilith had lost. It was because she lost to Elysia's female hero that she was in the dungeon. Then did that hero surpass her in charm? No, that was impossible. Lilith was lying. But what was terrifying was that the charm she was currently emitting had the power to make people believe falsehood as truth. Even I felt like nodding and agreeing with her words. I frantically circulated per Yuta circuit. I returned chaotic spear back into my hands and pointed it towards her while glaring at her with a piercing gaze. I was currently considering the worst case scenario, one in which Pika turned to Lilith's side. I tried to unsummon Pika the moment I saw Lilith in her fully restored state, but it didn't work. Since I couldn't hurt Pika, I would have to somehow dodge her and kill Lilith. It was okay. Because I didn't know what trump cards Lilith was hiding, I had also kept my own trump cards. I had yet to properly use divine speed, and I still had much of Overlord's energy left. Like she said, it was her charm that was most dangerous. As long as I could overcome it, I had a chance. Elemental, what do you think? K.R.R. Lilith asked Pika, and Pika growled quietly in response. Then, she swallowed Lilith. Chapter, 307 Pika Nom, nom Nom, nom The light filling up the palace disappeared completely. Something exploded in Pika's mouth, and crimson blood dripped down from Pika's mouth. Flustered, I stared blankly at Pika. Meanwhile, the palace changed significantly. Lilith's mana that dominated the area lost power completely, and though not perfect, it was Pika who was taking in that mana. Gulp. Gulp. Pika swallowed what was in her mouth. Immediately, Pika's body grew longer, her scales became more luscious, and another horn shot up from her head. It seemed eating Lilith helped her growth immensely. Pika, are you okay? Un. She was almost dead from Master anyways. Pika spun in the air in response as she approached me. From that, I realized that Lilith hadn't recovered from her injuries and that she was just tricking me. Still, to think she could hide her injuries so well. How did she do it? I'm surprised she could trick Master, but it's useless against this Pikanim. It'll protect Master from strange women like her, hoo hoo. Pika must have forgot what form she was in, as she boasted and laughed. But it was true that I could defeat Lilith thanks to Pika, so I thanked her as I patted her. You made this an easy win. Thanks, Pika. Hoo hoo, I should say the same. Thanks to that woman, I feel like I'll get back my real body soon. You mean your final seal? Yes, master. Pika grinned. The flesh and blood covering her teeth made me freeze. Lilith, who had given me so much trouble, had such a pitiful end. Without Pika, she would have driven me to a corner. She still had that much magic power left, and her charm was truly terrifying to the point of affecting the world's laws. However, Pika ignored all of that. Pika's ability surpassed my imagination. Even with absolute soul and Pryuta circuit, I couldn't see through Lilith's trick, but Pika did so easily and even ate her. Was it because Pika was an elemental? Was it because she was female? Perhaps it was both or perhaps it was neither. But one thing I was sure about was that there was something special about Pika, something more special than Dordu who was already so extraordinary. I knew I would find out eventually. When her final seal came undone and when her real self was revealed. With a furtive smile, I asked Pika. Do you want to try eating other monsters? No. Eating random monsters will make me sick. Pika grumbled like a picky eater, and immediately afterwards, a fanfare rang out. You succeeded in defeating Lilith alone. Like with Crimson Hell, you defeated a world's enemy no explorer has ever defeated nor has ever seen. 
Until the day the dungeon disappeared, your achievement will be honored among explorers. There will be no dungeon explorer who will dare to go against you. You obtained 5 skill points as reward. Current skill points, 34. You obtained the title, Lilith Killer. All stats increase by 5. The effect of the title will apply even when it is not equipped. You cleared Beyond's 35th floor. You obtained the qualification to challenge the first dungeon's 86th floor. You obtained 5 bonus points. Your maximum HP and MP increases by 2%. Experience has been added to skills you frequently use to progress through Beyond's 35th floor. You received the unique reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations! Your luck stat increases by 10. Secret Lilith's Horn Horn But Lilith didn't have a horn. Of Lilith's body parts, her horn contains the biggest amount of her power. The dungeon has kept the horn cut off by the hero. I needed a long time until I could fully understand what this meant. When I finally came to the simple answer, I couldn't help but drop my jaws in shock. Lilith's power was already limited. And she still had that much charm. This seemed like a bad joke. Among all the world's enemies I've met, she had the most terrifying special ability. I inwardly thanks Pika one more time. If I faced her with other members of Revival, I would have had a harder time, as Lilith would surely have turned them against me. I see, so depending on the enemy's special ability, it's sometimes better to have just a few people or even just me. Hugh at least it's all over now. Good job, Master. Congratulations, Master. After the fanfare confirming the end of the battle rang out, Pika and Sharana had returned to their elemental form. I wasn't 1% sure, but Pika looked a bit different even in her elemental form right, it was almost as if a young girl had become an adult. Well, if it's important, I'm sure Pika will tell me. I chose to remain silent. I am Dortu. That was an unpleasant woman. She made Dortu fell unpleasant. On the other hand, I could tell from Dortu's voice that he was vexed. Since he didn't have a materialized form, I couldn't pat him to console him. I could only do so with words. You still did well, Dortu. It was just that her ability was weird. From now on, we won't be. Hmm, I guess I can't be certain. Among the countless worlds, who was to say there wasn't someone with the same ability as Lilith? From now on, we'll get stronger so we can better deal with an ability like that in the future. I am Dortu. Master is cold. Hearing Dortu's dejected voice, I couldn't help but laugh. In any case, the battle was now over. Although Crimson Hell and Lilith had their powers suppressed by the dungeon, I succeeded in defeating two world's enemies. With how strong they were, I certainly had many benefits. Especially in my fight with Lilith, I clearly remembered compressing over 100,000 points worth of mana in my spear. Generally, one's aura became more visible as it got stronger. At that moment, however, my aura had become unrecognizable my others. I'm sure this can't be done by just anyone. Lilith's shocked reaction said everything. It wasn't a skill, and I concentrating mana was all I had done. Pika, is it hard to concentrate mana into one point? Master, do you think you can turn inanimate objects to metal after watching Dortu do it? No. But Dortu can do it like it's the most natural thing. I am Dortu. She is right. Dortu can turn all inanimate objects to metal. Pika affirmed Pika immediately. Hearing her, I became speechless. There was no way I could figure out how Dorta turned things into metal. But that the same thing. Let me say it more clearly, Master. Pika folded her fan and pointed it at my face. Concentrating a power into one point is impossibly difficult, especially if that power is mana. Even though it's so easy. Ask another explorer to do the same. With that, Pika didn't speak further. Thinking about her words, I fell into silence. Mm no but in that case. I see so that's it. I couldn't remember exactly when, but when I was young, I saw father thrusting his spear. We had both trained using our ancestors' training method and learned how to thrust with the power of the entire body concentrated into one point. 
At the time, I felt that father's thrust was different than mine. Because father was so strong, I believed his was a more perfect version. But now, that might not have been true. This is my ability. I murmured quietly. Everything made sense now. The first time I manifested the power of the hero, it was none other than when I concentrated my Bodhis power into one point and shot it out, the moment I learned heroic strike. A power that was mine, a power that I was born with. Too strange to be called a power. Formless, yet definite. Talent. In the same tone, I murmured the same thing as if to engrave the words in my heart. I closed my eyes and opened them back up. Nothing had changed, yet everything had changed. I found the path. The attack I once made in front of Samire. I wasn't using any mana, but I believed Peruta Circuits was naturally reacting in its own way. But that wasn't it. That was the most powerful power I could show. Though it wasn't perfected, it was an attack made by concentrating all the power I could muster. An attack I made subconsciously at a time when I didn't fully understand the power I had, an attack that was the result of luck. If I could fully comprehend each particle of my mana, each fiber of my muscles and each drop of my blood, and if I could condense and compress them all into one point I could go further. When that time came, I would have nothing to fear. I had finally figured it out. I always had the answer, but I had only now noticed it. Master is so cool. Yeah, I know. I smiled and calmed my internal energy. I knew it couldn't be in just one or two days. But now that I knew what to do, I knew it was only a matter of time. Now then, let's obtain a new power. You've waited a long time. I reached my hand out towards the reward, Lilith's horn. What came out in my hand was a reddish-black horn that strutted up proudly. Its explanation was also extremely simple. Lilith's Horn Legend Option If you make a weapon using this horn, the enemy you cut with the weapon will have a random chance of becoming charmed. With a low chance, you can turn the enemy into your loyal subordinate. If you make an accessory with this horn, your charm will increase significantly, and you will be able to use a portion of Lilith's power as a skill. The horn is too dangerous to use without refining it. It seemed Sherafina was worried that I would put the horn on my head. With how kindly she explained the horn's use, if I was still a gold-ranked explorer, I might have really refined the horn into a weapon or an accessory. But there was no way I would do so now. Without a shred of hesitation, I tightened my grip on the horn and roused Peruta circuit. A boundless mana was contained within the horn. What I assumed to be Lilith's unique charming energy began to pulsate. I didn't plan to go easy on it. Immediately and mercilessly, I began to pull it towards me. From the top, the horn began to turn to dust. Flowing into me, the horn's energy seeped into me completely. With a thump, my heart made a beat, and the energy instantly began flowing through my veins. Phew! It felt like my blood was boiling. Though defeated, Lilith was still a world's enemy. As her power was more special than Crimson Hell's power, there was more resistance than when I absorbed Crimson Hell's power. Still, it was a power I had felt before. I drew Peruta Circuit and Absolute Soul to the peak. If needed, I was ready to infuse Pika into my body. However, that wasn't needed. Though I only had a few seconds of it left, I was still under the effect of Overlord. Within me, Enigma helped suppress Lilith's power. Lilith's power slowly bowed its once highly held head and began to fuse with my blood, mana, and body. Before I noticed, Overlord had ended and Enigma disappeared, yet the process was continuing. It took a long time. A really long time. Really, this energy was too great. Who, Hugh? Some time later, I slowly opened my eyes. Unlike previously when I learned of my talent, this time, everything had really changed. With a slightly stiff voice, I asked. What's this? It's a horn, master. Pika answered in a lovable voice. So that's what it was. I nodded and stroked my left forehead. On one side of my forehead was a sharp, dark red horn that anyone could see with a single glance. Fudge Nujit's thoughts. Enjoy. Chapter, 308. Pika, what does this look like? 
A horn. Damn it. I asked Pika just in case I was mistaken, but Pika's answer didn't change. Dortu then sensibly created a metallic mirror. I saw my reflection in the silver mirror, and I could clearly see a dark red horn protruding out. Not only that, but my skin had also turned snow white, while a part of my hair had turned red. It was as though I had taken Lilith's characteristics. Dear God. I realized that the portion of her power I couldn't completely accept had fused with my mana to form this horn. Should I cut it off? I couldn't help but consider the possibility, but I immediately decided against it. I knew that once I could accept all of Lilith's power, the horn would disappear naturally. In other words, just because I absorbed Lilith's horn, it didn't mean I could fully use her power. Of course, I checked my stats and saw that my charm stat had shot up by almost 300 points, but it wasn't to the point of being able to charm inanimate objects. If I processed the remaining power in the horn, would I be able to do it? I wasn't sure. But with my charm increased, several of my other skills had also become stronger. Naturally, evil eyes were affected by charm as were skills like provoke and overwhelm. If the difference between me and opponent was big, I could now kill him with my presence alone. I wouldn't have even imagined such a thing had I not obtained Lilith's horn. Lilith's power can't become my primary ability, so I'll have to be content with this. If I get greedy for more, I'll only end up doing myself a disfavor. Master's charm is already amazing. I think so too. I replied to Pika with a bitter smile. 300 points. Although I didn't want to admit it, my charm had long since surpassed the realm of a human. Considering one of my skills doubled the effect of charm against those of the opposite sex, I might even be able to use Lilith's temptation on Lilith herself. Of course, since Lilith was dead, this could only stay a theory. I looked in the mirror once again and realized that I was still naked. I thought about putting my armor back on, but thinking that I wouldn't need to fight in the dungeon for the rest of the day, I just put on light clothes. Wraith Queen Set or Vampire Lord Set was the best for such occasions. In truth, Incubus King's set was cooler than either of these, but it was just too flamboyant for any sane person to wear. On the other hand, Wraith Queen Set and Vampire Lord Set were comparable to luxury brand designer clothes. Not only did they look the part, but they also had decent functionalities. Since Wraith Queen Set was older and came from a lower level floor master, I mostly used Vampire Lord Set. But when I changed into the Vampire Lord set and looked at the mirror, someone resembling a dungeon floor master was there. I only got a horn and had my skin color changed, but this no, that's a pretty big change. Damn. If only I could get rid of this horn. It was yet another reason to focus more on training. Let's get out for now. Good job, everyone. You did well too, master. It's an honor to be of help, master. I am Dortu. Dortu can now make oracalcos. I left beyond along with my three elementals. I made sure to check for any leftover oracalcos, but it seemed they disappeared along with Lilith's death. Since Dortu said he could make them, I planned to make some when I had mana to spare. Shin Nim, welcome back eh? I felt bad about leaving Loretta behind and jumping straight into beyond, so I planned to stay with her for a little bit. But Loretta's expression seemed a bit strange. Loretta? What's wrong? That's what I'd like to ask. Shin Nim, do you know what state you're in? State? Ah. Shoot, because I was fighting Lilith, I had my charm raised to its limit. Not to mention, after I obtained Lilith's power, I left without properly restraining my charm. I didn't even have time to reply. Loretta's approached me stealthily and grabbed my hands. Shin Nim, I think I know who you fought in Beyond's 35th floor. Shin Nim's appearance changed a lot and it's so obvious too. Hoo hoo. Loretta's smart as expected. So in that sense, I have something to ask you. Loretta smiled like there was nothing more to be said. She stuck her body onto mine and whispered in my ear. Don't worry, if it's only for a little while, I can isolate us from Lord's view. I'm not worried about Sherafina's voyeurism fetish. I yelled, but Loretta suddenly tightly squeezed my hands. Her eyes were shining fiercely. She pulled on my arms as if to say she'd never let go. 
Come on, let's go to my cabin. Quickly. Loretta, let's just talk this out. Shin Nim, I like talking with my body more. We can talk with our mouths later. You whack. I screamed and twisted my body. But because I wasn't wearing my armor, I couldn't use my full power. Loretta opened the gate to Fairy Garden and murmured in a happy voice. Hu hu hu, what should we name our thirteenth daughter? That's how far we've gone in your head. Isn't that too many? From then, it took some time for Loretta to let me go. I felt like I had to use more energy than the energy I spent fighting Lilith before I could finally escape. They'll just say that it almost made me cry. With mother entering the dungeon, there were some days when dinner wasn't prepared, and today was one of those days. I considered going to Marianna's garden, but scared that Loretta might be waiting for me, I decided to just eat instant ramen. When I was boiling water in the kitchen, someone sauntered in. Kong Shin, fulfilling your promise. Why are you in my house? Daisy sat down casually wearing a dress shirt and loose shorts. She acted like an old man tired of the harshness of the real world. Plus, her clothes were too defenseless. Can't you wear something proper? Otherwise, button up your shirt more. Comfy clothes, good clothes. When you're not fighting, it's good to let loose. So why are you in my house? Comfy house, good house. When you're not fighting, it's good to let loose. So my house was comfy. It was my fault for letting her in here so easily. Complaining internally, I took out another bag of ramen from the cupboard. Daisy then casually added. I eat too. Yeah, yeah. I was somewhat expecting it. Even though we used mana to fight, we both had superhuman muscles. As such, we had to eat at least twice as much as normal people. Since boiling three or four ramen was more or less the same, I took out another bag without hesitation. When I was pouring more water into the pot, Daisy suddenly asked. Kong Shin, you got a horn. Ah, uh, yeah, I defeated someone called Lilith and this is what happened. It might look weird now, but ITLL disappear when I can fully control it. Horn, okay. Horn is a symbol of the powerful. If weak demons have horns, strong demons will break them. Dragons, they have the most beautiful horns. Elves who like strong people, also like horns. Yeah, I learned that today too. You made it with the elf queen. No. I turned around and shouted back. Daisy then narrowed her eyes and glared at me. Elf queen, perfect woman. Not mating with her, is it because you like me? It'll be serious. I don't plan on troubling other women. I can't do much about the ones I said I'd accept, but I don't. You don't want to pursue, your feelings for me. Your unfound confidence surprises me every time. I meant to say, I don't plan on liking you romantically. Even though I said that Daisy looked at me with pitiful, all-understanding eyes. Feeling like there was nothing I could say that would convince her, I gave up and went back to quietly boiling water. When I stopped talking, Daisy nodded with a satisfied face, then began swinging her feet as she hummed melodies I didn't know. Now she was like a cheery elementary school kid. Suddenly, Daisy widened her eyes like she realized something important. Is this a newlywed atmosphere? What a lame newlywed. No money to eat proper food has to make do with ramen. House is small but full of love. Such poor people want each eat two bags of ramen. This house isn't small and there's no love between us. Kong Shin, water's boiling. I quit picking on her words and started opening the ramen bags. Out of nowhere, Daisy softly spoke. Kong Shin, thank you very much. I should be the one thanking you. At times like this, you should pretend to have not heard anything. If you want to whisper to yourself, you should just say it in your head. When I retorted with a snicker, Daisy snorted. Seeing a smile on her face, I couldn't help but think about how much everything changed. Knowing that I had affected her, I felt somewhat proud. At that moment, an archangel I wasn't expecting to see peeked her head into the kitchen. Appa, if it isn't too late, can I eat ramen too? Of course it's not late. Wait just a bit. Kayak, Appa, there's a horn on your head. And you look more bewitching. 
don't call a man bewitching, you a. It's nothing much, so don't worry about it. This horn is like a damn builder part. Okay. If that's what Appa says, hee hee. Yua was wearing light clothes as though she just got out of a shower after being in the dungeon. In her arms was a small dragon fuming a fiery yawn. It was the baby dragon born from Lava King's egg. Since I didn't add ramen into the water, I could still add more water to the pot. With this, I had to wait for more until the water boiled. Seeing Yua slumped down next to her, Daisy tilted her head, then exclaimed in her delusional realization. Sister-in-law, disrupting newlywed couple annoyed. Daisy SSI, can you say that a little louder? UK. Even Yua couldn't do anything about Daisy's my pace attitude. Daisy had a talent for making her jokes not sound like jokes. Seeing Yua become flustered by her words, Daisy smiled bashfully and hit the chair next to her. But we can't starve you. Sister-in-law should eat ramen with us. Don't call me sister-in-law, Daisy SSI. Kong Yunggong said, I can call you that. Thank you for letting me know, Daisy SSI. It seemed father would have to avoid Yua for a while. I mean, just what was this old man telling everyone? Is he trying to make a soccer team with daughters-in-law rather than grandkids? Kong Shin, when's ramen? Wait five minutes. Sorry for making you wait. We have more people, it's okay. I can wait. Grey elves are very easygoing. Are they? Un. They're easygoing and relaxed about everything. So although everyone is very talented, we don't get many outstanding warriors. Because we're easygoing. This is the first time I'm hearing this. Of course, when they need to, they get serious. Still, they're very patient. That's quicker in the end. The topic went from ramen to a rather interesting subject. I threw five portions of ramen into the boiling water and thought back to when I first met Daisy. Daisy lying down on her bed really seemed to resemble her description of grey elves. Just when I was thinking that Daisy added a final comment. So grey elves courtships are easygoing. Love and relationship are also easygoing. Daisy SSI. Hungry. When Yua called her name, Daisy feigned ignorance and bit down on her chopsticks. I couldn't help but laugh seeing her childlike manner. Like I said, if you want to whisper to yourself, you should say it in your head. Like I said, at times like this, you should pretend to have not heard anything. But since you already heard it, it's okay. Daisy spoke with a wink. Even after we defeat the demon lord, Kong Shin should make me ramen forever. Kong Shin and I can both spend time leisurely. I'm sure it will be fun. The ramen we had that night was extremely delicious. Unfortunately, Yua's angry kitten-like stare continued to scratch me. Chapter, 309 After eliminating the five kings from Earth, we agreed that we needed to clean up as much of the monster's territories as possible as quickly as possible. However, the explorers we newly appointed and the members of Revival were all busy climbing the dungeon and training to get stronger. I also wanted to focus on just climbing the dungeon if possible. Unfortunately, Guardian and Freedom Wing were all too weak for us to just leave everything to them. Even now, they could barely hold their ground against even the most ordinary monsters. I had to acknowledge their hard work, but the reality was cold-hearted. They were simply too weak. Dear husband, do you have any orders for us? In the end, I ended up looking for the succubi. The reason was simple. I wanted them to find the most efficient route for me to take so I can massacre all the monsters. Since I needed to fill up my depleted death energy, it was killing two birds with one stone. During my fight against Crimson Hell, I found out how useful death energy was. Since I was running low, it would be stupid of me to not refill it. If I had a lot of death energy left during my fight with Lilith, I felt it would have gone smoother as well. Now that it's gotten more difficult to carry out a massacre in the dungeon, taking care of monsters on earth was the best method of getting death energy. That said, I didn't look for licorice as I knew she was busy. I just contacted the information collection team consisting of 30 succubi stationed at the guild house. Currently, licorice, her direct subordinate, the elder succubus Mireille, and one other very powerful succubi were in closed-door training. 
As they were focusing on taking the energy of other succubi to strengthen themselves, I could see that the information collection team succubi were weaker. I felt sorry seeing faint dark circles underneath the succubi's eyes. Still, they weren't humans and thus wouldn't get dark circles. I knew they were faking them to appeal to me, and I considered their effort cute and gave each of them a warm hug to which the succubi rejoiced unabashedly. Good work, everyone. Hoo hoo, everyone is working hard. It's also been a while since I saw Wyanim's face. It was the elder succubus Mireille who was in charge of the normal succubi, and it was Waya who was in charge of Mireille. With Mireille leaving to train, the succubi had to report to Waya directly, but because she was focusing on climbing the dungeon and breaking through beyond, the succubi's work seemed to be getting delayed. How many succubi are on the front line? Most of them returned. Rather than splitting up and hunting separately, we're focusing all our forces in one place to clear it thoroughly. Only, the succubis have lost a lot of their individual power. As you know, our queen is transforming into an empress. What? Aren't they the same thing? That's the first thing I thought, but the succubi chortled and spoke. It seems our queen was too embarrassed to tell you herself. She didn't plan on becoming an empress, but with dear husband obtaining a great power recently. Great power? This? I pointed at my horn and asked. The succubus I was speaking to let out a deep sigh in rapture. Yes, dear husband obtained Lilith's power. Because of it, our queen has been affected significantly too. Of course, she affected dear husband too, but the horn on dear husband's forehead is. Wait, can you tell me about this in more detail? I grabbed the succubus' shoulders. She quickly cupped her hands over her mouth with a look of oops, but considering the side glances she was giving me, it seemed she planned on leaking this information to me from the beginning. These succubi took after licorice too much. They were all so sly. Dear husband has a contract with the queen, right? I do. That contract was originally a regular companion contract, but when dear husband took Lilith's power, the queen was affected and the form of the contract changed along with dear husband's appearance. That kind of makes sense. I did think it was strange that obtaining Lilith's power gave me a horn. It seemed being contracted to licorice, a succubus queen, had affected me unknowingly. Succubi and incubi as species are very skilled in using charm. Of course. As Mares, they naturally had high charm and were apt in transferring their charm onto others. As this was their innate racial ability, there was no way for humans to match up to them. Dear husband is a pure human, but you accepted Lilith's power. Because of the contract dear husband has with the queen, dear husband could adapt to use Lilith's power more effectively. You mean, without my contract with licorice, I would have taken Lilith's magic power normally? Yes. Without my skin turning white, without parts of my hair turning red, and without growing a horn. I thought it was just the power I couldn't control in leaking out, but it seemed there was more to it than I initially thought. I thought this change was because I couldn't fully control Lilith's power. Of course not. Dear husband already absorbed several powers that are of equal level, if not slightly lower, than Lilith's. Now that you mention it. Right, I still had room to grow. How could there be not enough space in my body to contain Lilith's power? I was simply mistaken. This wasn't a leakage of power. What this change did was to make me go beyond the limits of a human, so I could better utilize my charm rather than keeping my charm trapped inside my body and letting it out in clumsy ways. ITLL disappear eventually. I was thoroughly mistaken. This horn would be an important weapon to help me control charm. Taking in Lilith's power served as a trigger to rouse the queen's mana residing in dear husband's subconscious, and that resulted in dear husband transforming to better utilize Amara's ability. So. Dear husband is no longer completely human. Are you saying I became half mare? Not half, but erm. About one fifth? I became lost for words. I felt a slight headache, but when I thought about it again, it didn't seem so important. No matter what the process was, I had gotten stronger and I could now use the power of charm to an unbelievable extent. So what if I became slightly non-human? In fact, the way of girls looked at me was even stranger. I get it now. 
This isn't me being unable to process Lilith's power. It's the opposite. My body changed to use this power most efficiently, right? Yes, exactly. So controlling charm should be much more natural for dear husband. Though, a little bit of it might leak out because of its sheer power. Okay, I get it, so get away from me a bit. The succubus sighed dejectedly and took a step back. Another succubus stepped in as though she was waiting for the chance. As we said before, Lilith's power even affected our queen. Lilith was a special existence independent from the succubi and the succubus queen. When dear husband received her power, the queen was naturally affected by Lilith's power. So such an exchange occurred when I took in Lilith's power. If ITLL help licorice, I can give her as much as she needs. By the way, is Lilith this empress you talked about? No, Lilith is just Lilith. No other title can describe her. There is another word to describe the realm above a queen. It is Empress. After our fight with the Death King, Licorice took in the mana of dozens of dead succubi and transformed. She then announced she would get stronger by receiving mana from other succubi. But that was still within the ability of a succubus queen. Just like how a bowl didn't change shape no matter how much water one poured in, Licorice couldn't become a different species just by getting more mana. You're telling me Lilith's power can do something like that? Yes. Just like how dear husband became part mare, the queen has surpassed her limits and obtained the possibility to evolve. By getting mana from all succubi, she's collecting the mana she needs to evolve. I see. So I took in Lilith's power at a nice timing. Yes, exactly. Originally, Lilith's horn should have become part of me as just another form of power. But because of my contract with Licorice, we were both unknowingly affected in a positive way. Truly interesting. So you won't be able to see her for about half a year. That's unfortunate. Though I often rejected Licorice's advances, Licorice was still very important to me. Her cheerful smiles and love supported me emotionally in more ways than she probably thought. So, in place of the Queen, well serviced dear husband. Oh, yeah. The reason I came to see you. You you, you're no fun. I told the succubi what I came for. When I told them I planned on spending two days to clear regions with many monsters, they all became excited. In that case, can you give us a week? We have to see what the most dangerous regions are and also notify Guardian and Freedom Wing. Hoo, dear husband is going. We'll have to contact the other girls. Done. Girls, bring all the information we have. In an instant, the room became noisy. They were happy that they had more work to do. Were they okay? With that question in mind, I left. I had to wait a week, which meant I was destined to go back to the dungeon. Chapter, 310 Of course, I didn't go back to the dungeon immediately. I learned some tricks from the succubi and practiced how to control my charm more efficiently. The whole process took a few hours, and while I was at it, I also mastered using Crimson Hell's power. Since I was back in Earth, I looked over Revival members' Pryuta circuits and trained Samire on spearmanship while I was at it. As Samire was still focusing on concentrating her power into a single point, I showed her how to do it a few times. You you, I can't do it well. Don't worry, I'm not perfect yet either. There's something Shin Nim can't do. Samire gave me a doubtful look and I flicked her forehead with a smile. Didn't you see it just now? I'm still training in this technique. Ah. Samire rubbed her forehead. Oh, sorry. Did it hurt? I meant it to be a light flick. And no, not at all. Hoo-hoo just show me one more time. Not the forehead flick, but the spear thrust. Gladly. After coaching Samire, I also coached Sierra as I hadn't given her much attention for a while. H ability was growing at a monstrous pace after awakening her evil eyes, but it was important that she knew how to control her mana if she wanted to display her ability to its fullest extent. At the very least, I wanted to know when and where the demon lord would descend. This Peruta circuit is such an odd technique, Hironim. If you're not talented enough, it's hard to even realize that it's odd. So focus and do your best. Yes, Hironim. 
I already knew this, but she really was quite talented. Of the ones learning Peruta circuit from me, Sierra was the most outstanding. In terms of skill levels, her Peruta circuit would already be level 4. Ah, Hironim, a precognition. Is it important? Yes, very. I gulped. Did I jinx myself? Did she just see when the demon lord would descend? I asked nervously. Im ready. Tell me. Yes, Hironim. It seems in three years, Hironim will take in your seventeenth wife. Ah, in one of the seventeen too. This is great. There's no dinner for you tonight. But I'm just telling you what I saw. In truth, Sierra's precognition carried an important meaning. No, not the part about the number of my wives though I'll try to avoid this future as much as I can, but rather the fact that she saw an event three years in the future. Until now, she couldn't see the future beyond a certain point. The furthest she could see was the demon lord's descent. But today, for the first time, she saw three years into the future where everything would have been resolved. Of course, her precognition wasn't absolute. However, the possibility definitely existed. This meant that we could successfully defeat the demon lord and the existence that was controlling the five kings. However, I decided not to tell this uplifting news to anyone else. It was most certainly not because I was afraid of their happiness or anger about me having seventeen wives. Since I was here, I wanted to see Cain's face before I went back to the dungeon, but surprisingly, he seemed to be in the dungeon. Apparently, he was challenging the 92nd floor after not having done so for a long time. His ability probably had little to do with why he wasn't climbing the dungeon, but the 92nd floor couldn't be that easy. Thinking that it would be hard to see his face for a little while, I finally went back to the dungeon. I considered visiting Lin and Leon but decided against it since I couldn't be of much help. So you're back after two days? Yeah, I wish I had three bodies. Loretta, who was waiting for me at the 85th floor shop, seemed to have her sanity straight thanks to me controlling my charm. Shin Nim, I know I say this all the time, but rushing things is the key to making mistakes. You have to make time to rest. If I'm tired, you'll come find Loretta to get another massage. Loretta's ears flapped. She spoke with a face full of anticipation. Should I do it now? Not today. I have to go fight. If all explorers were like Shin Nim, someone would have conquered the dungeon already. Huh, I doubt diligence is enough to conquer the dungeon. It's good that Shin Nim realizes Shin Nim's specialness. She grinned and nodded. Then, she gestured at me to come forward. Then come receive my blessing before you go. Quickly. Just a blessing, right? It'll make it the highest grade blessing I can give. Just high rank blessing is fine. If anything, I could really learn from Loretta's tenacity. Of course, that didn't mean I would let things go her way. But the highest grade blessing is really good. I've never done it before too. It'll just go. Ehu, you don't have to be so strict Shin Nim, could it be? There's nothing wrong with me. Getting Loretta's blessing ended up being more work than necessary but, in the end, I stepped into the first dungeon's 86th floor with high rank queen elf's blessing. As always, a message tickled my ear. You entered the 86th floor. Yell commence exploration to start exploring. Now the environment just openly changes, huh? Behind me was the stairway down to the 85th floor, but when I looked back around the 86th floor, all I could see was a vast wilderness. What am I supposed to do here? Should I have brought Latte? No, Latte was influenced by licorice and went off to train somewhere on earth. Although I could call her whenever I wanted, if she decided on her path, I didn't want to bother her. Moreover, I knew that breaking through the dungeon alone with the help of my elementals would be more beneficial to my growth. Alright, let's go. Commence exploration. As soon as I shouted those two words, something flew straight towards me. I immediately used divine speed and got out of the way. Boom. With a crashing sound, a deep crater formed on the ground. Wow. To think I would immediately get attacked from a distance ah. Another one. Can't you at least say hello? Still, there was no one here. 
This time, however, the attack came from a different direction. Until the 80th floor, there were individual enemies. Crimson Hell was a colony, but now the enemies don't even have real bodies damn. I murmured to myself as I quickly used divine speed. Another formed on the ground as a cloud of dust rose up. I had to first find the enemy's position. I quickly summoned Pika and Dortu. Dortu, protect me. Pika, find out where the enemies are. I am Dortu. Protecting master. Huhu, leave it to me. I could tell that Dortu was protecting me as my armor changed. Of course, as I couldn't just leave Dortu and pure black desire to defend, spread my mana out to detect any movements and prepared myself to jump away at any time. This one must also be a world's enemy. I am Dortu. Dortu can feel a familiar energy. What? At the same time, Pika reported in. Master, there's no one in this place other than us. Is there really an enemy? What do you mean? Weren't we just attacked? No, we're still getting attacked. I dodged the third attack with ease and looked up at the sky. I couldn't even see a ceiling, only a red sky. Would I be able to touch the ceiling if I kept jumping up? I couldn't be sure even with my current abilities. In a situation where I couldn't see the enemy but had to keep defending against attacks, it was best to just run forward. Other explorers wouldn't choose such a stupid method as it might expose them to more enemies and lead to their deaths. It was unlikely that they could do much against an invisible enemy. However, I was different. With divine speed, I could easily dodge the enemy's attacks and even if I was hit, the attack didn't seem strong enough to kill me. Rather than standing still like a fool, running around would probably make the enemy move also. Once they moved, they would surely reveal an opening. I am Dortu. An energy is flying this way. It isn't a life energy. Then what is it? I am Dortu. That is a metal imbued with mana. A what? Just when I was about to ask Dortu, something flew my way once more. It was almost quick enough to escape my eyes, looking like a laser flying through the sky. That was a metal. I was doubtful, but I also trusted Dortu's judgment. Using divine speed, I dodged the flying object and continued to run with great speed. Pika, you really don't feel any life. I don't lie, master. Then come inside my gauntlet. Dortu, you strengthen my gauntlet too. On. I am Dortu. Executing master's command. I sped up a notch and kicked off the ground. A whirlpool rose up around my body, seemingly pushing me forward. As soon as another attack flew out, I quickly detected it and used divine speed. In the past, I couldn't use divine speed too freely as it took 10% of my mana, but now that I understood the principle behind it, the divine speed I used was different than the skill divine speed. Although the speed amplification wasn't as good, it was much more efficient, only taking a negligible amount of mana. Thanks to divine speed, it felt like the world had slowed down. I could see the flow of air and the movement of the enemy's attack frame by frame. I focused on the flying object and punched out with my gauntlet. Dorda's power made the gauntlet darker and spikier. On the other hand, Pika's power created fearsome white lightning that seemed capable of ripping apart even a dragon's scales. The enemy's attack flew in a predictable trajectory and clashed with the center of my gauntlet. I widened my eyes. Someone might mistakenly think that I'm using my evil eyes, but in reality, nothing happened. Evil eyes of petrification never worked against inanimate objects. At the same time, I couldn't help but think of a possibility. If I could properly wield Lilith's power if I could make the power of my horn completely mine, wouldn't I be able to petrify inanimate objects as I pleased? Evil eyes of petrification released charm through eyes and petrified its targets. Lilith could affect inanimate objects with her charm, and if she had evil eyes of petrification, she undoubtedly would have been capable of petrifying inanimate objects. Although Dordu could turn inanimate objects into metal, he needed a varying amount of time depending on the state of the object and its momentum. But if I could petrify inanimate objects, Dordu could take the petrified objects and quickly turn them into metal as they would carry my mana. If that became possible well. I put away the thought for now. 
I focused on the attack that seemed to want to break through my gauntlet and grabbed it. The reason I widened my eyes was to better see the flying attack. I tightened my grip and fought back against the attack. Pika's lightning crackled, wearing it down, and Dortu added more pressure in my grip. Soon, I could finally see what the object was. Sherafina, there's something I need to ask. Seeing the object in my hand, I spoke with a stiffened voice. However, before I could receive a reply, another attack flew in with an extreme speed. This is a bullet. Let me explain. As soon as I realized what it was, Sherafina spoke out. The world's enemy of the 86th floor conquered the world, El Pato, but was defeated by the hero of the world, Zeter, when they invaded them. Eliminator. This world's enemy has the ability to control and evolve all weapons with its mana. Although they aren't too skilled in handling cold weapons, they become extremely terrifying with firearms. I flew up into the air to dodge the incoming barrage of bullets and shouted. What, Zeter didn't have firearms? That is exactly so. Zeter's hero, you lucky bastard. Chapter, 311. These guys don't shoot nukes or anything, right? Of course not. Though, it would have been a disaster if they invaded Earth. Sherafina's calm tone made my head hurt. Using Teleria, I made an instant acceleration and shouted as I dodged more bullets. Dortu, they're all metallic, can't you do something? I am Dortu. They are too fast. If Dorta touches the main body, Dorta can do something. I can do something too if I can get to their main body. I am Dortu. Dorta seemed sad, so I asked to console him. How about defending? I am Dortu. I am confident in defending. Perfect, then I'll leave it to you. Pika, let's hurry. Yes. I felt Pika's energy filling me up. Using Lightning God's power, I amplified Pika's power as I increased my speed. If you want to stop me, you'll have to show yourself. Breakthrough, even quicker. With Peruta's circuit sucking in surrounding mana, I could maintain divine speed to a small extent. When my speed became incomparably quicker than before, the barrage of bullets couldn't even hit my shadows. Unfortunately, the 86th floor was unlike previous floors in that it was a vast wilderness. I didn't know where I needed to go to find the stairway to the next floor, where Loretta should be waiting to greet me with a smile. In beyond, the pathways were so narrow that I didn't really need to search for the correct path. Only from the 86th floor did this dungeon start to feel like an actual labyrinth. I am Dortu. Large metallic objects are appearing. It seemed the enemy realized bullets couldn't do anything against me, as immediately after Dortu warned me, giant metallic balls shot up from the ground. Coming out of the ground like that is the special right of robots in hero shows. Hap. The enemies all looked extremely boorish, almost as if an unskilled blacksmith melded metals to resemble humans. But they were undoubtedly moving, and their hands held threatening bazookas. Bazookas. I am Dortu. One of those will make it easier to shoot bullets carrying Dortus power. Oh. I am Dortu. It will also let Dortu interfere and dominate them. Can't you just shoot tiny metals like last time? Normal monsters don't drop weapons that often. I am Dortu. That uses too much mana. Dortu believes in Master. This guy's trying to get back at me, right? Because I hurt his feelings before, right? Kook, it's coming. Because I was charging through the air without much thought, Dozens of bullets were already stuck in my armor. Even with Dorda's power protecting me, the force of their impact was huge. They carried overwhelming mana which well surpassed what Earth's firearms were capable of. If Leon saw them, he might go mad from happiness. Though, he might not live for long. But that wasn't the point. What was important was how much bazooka shells would hurt if even these tiny bullets hurt so much. I am Dortu. They're coming. Divine speed. Now that things had come to this, I used the dungeon's divine speed even if it used more mana. With my already quick speed increased by more than five times, I shot up just before the bazooka shell could reach me. Immediately, I shot my spear out carrying a hefty amount of lightning. Die. 
Of course, the spear carried more than just lightning. It easily pierced through one metal robot, and as the spear flew back into my hand, the metal robot fell to the ground helplessly. I am Dortu. Commencing analysis. Dorda's trusty voice immediately rang out in one ear. The spear had obviously carried Dorda's power as well. Since I couldn't take their weapons and fight with them, I had thrown Dorda towards them. Although the pierced robot burned up from the lightning and stopped functioning completely, once Dorda's analysis ended, he would be able to make use of it. The only downside was that my armor's defense would decrease slightly while Dorda was focusing his energy on analyzing the enemy. Once the spear came back into my hands, I quickly threw it once more. The robot's formation broke down as another robot plummeted to the ground. Feeling their bodies changing slightly, I grinned. Thank goodness I have Dortu. Thanks to Dortu, I could approach this world's enemy in a completely different angle. Without Dortu, my only choice would have been fighting them head on. Considering how more bullets and cannon shells were coming my way as time went on, I was naturally worried about having to fight a fully armed army. Fighting an army with such firepower head on. That would be suicide unless my luck stat was over 10,000. I would rather fight against all of Earth's soldiers. These manor reinforced bullets just hurt too much. On the other hand, it seemed Pika was angry that I only praised Dortu. The spear in my hands crackled noisily with lightning as Pika complained. What about me, Master? Am I useless to Master? Pika's always amazing. I shouldn't even need to say it. Hoo hoo, that's right. Damn, if I didn't have to please my elementals from time to time, I could proudly say an elementalist was the best class. Though I guess it's fine since elementals are cute. I am Dortu. They're increasing in number. Increasing in number. What do you wow? I stopped in the middle of accelerating through the air. Although I was somewhat expecting it, I didn't expect to encounter such a situation so quickly. From the round, hundreds of robots were shooting up into the sky carrying what looked like machine guns, sniper rifles, bazookas, and all sorts of firearms. I had to ask Sherafina. Sherafina, am I also the first one fight these eliminators? That is so. Sherafina's answer couldn't be more clear-cut. Sherafina, just how far do you plan on pushing me? Are you just forcing all the troubling monsters onto me? Arg, whatever. Let's just fight. You used provoke. It was ineffective against the enemies. Even the provoke I resolutely used was nulled. Thinking about it now, these guys weren't really living beings. That also meant killing them wouldn't result in death energy. Not to mention, I had many skills that used blood, charm, and other concepts that worked against living beings. Against these guys, I couldn't use any of them. I felt my blood pressure rising. Dortu, are you done yet? I am Dortu. One day is not enough. What? I jumped in surprise at Dorda's words. However, I was only greeted with bullets from all sides. God, to think I'd actually have to fight under raining bullets. I grumbled and shot out my spear. Using divine speed and injecting mana into my arm, I cut, blew, and smashed away all bullets flying towards me. Although a powerful resistive force pushed back against me, I decided to charge forward. I just hoped I was going in the right direction. I was wrong. Because of the sheer vastness of this flow, I ended up wandering around for a whole day. Dortu. Just a bit more time. I was talking with Dortu over a long distance. He had remained where we took out the first robot and was focusing on his analysis. Because of the limitation on the number of elementals I could summon, I only had Pika to help me break through this battlefield of bullets. Strangely, these robots kept appearing without end. Just how did they lose if there are so many of them left? Aren't there stronger guys on the upper floors too? The hero attacked the main body alone. But the main body isn't here, right? Right. Ah, I'm doomed. No hopes and dreams. With nothing else to do, I simply wandered around the vast wilderness and continued to fight the robots. After some time passed, Dorta finally succeeded in controlling two robots. I am Dortu. Fire the signal for the counterattack. 
As Dorta was contracted to me, he instantly located me and started flying towards me with his two robots. The only problem was that Dorta needed almost a day to reach me as I had traveled a day's distance. As a result, I mostly waited in place during this time and focused on completely breaking all robots I came across. As these robots reformed from even a tiny fragment, I utilized elementals existing in this place and wiped the robots away completely. Elemental Tempest Elemental Blade Yuik. Who? They're not living nor dead. Let's break them all. But how are these guys moving? I don't know. You don't know. Yuik. Although I could only use two of my contracted elementals, there was no limit on using the free elementals. The elementals' incessant chattering kept me awake as I broke through this boring wilderness. That said, one of these elementals just might have to go. I am Dortu. I reached Master. Dorta finally joined up with me. The two robots I initially shot down were now dyed black, and they showed no signs of ever having been pierced through. For the record, these two were each armed with a bazooka and a minigun, and couldn't be more frightening if they tried. I am Dortu. Now, it's Dorta's time to shine. Yeah, yeah. He'll leave it to you. Dortu immediately followed up on his confident speech. The robots held up their blackened weapons and began shooting in all directions. I am Dortu. I can control more with Master's mana. That's the best news I've heard all day. I retracted Elemental Blade and poured my mana into Dortu. Immediately, the shooting speed of his robots went up. It felt like they were shooting laser beams rather than bullets. However, it was still only two robots against many. As I said before, the other side had thousands of robots scattered about the wilderness, and there was still one enemy that I couldn't detect shooting me from far away. Dortu, how long do I have to wait? Another day. I am Dortu. Dortu didn't say anything beyond that. I clenched my teeth and shot my spear at a bazooka-carrying robot. Then, I fell in thought. If I use Overlord and wipe these guys out, won't Dorta need less time to dominate them? No, will using Overlord guarantee that? At that moment, the enemy formation seemed to break, and a small explosion erupted from the middle. A few robots blew up followed by more robots. It's only now starting. Three blackened robots were flying towards us. I aimed my spear at them but realized what was happening before it was too late. Dortu had taken control of them. Dortu had initiated his counterattack against the weapon controlling eliminators. Chapter 312 While the robots Dortu took control over began to attack, I also made my move. It would just be sad if the robots we worked so hard to take over were simply shot down. Dortu's plan seemed to be infecting other robots by shooting them with bullets imbued with his power. Having even one less robot would mean the rate of infection of slow down. Thus, I was kept quite busy. Rather than attacking, I was focusing my attention on defending Dortus robots. I am Dortu. Master's movements are precise and careful. As expected of Dortus Master. I'm just running around aimlessly. As these robots weren't living beings, I couldn't treat them like normal monsters. Still, it was true that they had mana in their bodies. Whether it be bullets or cannon shells, whatever they shot also had mana imbued in them. Although it was hard to respond to it at first because it was unfamiliar, after fighting them for well over a day, I could predict the Manus movements to a certain extent and act correspondingly. First, I raised Absolute Soul and my mana detection ability to the peak, and as per Yuta Circuit raised my physical abilities to the peak, I prepared myself to use Divine Speed in an instant. Once I reinforced my spear to become capable of cutting apart any bullet, my preparation was finished. Next up was pinpointing any bullets close to hitting Dortus robots and cutting them down. Easy pickings. I am Dortu. Master is strong. Master evolved. Master was always strong, idiot. With me hard at work, Dortus robots were rarely shot down. Meanwhile, they shot their own bullets endlessly. It seemed Dortu was making their bullets with his power, as they seemed to have an endless supply. Of course, underneath all this was my mana sacrifice. Several thousands of mana points were being taken every second. 
including the amount I spent for myself, the terrifying amount of mana would have made the old me froth at his mouth. Luckily, I wasn't the old me. With Peruta Circuit and Absolute Souls Harmony, I absorbed the same amount of mana from the surroundings as Dorothy used. As these two skills didn't care about living beings or inanimate objects and worked against any target with mana, I could keep up with Dorta's massive mana usage without a problem. In other words, I was taking the enemy's mana and using it against them. In any case, the endless barrage of bullets by Dorta's five robots helped create a path for us charge through. Just this significantly helped my current situation but, as Dorta said in the beginning, his real purpose for controlling the robots wasn't to just increase our own firepower. It was to use the enemy's forces against them. It didn't take long for the change to happen. Just like the first three robots we took control of, more robots began to blacken. These robots then joined our side and began to shoot their former allies. As they didn't or couldn't express any emotion, they couldn't be more reliable. I am Dortu. I'm speeding up. You're doing great, Dortu. I also got busier. I didn't want to let a single robot get shot down. I had already spent one day and a bit over five hours on the 86th floor, but I have yet to even see a glimpse of the 86th floor shop. As I rarely spent so much time clearing a floor in the first dungeon, I couldn't help but feel stifled. Any other explorer would have berated me for such a comment, but I was serious. The dungeon was indeed different from the 81st floor, and I had a feeling things would be even more different from the 91st floor. Sherafina had to have more prepared. The dungeon likely had many terrifying monstrosities like Crimson Hell that even Sherafina couldn't fully control. The dungeon wasn't a place to just give out rewards to explorers. It was a place to test them. Since the founding of the first dungeon, no one had ever gone beyond its 92nd floor. Knowing this, spending several days on the 86th floor felt like a waste of time. I can't see master. I'm getting dizzy, master. I'm getting dizzy. Little by little, I became more experienced in using divine speed. Not the skill version of divine speed, but the divine speed that was the result of knowing its principle and flow of mana, a result achieved through using the skill thousands of times. Once my body grew familiar with divine speed's flow of mana, Peruta Circuit, and Absolute Soul incorporated it as a natural flow. Along with Teleria, I freely soared across the sky. Teleria was the perfect tool to support divine speed. When I mastered Peruta Circuit, the way I controlled mana changed and I became capable of flying even without Sharana. But of course, I couldn't fly as freely without Sharana, and Teleria was a godsend aid in this situation. Now that I had gotten used to using Hermes' power, I could maintain Teleria for an hour. I could now understand where I needed to block the bullets the moment they left their barrels, and Teleria transported me to wherever I wanted. With divine speed and Teleria, I was just too fast. At that moment, a completely unexpected feeling of freedom rose up within me. I felt like the wind that could fly to anywhere I wanted. I immediately understood what this feeling was, but as I was in the dungeon, Sherafina kindly explained it to me. You perfectly took in Hermes' power. As a result, Hermes' authority strengthens. Your speed increases by an additional 10%. Teleria's duration increases to 2 hours per day. You obtained a new authority, Pedasus. Pedasus refers to the travel hat worn by the messenger god Hermes. A symbol of Hermes on the same level of fame as Teleria, Pedasus cannot display its full strength alone. It can only be summoned for 10 minutes a day while Teleria is active. While Pedasus is active, your speed will triple. This speed applies to both movement speed and attack speed, as well as the processing speed of your brain. As it places a heavy burden on your body and brain, your body and soul must be sturdy and of a high league to use it. What? Triple the speed and it doesn't even turn me red. 1. This is some Gundam reference author going full Gundam recently, huh? Now that I thought about it, Hermes' winged hat was just as famous as his winged sandals. Korea's famous search engine too. Naver. Also referenced Hermes' hat for its logo. In any case, I blamed myself for only having unlocked Hermes' final power now. There were many situations in the past where I needed to move quicker. 
The fact that I only obtained pedicis now could only mean that I always had a sense of leisure somewhere in my heart. I only obtained all of Hermes' power on the 86th floor. How can I not be disappointed with myself? Even as I said that I was cutting apart hundreds of bullets while flying around the sky with divine speed. The number of robots was increasing. Suddenly, a thought flashed through my mind. Wasn't this the first time I used divine speed to this extent? Not the skill version of divine speed, but the divine speed I learned with my body. Not to mention, Sharon's not here too. Perhaps, not relying on Sharana's power and using my own ability with Teleria was what unlocked Hermes' final power. Of course, the truth was in the dark. What was important now was that I was like the Red Comet 3. Looks like it was a Gundam Unicorn reference. I didn't watch the show so I wouldn't know air, that I could move extremely fast. Since I didn't know how long I would stay on the 86th floor, there was no reason for me to hold back this newly acquired power. After all, I could use this power once per day. Pedasus. Along with my courageous roar, a white light enveloped my helmet. In a moment, a small pair of feathered wings grew behind the helmet. At the same time, I felt like I was struck in the head with a hammer. Ah, uh, right. The speed of my conscious triples too. My head became filled with all sorts of thoughts whenever I entered a battle, but now, it was even harder to cope with everything in my head and I felt a splitting headache. All sorts of thoughts rose up in my mind and were amplified endlessly. If used wrongly, this power could cripple a person. However, I was someone who had climbed 86 floors of the first dungeon. I couldn't bow down and kneel because of my own power. Not to mention, I was in a battlefield raining bullets. I quickly expanded Peruta circuit and created a giant whirlpool to shield my body. At the same time, I tried my best to push away all the useless thoughts that popped up in my head. Then, I began to fill my head with what I needed to do. My intelligence stat, boosted by many titles, was finally making full use of its strength. I didn't think intelligence would help me clear my mind this much. If nothing else worked, I would have even tried punching myself. I am Dortu. Master, are you okay? Master, you got hit several times. Are you really okay? I replied calmly. I'm fine. Getting hit by a few bullets wasn't enough to kill me. Although I would be injured, no attacks could break through Peruta Circuit's whirlpool and maintain enough force to deal a fatal blow. I set priorities on things I needed to do and focused on one thought at a time. With my quick and conscious, I could make decisions more quickly, and as my movement speed was also increased, I didn't suffer from any lag in carrying out my thoughts. The result was excellent. I blocked all the attacks I wanted to block and destroyed attacking robots at a speed even I found shocking. However, the most important thing was finding the stairway to the next floor. I recalled the layout of the floor I mapped out over the last day and calculated the path we needed to take. Pedasus could only be maintained for 10 minutes. I had to come up with a conclusion and set up my course of action during this time. Dortu, how long do you need to dominate all of them? I am Dortu. After destroying about 40% of their current forces, I will need 28 minutes. Good, then well go with that. During this 10 minutes, we'll go wild and pave our way forward. I also wanted to find out how they were shooting up from the ground. Although it wouldn't help us deal with them, it would undoubtedly help me when I fight the Eliminator's main body on the 90th floor. Door 2, I'm going to lessen that time by a third, got it? I am Door 2. What should I do? Do what you did before where you detonated a few of them. They'll transfer the detailed plan to your head, so you can just carry it out. Got it? Elemental Tempest. First, I sent a special massive scale Elemental Tempest that took 370,000 mana points at the army of robots. Immediately afterward, Dorta received my command and mana, and he instantly strengthened three of his robots. While I guarded them against the enemy's attacks, Dortus threw them into the enemy's forces. Then, he detonated them. Although this resulted in our forces being temporarily weakened, the mana massively released from the explosion wore down countless robots. When Dordis other robots shot follow-up bullets, many more robots turned to our side. I am Dortu. Propagation speed increased. We're going to keep doing the same thing, 
Dortu. Don't worry about my mana. I am Dortu. Dortu really likes Master. Detonating a few robots and pulling in even more robots to our side. This method wasn't particularly difficult to pull off. But the reason we could only do it now was because of my mana. As this method constantly used a huge amount of mana, Dortus robots would eventually run out of bullets. Now that I had Pedasus, things were different. I was taking in more mana than Dortu could spend. When my quickened consciousness and quickened Peruta circuit harmonized with Absolute Soul, an enormous amount of mana that felt almost like all existing mana in this place came under my control. Could this be Pedasus' real ability? In truth, I was a bit let down that Hermes' final authority only tripled my speed, but I was gravely mistaken. Pedasus was Hermes' most violent ability. It was an absolute power that let me imitate a god. Of course, the downside was that it had a time limit like Overlord. All of you, die. No, become mine. I shouted excitedly. The feathered wings adorning my helmet spread out beautifully, and the sound of detonating robots resonated throughout the battlefield. To me, it sounded no different than a touching ballad. Just 28 hours afterward, I successfully broke through the 86th floor. However, there was something I realized only afterward. The army of robots Dortu and I spent so much effort to amass couldn't be brought along to the 87th floor. Since we couldn't even bring them with us to beyond, we had to destroy them all before we left the 86th floor. I am Dortu. Must we start from the beginning on the 87th floor? Yeah, Dortu. I replied dejectedly. People call this a waste of time. I am door to door to hates wasting time. The master and servant reached a strong agreement. Chapter, 313 After breaking through the first dungeon's 86th floor, I entered beyond straight away with little rest. As the succubi told me to wait a week, I planned to clear as many floors as I could before that. Beyond's 36th floor had mobs of vampire lords. They were undoubtedly copies of an original vampire lord created by Sherafina. Still, that didn't mean they were any weaker than the vampire lord on the 75th floor. In fact, they were much stronger and annoyed me to no end. They maneuvered around freely, making it seem as though they were everywhere at the same time, and with their boundless mana, they constantly aimed for my neck with their blood magic attacks. Unfortunately for them, I had gone through too much hardships for them to phase me. The enemies I had faced just before them was a world's enemy's army. Though it took some time, for days to be exact, I cleared the 36th floor with little problem. Loretta seemed to be waiting for me to come out, as she welcomed me on the 86th floor and gave me a fatigue recovery juice. While I drank it and relieved myself of exhaustion from the past four days, Loretta asked me a question. Shin Nim, so how did you get through 31st to 35th floors so quickly? The succubi and incubi knew they weren't a match and made way for me. They just told me to go fight Lilith. Really? Really? Loretta flapped her ears and laughed. How smart of them. Thanks to that, they'll get to live peacefully for a long time. Lilith died and Sherafina said she wouldn't be revived, so who's going to fill her place? Sherafina will probably make a fake by picking one of the succubi. That's Unfa. Loretta put her hands over my mouth. Then, with a cute smile, she spoke. It's difficult to restore an original from nothing, but it's easy to make a fake by giving power to what already exists. With Lord's power, it will be easy to make an acceptable floor master. In truth, Lilith was just too strong. Though, I've only seen her once. Loretta made a slightly worried expression. Ah, thinking about it now, Loretta had the evil eyes of charm. I quickly glanced at her shining eyes. As my charm rose, I felt like Loretta was lessening the restraint on her evil eyes. No, it wasn't just a feeling. Her eyes openly shone just now. Even so, I wasn't affected whatsoever. The reason was simple. It was because of my incredibly high charm and the fact that I had become part Merug, just thinking about it made me mad. In any case, considering that Lilith might have had her horn when Loretta met her. You lost. Do you want to be hit? It seemed I was right. Loretta trembled and clenched her fists as though her pride has been shattered. Thinking she was cute, 
I put my hands around her. Don't worry. Loretta is the most charming person to me. I know you say that to everyone. Loretta snorted, but she couldn't hide her reddened cheeks and flapping ears. When it was her puppet at the floor shop, I remembered her being good at hiding her emotions it seemed that her real body wasn't too skilled at it. I could have simply laughed in this situation, but where the conversation was headed made me a bit nervous. Although Loretta hadn't mentioned it until now, it was a mind that could detonate at any time. My brain was at work harder than in any battle. But I still couldn't figure out what to say. How can I be two-timing anyone if I'm not even dating anyone? Not knowing what to say, I kissed Loretta's on her cheek and whispered. No, I've only said this to Loretta. Really? Really? You can ask Waya and the others. But you like this Waya more than me, right? Of course not. I didn't answer instantly. I had unknowingly ranked them in my head. Ah. Loretta's gaze is heavy. Is this the price I have to pay for walking this road? Loretta glared at me with puffed up cheeks, then sighed. I quickly added. I like Loretta the most, really. Look at me. I can only see Loretta. You you, I hate myself for falling for these sugar-coated words. Really, Loretta was too EAS kind. Seeing the tension leave Loretta's body, I lightly embraced her and stroked her hair. Thank you for understanding. I really do like you, Loretta. I know, it's my fault for falling in love. And considering what Shin Nim needs to do in the future, making them not have any other thoughts is certainly good, but still. Not just in a practical sense, but how I felt about Waya or Lydia also no, I buried these emotions deep inside my heart. I recalled the advice Lin gave me. If you want to take in many women, be confident and commanding. Still, make the woman you're facing believe that she's the best. To do this, I shouldn't think of other girls at this moment. Lin, you playboy, thank you for the advice. Shin Nim, in the best, right? Loretta looked up at me with worried eyes. Kook, did I let my thoughts show? I cleared my thoughts with Lin's advice in mind and brought up the truth within me. Don't lie. Fight head on with nothing but the truth. That was the first confession of love I made ever, can't you believe me? Words aren't enough. Loretta pushed her lips out. Her eyes were closed, but her ears were flapping as if to make a storm. Proof. I need proof. You were aiming for this from the start. Proof. Hurry. Loretta said the same thing repeatedly with her lips out. She was too cute and Lynn's manual for responding to such situation disappeared into the back of my mind. In front of this adorable bird asking to be fed, I wholeheartedly did my duty. However, it was hard to make a baby bird full. I need more. Sherafina should be watching. Who cares if that oldie's watching? Let her watch if she wants. So quickly, quickly. In the end, I kept feeding the baby bird until she was satisfied. The succubi were waiting for me on earth this entire time, but I ended up being an hour late. Sweet scent. I wasn't sure how she knew I would come here today, but Daisy greeted me at the guild house in her full beret, uniform, and enamel boots and commented out of the blue. I asked back. Sweet scent. Elf queen scent. I almost touched my lips subconsciously, but I managed to catch myself before the act. I decided to be shameless. I stopped by the floor shop, so Loretta's scent might be on me. Scent, every time you talk you ate the elf queen. She came up with a truly original conclusion and, in a way, she wasn't completely wrong. Daisy's senses were too sharp. I smiled and shook my head, but Daisy tilted her head and asked a follow-up question. You want to eat me, too? No, I'm good. Then I will, eat Kong Shin's lips. As soon as I heard her words, I activated divine speed and jumped back. Daisy swung her whip wanting to capture me, but missed. She narrowed her eyes and spoke. Fair play violation. You knew everything. Why did you act innocent? Plus, you took out your whip first. I knew you'd run. Daisy prepared a second attack. Her whip control had long since reached a pinnacle. 
If I wasn't careful, I could really be done in. Thrown off guard, I shouted. Whatever happened to easygoing? Sometimes, youth explodes. Elf queen scent, unpleasant. I will override it with my scent. You're not even that young. Daisus whip flew in. That wasn't for capturing, but for shattering someone's bones. When I dodged it in shock, Daisy spoke with a stiff voice. In elf age, I'm a girl in the flower of youth. What Kong Shin said, very rude. I'm sorry. I quickly gave up and apologized. Daisy put her whip down as though she was content and began to approach me. Oh, Appa, you're here. At this desperately dangerous moment, Yua's voice rang out. Her baby dragon, Luna, was in her arms. Yua, you're here too. Yes. Everyone else is busy. While Yua didn't say much, seeing how Daisy and Yua were both here, I knew that what I planned to do on my own had gotten a bit out of hand. Daisy controlled the undead and Yua controlled an army of mantises. They were both perfect for dealing with a large number of monsters, even the ones that already became petrified. Appa can just go alone, you know. He he he, climbing the dungeon is important, but didn't Appa say this? That there's something you can't learn in the dungeon. Not to mention, it seems these kids get stronger faster by defeating monsters in the outside world than in the dungeon. I could immediately guess a reason. Monsters in the dungeon were all fakes under Sheriffina's power. On the other hand, monsters roaming around on Earth were real monsters that had crossed over a dimension. Monsters ate the flesh and drank the blood of the enemies they killed and grew stronger by absorbing their mana. It made sense that monsters on Earth were better at helping you as mantises grow. Even the monsters that already became petrified. What about you, Daisy? Aren't you busy climbing the dungeon? Daisy flinched and looked away. I could guess as to what happened. I asked after waiting a bit. Vital zero? Daisy covered her face with her beret. It seemed I was right on the mark. But I knew it was unreasonable to ask someone to climb the dungeon without ever dying. This was especially so if that person was someone like Daisy, who was climbing the top floors. 2. Daisy spoke quieter than a walking ant. I got too excited. Excited? About what? Mating with Kong Shin. Appa. I didn't do nothing. Daisy realized her mistake and corrected herself. I meant, dating Kong Shin. You got that wrong on purpose, right? And when did we start dating? Ow wow wow. After paying the appropriate price, Daisy held onto her aching forehead and explained what happened. Got too excited, couldn't focus on battle and made a mistake on the 88th floor. Daisy, you. Because of how Daisy always showed her emotions in a joking manner, I thought Daisy was odd, but it seemed that wasn't it. Daisy seemed to be embarrassed by what she said, as she covered her face with her beret again. I decided to not poke her dignity any further. Moreover, this topic was making me embarrassed too. I changed the topic slightly. At least you didn't die in beyond. Dying in the first dungeon only came with a week-long rest period. In comparison, beyond had a month-long period. I sighed in relief. There's nothing you can do about it now. But you should take this opportunity and take care of things you couldn't do because of the dungeon. You don't really have to come with us. What I neglected because of the dungeon, I'm doing now. What Daisy said touched me. I knew that Daisy cared about Earth's safety more so than other members of Revival, but I didn't think she would be this caring for Earth. Just when I was about to put this thought into words, Daisy continued. Spending time to mate date Kong Shin. Daisy lowered her beret slightly. Daisy's crimson eyes looked pure and innocent, but they also contained an unconcealable heat. At this instant, I realized two things. First was that easygoing was a dead word. Second Loretta, it looks like you aren't the only elf devoted to your desires. Chapter, 314 The balance of the party was perfect. I handled the firepower, while Daisy attacked me and Yua defended me. I know, this party is fundamentally wrong. Dear husband, there won't be any strong monsters. Of the remaining regions, we picked the most dangerous places, 
but their bosses are SS rank at most. Mm. I followed the red line on the 3D hologram map. SS rank. That used to scare me in the past. Dear husband had such a time. Do you think I was born with a god's true name? I flicked one of the succubi's forehead and memorized the route on the map. As monsters were practically extinct in Asia and Oceania, we planned on cleaning up North America this time. I've always wanted to go to Greenland with Appa. Greenland sounds great. It should have the highest quantity of monsters. Of course, as I had already seen endless snowy land when I was in Antarctica, Greenland sceneries didn't give me much joy. In any case, Greenland's population was only around 60,000. There was nothing they could do against the initial monster invasion and, as a result, Greenland became an island of monsters with no humans to be seen. Yes. Oh, monsters. Yua made a wry expression. She might have been excited because this was the first time she participated in a hunt. But Yua, this won't be anything like what you're thinking. Daisy also seemed to have no interest in corpses she could acquire from this trip. SS rank, nothing special. But killing monsters is, important. So they don't cause a problem later on. The words of someone with experience was always important. Monsters had a higher chance of crossing over the dimension when there were monsters already on the other side. This property was what made this dimensional pathway so troubling. I pointed at the regions I and other revival members had cleaned up and asked the succubi. Once we're done with North America, will we be half done? Yes, about so. When event dungeons appeared in mass last time, most of the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean were cleaned up. But. I knew what she wanted to say, that the monster outbreak wasn't over. If even a single event dungeon was left untouched, it would explode and cover the land with monsters. If all monsters of the other world planned on crossing over to this side, we couldn't relax. I had a feeling the next outbreak would occur soon, and after that event would surely be the descent of the demon lord. With a bitter smile, I touched my forehead. I really wish I had three bodies. In the past, I just had to take care of myself and my family. But now, I knew too well that the danger Earth was facing was a danger I had to solve, especially because I knew the truth. You're already doing great, dear husband. No one else can do what you're doing. Cheer up. Thanks. All of the succubi here had lost their home, but rather than resenting others, they placed their hopes on me and followed me. It would be wrong of me to show my weakness in front of them. I grabbed the hand of the succubus who encouraged me. Tell Licorice and the other succubi that I said thanks. Ah, uh, me too. Me too, me too. Ah, he's already leaving. I waved my hand and bid farewell with Yua and Daisy. As the door closed, I could see the succubus I held hands with about to get lynched by the others. I then recalled something. Can't those girls just share their sense of touch? Appa, are we going right away? Yeah. I saw mother before, so we can go. For the record, mother finally broke through the twentieth floor thanks to receiving help from others. Though she could kill a single orc by herself, I made her stop climbing the dungeon for now and made her enter the guild. Just like father, mother also treated the guild house as hers, but that didn't change the fact that I was the guild master. I assigned her to the same room as father. It shouldn't take long. Appa. After we're done, can we spend a few hours sightseeing? Sure, as long as it's only for a few hours. Yua clenched her fists in happiness. Seeing Yua jump around in joy, Daisy tilted her head and asked. What's, sightseeing? It's when you travel to a foreign place and see its famous monuments or sites. Aha. Daisy nodded her head. So it's looking at another country's culture, comparing them to our own and mocking them? You should do something about your twisted way of thinking. Though the last part of what she said was completely wrong, I could somewhat relate to the beginning part. If I went to a foreign country and saw the same things as if I was home, the trip would feel like a waste. What made traveling fun was seeing and experiencing new things. Once we reclaim Silent Continent, Kong Shin should come sightsee. You'll see it while I'm reclaiming it anyways. Un. Let's see it, together. Sure. 
child in my tummy will see too. No, that won't be happening. Daisy Uni. Yua, who was burning with her passion for sightseeing, glared at Daisy when she heard what she said, but Daisy easily pushed Yua's gaze back. As I thought, Yua can't win against Daisy. Our travel route was extremely simple. Starting from Alaska, we would receive Guardian and Freedom Wings guide and clean up any monster we see up to our final destination which was Greenland. But before we left our guild house in Jongyo, a long-haired girl wearing a black leather suit hurriedly entered the guild house. Eh. Yiyun. Huff, huff, I'm not late. Thank God. I saw the helicopter outside, so I didn't think you had left yet. Yiyun caught her breath and approached us. Let me join in. I want to be of help too. We already have three people going. What about the dungeon? I broke through the 70th floor. This monster. I can take some time off now, right? You're all too amazing. We were making a trip to clean up a continent, but Yua was treating it as sightseeing, Daisy was treating it as relationship business, and Yiyun was treating it as something to do while resting. If Yiyun had broken through the 70th floor, she was on a much quicker pace than many of the others, especially considering when she first entered the dungeon. Plus, with me next to her, there shouldn't be any trouble. Sure, Yiyun. I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. We can do that once we're done. An. Yiyun spoke with a bright smile. Daisy clicked her tongue. More hindrances. Who are you calling a hindrance? You're the hindrance. Your teachers are friends, so you guys try to get along too. Hecate told me, watch out for Duca. Her greatest enemy. Steals all good men, and their purities. Duca. Well, I guess Hecate would know more about her than me. I can't argue with that, but. You you, my cozy trip with Appa is being ruined. No, four people are better than the usual anyway. Yua murmured to herself with a frown. Afterward, we got on the helicopter, which would fly us straight to the airport. Ah, uh, by the way, Shin. Sierra told me to tell you something. She wanted to tell you by telepathy, but she couldn't because of your magic resistance. Sierra did. I left Sierra to Waya after the last time I talked to her, so when did Yiyun get that close with Sierra? Seeing me tilt my head, Yiyun spoke with a smile. Last month, we formed a second alliance as a sign of letting bygones be bygones. What's that? That's a secret. Ehe. That alliance, can you let me in? No, not Daisy. So what did Sierra want to tell me? Just that she couldn't send me telepathies. Oh, right. Yiyun spoke while she continued to be on guard against Daisy. She said there might be an enemy stronger than the last time. She said she's not sure, but told us to be prepared for anything that might happen. I see. She apparently foresaw it this afternoon. When I told her I was going to follow you, she told me to pass on the message. Suddenly, Yiyun clapped her hands and added. Oh right, she said ITLL be the demons. But what does this all mean? You don't have to know for now. It'll tell you later. My head suddenly began to throb. It felt like this happened every time I went out. Was I just picking places that are likely to cause trouble? After thinking for a little while, I asked. There are no survivors in Alaska, right? Yes, Appa. Alaska has been completely taken over by monsters. Yua immediately answered. I checked the map again. It shouldn't be the middle of America, right? Places with nothing but monsters. The most probable place had to be Alaska or Greenland. Should I go alone? Together. Let me go, too. I told you, I won't get in the way. To be honest, I wasn't worried about Daisy or Yiyun. I didn't need to say much about Daisy, and Yiyun could always summon Duka and run. The person I was worried about seemed to know it too. Is it dangerous to the point it'll cause trouble for Appa? Right, the problem was Yua. Her mantis army was powerful. With them around, she could take care of most monsters. But her army was useless in front of a single enemy with absolute power. Don't worry, Appa. I have Luna. Luna? 
I looked at the yawning baby dragon in Yua's arms. Realizing that I was looking at her, Luna looked back at me with clear eyes. Cute. Luna is really strong. She has abilities even I don't know about. Really? I tilted my head and checked Luna's mana. Indeed, she had an unbelievable amount of mana within her. How so much mana could fit in her tiny body was a true mystery. The reason I'm going with Appa is more for Luna than the mantises. Luna eats a lot. I reached my hand towards Luna's head. The singular horn on Luna's head was small, yet tough and sharp. When I touched it, Luna flinched, but she stayed still realizing that I meant no harm. After petting her for a while, I took my hand off. Luna cried quietly and rubbed her face against my hand. Yua smiled sweetly and whispered to Luna. That's right, Luna, it's daddy. Ha, huh, Yua is good at making jokes. With those words, I stroked Luna again. Good, I made my decision. Two hours later, the four of us arrived in Alaska. Chapter, 315 We got off at the Alaska Peninsula located south of Alaska's mainland. Our plan was to travel up. Aren't fresh Alaskan salmon delicious, Appa? It's spring right now. Salmons come back during autumn when it's their breeding season, so it should be hard to find them now. What about bears? Alaska's well known for their grizzly bears, also known as Kodiak grizzlies. Bear paws. Oh, I've had bear paws before. The things I had to do to have a taste of it. Wow, really? I want to try it too. Yua's eyes shone brightly. It seemed Yua was interested in Alaskan delicacies. When I was 13, I had come to Alaska with father for training, and I had to hunt a Alaskan grizzly bear with a wooden spear. Alaska grizzly bears were notorious for being as frightening as polar bears. Just thinking about the past made my gnash my teeth. I wanted to throw father in front of a grizzly bear as revenge, but since he could easily stab a grizzly bear to death, I couldn't even call it revenge. Thankfully, I had somehow managed to survive and even ate the paw of the bear I caught. Sadly, it wasn't even that tasty, especially considering I had almost lost my life. In any case, I had come to Alaska before and I could tell how much Alaska had changed. I decided to be honest with Yua. I doubt any grizzly bears are alive in Alaska. Ah. Because of its beautiful natural scenery, many tourists used to visit Alaska. But now, Alaska's precipitous mountains, icy rivers, and wild animals were all gone as if the entire land had been recreated. Wow, look at that mountain, Shin. It looks higher than Everest. I can hear, a howl. Emperor of the Mountain. It looks like a monster replaced Alaskan grizzly bears as Alaska's strongest. Hying, my bear paw. Despite what everyone else thought, we weren't here to sightsee. I had Daisy summon her supermassive tuna undead, Icon, and we began our travel. Of course, since we couldn't ignore the monsters in our way, I decided to borrow Dorta's power. I am Dortu. I will work hard and waste time with Master today. No, Dortu, we're not wasting time today. Also, don't say that when I summon you. I am Dortu. I transferred my thought to Dortu, and he immediately began to make metallic fragments around us. It looked as though we were in the middle of the Milky Way. Wow, how beautiful, Appa. It won't just be beautiful. Also, from now on, don't look at Appa's face. Daisy and Yiyun, the same goes for you guys too. My evil eyes of petrification didn't indiscriminately petrify everything around it. What I was worried about was the effect of my charm. I could easily exclude them from my charm's effect, but I couldn't say for certain that they would be excluded completely. Once Dorda's metallic fragments spread far, I began to slowly release the charm I had trapped inside me. After obtaining Lilith's power, I could recognize the charm within my body as something like a fragrance. Not only did was it easier to control my charm, but releasing it from a single part of my body also became possible. Currently, I was pouring my charm out through my eyes. The surroundings turned bright. The light let out by the evil eyes reflected off the millions of mirror fragments. Of course, it didn't just end there. 
As Iken was purposely crying out, all land-based, river-based, and sky-based monsters were paying attention to us. They were then exposed to the light of my evil eyes, and the result was to be expected. Wow! Yua, let your kids out on the ground. I'm going to unpetrify them once they shatter and die. Yes, Appa. Following what I said, Yua released Luna and her mantises. Meanwhile, Daisy's expression changed when she saw every living being turning into stone. Evil eyes power, amplifying. It's because Dortu is an elemental connected to me. It uses a lot of mana though. It was also possible thanks to my mana nearing 1 million points. Not to mention, I was constantly absorbing atmospheric mana with Absolute Soul and Peruta Circuit. My entire existence was like a giant magnet attracting nearby mana. You shouldn't try it, Daisy. Your evil eyes and mine have completely different effects. I want. Reading the thoughts of thousands at once, just thinking about it gives me a headache. With that, Daisy stared at Yua's tamed monsters breaking the petrified monsters and eating them, then raised her head and spoke. Kong Shin, petrifiable monsters, how strong. Up to SS rank, probably. Everything that's alive. Yeah, it doesn't work on inanimate objects for now. I replied as I rubbed the reddish-black horn on my forehead. As I was using my charm, the horn was giving off slight heat. I could feel that my evil eyes could still evolve. If Kong Shin gets stronger, everything weaker than Kong Shin, can be petrified instantly. I doubt a day like that will come. If that happens, how is Kong Shin, different from a god? Hmm. I looked back at Daisy. She blushed. Are you, seducing me? No, sorry. But Shin's name is already Shin. 1. While I quickly turned away, Yiyun erased the strange air between us with her stupid comment. I laughed, but Daisy looked back down on the ground filling up with stones and spoke. Incomprehensible sight. Even him, getting scared. I shrugged. Even if I became much stronger, I didn't think I would ever be strong enough to petrify someone like Daisy. Of course, there was no reason for me to petrify my precious friend either. In my opinion, there was no need for Daisy to be scared of me. But it seemed Daisy thought otherwise. Kong Shin's evil eyes, I looked down on them at first. But if what I said happens. Yeah. Kong Shin will, receive the awe of all people. Might become a real god. That sounds so ridiculous, I don't know even where to begin. Kong Shin, even if you become a god. Like I said, that won't happen. Daisy held my shoulders and spoke. Don't abandon me. I want, jeez. You'll get cursed with sore feet, after walking less than ten li. Two. How would a god get sore feet? It's nice to know you're adapting well to living in Korea though. Shin, you won't abandon me either right? Of course not. I was worried Yua would join in on this talk but she was thankfully uninterested. She was simply cheering on her pets. Luna, don't eat that. It's dirty. Guys, there are lots to eat on the left. Wow, look at those mantises eat. It's a bit gory objectively speaking, but then again, we've been killing monsters for a long time. Killing tens of thousands of monsters, just with a blink of an eye. Kong Shin has no persuasiveness. Yua's mantises shattered the stones and happily ate the corpses of the monsters. The ground became dyed in fresh blood, bone fragments, and flesh. As the mantises only needed to eat what I petrified, they quickly gobbled them up and chased after us. Daisy also released her undead army on the ground and cleaned up any monsters that the mantises missed. Monster, Massacre. I want to hunt them too I'm getting all itchy. Don't take out your dagger here, Yiyun. It's scary. The galaxy made out of Dorda's metallic mirrors stretched out from the sky to the ground and petrified everything in its range. Although we had to slow down from time to time to let the mantises catch up, by the time we went through 90% of the Alaska Peninsula, it was only lunch time. Since we left Korea in the morning, only about an hour of time had passed. Emperor of the Mountain, looking forward to it. Daisy spoke with sparkling eyes while we were eating the meat of a wolf Luna brought back. 
I then realized that we were flying over the mountain we saw when we first arrived in Alaska. This mountain was where we heard the thunderous howl. The Alaska Peninsula was originally famous for its Aleutian mountain range. Now, that mountain range was gone and replaced by a massive mountain. This probably couldn't be called Aleutian any longer. Let's go inland following the mountain. I spoke apathetically while biting down on a wolf's leg. I wanted to reclaim Greenland under two days, but we weren't even halfway done with Alaska. Since I couldn't feel the energy Sierra talked about here, I just wanted to get this place over with as quickly as possible. Suddenly, in the middle of bulldozing through any monsters we came across, we heard its howl once again. Guang! I raised my head. After confirming that source of the cry, I looked back to the others and asked quietly. Did the succubi report on the monsters here? Mm they said they didn't go deep in and that this place had the highest concentration of energy in all of Alaska. But they said it was all the same for Appa. Yua tilted her head as she retorted. I see. I nodded my head. I remembered hearing about it. Indeed, I could feel an energy different than normal mana from this mountain, but it was still only like a carbonated drink to someone like me. We might have to fight the biggest monster we've fought so far. Yes. Yua asked curiously. Without speaking, I pointed at the peak of the mountain in front of us. Everyone could immediately see a red lump hanging onto the peak as though it was a koala hanging on a tree. Appa, is that alive? Yep. I nodded. Almost like it heard me, the monster howled once again. Guang. Making a soda can for that guy is going to be a bit hard. Was this to make up for the grizzly bear we couldn't see? Just look at the size of that thing. Bear paw, can you make it for us? Yeah, but you have to eat it all. You'll be eating it for ten years straight. I held up my spear as I joked. My evil eyes had already covered this entire region. Since it wasn't petrified, I had to fight it myself. It's coming. Wow, a mountain peak just crumbled. Grind your dagger well, though it might not go through that thing. With that, I jumped off. SS rank my ass, that thing might as well be the successor of the Beast King. Chapter, 316 Kuong The grizzly bear let out a fearsome roar and reached out with its foreleg, smashing a chunk of the mountainside and sending boulders flying down. Daisy quickly put Iken away and summoned Loki from her inventory. Monsters you haven't killed yet, leave them to the mantises. Yes, my kids can eat them all. Yua left her mantises to do their thing and only called Luna back. However, I was already charging towards the enemy. Fight me, big guy. Guang. As I got closer to the bear, I could see better just how absurdly big it was. Strangely, although enough time had passed since I recognized the bear, Sherafina didn't say anything. Immediately, I could understand why. The dungeon's power was weakened in this place. This mountain range was where it began. It seemed Sierra was right about this place having something to make me nervous. But sadly, that's not you. Guang. After shattering a mountain peak like it owned the place, the grizzly bear still seemed full of strength as it leaped off and shot towards me. We were easily several kilometers away, but the distance seemed to mean nothing to it. Gua. Without exaggerating, a bear the size of a mountain swooped down from the sky and swung its foreleg towards me. Flying with Sharana's power, I chose to not dodge it. If I did, Yiyun, Daisy, and Yua would be hit. Instead, I drew Peruta Circuit's energy up and directed it into a single point on my spear. Immediately afterward, I used Lightning God's power and created a tornado of lightning. Pika then infused herself into the spear and brought up the lightning energy to the limit. It'll take a leg as hello. I shouted energetically and shot my spear towards the bear's foreleg. The concentrated energy even began to suck in surrounding mana as it drove into the bear's foreleg. Soon, the bear's foreleg exploded with a manoa-like boom. It seemed to have planned to crush me under its weight, but it ended up being pushed back into the air instead. Quiak. Good, that's what I like to hear. Dortu. I am Dortu. Attacking the enemy. The metallic mirrors still floating in the air transformed slightly, becoming thinner, sharper, 
and tougher. The hundreds of thousands of metallic fragments shot across the air carrying my mana and stabbed into the detonated foreleg of the bear. Unable to carry itself in the air, the bear was swept away by the flood of metallic fragments. That giant bear, so easily. Appa is so cool. I climbed the same dungeon as Shin, so why can't I do something like that? The bear fell into a giant canyon, breaking everything in its path as it crashed down. Daisy then stepped in using Loki. Loki, scorch it. Goo. Loki breathed reddish black flames from his mouth and filled up the canyon. The terrifying heat seemed to even cook the bear's roar. Cool. Wow, he's so strong. I wonder when my Luna will be able to do that. Q Q. Luna's eyes sparkled as she watched Lakis performance. I couldn't say Loki was Luna's parent, but he was still the source of the existence called Luna. She was probably learning a thing or two by watching him. However, what Yua said next made me doubt my ears. Luna, help Loki. Q. Luna nodded, and the flames Loki was breathing intensified noticeably. The grizzly bear's scream also became louder. Realizing what happened, I asked in shock. Was that a buff? She can raise the might of all flames. She learned it a short time ago. Goo. Soon, a savory smell rose up from the canyon. Loki seemed to be done breathing out fire, as he coughed a couple times and closed his mouth. Immediately afterward, the entire mountain range began to shake. Damn, does this bear really need to deform mountains every time it moves? Crack, crack. The canyon began to split loudly. The mountain peaks forming the mountain range began to drop rocks, from small pebbles to giant boulders. Surprisingly, they were all directed at us. Loki. Loki immediately moved following Daisy's shout. Loki spread his wings and began to flap. I doubted whether he could get us out of this situation alone, but it seemed I was underestimating him gravely. Thinking about it now, he was once the lava king. The boulders flying towards us through the grizzly bear's mana faltered in face of Lake's storm of magic power. Sharana, help Loki. This is my specialty, master. Immediately after Sharana's cheerful shout, Lakis wing flaps became fiercer. Rather than directly reinforcing Loki, Sharana guided his wind and directed the raining boulders onto him. The grizzly bear got up in shock and jumped back into the air. Gua! Because of Lakis' terrifying flames, it was bleeding everywhere, its fur and skin were scorched. Only its frighteningly shining red eyes and fearsome growl let me know it was fine. Of the boulders hurling down, it grabbed the biggest one that could pass off as a chunk of a mountain's peak. Bleeding profusely from the spear wound I dealt, it looked to be in an excruciating pain, but it was clear what it wanted to do with the boulder. Shin, a spear is like a toothpick compared to that bear's foreleg, so how did you do it? You just have to compress more energy into one point. Isn't there a limit to how much energy you can compress? There isn't. I retorted lightly and poured about 100,000 mana into my spear. Like before, although the spear's aura carried the power of lightning god, it didn't show it. One could only feel that something transparent was undulating along the spear blade. You should be able to do this too, Yiyun. Whether it's with a dagger or an actual toothpick, it's possible to use this technique. The bear threw the huge boulder at Loki. Brimming with its mana and shining black, the boulder hurled towards us quickly. I suspected even Loki would find it hard to receive that boulder head-on. Immediately, I kicked off into the air once more and shot my spear towards the giant boulder. The moment the spear tip touched it, 100,000 points of mana spread across the entire boulder. I shouted. Gaia Buster. Last time was a serenade of metal, this time it's a serenade of rocks. The boulder broke apart into tens of thousands of shards and returned back to the grizzly bear. Seemingly flustered, the bear rolled its feet. The hill he landed on crumbled, but a giant sharp stone mountain rose up and blocked the falling rocks. I've been thinking this since the first time I saw it, but it seemed this bear could utilize this twisted environment to its fullest potential to both defend and attack. As long as it had its feet on the ground, it was a stage stronger. 
Thankfully, with Yi Yun protecting Daisus and Yua's bodies, I didn't need to worry about their safety. Luna. Q. At the most unexpected moment, Luna's cute cry rang out. In the next moment, I found out what she did. The stone mountain put up by the bear had turned into magma. Quayak. Is Luna's growth direction different than Lakis? Buffing flames and turning stone into magma. Well, regardless. This was a good opportunity. I immediately charged towards it. However strong Luna's flames might be, they couldn't possibly be EX rank, which meant they couldn't break through my cape's defense. I dove into the magma without hesitation and planned on giving the bear my spear of justice. But a rather unexpected sight was waiting for me inside the magma. The grizzly bear was giving me an uppercut like it was waiting for me. The moment I noticed it, I shouted the name of the most reliable elemental for times like this. Ruyue. An. One layer right in front of me, another layer a bit farther away, and one more layer even farther away. The grizzly bear's fist shattered the triple-layered barrier Ryue created and struck my spear. Immediately, Thorn Throne's effect activated and a single bone spear that popped out of the spear tip pierced through its fist. On the other hand, because I didn't have my strength properly concentrated in my spear, I was sent flying. Ha! A little bit of blood was mixed with my frustrated cough. As I thought, in terms of purely physical and magical power, he was the next in line of the Beast King. You thought of punching me while submerged in magma? I like that. Goo. Of course, the damage it dealt didn't come without a price. It took on Luna's magma entirely, and since it was counterattacked by the Bone Spear, which dealt damage proportional to the might of the damage it dealt, it should be a sorry state. Gua. As I thought, seeing the injuries covering its body and the blood flowing down profusely, the bear let out a horrid howl. It was then that a change began to occur. The blood flowing down its body covered its wounds and made new fur grow out. A red, blood-like fur. Each strand of hair stood tall, and the bear's bloodshot eyes looked to be in a frenzy. Moreover, its already humongous body got even bigger, and a portion of the mountain range sunk in under the weight of its body. It seemed this monster carried the trade of savage beasts. Going berserk. It was an ability that burned what little life flame a beast had remaining to kill anything in its sight. I am Dortu. However, it was too late. The previous magma was the decisive blow. Commencing action. The sound of a grenade exploded out. Cool. Its blood dyed fur exploded and its flesh and bones flew in all directions. The bear screamed. It was different than any of the previous ones, a scream that came purely from pain. A pain that even a berserk state couldn't ignore could only be one thing, the pain from death. The pain came for a very simple reason. The tens of thousands of metallic fragments Dortu shot out were melted by the magma and became liquid. It then covered the bear's body and some had even entered inside. Just now, Dortu had simply detonated it. I am Dortu. Art is an explosion. Yes, Dortu, that's when you say that. I nodded in satisfaction at Dorda's well-timed line. Then, I stared at the giant grizzly bear barely struggling to stay standing. It raised the one part of its body that I left untouched its one remaining foreleg. Qua. Goodbye, grizzly. I threw my spear. Leave the bear paw so I can let the others have a taste. The spear penetrated its head and stuck the ground. The bear looked like a kid raising his arm to ask a question in class, and soon, it fell on its back. The hunt was over. Chapter, 317 After taking care of the bear, we collected its corpse and climbed up the mountain. As no other monsters stood a chance against us, we smoothly finished Alaska in a day. I was curious about the energy that ignored the dungeon's power, but there wasn't anything in Alaska. I had to suspect that there might be something in Canada or America. Of course, it was entirely possible that Alaska was just a decoy with the real thing being in Greenland. It felt like a waste to just leave Alaska, so we spent the night camping out and enjoying the scenery. As promised, I cut off some of the grizzly bear monster's paw and cooked it for everyone to taste. Cool. Q. 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 
It seemed Loki and Luna could communicate, as despite being an undead, Loki had intelligence. While Loki talked to Luna like an elder giving valuable advice, Luna listened in closely. Daisy and Yua watched their undead and tamed beast communicate with interest. I, on the other hand, sat on the side and started maintenance on my spear. Since I didn't know what ID have to face, I figured I should have my weapon in top condition. Shin. Someone suddenly called me carefully. Yiyun. Can I sit next to you? Of course. I stuck my spear into the ground and poured in mana. The ground near the spear rose up slightly, and Dordu coated it with metal to create a simple chair. Finally, Sharana then blew wind to heat up the metal. Yiyun sat down on it with surprise. Wow, it's warm. It's the power of elementals. I wish I had an elemental too. Mm you have to be born like this. I replied as I scratched my head. Although Sierra gave me the ability to wield elementals, she couldn't just give it to anyone she wanted. It was possible only because I had the talent. As this talent was extremely rare, not everyone could become an elementalist just because they wanted. Yiyun lightly clicked her tongue, let out a dry cough, and spoke carefully. Shin, sorry. I wasn't really helpful today. No, you protected Daisy and Yua. But my dream was to fight alongside Shin. The day will come soon. You have the talent and your growth speed is shocking. I don't know why but everyone in Revival is more or less a genius. I didn't need to explain for why a, and there were two others with terrifying growth speed. One was Samire, who might be even more talented than me in spearmanship, and the other was Yiyun, who was breezing through the dungeon purely with her talent. Yu Yu, still, I was too pathetic today. Yiyun looked down. She buried her face in her knees and though I felt sorry to say this, Yiyun was cute when she was down. I lightly stroked Yiyun's hair. Immediately, she pushed her head towards me. Of course, with her face still buried in her knees. Pet my head more, please. What's up with that request? It feels like my soul is being healed. That much. I planned to continue until she told me to stop, but because she didn't say anything for a long time, I took my hand off myself. Yiyun then spoke. I waited because Shin told me to wait. Uh, yeah. When did I tell her to wait? For what? I tilted my head. Just when I was about to say something, Yiyun spoke in a faint voice. Before I noticed, Shin's dating another girl. So that's what she meant. I made a bitter smile. The topic matched what I wanted to talk to her about. Remember what I told you, Yiyun? I. It's my fault for not being able to give up. You're right, Shin. You already told me everything, so you don't need to feel guilty. Contrary to what she was saying, her voice was full of regret. I stole a glance at Yua and Daisy. Their attention seemed to be on Loki and Luna, but I created a barrier of wind around us just in case they could hear us. Yeah, about that I didn't think I'd have the time for relationships, but it wasn't something I could really control. Sorry. If I were Yiyun, I would have hit me. Shin, can I ask you something? Sure. You're not dating just one person, right? As expected of an assassin, she goes right for the throat. I sweated as I replied. Ah uh, yeah. Do they both know? There might not be just two. I looked at the mountain far away. Yiyun coughed incontrollably. You playboy. This was the only choice I had. I've gotten too close to them, and I have to keep seeing them. What would you have done if you were in my shoes? Right, Shin's the world's hero. Not just Earth's, but other worlds too. Even with a bitter smile, Yiyun finally nodded. I know. You've built bonds I can't even dream of with those people. Bonds that are too deep for me to talk about and too strong to be cut. Sorry, I didn't know things would turn out this way. Like I said, you don't have to feel sorry. It's just. Yiyun raised her head. I thought she was crying, but she wasn't. Her eyes were shining with a light ID never seen before. Feeling the energy squirming inside her, I flinched. I'm the one at fault for not being able to give up. 
even if there are more than three. Un. I couldn't help but think of Yi Yun as peculiar. I might not look like it, but I'm very tenacious. You know why I'm in revival, right? I do. Yi Yun was in revival because of her feelings for me. That was how it began, and it was probably still the same. Although it would be troubling if she said she'd leave now, once the danger Earth was facing was taken care of, things would be different. I told you before, right? That thing wouldn't just end with Earth. Yeah you also said not everyone has to follow you. Earth's problem was ours to solve. But that didn't mean they had to care about other worlds too. Because of the promises I made to my allies, my personal goal, the invaders and dungeon secret, I planned to continue saving other worlds, but that didn't mean everyone had to follow me. I'm going to follow you until the end. Yi Yun, you're 22. There are other things you can do than risking your life to fight world's enemies. Think about it more carefully. Shin, you're also 22. Now that she mentioned it. Also, I don't think things will end just by killing this demon lord and the other world's enemy. It will. On earth, at least. Don't try to trick me, Shin you know something, right? I flinched. Yi Yun smiled and continued. I'm always watching Shin, so I know at least that much. Plus, I'm probably not the only one. Ahem. Um, um. Shin, can I continue staying by your side? I didn't need to explain about Daisy and Loretta, and Lydia and why it didn't live ordinary lives either. Lydia experienced many things as an empire's princess, and Waya learned magic from a young age, fighting monsters even before we met. Their values were different than ordinary people's. Otherwise, they couldn't like seeing their man being chased by other women. No, perhaps they still didn't like that but were enduring it. They were enduring it, right? In any case, Yi Yoon was different. She's an ordinary Korean girl who suddenly awakened as an ability user. Despite that, she had to take on the weight of Revival's mission and was currently asking to follow me fully knowing the truth behind Earth's danger. I could simplify everything by calling her foolish, but I knew that wasn't it. To be honest, I think Shin won't accept me otherwise. She really was honest. You want to go through all that trouble just for a man? Even though you don't know how long you'll have to wait. There are other fish in the sea, Yiyun. Guys that are a lot better than me. But there's only one Shin. Yiyun's eyes were serious, so I decided to be the same. To be honest, I still only think of you as a friend. Hold on, let me go cry in a corner. Yi Yoon was cowed in one blow. I stopped Yi Yoon from getting up and sat her back down. Will you still stay in revival? Un, I can't give up. You know you've only known me for a year and a half, right? Feelings came and went. I couldn't recommend her to stay in revival just for me. There had to be some other reason. Otherwise, she would only suffer. However, Yi Yoon's answer was something to behold. How can a love end when it hasn't begun? Also, how can I worry about it ending when it never began? How is anyone going to do anything if they're afraid of it ending? This is why someone with no relationship experience should say anything. I made a self-mocking smile and hit my head. Then, I looked at Yi Yoon. Then let's just wait and see how it goes. We might not know when ITLL end, but that also means we don't know when ITLL begin. Romantic words don't fit you, Shin. Funny. Hee <laughs> hee. Yi Yoon finally smiled. I got up. Then let's try closing the distance between us first, Yi Yoon. See closing the D distance. Oh okay, take good care of me please. I ignored Yi Yoon's joke and continued. Do you remember what I told you before? About compressing your energy. Ah, that invisible aura, right? I tried it once when I was resting, but it's way too difficult. You can do it. Maybe not as well as me, but you can still get stronger. Yi Yoon was an assassin, someone whose attacks had to be more lethal than anyone else. She learned a special ability to control her shadow from Duka. Once she learned how to compress her aura, I had confidence she would come up with an awesome skill I couldn't even imagine. I took out my spear. An enormous amount of aura began to be concentrated in it, and Yi Yoon gulped when she saw it. 
We have time. Until you can do this with your dagger, it'll teach you. You will. Yeah. I was already teaching some ire. Adding Yiyun wouldn't make a difference. With their talent almost being equal, I knew they could do it. Plus, aura compression wasn't a matter of weapons but a matter of mana. The fact that Yiyun used daggers wouldn't change anything. It'll do it. Please take good care of me. Good. I didn't know what she was so happy about, but she nodded her head vehemently and shouted. Her innocent outer appearance sometimes made people forget, but given the chance, she was a battle maniac on par with Duka. She didn't have a chance to shine because the enemies we fought were too strong, but as she continued to grow by climbing the dungeon and building up achievements, she would start to change. Extremely so. Just like that, Yiyun started to learn about mana from me. Of course, with Daisy and Yua interrupting us in the middle childishly, we couldn't get too far that day. Chapter, 318 Once we left Alaska and entered Canada, the desolate atmosphere I felt in Alaska diminished slightly, as most of Canada was still populated with humans. We traveled to Vancouver, taking care of monsters on our way, and planned to continue down to the States before coming back up. In less than an hour, we passed through the border after cleaning up monsters. As America had one of the highest numbers of ability users, the regions taken over by monsters weren't as bad as Alaska. If everything went as planned, we would be able to reach Greenland by the end of the night. However, the people who welcomed us in Seattle were a bit strange. That's him. Kong Shin. It's really Kong Shin. For some reason, even the Guardian members would not talk to me and talk to Yua instead. Why were they talking to Yua when I was right in front of them? Why do I feel like a monkey in a zoo? I can't believe it sometimes either. Be understanding, Appa. Yua made a rare bitter smile as she looked around. Appa's power is just too unrealistic. Almost to the point that all the other crazy things happening around the world seem irrelevant. Your outer appearance changed so much too. Ah. I remembered what Daisy said yesterday and shut up. What seemed like an exaggeration by Daisy now seemed to carry a hint of realism. No, everyone already knew I was the strongest person on earth. Well, I guess I'm not completely human anymore. I murmured bitterly and rubbed my forehead. I could feel the reddish black horn protruding out of my forehead shining while carrying heat. In truth, I considered hiding my horn in front of the masses, but I didn't want to hide something after I'd come this far. I decided to bear the looks people would give me, but things seemed to be going a bit differently than I had imagined. Of course, I had long since passed the point where I would be affected by how people looked at me. I grinned. It was a bit shocking that other people found it hard to talk to me, but that was it. It was true that I was different from them, and I didn't plan to go back to how I was either. So, Yua. What did they say? They said we're close. Seattle is fine, but apparently, the coast of Portland right below Seattle is full of monsters. Portland. That should only take a few minutes on Icon. Alright, let's go. Our hunting method was just as simple in America as it was in Alaska. I used Dorda's power to create hundreds of thousands of mirrors and released my evil eye's power to petrify all monsters. Then, Daisus undead and Yua's tamed beasts shattered them and ate them. I spread my mana out to check for any monster that might have been unaffected by my evil eyes, and once I concluded that everything was fine, we moved to the next area. With this method, it took less than ten minutes to clear an area the size of Seoul. Everything turned to stone. He's not human. He has a horn. Of course, he's not human. The ones saying these stupid things were obviously the Guardian members traveling with us. I hopped on Icon's back with a sigh. I am Dortu. Master, is enough mana stored? If we don't, we can always get more. I lightly retorted to Dorda's question and took a breath. As I had absorbed the death energy of all the monsters I massacred, I had to clean the chaotically stuffed energies inside me. Once that was done, I took in new mana into my cleaned body. Seeing me gather mana with Peruta Circuit and Absolute Soul, Daisy said I was like a vacuum cleaner. My mana, don't suck it in. I know. 
How long will it take until my Pryuta circuit reaches Appa's level? Mm, -hmm, if it's Yua, I'm sure it won't take too long. Though, no matter how talented Yua was, it would be impossible before Earth was completely reclaimed. Let's hurry. I don't think the one Sierra talked about is in America. Yes. Ignoring Dungeon's power, more and more appear. At this rate, Dungeon's business expansion will fail. I flicked Daisy's forehead, but because what she said was partly true, I smacked my lips. Setting aside the business expansion nonsense, there was no guarantee that the world's enemies ID meet from now wouldn't be like the demon lord or the one I met in Edia's continent. If world's enemies like them increased, worlds became conquered, and more began to desire other world's powers. If the ability to ignore the dungeon's power spread to ordinary monsters, most dungeon explorers might fare worse than if they hadn't climbed the dungeon. No, that won't happen. Why? Because it'll take care of everything. I answered half-jokingly and smirked. Daisy then covered her mouth and spoke quietly. Confidence erupting, like puberty. You'll kick your bedsheets later. You watch out. It'll make you kick your bedsheets. Thanks to America's guardian and the succubi that gathered all the necessary data, we swept through America extremely quickly. Reporters fearlessly followed us around wherever we went, and the broadcasting stations that received the footage aired out the content. Because of our unbelievable speed, the media was even thinking I had clones. The method we used was the same wherever we went, but the public opinion of us soared with each footage. Although I didn't really care for it, the public's awe was beginning to reach worship. As this wasn't the first time I was experiencing something like this, I wasn't shocked in the slightest. It looks like I shouldn't even dream about mixing in with people and living an ordinary life. When I murmured self-mockingly, Yi Yoon consoled me with a cheery voice. I went to apply for a leave of absence before and people treated me like an alien. They were taking pictures of me and everything. You took off your hoodie. I had to for the uni working at the office. That's when people started taking pictures. I think that's when they realized your presence. Ah. Realizing what really happened, Yi Yoon drooped her head sullenly. Although I didn't want to tell her, I couldn't let her forget about her stealth ability. Also, you could have applied for the leave of absence from home. I tried I went to school because I couldn't do it at home. Sometimes, I wonder how you got into our college. America, then Canada. We went around every area that might have monsters, but we didn't find anything special. One would think my suspicion would start to lessen, but it was the opposite. Currently, it was night time. As it seemed this trip would take over two days, we gave up our sleep and flew to Greenland immediately. We made a campfire on Icon's back. As I thought, it was Greenland. Greenland? What's there? Ice. And? Stone. Daisy dropped her jaws at my replies. I didn't lie. Most of Greenland was ice or stone. Only 1% of it was grassland. What about, people? There used to be around 60,000, but apparently they all died. Compared to how big the land is, there might not be many monsters. They won't have much to eat. Some probably died of hunger, I thought, as I placed a sweet potato over the campfire. They didn't have anyone to blame. It was their fault for crossing over to Earth and killing people. Kong Shin, that's 1%. Hmm. Daisy's sudden question made me drop my sweet potato and glanced over. Just like the succubi reported, I saw a land covered in ice. Upon closer inspection, however, the land seemed murky. My evil eyes were responding. That's not 1%, but 84%. For a moment, I saw something other than ice. If not for my evil eyes, I wouldn't have seen through it. That was fake. The moment I became certain, a translucent barrier appeared in the air. The sheer size of it made it hard to describe with words and seeing how it curved and the higher it got, it seemed it was some kind of a dome covering Greenland. It was like the magical barrier said to protect the mythical underwater city of Atlantis. I exclaimed. I could now see why Daisy asked if that was the 1%. With the ominous thought that 1% might have turned into 100%, I picked up the half-cooked sweet potato and glared at the giant barrier blocking Icon. 
Shin, that's a sweet potato. You're right, it is. But look closely. This is what it means to concentrate your power. Kong Shin, use something else, if possible. If done in by a sweet potato, even I would feel, embarrassed. While Yiyun and Yua tilted their heads, Daisy advised me calmly. But I simply grinned at them and held the sweet potato with two hands. Then, I spoke as I poured all my mana into it. Dortu. I am Dortu. Dortu would have liked it more if it was something other than a sweet potato. Dortu complained as he turned the sweet potato into metal. Although its size and shape were still that of a sweet potato, its material was changing into something else. When I was looking at the sweet potato shining with a five-colored light, Dortu spoke in a bragging manner. I am Dortu. This is Oricalco's. Directional Explosive. Dorda specially constructed metal. A sweet potato is, Orikalko's Kong Shin, plus one to bedsheet kicking. In less than a few seconds, over a million mana poured into the tiny sweet potato. Of course, it was only possible because Dorda changed it to Orikalko's, but with this tiny sweet potato carrying an absurd of mana, the light it was giving off was too bright for one to look at directly. I then focused Peruta Circuit's energy in it. The sweet potato then became a sweet potato whirlpool, spinning endlessly and giving off radiant light. With this much light, the enemy must have noticed. Across the translucent dome, I could feel dozens of magic power reacting. However, it was too late. Your roasted sweet potato is here. I shouted at the top of my lungs and threw the sweet potato. When it touched the gigantic barrier that even made Iken look like a pebble. The dome disappeared as if it never existed. The barrier disappeared. The barrier created by the Duke. Greenland's vast land disguising itself as a land of ice revealed itself. Dumbfounded, I let out a sigh. The swarm of demons gathering on the ground made me recall the time I killed hundreds of thousands of demons in Oceania. However, the bigger problem was that Greenland was no longer Greenland. These bastards they moved Luca continent here. The plants I saw in Luca continent were growing on the blood-colored land, and freakishly tall trees were soaring up to the sky. Moreover, the atmosphere was filled with ominous demonic energy. Greenland had already transformed into the demon's land. Sierra was right. What she foresaw wasn't another less Pina, but a much bigger problem. Kong Shin, can I go wild now? What do you mean go wild? Stay put. I snorted at Daisy. You have to wait until the bomb goes off. Sweet potato, already broke the barrier. That was a warm-up. As the party members were looking at me blankly, I explained kindly. A lump carrying one million mana is causing a highly dense whirlpool of mana. What would happen when it met a widely spread current of mana? It would be sucked in. Right. Instantly. Instantly. Then. The sound that rang out at that moment was not a boom, nor a boom. But a satisfying swayish. It was the sound of Greenland and 60% of demons flying away. Chapter, 319. Everyone had a dumbfounded look. While I was expecting it, I agreed that the explosion was a bit too much. If I didn't throw the sweet potato in full force, we might have been caught up in the explosion too. Kohuk. Cough. What? What just happened? He, he attacked. With a sweet potato. While flames and winds raged from below, I looked at the screaming demons and drank a mana potion. I can't see how far the destruction reached. Kong Shin, what did you do? To be honest, I didn't expect this either. I was thinking the explosion would be the size of Seoul at most. You mean, you can destroy Korea with a single sweet potato? I ignored Yiyun's comment. Drawing up Peruta circuit and absolute soul to the peak, I began to absorb the atmospheric mana along with the immense death energy hovering above Greenland. Simultaneously absorbing two different energies was a bit tricky, but it wasn't much compared to when I was training Peruta circuit. As I continued this process, my eyebrows twitched. I realized that there were more demons on Greenland than I thought and that the number of demons that died from my sweet potato far surpassed my initial prediction. I asked Dortu. Dortu, 
is this Orichalco's power? I am Dortu. It's not just Orichalco's. The metal from the first dungeon's 86th floor had a special property, which I added to the Orichalco's. Dortu's metal is always evolving. Dortu seemed extremely content with the metal he made. I am Dortu. They are stimulated by mana and can convert all mana to pure destructive power without any loss of energy. Orichalcos greatly amplifies mana, so Master's mana was amplified greatly before exploding. Explaining in more detail requires two days worth of time. Don't. I got it. I am Dortu. It was enough to know that Dortus metal had the ability to cause a powerful explosion. Of course, the tempest I created around the sweet potato would have increased its power too. This was the result. There was destruction as far as my eyes could see. With that attack, their leader must have noticed what happened. Maybe he's dead. I don't think so. The mana I used in that attack had the dungeon's power too. If I excluded the dungeon's power, the amount of mana I had was only around 600,000. That was also a terrifying amount, but that was beside the point. The previous attack had the dungeon's power. Whoever their leader was, he couldn't be dead. The hero came for us. Kook, but we don't have the power to fight him. Too many of us. Died. This is different from what we heard from them. He's growing too fast. He's not human. I've never seen demons scared by a human before. Seeing the surviving demon stagger up, Daisy said with a pitying look. She moved swiftly. She couldn't take out Lockie because she had Iken out. What she took out was something silver. Hmm. It looked familiar. It was a silver skeleton adorning a fancy robe. It was. The Death King. So many corpses. Melly, raise as many as, you can. One time use. Understood. The King of the Dead, Melly, slowly descended to the ground. Daisy explained as she watched him. Melly's magic power, lower than Lachis. Easier to control. Great for raising undead. She was right. Every time Melis' staff pointed to a direction, numerous corpses of demons rose up. The demons recovering from the shock of the explosion became flustered seeing their comrades rising from the dead. This. It's a necromancer. Not an ordinary necromancer. I can see a lich. We need to kill him. A hero using a lich. I snorted and continued absorbing mana and death energy. I had used all my mana in the previous attack. I knew I would have to face their leader sooner or later. My number one priority at the moment was getting myself to my peak condition. Kids, go. Yua also sent her tamed beasts out to finish off the injured demons. From the sky, giant mantises dropped down one by one. Just when did they get so big? They were twice the size of a human two days ago, but now they're bigger than an average building. Hee <laughs> hee, they got big, huh? They grew a lot after eating lots of nutritious food. Realizing my surprise, Yua explained as she laughed proudly. The mantises that entered their adulthood began to attack the demons. In an instant, the ground became a total pandemonium. Kayak. We need to attack their main body. Damn it, when is the duke coming? Sweet potatoo. I heard the demons scream and curse sweet potatoes. The mantises realized they couldn't defeat powerful demons alone and joined others to attack them together. Upon finally defeating them, they peacefully shared their spoils. As demons were a good source of magic power, the mantises were growing bigger with each kill. Explode. Explode. Death. Death. On the other hand, the undead melee controlled usually detonated the mana inside themselves to attack other demons. It was quite ironic considering the cause of their death was an exploding sweet potato. We quickly swept through the land and easily massacred any and all demons that we met. Although I didn't pick Yua and Daisy in particular, their abilities were truly suitable for a task like this. Yua's mantises grew stronger with each demon they ate and had gotten quite terrifying. Melis exploding undead was even more terrifying as they showed fearsome contagiousness and destructive power. If there was hell, 
the current Greenland wouldn't be too different in comparison. This really isn't what a hero's party would do. Just look at it. Are we the hero party or the demon lord party? It looks like we're on our way to conquer the world. Kong Shin, no more exploding sweet potato. I haven't recovered my mana yet anyways. Keep going, kids. Don't get injured or you'll get mad. After a countless number of demons died, looking down on Greenland from above only showed blood-soaked land, scattered flesh, and undead demons and giant mantises running around commandingly. The demons joined together to resist, but Melus undead took the blow from their powerful magic attacks, then immediately detonated themselves to deal critical damage. Yua's mantises then dove in and crushed them to death before eating them. I didn't know how much time went by, but my mana was now full. I could make the undead and mantises fall back so I can use the metallic mirror and evil eyes combination, but I just watched without taking action since they were doing well without me. While I waited on top of Iken, I guided any excess mana to my spear. Greenland, once a land of ice and stone, had become a land of dirt when it swapped with Luca Continent's land. By swallowing the demon's blood and flesh, the land started to become more fertile. The hero is there. Do not give peaceful death to the hero who killed our kin. His majesty has spoken. Anyone who can bring back his head will be rewarded greatly. Just when I was thinking things would end sooner than I thought, a shout full of killing intent rang out. I raised my head and turned to the direction of the shout. Immediately, I could see bizarre flying monsters that looked like deformed wyverns. Their bodies were completely black, scrawny, and had bloody bones protruding out. Moreover, their deep yellow eyes gave off an intimidating aura. Powerful mana. Kong Shin, careful. Daisy, you focus on the ground. Yi Yun. Un. Even before I called her, Yi Yun had her daggers out and her body bent forward slightly, ready to launch off at any moment. She was a bit pitiful most of the time, but she was extremely reliable in battle. Taste our resentment. You will pay the price for going against us. A huge amount of mana came together, forming a magic that hurled towards us. I took one of my hands off my spear and reached forward. Ruyue. I need Sharana's help. I immediately sent Sharana out as well. A shield of ice then began to form in front of me, becoming big enough to cover all of the space in front of Icon. The moment the demon's magic struck, the shield absorbed the impact and disappeared with it. I could clearly see that the demons were taken aback. Aren't they explorers? I thought we could nullify the dungeon's power. Yiyun, did you hear? It looks like they can nullify the dungeon's power. Don't worry. The techniques I learned from Master aren't part of the dungeon's power. Even after hearing what I said, Yiyun's confidence didn't waver. Seeing a dark aura rising up above her, I judged that she would be fine. Daisy, Yua, take care of the ground. Already on it. Kong Shin, protect me well. Leave it to us, Appa. As time went on, more of those bizarre flying monsters were appearing. I could easily see there were at least two hundred of them. Each of them was more powerful than any of the demons we've met so far in Greenland. To think they could even ignore the dungeon's power. They had to be elites even among demons. But Shin, how did you block their magic when they can nullify the dungeon's power? I have powerful elementals. I realized that we were being surrounded. As I felt the dungeons, Sheriffina's power slowly leaving my body, I calmly breathed in. Thankfully, they're not on the level of Lespina. But if they get any closer, Daisy and Yua will get affected greatly. You understand what I mean, right, Yiyun? Un. But I can't fly yet. I'll lend you Ryue. Hying, I want to be with Shin. Okay. With Ryue, creating ice footholds was extremely simple. Yiyun seemed to have understood what I meant her expression brightened. Then I can go all out. Be careful. I'll go first. I activated Talaria and flew up. It wasn't time to summon Pedasus yet. Talaria was enough for now. He massacred over a million of our kin. Kill that wicked hero. For our majesty. Feeling the demon's sights turn toward me, I created numerous metallic fragments using Dorda's power. 
my evil eyes didn't work on demons of their caliber. These metallic fragments were purely for offense. Hugh. Ha. This land was surging with death energy. I took a deep breath, and an overflowing death energy began to rise up from my body. I divided this energy equally among Dortus metallic fragments. Dortu, use them well. I am Dortu. Dortu replied confidently. Believe in Master's Elemental. The metallic fragments full of death energy shot towards the demons and the monster birds they were flying on. It was as if a flower was blooming. Although I couldn't see them, I could feel some of them fall after receiving irrecuperable injuries. With a smile, I shouted. Come at me. Even without the dungeon's power, I can take on all of you. Chapter, 320. Kook. Stop him. Those metals are dangerous. It seemed demons liked to pretend to be dragonites, as they all wore dull suits of armor. However, the metallic fragments Dortu shot out dug through even the tiniest gaps in their armor to injure them. The death energy that invaded their bodies then weakened them. He can use death energy. Attack him together. The monster birds charged towards me. It seemed they realized they couldn't dodge Dortus' attack as they endured the barrage of metallic fragments in their path. At that moment, Yiyun leaped up above me. If the enemies are demons. When Yiyun's form disappeared from my sight, the head of the closest demon from us flew off. The monster bird he was riding on also began to fall with a vast amount of blood spurting out of his neck. She sure is fast. Her speed even made me think she had divine speed. If I remember correctly, I think she said she moves through shadows. Regardless, her speed was shocking. The demons also stopped in place, seeing one of their comrades suddenly die. Meanwhile, another head of a demon flew up. With how powerful these demons were, I could see how formidable Yiyun has gotten. I can't lose. I also didn't plan on receiving their attacks for free. I aimed my spear at the opposite direction of Yiyun and began to charge forward. A fierce gale blew around me. It'll show you Wine King's rage. Under his highness demon lord's name, we will subdue you. For his excellency duke. The demons shouted valiantly and held up their weapons carrying chilling magic power. At the same time, the strange aura emanating from them seemed to choke me. However, I brushed it off as though I'd experienced this restraint hundreds of times. In fact, the restraint of the dungeon's power helped me sense it more clearly, and I pushed this power off to the side separate from my other powers. Since I couldn't use this power, it was better to separate it to minimize the demon's effect on me than to worry about it. Moreover, I was no longer weak without the dungeon's power. Hold on to your weapons tightly. Try not to die before you can use it. I thrusted my spear at the demons in front of me. Dark blue skin and red eyes, a demon attempted to hold up her shield but stopped when she met my eyes. The trembling voice she let out helped me affirm she was female. H hero, I. Loving an enemy commander is not allowed. I mercilessly pierced her head. Then, I shot up high using the monster bird as a stepping stone and used the wind energy following me to gain momentum for my next attack. The next target wasn't female, and this one shot out a thick lightning bolt from his hands. When the red lightning struck my body, it disappeared without leaving behind a trace. In the next instant, I was close enough to the demon to see his hair follicles. His shocked eyes were quite funny. How? Unlucky. I also pierced his head, and blue blood spurted out, drenching me. So, this is it. Come on then. Kook, he's a monster. Where is his excellency? Our duty is to complete our mission. Attack. The moment the demons came together to guard against me, one of the demons was beheaded and Yiyun showed herself for an instant. In her hands were two daggers shining with a faint light. I immediately wondered. She already learned to compress her energy to that extent. Kohak. A woman. You won't catch me with that speed. A monster bird spat out a breath mixed with fire and acid, but Yiyun was already gone. Freely running across the ice footholds Ryue created, Yiyun moved like she was in a pinball game. The demon's formation became disorderly, 
and I charged straight into them. Quayak. When my spear struck a demon, countless number of bone spears shot out around me and attacked nearby demons. However, the bone spears weren't enough to deal fatal blows. Hap. Taste the wrath of demons. His Excellency will claim your life. For victory. Even with Wind King's rage continuing, demons charged toward me the moment they saw me. They were shining with threatening demonic energy, but I snorted and cut them down easily. Dortu then gave me a warning. I am Dortu. The armor's state is becoming strange. Armor? I furrowed my brows. He wasn't wrong. The surface of pure black desire, which was now coated with the blood of demons, was faintly shining. As if it was pulsating, the light became weaker then stronger periodically. I couldn't remove it with Sharana's power, and not even Pika's power could burn it off. Looks like you don't know about our ancient spell. One of the demons spoke arrogantly. Ancient spell. I barely knew anything about the current demons. There was no way I would know anything about their ancient time. I first beheaded that demon and converged wind energy around me. I tried to take on pure black desire, but that wasn't possible. Without the dungeon's help, I couldn't tell what this spell did. At the very least, I knew that it prevented me from taking off the armor. Dortu. I am Dortu. I am working on it. A formidable power is hindering me, but for now, it is not doing anything. It's even warding off Dortu who can dominate metal. Why were they hiding such a powerful spell until now? Trace of blood, concentrated energy, and the times when the light shone could it be? It is a spell formulated with our lives. Will you drench yourself in our blood knowing that? It was as I thought. They were prepared to die from the beginning solely to cast this spell on me. I began to sense danger. A spell capable of affecting a legend grade armor that I couldn't do anything about. When I became flustered, the demons began to grin as though they'd gained the upper hand. It was extremely unpleasant. Humph. I guided the lightning and wind energy of Wind King's rage's final attack and concentrated them around my spear. The demons noticed it and tried to escape, but I released the energy before they could do so. You guys can all die. Quiak. Dozens of monster birds were swept away by the lightning storm and disappeared without leaving behind a trace. The demons riding on them also shared the same fate except a few that managed to escape the range of the attack in time. I took a deep breath and shouted at Yiyun. Don't let their blood get on you. Don't worry, Shin. In clean. I turned around as Yiyun's voice seemed to have come from behind me, but Yiyun wasn't there. Instead, Blood spurted out from one of the demons charging toward me from the left. Cock. We were all waiting for you, hero. You will die here. Shut it, die. Just thinking about being tricked annoyed me greatly, but when their voices fanned the flames, I shot balls of aura and exploded them to death. At the same time, I was angry at myself for not noticing their spell when I thought I mastered mana. It was most likely because I was only focused on the fact that they weakened the dungeon's power. Foolish. Though I've fought countless number of demons until now, I shouldn't have thought they were all the same. His Excellency will arrive soon. Let us offer our lives until his arrival. Ensnare the hero. If you want to dream, do it when you're asleep. But there was nothing I could do to change what had already happened. I didn't think being showered by their blood would cast a curse. In any case, this was a good lesson for the future. From now on, I would kill them without letting anything touch me. I am Dortu. The energy is activating. Careful, master. Dorta's sharp voice warned me. I nodded inwardly and moved even quicker. At the same time, I felt a mass of energy flying toward me from the north. Even without confirming it with my eyes, I knew it was the duke the demons were talking about. Since their spell was activating now, it seemed the duke's existence served as a trigger to start the spell. I drew up Absolute Soul and Peruta Circuit to the peak. I asked Dortu to place a thin layer of barrier between my armor and skin. With Sky God's play and world trickery, everything was perfect. Anything else wouldn't pose a problem. Guys, get ready. Icon, Defense Mode. 
Luna, protect us. Daisy and Yua seem to have felt the duke's energy too, as they immediately began to make preparations. Brining the two of them was truly a wise decision. In front of enemies who suppressed the dungeon's power, tamers and necromancers, who wielded other monsters' power rather than their own, were the least affected. As long as the link connecting them to their monsters were secure, they would be able to show their full power. I was worried about Yiyun the most, but since she hasn't called Duka yet, it seemed I didn't need to worry much. In truth, I was shocked by her speed that could match divine speed and destructive power that could behead a demon in one blow. This was especially so considering the dungeon's power was being suppressed. It seemed what I felt a couple days ago wasn't wrong. What was left now was for her to UK. I am Dortu. The curse is activating, master. I could see the so-called demon duke approaching. With a huge pair of bat-like wings and a set of long, curved horns, a man carrying himself proudly flew over. I did not see him in the Luka continent, so he had to be one of the high-ranking demons that didn't appear. I was also certain that he wasn't born with the ability to suppress the dungeon's power like Lespina. The depth of time I could feel from him was too great for that to be the case. Then how was he suppressing the dungeon's power? The answer was simple. He was powerful enough to crush an average world's enemy. Just like how world's enemies nullified the dungeon's power with their leagues, this demon duke was also defying Sheriffina's power with his league. Furthermore, the demon elites that attacked us previously had covered this area with their energy. Part of the reason was to place this curse on me, but their main role was to construct a battlefield. A space where the dungeon's power couldn't be used properly. Nice to meet you, hero. The demon duke shouted excitedly. Though he didn't have anything in his hands, he was reaching his hands towards me in a claw-like manner as if to wrench something out of me. I am truly thankful that I got to meet you. Of course, they'll have to ask you to pay the price for blowing away our new base. Master, now. Now. Have a taste of what you did. I widened my eyes. I understood what he was doing. I was all too familiar with this flow of energy. Pure black desire exploded. In this moment, this armor, which carried the unbreakable option, was separated from the dungeon's power completely. Then, it split into hundreds of thousands of fragments and swept through all demons around me. Of course, someone who was wearing it couldn't be safe. Sheen. Yiyun shouted. Now that I think about it, if our genders were swapped, isn't this the perfect moment for a main character of a novel to awaken a new power? While facing an unimaginable pain, such stupid thought crossed my mind. However, at that moment, Yiyun began to shine with a dark blue light. Yua. Yiyun stretched out her hands covered in black aura. Seeing three pairs of arms sprout up from her shoulder joints, I thought in a daze. I can't even crack a joke. Chapter, 321. A God's Power? Hugh. Yiyun gave the duke a deathly glare and raised the weapons on her four pairs of hands. Then, without a word, she charged forward. Earth sure has many absurd talents. Ha! After a short spirited shout, Yiyun's twin daggers dug into the duke's stomach. The duke spat out a mouthful of blue blood, which splattered on Yiyun's body. She should have been able to dodge it, but she received it with a grin. While I was watching them with a shocked face, the duke laughed heartily while in pain. Can you not feel our energy overflowing in this area? How pitiful, you'll follow after the hero soon. Hugh. The three pairs of arms formed of aura each used their weapons in hand. One restrained the duke with black chains, one struck him with an iron mace, one sliced down with a great sword, one stabbed with a trident, one crushed him with a shield, and one beat him with a staff. Lost your consciousness, I see. The duke clicked his tongue and flew back while avoiding Yiyun's follow-up attacks. Seeing his wounds slowly regenerate, Yiyun's brows twitched. Indeed, it's difficult to nullify a god's power. But it looks like you only recently obtained that power. Don't think you can defeat me, Greenhorn. Moreover. When the duke snapped his finger, his blood splattered on Yiyun's body began to shine with an ominous light. It's probably best to cut down a talent before it can grow. 
His Highness Demon Lord is enough as the final candidate. Kwa! Yiyun screamed. Damn it, why didn't you dodge his blood? What should I do about that curse? I sacked my brain but couldn't come up with an answer. I just hoped her god's power would help her withstand it. Since I had a few elixirs, as long as she survived, I could do something about it. For the record, although I wasn't injured, I wasn't critically injured. Dorta was protecting me, and I had used Sky God's play to shrink my body and escape. The injury was from the explosion I couldn't dodge because I couldn't take the armor off. Other than that, I was in a better condition than the duke who was injured by Yiyun. Currently, I was using world trickery to hide my presence from the duke. I planned to attack the duke at a critical time when Yiyun attacked him, but because Yiyun was cursed, that plan was out the window. My plan now was to charge toward Yiyun with an elixir when the curse activated. I believed she wouldn't die. I had already experienced it once. The explosion was indeed formidable, but the energy enveloped Yiyun was even more formidable. Just whose true name did she acquire? Even Shiva's power was reacting. Goodbye, female warrior. Ill remember your spirit. Kohat. Like what he did to me before, he reached out his hands toward Yiyun in a claw-like manner. That was the trigger that activated the curse. However, at that moment, one of the duke's arms exploded instead of Yiyun. Kea Huck. Hee hee. Yiyun laughed like a child and stabbed two daggers into him. She moved so quickly that I barely caught her in my eyes. The duke spat out a mouthful of blood, but he should now know his blood would have no effect on Yiyun. Now that I looked at her, the blood on her was gone. I was doubtful at first, but it seemed she really returned the curse to the duke. Right, she was using a god's power. Although she might have lost a bit of her sanity, she shouldn't have forgotten what happened to me. The moment she activated her god's true name, she had grasped her power accurately and returned the favor to the duke. Though I didn't know what power her true name had, it was undoubtedly powerful. In any case, I was glad that Yiyun was safe. Kook, you took my blood on purpose. There was no answer. Yiyun once again charged toward the duke with her Yasha-like pairs of arms, and the duke grabbed his armless shoulder with the one hand he had and ran away. Along the duke's trail, thousands of balls of mana appeared and shot towards Yiyun, but she easily destroyed them with the weapons in her hands. However, they were enough to buy him time, and the duke was murmuring something to himself as though to cast a spell. This was my time to move. I couldn't just leave things to Yiyun. However, before I could do anything, the space around me began to shine. Atop this sunlightless gloomy land, only the space around me was shining. What's happening? I looked around in confusion and soon realized what was happening. There was something shining. Though rather absurd, what was shining were the hundreds of thousands of fragments of the exploded pure black desire. But these weren't mere fragments. They were drenched with the blood and flesh of the elite demons that attacked me before. These remains of the demons were also shining along with the armor fragments. Thinking about it now, something was strange. This space might be filled with ominous demonic energy, but that didn't mean lifeless objects like the fragments and the remains of demons could remain afloat in the sky. Even so, these things were shining like the stars in the night sky without falling. This mystical scene made me speechless. Though it was beautiful, they were still made of blood, flesh, and bones of demons. The duke also noticed this sight. What's this? Kook. However, he couldn't do move as he continued to face Yiyun's barrage of attacks. His regenerative ability was truly shocking as he could recover from wounds dealt by a god's power but it was clear that it wasn't invincible. Anyone could see it just by the fact that he was trying to avoid getting injured. Hap. Fine, it'll kill you first. The duke's magic power surged up. Shoot, Yiyun might be in danger. Even though she was using a god's power, with the dungeon's power suppressed, Yiyun's body couldn't last long. I am Dortu. Master, the armor might revitalize. I was thinking the same thing, Dortu. Ah. I suddenly remembered something. Reinforcement stone, the magical tool that upgraded an item by a single stage. Lin had told me he installed it on pure black desire. 
he said the armor would shine when the time came. Now was the time. But still, the activation condition was for an unbreakable armor to receive enough impact to break. In any case, it was good news for me if pure black desire was restored. Not only would I have defensive equipment, it would be upgraded by a stage 2. I scanned my body excitedly. Soon, however, I realized that it had disappeared when the armor exploded. I am Dortu. Dortu knows what Master is looking for. It seems to be falling down to the ground. Wah! I gave myself a pat on the back for not screaming out loud. I immediately shot down with tears in my eyes. Yiyun, hold on just for a moment. Descending down, I swept past Iken. At that moment, Iken flinched and Daisy subsequently flinched. She poked Yua, who was frozen after witnessing pure black desire's explosion. Kong Shin, alive. Ah really? H how do you know? Intuition of a woman in love. Way to lie so easily. You found out because of Iken. I wanted to go smack her head, but I had to retrieve the reinforcement stone before it was too late. I continued to shoot down as I spread my mana out. Found it. Goo. One of Maris undead was about to explode next to it. In a panic, I drew divine speed to the limit and even activated Pedasus. If someone saw me, I would look like a bolt of lightning descending from the sky. Got it. The moment I caught the reinforcement stone, the undead exploded. Damn, I sure am experiencing many explosions today. Was it because I threw that sweet potato? Did it curse me? I cursed at the heavens and shot up to the sky carrying my injured body. Pedasus and Teleria together with divine speed transformed me into a streak of light. The reinforcement stone was tightly grasped in my hand. Kong Shin, good luck. When I passed by Iken the second time, Daisy noticed me by herself this time and cheered me on. I was moving too fast to answer her, but hearing her words made me surge with strength. I arrived at the fragments of pure black desire which were still shining in the sky. Without hesitation, I threw the reinforcement stone. Of course, someone at the level of a demon duke easily noticed it. Mm. So you were alive, hero. I knew you wouldn't die from just that. Koha. During the short interval I was gone, the Duke and Yiyun seemed to have exchanged countless blows as they were both wounded heavily. However, Yiyun couldn't regenerate unlike the Duke. Yiyun also discovered me. Her eyes widened for a moment and soon she smiled. Her beautiful smile made it hard to believe that she was the same person who was viciously attacking the Duke just a moment ago. Suddenly, her body began to transform once more. The wounds on her disappeared, and the dark blue aura enveloping her went away, leaving behind a golden aura. Next, her three pairs of arms formed with aura began to shine radiantly. The weapons in her hands began to change form with the exception of the chain. The black chain became golden, and her other weapons became a golden chakram, javelin, iron bar, and a club. Durga. It's Durga. At that moment, I also realized what her previous form was. Kali. Her dark blue skin and bloodthirst were explainable if she was Kali. The goddess Kali was Shiva's wife and enjoyed slaughter. Durga, who was also Shiva's wife, was a strong and pure female warrior. These two goddesses that seemed like black and white shared one thing in common, and it was that they were more powerful than any ordinary male god. Kali was commonly known as the avatar of Durga but they were both avatars of Devi, the most powerful goddess in Hinduism. I didn't think Yiyun obtained such powerful gods' true names. In any case, she had both Kalis and Durga's power. The wounds on her had disappeared completely, and she was eyeing the duke like a valiant female warrior that stepped on the battlefield. It seemed not even the duke who schemed to blow up my armor foresaw this happening. Another god's power. I thought the hero was the only one with the power of two gods. Hoo, you're also hiding something. If you don't take it out quickly, you'll be killed by me. It seemed Yiyun's sanity has been restored. It seemed using Kala's power made her lose her mind while mercilessly slaughtering her enemies, while Durga's power calmly pushed her enemy to a corner. To be honest, I thought Kali fit Yiyun's image more, 
but it was always nice to have more God's true name. With Durga's power, she might even get closer to the next step. Fine. I don't see a reason to refuse if that's what you say. So you became the army commander. While watching the armor fragments shining fiercely, I heard the duke's words and turned towards him. He raised his arm. Blood spurted out from one of the wounds on his face, drenching him. It felt like he intended for that to happen. I saved my strength thinking the hero was alive, but since everyone I have to kill are here, I won't hesitate any longer. It'll show you. This is the power of an army commander. Greenland squirmed once more. The dead blood soaking the land began to rise up to the sky. Death descended in an enormous amount of blood. It wasn't death energy, it was an energy only demons could wield. A symbol began to form. Our magic circles are truly vicious and formidable. Drawn with the deaths of our kin, it destroys everything including ourselves. It doesn't protect what must be protected. However, it kills what must be killed. Right, from the beginning, they were scapegoats. From the moment I arrived at Greenland, they moved as though they were waiting for me without paying attention to their lives. Their sole goal was to kill me. I didn't the duke was the same, but I was wrong. Hero and the powerful female warrior. The era of the demon lord is coming. He will rule all under heaven. He will become the final existence. Let us honor him with our deaths. The army commander shouted with his body full of wounds. Enveloped in Durga's power, Yiyun threw her chakram at him and restrained him with her chain. However, even the chakram blowing up one eye and the chain restraining his arm, his magic power didn't decrease. The truly massive magic circle of blood accelerated and floated up. It was so big that my eyes couldn't catch all of it in their sight. Yua and Daisy shot up towards us in shock, but it didn't matter as all of Greenland and the airspace above it were affected. I cancelled Sky God's play and world trickery, and appeared in the sky with nothing but light clothing. The duke shouted in surprise. How could you be so unhurt? The curse went off. I'm immune to curses. Only my armor exploded. At my calm reply, the duke laughed dumbfoundedly. That laugh seemed to say, amazing, but can you do anything about this? He was right. I glanced at the magic circle completed with the deaths of millions of demons then glared at the duke. Hey, let me ask you something. Does the demon lord have a future sight ability? If he didn't, this magic wouldn't be here. I shut my eyes. I knew something was strange. They were planning such a grand scale magic that used their lives as ingredient. They must have known I would come to Greenland. Not a prediction, but a certain assurance. It had to be future sight, just like Sierra's ability. Sierra has not mastered her ability. She had to grow more. Although she had already helped her immensely, to face off against the demon lord, her ability was immeasurably important. I could survive. Even if that magic circle activated, I was confident I wouldn't die. I had Pryuta Circuit, Absolute Soul, and Overlord. But what about the others? Even without the dungeon's power, they fought brilliantly, especially Yiyun. She managed to corner the army commander without the dungeon's power, and the world excellent wasn't enough to describe her feat. However, even she wouldn't be able to avoid death. As such, I came to a decision. To use Shiva's eye. I couldn't expect Kane's help now. He was in the dungeon and there was no way for me to communicate with him. It was entirely possible that this magic circle would affect not only Greenland, but the ocean, airspace, and land around it. If I didn't use Shiva's eye, it would cause immeasurable destruction. Although I didn't have a way to defeat the demon lord without Shiva's eye, saving it now would only lead to my comrade's death. If I were burdened by their sacrifice, would undoubtedly become weak. My league would plummet all the way to the bottom. However, before I could activate Shiva's eye, someone moved. Was it Yiyun? No. She was indeed moving, but the army commander was facing off against her. Then was it Daisy? Yes. She put away Iken and Mary and took out Loki, but Lake's power wasn't enough to do anything. Yua seemed to be supporting Loki with Luna, but even five Lakis wouldn't be enough to stop that magic circle. 
What moved were the fragments of light that was once pure black desire. They were falling on the magic circle. Chapter, 322 I guess when you're reinforcing something, you need some material to go along with the reinforcement stone. Though that sounded a bit nonsensical, it was the perfect way to describe the current situation. The cloud of pure black desire's fragments covered the magic circle and began to greedily absorb blood. What are those? Did you do something, hero? That's a secret. Sorry, but I don't know what that is either. From his confused face, I could tell he no longer had the magic circle in his control. I turned my sight to the magic circle once again, and saw that it was distorting little by little. The black blood that painted the magic circle began to move towards one place, moving so fast that my eyes could barely keep up. So. What's your plan now? It looks like that magic circle isn't going to activate. Hugh. It seemed he was thinking the same thing. The helpless look on his face made him look like a middle-aged man that lost his life savings by gambling. At that moment, a huge hole blew through his chest. Yeun's chakram had penetrated him. Kohak. Ait. Yeun's attack didn't just end there. She pulled on the chain that had been restraining one of his arms and threw her javelin, penetrating his head. When he arrived in front of her, she beat him to a pulp with her iron bar and club. Though unbelievable, he died just like that without even his final words. It was somewhat understandable as he was suddenly struck after having put all his mana into the magic circle, but it was still unexpected for him to die so helplessly. I had to give credit to Yi Yun for being able to go in for the kill in a situation where such an overwhelming mana was going berserk. Was it because of her talent as an assassin? Or was it because of the divine power in her body? When the army commander's head exploded, the blood covering the army commander's body began to let out a dark light. It seemed he had no plans to go out peacefully. Yi Yun. Using divine speed, I charged at Yi Yun. She was only just taking her weapons back when she was tackled by me and flew away. As a result, she was safe from the army commander's suicide explosion. As I continued to accelerate forward after pushing her away, I also managed to escape the brunt of the force. Still, I couldn't completely avoid getting hurt, especially because I only had Dorda's protective layer on me. Kook. This explosion was even stronger than the previous explosion caused by the curse. That wasn't the only problem. As if they were expecting this to happen, the elite demons that were on standby began to absorb demonic energy and puff up. Though not as strong as the giant magic circle, it was still enough mana to blow away this entire area. I immediately decided to use Overlord. At that moment, the crumbling magic circle shone and began to suck in the demonic energy of the demons that were about to explode. It sure was greedy. The magic circle quickly shrunk to a size I could see with my eyes. Seeing dense demonic energy and mystical cold energy becoming compressed into one point was a chilling sight to behold. I'm not the one to lose in terms of mana capacity, but I've never seen so much mana gather together in one place. If it was at the level of the Beast King, I could do something about it with Peruta Circuit and Absolute Soul. But if that much mana gathered together, the matter was out of my hands. Peruta Circuit? I would end up being sucked in instead. At first, I thought Shiva's I would be enough to break the magic circle, but not now. That magic circle, which was constantly evolving by devouring all sorts of energy, seemed impervious to all attacks. Kong Shin, it's fine. The raging mana in the sky caused the demons below to all forget about the battle and look up. Daisy also seemed uninterested in fighting them, as she looked up at me with a calm expression. If that goes wrong, Earth will end. Hey! Before it's too late, to Kong Shin, I want to say something. Don't set up flags like that. I frowned at Daisy's words. Daisy dropped her head sullen, and this time Yua raised her head. Appa, I want to say something too. Yua, we're not going to die. I think. If you want to make a confession, go to a church, not me. I shouted inwardly and asked Dortu. Dortu, can you find out what's happening? I am Dortu. If Dortu goes in there, Dortu will get sucked in and die. Don't. That wasn't my intention. 
At that moment, another change occurred. Mana, demonic energy, blood, flesh, and fragments of pure black desire, all of these began to flock to one place. A golden light flashed, then darkness that seemed to suck in all light rose up, then a dark red light flashed, then a blue light flashed. Amidst this chaos, I tried to open the gate to the dungeon, but I couldn't. Damn it. Amazing. Did her true name's power run out? Yiyun flew over and murmured in a daze. The arms formed with aura and the weapons that were in those hands were all gone. She had returned to her normal form. I had many questions I wanted to ask her, but this was the first thing I asked. Don't you have something you want to say? Yiyun widened her eyes and shouted. Un, I can go into beyond now too. You sure are carefree Yua. While I was replying with a bitter smile, I felt something pulling me down and screamed. Yiyun quickly tried to pull me up, but I slipped out of her hands. I fell from the sky and landed on the magic circle. S Shin. Shin. Appa. Yiyun, Daisy, and Yua's voice rang out. I frantically operated Pryuta circuit while looking around. What was holding me down was the energy forming the magic circle. In the blink of an eye, I had sunken into what was now an enormous lump of energy. The energy then began to change. Kook, what's happening? The light flashing in myriad colors suddenly disappeared then settled on a delicate gray light. In the next instant, I gasped and tightened my stomach. The energy was tightening around me. I tensed up my body and drew up my mana to the peak to reinforcement my body. By now, I had an idea as to what was happening. A custom armor was being forged. But if I couldn't endure this pressure, my body would undoubtedly shatter. Hugh, ha! What a test! Lin, you didn't say anything about this. Of course, I knew Lin probably didn't expect this to happen. Perhaps even Elian who created the magical tool had no idea. Who would have expected this magical tool to ask for so much? Not only did it require an enormous amount of mana, it also required bodies of demons and terrifying materials that made killing world's enemies look easy in comparison. Shin, are you okay? All the energy is flowing your way. Appa. Luna, do something. Q. Kong Shin, don't die if you must, at least leave behind your body. Well be together, forever. I'm not going to die. I couldn't help but shout back at Daisy's words. It was close to being complete, I had no plans to give up now. I frantically gathered up every ounce of mana to reinforce my body. Even the singular horn on my forehead was radiating a great heat. Don't be arrogant just be forged obediently. Like I'd lose. I shouted like a madman and tensed every muscle in my body. If I let my guard down for even a second, my bones and organs would surely break. An unknown amount of time later, just when I was thinking about using Succubus Queen's tattoo to replenish my mana, the blinding light subsided slightly. The pressure on my body disappeared. The moment all pain went away, a warm, no hot sensation seemed to envelope me. I raised my arm subconsciously and a thin black metal began to coat it. It was shining on its own and its natural silk-like softness made it hard to believe that it was metallic. I moved my arm around. Its flexibility made me doubt whether I was wearing an armor at all. I expanded my view to the rest of my body. I immediately wondered where pure black desire's original traits went, as what was covering my body was too thin to even call an armor right, it was a metallic silk. An incredibly soft metal wrapped my body. If metals could be weaved to make silk, this would be it. There were symbols I couldn't decipher engraved here and there, and these symbols radiated a blue glow. This faint light gave the armor a dignifying majesty. The helmet too. The helmet was no different than the armor. Other than my eyes, it completely covered my face, even my horn. To be exact, the armor had a slightly bigger horn that fit my horn inside. Mana disappeared. Daisy's voice rang out. I looked around. As she said, the truly unbelievable amount of mana had all disappeared as though someone had devoured it all. Of course, I knew who, or what, did it. It was the armor I was wearing. Shin, what a cool armor. 
Yiyun clapped in awe. But from what I could tell, this armor seemed like a strange mix of a tuxedo and sweats. Did all that mana get suck into the armor, Appa? Yeah, I think so. I answered carefully as I wasn't sure myself. This metallic armor that didn't hinder my movements was indeed mysterious, but it was still hard to believe that a single armor could absorb the amount of mana that could have ended Earth. Armor, information. The dungeon's power can't be used right ah. Because all the energy in the area was sucked into the magic circle, the power nullifying the dungeon's power was also annihilated, and we could now open our inventories or go into the dungeon. Moreover, I could feel the dungeon's power returning. My depleted mana was filling back up. I immediately shouted, feeling a sense of omnipotence with my replenishing mana. Great Sherafina, show me what you can do. Tell me the armor's options. Ah well, that's what I expected. Chapter, 323. Kong Shin, how is it? I'll tell you later. I answered half-heartedly and pointed below us where the magic circle had disappeared completely. Realizing that the raging demonic energy had calmed down, the surviving demons began to cast magic even whilst they were confused. For now, Greenland, done. Loki slowly descended. Feeling a surging flame energy around Lakis' mouth, Luna made cute noises and flapped her wings to strengthen it. Yua quickly ordered the mantises to fall back. Surprisingly, they were still fighting the demons. Almost no signs of life left, on the ground. Finish it in one blow, Loki. Goo. Loki roared with the intention of frying every demon left on the ground. At the same time, his mouth opened widely. Immediately, intense flames that could scorch even death poured down. Demons frantically threw magic at the flames, but there was nothing they could do against a king's flames. One hour later, we happily hopped down on the still heated ground. Hmm, there's nothing left alive on the ground. I spoke as I looked around and made a bitter smile. Daisy then rebutted me. Have to be, thorough. Demons, possess world's power. Left alone, they'll reproduce. Don't worry, they aren't in Greenland. Is Greenland, small? No, it's 21 times bigger than Korea. Then how, did you know? Daisy asked, but I was surprised in my own way. Eh, how did I know? You shouldn't, ask me that. Yiyun then hopped in. Maybe Shin's ability suddenly increased. No. I'm still growing, but my detection range was only the size of Korea before. There's no way it suddenly multiplied over 20 times. I think that's already amazing. Of course, the only thing that was different was the armor I was wearing. I see, so this armor can multiply my detection range. In any case, I was able to confirm that no demons were left in Greenland. If there was one and I couldn't detect him, that demon had to be the demon lord. Daisy then tilted her head and asked. It gave up, defense. Of course not. I think. I shouted in denial. No matter how amazing this armor boosted my detection range, it would be useless as an armor if it lost its defensive power. Yiyun then held up her dagger and asked. Shin, should we test it? Should we? Though I was a bit worried, it was true that I needed to test its defensive capability. I held my arm out with a bit of nervousness. Go ahead. On. Ait. Kayak. After striking down with full strength, Yiyun suddenly screamed as she was shot back. Flustered, I shot forward and grabbed her before she landed. However, the force she was under was stronger than I thought. Simply put, even I would be thrown back with her if I wasn't careful. What happened? I got flung back when I tried to attack. Hying, that hurt. It hurt. Could it be? I looked down at my arm where Yiyun tried to hit. As expected, there wasn't a crack, much less a scratch. I also didn't feel anything touch me. It looks like it can reflect attacks too. Of course, the important part was how much this armor could reflect. At times like this, there was only one person I could rely on. The image of a draconian giving a thumbs up appeared in my head. No, now that I thought about it, it wasn't a thumbs up, it was a middle finger. That armor, how do you take it, off? 
now that you mention it. I was completely covered by the armor. There weren't any holes in the joints either. Though that might sound like perfection in terms of defense, it meant hell when trying to take it off. Of course, considering how comfortable it was, there was no problem wearing it constantly, but that would be too embarrassing. At that moment, as though it detected my mana entering a non-combat state, the armor let out a bright light. Starting from the boots, the armor turned into a sticky substance similar to tar and began to crawl up my body. Wow, Shin, it's like a slime. Don't say that. My horn then let out a faint light. The tar climbing up my body reacted to the light and was sucked into the horn. Soon, the armor covering my body disappeared completely, and I could feel that it was inside my horn. Hmm, I think I know now. Know how creepy, the armor is. No. Rather than an armor, it was more like a lump of energy with self-intellect that protected its owner. Being an armor was the most efficient way to do its job. It made sense why Sherafina couldn't see through it. The composition of this armor consisted of the demon's power which nullified the dungeon's power, and an immeasurable amount of mana and demonic energy. It even had the original power of pure black desire, and the world's power Elian used to possess. In a way, this object was on a completely different dimension than the dungeon. Pure black desire was an item Lin made using the materials I brought. As Lin desired to escape from the dungeon's influence, it wasn't strange that the result of pure black desire's evolution was this. It wasn't possible to check the information of this object. As Sherafina couldn't read it, it couldn't be put into stats or skills. Since the stat boost pure black desire gave was gone, under the dungeon system, it could be said that I suffered a severe loss. However, I didn't think so. Especially now when the dungeon's position was unclear, becoming isolated from the dungeon's influence was a good thing. Even without stat boosts, I knew the terrifying amount of mana it carried, and I knew it was using it to protect me. Even if a monster ignoring the dungeon's power appeared, there would be nothing it could do to lessen this armor's power. This in itself made me satisfied. Of course, how the armor looked was a different matter. With that, we completed our Greenland subjugation. I was used to fighting a king, a duke or whatnot whenever I went to clean up an area, but this time, we were almost all killed. Because of the eerie words the duke said, it suddenly dawned on me that I would be meeting the demon lord soon. I had to finish what I could in the dungeon as quickly as possible. A strong hunch urged me on. So, this is the result of the evolution. You're looking at it. Lin scanned the armor covering my body and said with a smirk. Should I call you Cayman Rider? Spare me. I couldn't see Leon, who I expected to be with him. Noticing me looking around, Lin mentioned. Leon went to climb the dungeon. Every time he learns something, I'm sending him to the dungeon so he can experience it with his body. I see. How is he? Pretty good. Lin spoke briefly. He seemed to have thought it wasn't a good explanation as he added a bit after. He's better than I expected. His character is fantastic too. That's great. But of course, he's lacking compared to you. Still, he's satisfactory. If you weren't around, he might have been okay as the hero. Coming from Lin, he must be so good that you want to give him kisses and hugs. What? Are you doubting my honest evaluation? Well, isn't Lin a son? No, never mind. Lin glared at me for a moment and snorted. Anyways, come over here. I'll look at it closely. Thanks. There's also something I want to request specifically. Can you see if it still has its skills? Skills. You didn't extract it. Skills are part of an armor's power. I didn't extract it in case it would affect its evolution. So you aren't so stupid after all. I put my arm out, and Lin lightly struck it with a hammer. Immediately, he gasped and almost let go of his hammer. His strike had been reflected back. You didn't say anything on purpose. Yep. You little. After bickering for a bit, Lin began to re-examine my armor. His unique crimson aura seemed to caress my armor. After some time later, Lin let out a faint groan and took his aura back completely. A monster among monsters. That magical tool. 
I don't know whether it was created to be like that, or if it somehow transformed because of the world's power Elian put in. Did you find anything out? Yeah. First, all the skills flew out the window. God damn. I should have extracted sacrifice at least. Desire Thorn, which amplified the power of charge type attacks and stole the enemy's health, and Devour, which stole the enemy's health when my HP fell below 10%, were also amazing. But compared to Sacrifice which doubled my attack power, they were lacking. Of course, because my recent battles wouldn't have ended pretty if I used Sacrifice, it didn't see much use, but it was still regrettable. But there's a new skill I could decipher. You should say that first. Rather than a skill, it's an authority. Extort. Extort. The attack reflecting power of this armor is a passive effect of extort. It's stealing the enemy's attack to attack them back. It looks like the skills that were in pure black desire had some effect on it. Extort. Now that I think about it, both Devourer and Desire Thorn stole health from the enemy. So they combined and evolved to become this ability? I closed and opened my left hand. Thinking back, I already experienced a portion of Extort's power when the armor was created. Not only did it devour the remains of the demons, it even extorted the magic circle and made it its own power. Not to mention, it even nullified the final suicide explosion the duke tried to do. Extort. It was indeed an ability befitting an armor made by collection of demonic essence. That thing is connected to you. It's not an equipment that protects you externally, but something that's become a part of you. Understand? It may look like an armor now, but it's absolutely not an armor. Calling that an armor would be an insult to all the armors I've made so far. I think so too. This isn't an armor. That's also why I called it an authority. Extort can't be used against something or someone stronger than you. Huh, I didn't think it could reflect the demon lord's final attack or anything either. At that moment, Lin shoved his face towards me. His handsome face was twisted in a frown. That's why it's more dangerous. As you get stronger, extort will also get stronger. Do you understand why I called it extort? It's because I can't express it in a more detailed way. As long as you have the ability, this authority of yours can steal anything using any method. It's in the realm of a god. Can you move your face back first? I grabbed his shoulders and pushed him away. This armor has the power of a god. Like a true name. It's not the armor. It's you, Kong Shin. Ha. Huh. I told you before. That's not an armor, but a part of you. Lin spoke with a grin. You became a god. Chapter, 324. I also replied with a grin. Don't speak nonsense, Lin. Are you ignoring me, you little bastard? I can tell. This thing is definitely tied to me, but it's not purely my power. Not for now, at least. Humph, well, you're not wrong. It can't be that easy to become a god. Right? A god is something more. I stopped in the middle of my sentence. I didn't want to say something I had to clear idea about. Instead, I scratched my head, or rather, my armor. Lin then laughed and spoke. So what are you going to call it? Since you said it wasn't a part of you, shouldn't you need a name to call it? You're right. Hmm, I don't know what metal it's made of, so we'll just call it something basic. Like steel. As I thought, you have no naming sense. It's better than pure black desire. I stuck my tongue out at Lin, but ended up licking Steel's metal. Because of how comfortable it was, I kept forgetting that I was wearing it. Did you find out anything else? Like its weakness. Oh, like the increased chance of receiving a critical hit that pure black desire had? Yes. Penalties like those all disappeared. The only problem is pure black desire's properties completely disappeared. As you can probably feel it, its stat boost is gone completely. Mana and demonic energy broke through their limit and condensed into a what's almost a semi-organism. Don't expect anything other than extort. So extort is all I have to remember. Yep. To be honest, all ancient artifacts are like that. Items related to the dungeon have all sorts of random effects, but lack a unique authority. 
Do you know the concept of ambience? Like aura. Lin frowned, so I quickly shook my head. I'm kidding, I know. I'm just surprised Lin knows Earth's artistic theory. Humph, who says other worlds are different from Earth? Ambience is an unseen distinctive atmosphere or quality. An object with ambience is the kind of thing that presents victory to a seemingly disadvantaged side. Lin has something like that. You've seen it before. With that, Lin gestured at his empty back. I immediately knew what he meant. His sniper rifle. The gun that killed the leader of the book walkers, a world's enemy in one blow. As I thought, it wasn't a normal weapon. Ancient artifacts right, they had a rather pure flavor. A blacksmith's ability is important, but they were mostly created for miracles. The product of coincidences, an original. Items of the latter generation were naturally compared to items of certain elements or types that were created before, so their league and ambience fell. Item ranks like rare, unique, epic, legend, or god are dependent on how much ambience an item has. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Of course it is. It's just a speculation I made from how Lord assigns ranks to items. I laughed. Lin pointed at steel and continued. That's the first original I've seen in a long time, one that surpasses many of the others. Just thinking about how much I helped in its creation gives me joy. Of course, it was also helped by your ability as its user and a miraculous background. Like I said, rather than the ability of blacksmiths, artifacts. Are the products of coincidences born from miracles? I got it. It'll take good care of it. Show it to Elian too. She must be curious. I will. It'll be off then. Take care of Leon. Yeah, don't come back. Lin retorted half jokingly and I gave him a glare before leaving Fairy Garden. As I couldn't ignore Lin's words, I visited Elian too. She must have realized Steel's value at a glance as she immediately offered gold for it. I gave her a refreshing smile and left Loft Valley's guild area. In the last venture, not only did I gather an overflowing amount of death energy, I also grew stronger and evolved my armor. Now, it was time to return to the dungeon. When I entered the 87th floor, a bullet shot toward me without a moment of delay. It aimed straight for the middle of my forehead. I considered dodging it, but decided to receive it to test Steel's defense. I reached out with my hand. When the fast-traveling bullet struck the center of my palm, it changed direction and flew back the way it came from in the same speed. I stared at the bullet in a daze. A moment later, I realized that extort could pretty much reflect all attacks. Boom! An explosion rang out in the far distance. You destroyed 1% of the Eliminator's main body. Then, Sheriffina's seemingly shocked message rang out. As I thought, the super long-range attack was coming from the main body. Though Sheriffina didn't reply, I knew I was right. On the 86th floor, I had to face two types of attacks. One was constant snipes from an unknown distance away, and the other was an army of robots with all sorts of fire weapons. At first, I thought there were robots with sniper rifles, but even after getting used to the robots' mana, I couldn't detect any hints of the sniper shots. As expected, they were coming from the main body rather than robots. The only mystery now was how it was pinpointing me from such a distance, and also how it was damaged when steel reflected it. What happens if I kill the Eliminator now using this method? Obviously, this was one of the first things that crossed my mind. Sheriffina didn't answer me for a while, but she soon came with an answer. That won't happen. Oh. I grinned and charged forward. At first, I planned to use death energy to corrupt the robots, then use Dorda's power to take control of them. However, now that I had steel, it was a different story. To be frank, an enemy of a lower league could no longer do anything against me. When I reached this conclusion, I grew a bit afraid of myself. With my evil eyes and Dorda's power, I could petrify all SS rank monsters, but now, I could even reflect all of their attacks. Even I didn't want to fight with myself. Of course, this attack reflection had other limitations other than the enemy's league. It was that it used my mana whenever the ability activated. 
but with Pryuta circuit and absolute soul, I could suck in mana from anything around me. In other words, if an enemy of a lower league wanted to penetrate Steel's reflection, the only option was to barrage me with highly destructive attacks and drain my mana to zero. In this way, the surest way to defeat me was the Eliminator's army of robots. Even now, they were shooting a seemingly endless amount of bullets. Although it would take a long time, they should be able to injure me. The main Boda's super long-range snipes should help too. Unfortunately for them, Steel wasn't the only tool at my disposal. I am Dortu. Another day of arduous work ahead. Can you stop talking like that, Dortu? Previously, Dortu needed a long time to take control of a single robot. But the robots on the 87th floor weren't too different compared to the robots on the 86th floor. With the experience he had, it only took him one hour to control a robot that fell to the floor after being hit by its own bullet. I am Dortu. Dorda's getting the hang of doing arduous work. Now you're doing that on purpose. On the other hand, I was slowly getting used to reading the trajectories of the robot's bullets. While Dorda did his thing, I constantly moved around and tried to read the trajectories of the thousands of bullets and cannon shells, which was now possible with my mana detection being incomparably stronger than before. You destroyed 5% of the Eliminator's main body. Even while I dodged most of the attacks, I made sure to receive the snipes that flew at me occasionally. Although I could only detect this bullet when it came close, it was still possible for me to dodge it. But why would I? I could destroy the enemy ID meet on the 90th floor beforehand. Sherafina's messages telling me of my progress was sounding more and more bitter too. Clearing the 87th floor only took half the time of the 86th floor. While passing through the 87th floor, I considered testing extort other than its passive attack reflection aspect. But this ability wasn't something that would increase in power with more use. Since it would grow naturally with my league, I decided to save it for now. A trump card had to used only when necessary. Of course, that didn't mean I wouldn't use extort's power at all. I was already using it to reflect attacks, and if I needed to, I would use it to full effect. I jumped into Beyond's 37th floor without resting for even a bit and faced further strengthened vampire lords. They poured powerful attacks the moment they met me and retired from life immediately after. As I only had to watch my mana running out, I felt a bit bad passing through Beyond like this. Come to think of it, this isn't that useful for training. That said, I would have steel for the rest of my life, so I wouldn't need to get experienced in fighting enemies who couldn't break through steel's reflection. Still, the dungeon had to have monsters that were capable of doing so. Not these fake vampire lords, but the real floor master. Just like that, I cleared beyond's 37th floor quicker than the first dungeon's 87th floor. Immediately afterwards, I went up to the 88th floor. As I felt many things while defeating the demon's duke, I wanted to increase my league as quickly as possible. On the 88th floor, on top of the robots from the previous floors, there were robots attacking me from close range with swords made with aura-like mana essence. These robots were quicker than the robots armed with guns or cannons, but they still weren't able to overcome extort. To clear the 88th floor as quickly as possible, I charged forward. Until suddenly. A giant missile fell down from the middle of the sky. Chapter, 325. Facing the missile, my jaws dropped in disbelief. You're dropping missiles now because guns don't work. Isn't that too much? The missile wasn't just large. Its power and the sheer amount of mana in it were simply absurd. Without giving me the chance to avoid it, the missile fell directly on my head. Well, to be honest, I didn't think about avoiding it. The missile detonated, as a missile normally would upon hitting its target. The only problem was that a huge torrent of energy erupted right on top of my head. Then, perhaps expectedly, I clearly saw the torrent disappear as though it was sucked in by something. A bolt of lightning seemed to flash in my head. Seeing not just bullets but this immense energy missile disappear, I understood completely. Not long after, a booming sound thundered across the sky. It was incomparably louder than when I reflected bullets. You destroyed 19% of the Eliminator's main body. I wonder what ITLL shoot next. Just in case, I stood in place and waited for a moment, but no more explosives headed my way. 
Almost as if it used all of its energy in the previous ordeal, the Eliminator's main body went quiet for the rest of the 88th floor. However, the 89th floor was a different story. A truly unbelievable amount of robots greeted me from the start. There were more of them than the demons I killed in Greenland. There were 10 times more robots compared to the 88th floor and 30 times compared to the 87th. This wasn't normal. No dungeon floor had ever had so many monsters. Though, these guys are robots, not monsters. Just how the hell did you guys lose with all this? I shouted as though I was wronged and charged towards them. Immediately, hundreds of thousands of robots barraged me with bullets. Even if reflecting one bullet only cost one mana, blocking them all would cost me hundreds of thousands. The absurdity of the situation made me speechless. I am Dortu. Commence an arduous work. Don't say that so calmly like you pushed a nuke button. You're not even understanding the meaning of that phrase. Dorta flew off. I had no idea where to begin, but it wasn't like I had any other choice than to fight. First, I summoned Sharana. Sharana, come inside me and strengthen me. Yes, master. The moment Sharana entered my body, I felt lighter and steel let out a brighter radiance. That was to be expected. Steel was a part of me. If I got stronger, steel also got stronger. The amount of mana I needed to steal the enemy's attack also lessened. Although having Sharana infused inside me used up mana, this was still much more efficient in terms of mana. Talaria. Pedasus. World Trickery. Holding my spear up, I charged forward fiercely, reflecting back all bullets hitting me. From multiple places, robots were blowing up. As extorted attacks came to carry some of my own power, all bullets were reflected back a stage greater than the original. As a result, a single reflected attack was enough to kill the original attacker. Yo! With a spirited shout, I charged forward. The 89th floor had so many robots that it was as though the Eliminator brought robots from other floors to it. But was that even possible? Well, thinking about it now, this was the first time I could attack the floor master from a normal floor. Sherafina's influence clearly became weaker the higher I went in the dungeon and floor masters became stronger. In that sense, it was totally possible for a floor master to be able to control what appears on its subordinate floors. But if that were really the case, then what I thought of while watching the Eliminator's attacks would be cold hard truth. It would mean that the Eliminator didn't just have the ability to control all weapons. It had another ability that, together with its ability to control weapons, allowed it to conquer a world. Kook, my manas running low. I gritted my teeth and grumbled. Even though I was fully utilizing Absolute Soul and Peruta Circuit, the sheer amount of robots was making it hard for my mana recovery speed to hold up. Did the Eliminator already find out how to counter my reflection? I am Dortu. Acquired one robot. How long do you need to get enough to deal with these guys? I am Dortu. I need about 20 hours. Got it. Thanks. I cleanly gave up trying to receive Dortus' help. While my mana continued to decline, I charged forward relentlessly. Close combat robots ran at me with what seemed like beam sabers, but I easily sliced their heads off with my spear. Meanwhile, an uncountable number of bullets struck my body, being reflected back to their shooters. It was the same for rockets and cannon shells. Although my mana was falling rapidly, the robots were dying at a similar pace. I am Dortu. Acquired 100 robots. Good job. I swung my spear. After destroying the arms of three robots, I shot the spear's aura forward, cutting apart several tens of robots at once. The explosions they caused also reflected back burning other robots and causing them to explode. I don't have a lot of mana left. Even with mana potions, I wasn't recovering much mana. Something like a mana elixir might be different, but ordinary mana potions were no longer enough to offer much help. I gritted my teeth. Even though I had already killed over a hundred thousand robots, that wasn't even close to half of the robots present. Facing the killing intent of these carefully manufactured machines, something seemed to boil inside me. Hugh come at me. I let out a hearty shout and gulped down a mana potion. 
At the same time, I activated one of my hidden cards, the Succubus Queen's Tattoo. Immediately, my mana filled back up to full. I had only recently obtained Steel. Even without it, there was no way I would lose to the Eliminator. The robots pulled their triggers. Bullets, cannon shells, and rockets flew towards me. Quite literally, they were coming from all sides. There was nothing I could do to dodge them. What if these guys really came to Earth? Surely, Earth would face its doom in a single day. I had very little options. I endured the relentless attacks using Steel's ability. A portion of the attacks hit each other and detonated before reaching me, but the majority of them flew my way consecutively without a hint of error in flight routes. The world in front of me became white. However, I couldn't feel any pain. All attacks returned to their owners, and the remaining robots detonated altogether. As steel also reflected back the resulting huge explosion, my mana was falling down quicker than ever before. Without the succubus queen's tattoo, I might have run out of mana. I just hoped I would never have to meet another enemy that attacked in such quantity. Please. I am Dortu. The robot's Dortu controlled exploded. Now wasn't the time to think about that. With half the robots disappearing in the previous exchange, the number of robots didn't seem so endless anymore. But I don't have any mana left. First, I need to use Peruta circuit to cook. I closed my mouth in the middle of my sentence. There was an enemy I had to defeat first. As if it was waiting for this moment the entire time, from the tip of my toes to the top of my head, a dreadful killing intent and a wave of mana surged, squeezing me from all sides. The Eliminator was aiming at me from 360 degrees, from every possible angle. Chance of avoiding, 1. 7%. For the first time, I heard its voice. Somewhat expectedly, it was a machine-like voice devoid of any emotion. You were an excellent enemy. But now, your weapon will become mine. As I thought, you can't just control any weapon. You have to defeat it first. Much like how things are most of the time, you have to prove your qualification first. Fire. The Eliminator didn't seem keen on chatting with me, as with a single word, he fired thousands of missiles at me. An army of missiles suddenly appeared in thin air and flew toward me. Could I dodge it if I utilized divine speed to its full effect? Impossible. As such, I deactivated world trickery. The enormous amount of mana I'd been hiding filled my body. For a moment, the Eliminator seemed to have flinched, but there was no way for it to know affirmatively. If someone were looking at me in the next moment, he would think that the sun had descended to earth. Centered around my body, an enormous torrent of energy erupted. Of course, soon enough, all of this energy was absorbed into air. I sighed and resumed Peruta circuit. Now, I really didn't have any mana left. Your mana how? Before I drank my mana potion, I was slightly changing my mana consumption amount so you could see it. Simple, right? You're not a hero but a scammer. If I didn't use the succubus queen's tattoo, I really would have died. But the succubus queen's tattoo was always within my calculations as I used world trickery to increase the amount of mana needed to reflect each attack. With Pedasus increasing my calculative ability, it would have been impossible to trick the Eliminator. I gulped down another mana potion and grinned. Got you, didn't I? But I was prepared. It even knew I would trick it. Immediately afterwards, a truly humongous missile, more than ten times the size of the one I faced on the 88th floor, fell towards me. Just how the heck was a missile like that even shot? Then, without any twist, the missile exploded above my head. A thundering boom similar to the time I threw a sweet potato rang out. Although it wasn't quite as powerful, the difference wasn't too big as I was standing right underneath it. If my HP ran out under such a force, could Sherafina save me before it was too late? I didn't think so. Within a white blur of nothingness, I closed my eyes and murmured. It's over. A long while later, Seemingly after Sherafina had time to process what happened, a message rang out. You destroyed 99% of the Eliminator's main body. I threw down the empty bottle of mana potion. Immediately, it transformed into an elixir bottle. I had only hit its energy with world trickery, 
but the Eliminator was surprisingly easily tricked. To add on, when I activated the Succubus Queen's tattoo before, I drank a normal mana potion while acting like it was some amazing potion. Drinking two elixirs consecutively caused one's body to be destroyed. For mana potions, drinking two consecutively wasn't allowed at all. However, there was nothing wrong with drinking an elixir after drinking a mana potion. I had hidden the existence of the Succubus Queen's tattoo, using the mana recovery it gave me to make it seem as though I drank an elixir. That was my first and final trick. My goal was to make the Eliminator think there was no way for me to recover my mana. Clearly, it had worked perfectly. With the previous explosion, all of the robots on the 89th floor had turned to dust. With nothing to stop me, I began to walk towards the end of the floor. I am Dortu. Master is mean. Sorry, but it's like they say, you have to fool your ally if you want to fool your enemy. Dortu, who worked tirelessly to no result, complained, and I consoled him with a grin. To make my trick seem more believable, I had not even told Dortu about it. It wasn't that I believed the Eliminator wouldn't get fooled. I simply thought he might have prepared for the worst possible situation. The elixir I disguised using world trickery was one solution to his preparation, and if that didn't work, I even had Overlord. No matter how I thought about it, it was a battle I couldn't lose. It was simple to say that the victor of this battle was the side that read the enemy's moves more, but there was key point to consider. Regardless of how many moves each side prepared, it was only the Eliminator that took damage. I used mana, which was recoverable, while the Eliminator used its main body, which wasn't recoverable. This was a huge advantage in this head game. Not to mention, my instant judgment skill and speed was heightened by Pedasus. If I felt like it, I could have dodged the Eliminator's bullets and missiles. The Eliminator was strong. It was potentially the worst enemy to face with steel. However, the Eliminator lacked magic power and league. That was the reason for its loss. If you wanted to win, you should have brought three times more firepower at least. Wait for me on the 90th floor. I destroyed 99% of you, so you'll have to work hard with the remaining 1% if you want to win. I sneered and quickened my pace. Using my mana detection, I could already sense the end of the dungeon floor, the 89th floor shop, and Loretta smiling and waving her hand. Chapter, 326 See you, Loretta. Shin Nim, you haven't slept for two weeks. When I met Loretta, I gave my goodbye as always and tried to head to the next floor. However, Loretta held me back. Shin Nim has superhuman powers, and I know Shin Nim is growing even now. Soon, Shin Nim might even reach my level. But you still need to rest. There's no way you'll be a match for. As I turned around, I laughed at what Loretta said. Then, I stopped. Can you see it now? Loretta spoke with a faint smile. It was as she said. Looking at her directly, I felt as though I could take her on. This didn't come from a simple estimate of her mana. It came from the intuition of a warrior comparing his league against his opponents. But Loretta was far away not too long ago what happened. That's how fast Shin Nim is growing. For others, it becomes harder to take the next step the further they go, but it's the opposite of Shin Nim. Shin Nim was slow to grow at first, but now, Shin Nim's mana, league, and body are all growing by the day. Do you think that's because of the dungeon? No. I slowly shook my head. Absolute soul, Pryuta circuit. Beast king and the other's kings I absorbed mana from. The most recent extort. All of these didn't just end after I obtained them. Even now, they were slowly yet explosively growing. My body grew sturdier by the day, while my muscles grew stronger, the charm in my horn grew more powerful, and my mana multiplied. Even if I was facing a million of myself from a year ago, I had the confidence to crush them with a single punch. If even a little more external power flows into Shin Nim, Shin Nim will explode. For now, you need to make the power you have yours. I have time. You need time. I originally planned to just watch until Shin Nim reached the 90th floor, but I didn't think Shin Nim would get stronger while crossing the 89th floor. Ah. I did think I got stronger when I almost completely destroyed the Eliminator. 
It would be silly if I didn't gain anything after experiencing such a torrential storm of mana and reflecting it back. Loretta reached her hand out. Immediately, the gate to Fairy Garden appeared. I thought one needed the key Loretta gave me before to enter Fairy Garden, but seeing Loretta and Fairy Garden's other members, it seemed they could enter and leave Fairy Garden freely. Most likely, the key was only needed by an outsider like me. Loretta gestured at me. Come, let's take a lesson. With Shin Nim's current mana, that might be possible. All right, fine. I knew what she was talking about. Dimensional travel. Since she was going this far, there was no reason for me to refuse. With a bitter smile, I grabbed Loretta's hand. She made a satisfied smile and stepped into the gate. In the next moment, I found myself in front of Loretta's log cabin. I let out a deep sigh. Since I was the one who wanted this, I had no plans to go back. But Loretta, how long do I need to rest for? Not too long. A month or two should be enough. Ha! Huh. I rebutted. Loretta laughed, and I did too. I asked. You're kidding, right? Should we start? It seemed she wasn't. I attempted to back away, but Loretta grabbed my arm at lightning speed. It was still too early for me to be a match for her strength. You're only teaching dimensional travel, right? Of course, Shin Nim. Of course. Why did you say that twice? There was no point in resisting any further. The door to the log cabin opened, then closed. Only after two full months later did Loretta give me the okay to climb the dungeon. It's perfect now. How is it, Shin Nim? I think I understand dimensional travel better now. Geez, not that. Though, that's amazing too. I had Pedasus, a cheat ability that tripled the speed of my thoughts. Without this ability, it would have taken longer to establish the foundation for dimensional travel. Of course, this wasn't the only thing Loretta was talking about. She was also talking about the immense energy filling me up. Now, I can call everything mine, except steel. It's already unbelievable that you managed to perfectly control such a huge energy in such a short time. Anyone else would have taken at least 20 years. Shin Nim's talent isn't just extraordinary anymore, it's freaky. I simply smiled at what Loretta said. Things that came easily to me were hard for others to do. But that wasn't anything uncommon. There were many that I couldn't do that others could do easily. In the past, I didn't understand why that was the case, but since this was just how I was born, I had no plans to throw my weight around and act superior. But of course, that didn't mean I would allow the opposite to happen. I simply thought I was lucky to have been born with the potential to get stronger. In leaving then. I have to take care of some things and climb the dungeon. Yes, have a safe trip. With that, Loretta pushed her lips towards me. I honed myself during the past two months, but I still couldn't do anything against Loretta's charm. It was simply too strong for me to reject. As soon as Loretta let me go, I returned to the guild house and found father drinking alone. It sure is hard to see my son's face. Did you visit another world again? I told you, I had to spend some time to clean up the energy within me. I learned something new too. Come to think of it, didn't I come visit from time to time? It's not like I was imprisoned. You change so much each time that it feels like it's been a while. I smiled and scanned the room. As expected, there was no one else. Where's Walker? Doesn't he usually drink with you? He's in the first dungeon now. He's been working himself tirelessly recently to climb even a single floor more. With Sophie, of course. Kook. What father said made me realize how much time had passed. Although I came to visit once every few days, I didn't have the time to meet with each guild member. I see, now that Walker was in the first dungeon, Revival's members were now all climbing the first dungeon. Wait. Then why was father drinking here alone? When I gave father a curious look, he let out a hearty laugh and closed his mouth. I asked with a grin. You died. You shouldn't poke your father's weakness like that, son. I should when I can. It seems I thought you well. I learned from the best. As I replied to father, 
I sat down across him and handed him an empty cup. He then made a pleased smile and filled the cup. You died too. You know I can't go around dying now. Then did you suddenly learn to take things slower? You're always in a rush. There's a good reason I'm in a rush it's not like I can ask someone else to do my job. Father didn't say anything. Although father had also gotten stronger in the past two months, the two of us were now too far apart in strength to even compare. Father put down his drink with a bitter smile. I'm sorry to hear that. I wanted to always stand by your side as a reliable father, but what I can do. I just have too good of a son. It's fine, father. We don't have much time left anyways. I can handle it. With that, I emptied my cup. Was what I said unexpected? Father also took a sip with a bitter look. My son's going too far, too fast. I wanted to raise him strong, but I didn't want to raise him an old man. I smacked my lips. I didn't expect to get such a reaction just by saying ill fulfill my responsibility. Since I didn't know what to say, I stayed silent. Father also seemed to felt awkward, as he scratched his head and filled my cup back up. Why don't we have a spar after this? Your father's gotten stronger recently, so it should be helpful. Of course, father. Ah, uh, by the way, where's Paul? He's spending all his time doing the training regime you assigned him. Do you want to see him? Yes. I need to pass him the rest of his power. A hero shouldn't be away from his world for too long. When I thought about Paul, my body shot up automatically. He'll have another drink here alone. Call Samire too. Got it. I immediately looked for Paul. Like father said, he was fully concentrated in his training without even thinking to climb the dungeon. I thought you forgot. I did, once. Has it been a week? You. I blocked Paul's shield and calmed him down. Sorry for being late. It took a while to settle everything. Mm no, it's more important that you train yourself. I can't really complain. As expected, Paul quickly understood my position. If anything, his character was great. I didn't just play around. I can give you the rest of your power now. Rest? Isn't there over a half of it left? Yeah. Come here. Paul approached me half in doubt and slowly sat down with his back towards me. I placed my hand on his back and pushed the rest of Edia's continent's power into him. Paul flinched, and soon became immersed in properly receiving the energy. Without being able to speak a word, he struggled to control the energy I passed him. I stood by his side and prevented Edia's continent's energy from going berserk by injecting him with my massive mana. An unknown amount of time later, Paul opened his eyes in shock. This is what it feels to be a hero. It doesn't feel like anything changed at all. You'll feel it soon. Your shoulders will start getting heavy. What about you? Isn't it heavy? If it was, I would throw it away. That's just how I am. So you're saying you don't feel burdened at all now? No, but to do what I want to do, I have to protect Earth first. So my responsibility as a hero doesn't burden me at all. With that, I stayed silent for a moment. Then, I told Paul. Go back to Edia's now. You have something to do there. Yeah. Paul answered after a moment of silence. Now, Paul's connection with Earth was gone. He wasn't from Earth, and the Edia's continent was still warring with its invaders. Plus, Edia's continent also had the Pryuta mountain range. Or was that different? Suddenly, Paul began to roll his feet. I can't let me join you too. Don't be crazy and go back to Edia's. You have a job to do there. It's fine, it's not like you'll be fighting the demon lord here. I won't be in danger. And with my power, I can help protect Earth from other monsters. Like I said, don't be crazy and go back. What if you die? I have to protect Edia's with my own power alone. If I die here, I would have had no hope in Edia's anyways. I smiled. Paul, go back. Kong Shin. I'm not someone who doesn't know how to pay back his debt. No, Paul. Go back. I turned around and continued. 
Like I said, there's something you need to do there. Paul widened his eyes. I shrugged and smiled. Anyone who saw it would agree that it was a terrifyingly evil smile. Chapter, 327 Paul went back to Edias immediately. As he had gotten stronger while toiling with Revival's members, I knew he would do just fine. After sending Paul off, I went down to the training room. As expected, father and Samire were sparring. I waited until their spar ended to reveal my presence. Samayar stabbed her spear into the ground and leaned against it to catch her breath. When she saw me, she jumped up in surprise. S. Shin Nim. You were here. Yeah. You sure are improving fast. I'm happy to see you're trying hard. He he he. While embarrassed, Samayar couldn't hide her happiness. But father, who was standing next to her, clicked his tongue. That's no way to woo a woman. Instead of exchanging your spears, you should take her out for tea or something. Sumire's my disciple. I retorted back at his nonsense, as I immediately went up to spar with father. Leaving mana and skills aside, we fought purely with our physical strength and spear technique. As father was also high up in the dungeon, his physical strength was suitably great. As he was the one who taught me spearmanship, his spear technique didn't need to be explained either. But of course, I was now much stronger than him. Monster. I gave birth to a monster. You didn't give birth to anyone, father. It was mother. Although we only sparred for a short five minutes, father fell to the ground covered in sweat. I then turned toward Samire, whose eyes were sparkling with excitement. All right, let's see how much you improved. Yes, Shin Nim. As Sumire's style was different than father's, sparring with her was more fun. Attacking with her spear and defending with her shield. However, her offense and defense weren't limited to these obvious methods. If the chance arrived, she freely attacked with her shield and defended with her spear. Her shield technique was in a realm I couldn't offer any advice on, and she was firmly establishing her one-handed spear technique style. Thankfully, I could still help her in this aspect and I helped her fix several problems throughout our spar. Thank you for this match. Shin Nim really is amazing. Why didn't you say that to me? Ah, uh, Second Master is amazing too. Thanks. So son, when are you going to the dungeon? After swinging my spear a couple times, and if possible, after seeing Waya and Ina. In planning on clearing Beyond's 39th floor, first dungeon's 90th floor, and beyond's 40th floor in one go. Father nodded, then spoke firmly. My new daughter has been busy with Sierra recently. You should go to Earth if you can. Got it. When I gave Samaya a glance, she nodded without hesitation. It seems Uni is trying to predict the next wave of event dungeons. Ah. Indeed, that was one of the most important tasks. I wanted to head to Earth immediately, but because what I said about swinging my spear a couple times made Samire look at me with eyes full of expectation, I had to carry it out with a bitter smile. It was the purely physical technique that I had gotten fairly used to by now. Of course, if I really concentrated all of my power, the guild house would crumble, so I had to hold back. Samire began to call me Takamikazuchi and seemed ready to ask me to show it one more time until the end of the night. Thankfully, I managed to get away from her and return to Earth after showing her a few more times. When I entered the guild house on Earth, I heard a clacking sound in the kitchen and a smelled a sweet aroma. When I entered the kitchen thinking someone else other than Waya and Sierra was here, I found a rather unexpected sight. Ina, don't eat that yet. Are we waiting for daddy? We're going to put it on the cake. Wash it clean and chop it. You can do it, right? Waya was moving around busily in an apron. The source of the sweet aroma was a cake batter full of sugar, which Waya was swirling. I rubbed my eyes. Mommy, when is daddy coming? Samire said she'd hold him back. If we fail, we have to make it again, so hopefully Samire will do a good job. Does daddy like cakes? Shin eats everything. Apparently, he likes sweet things the most. Yungonga Jushi. Father said so, so it must be true. Waya had an extremely bright expression. She looked especially cute when she smiled. Hoo hoo, 
he'll show him I can do it too. Since ITLL be a joint attack with Ina, he won't be able to withstand it. Ina's attacking daddy with mommy? We're going to attack his heart with this cake. Ina likes it too when father's happy, right? Ah, don't cut grape seeds. How did you even cut it? I froze it and split it in half. In good, right? After watching until this part, I silently left. The past me might have barged in to see why his flustered face, but now, the first thing I thought of was to let myself be surprised. But will I be able to act naturally? That was the only thing in my mind. Well, looks like you'll have to take why a failing into account and go to the dungeon. I could also feel Sierra's presence in the guild house. Samire probably wasn't lying when she said Sierra was trying to predict the next wave of dungeons. Once I came back, I would be able to hear about the result. Humming happily, I headed to the dungeon. Even while breaking through Beyond's 39th floor filled with death knights and vampire lords, I couldn't be more lighthearted. A challenger. A challenger really appeared. Past a certain point, monsters in Beyond were all shocked when they saw me. It wasn't because I was strong, it was just because I made it here. He's trying to go higher. Envy is driving me on. Let's make that man kneel down in despair. Our swords hold our resentment from being left without a choice. Are you strong enough to accept them? Stop being so noisy and just come. I pointed my spear towards them and ignited chaos flames on its tip. Beyond was long. If I walked through it as though it was a park, I would need several days to go through it. I had to use divine speed constantly to break through in a day. You guys can't give me what I want anymore. This magic power. H. How can a human possess such an overwhelming magic power? I kicked off the ground. Chaos flames rose up after sucking in my magic power and shot towards the vampire lords and death knights. Chaos flames scorched everything it touched. Although a few lucky death knights managed to dodge the flames, when they tried to attack me with their swords carrying death aura, steel simply sucked in their auras. Thanks for the death energy. The powers I had all worked well together. Absolute soul and crimson hell's power, and now steel's extort. They stole mana from anything and anyone that attacked me and made it mine in the blink of an eye. You can have it back. Back. Quiak. Without integrating the absorbed mana, I directed it to my spear and stuck it inside the monsters in front of me. Attacking all enemies with fast consecutive stabs, it was lightning spear storm. As expected of monsters in Beyond's 39th floor, the Death Knights and Vampire Lords had high magic power and defense. However, there simply wasn't anything they could do against me. Any monster that appeared in front of me turned into particles of light and disappeared thereafter. You dare insult the knights who rule over death. I will show you the true power of death. Please, go ahead. Death knights began to form a magic circle using their death energy. Come, swords of death. Lame. Though that was what I said, the swords they summoned were quite good. It seemed they had to consume their death energy permanently to make them, but they attacked their enemy without having to be held by the death knights. As there were many death knights, the number of swords flying around numbered several hundred. As they also used their special skill, death collection, I couldn't tell whether these guys were knights or sword collectors. But that's still nowhere close to being enough. Show me more. Don't tell me this is all you can do with death energy. Qua, fine, we will. When I mocked the death knight's power, they became enraged and began to pour one black magic after the other. Curse of death. Curse of madness. Curse of pestilence. As expected of death energy, it could form many different kinds of curses. I looked intently at the magic circles they drew and asked. Any other curses? How can you be fine after taking all these curses? A death knight asked in shock. I nodded and replied. That's because I'm immune to curses. Bastard. Well, that was a good lesson. Thanks. When dense death energy flowed into my spear, the death knights flinched and stepped backwards. Using my spear, I drew a giant magic circle in the air. No way. Yes way. He can wield death energy. 
From the black magic circle I drew, many greatswords began to pop out. Although the Death Knights lacked the death energy to summon more than a couple swords at once, I was different. I possessed so much death energy that I had to compress it multiple times. As I was generous with the death energy I used, several hundred greatswords popped out of the magic circle and hovered above the air. I then added Dordus power into the swords. Be it death knights or vampire lords, they couldn't shut their mouths watching this scene. This. Crazy. Didn't you guys teach him? Shut it, you annoying mosquitoes. In the end, they began to fight among themselves. I leisurely shot my great swords at them with a smile. Now, now, if you have anything else you haven't shown, please do so now. Two hours afterwards, after learning all the ways that death knights used death energy in, I freed them for eternity. I then left Beyond's 39th floor. It was now time to eat cake. Chapter, 328 Tada! When I returned to the guild house in Jongnyo, Waya and Aina welcomed me as they spread their arms and showed the cake they made. I thought it was possible that they failed and ended up ordering one from a bakery, but the slightly odd whipped cream decoration and the grape seed I saw Ina cut proved that the cake was homemade. You made it for me? Of course. How is it? Looks as good as a store-bought cake, right? You should first wipe that whipped cream off your face. They must have played around with the whipped cream as Waya's face was full of whipped cream. I thought she left it there on purpose, but judging by her expression, it seemed she had no clue. I approached Waya and wiped the whipped cream off with my fingers. Then, I did the same for Ina. While Ina laughed joyfully and clung to my arm, Waya slightly blushed and complained. Shouldn't you take it off with a kiss or something? That won't even happen in old manwa. Can't you though? Kayak. When I carried out her request, she immediately smacked me. Though she was the one who hit me, she ended up grabbing her hand and groaning in pain. Stupid, do it after my heart's ready. I just did what you told me to. I almost got a heart attack. Daddy, give Ina a kiss too. The daughter was more honest than her mom. When I hugged Ina and gave her a smooch, Waya narrowed her eyes at Ina. I don't know why, but she hates losing to me. You shouldn't be jealous of a kid. Let's just eat the cake. Cook. When the three of us were cutting the cake, Sierra also appeared. Her lips were pouting, which led me to believe she was a bit angry. Can I join now, Wyanim? Yeah, come. I couldn't help but laugh at the clear hierarchy between them. Sierra bowed to me respectfully before finding a seat to sit. Hero Nim, I've been trying for a while, but I can't seem to grasp when the next wave of event dungeons will come. Don't rush it. We should still have some time left. At my words, Waya smiled faintly and spoke. But we should be able to estimate the approximate time. There might be a bit of an error, but it should be in about three months. Three months. You'll keep that in mind for now. I can foresee parts of Hironim fighting the monsters but I can't figure out the location. Sorry, Hironim. My ability is lacking. I sliced off a piece of cake, put it on Sierra's plate, and spoke. You don't need to be sorry. If you're trying your best and still can't do it, then it's not your fault. You can take it slower. Just knowing when is already good. Yes, Hironim. Hearing Sierra's words, something seemed to pop up in my head, but the thought disappeared when I took a bite out of the cake. I only hoped that it was edible, but it seemed Waya was a better cook than I thought. Truthfully, it was delicious. While Waya and Ina made time to make this cake for me, it wasn't like they had ample time to spend freely. Taking the opportunity cost into account, this cake might have been the most expensive cake in the world. Currently, these two expensive-bodied girls were sipping tea next to me as if they didn't want to enter the dungeon, while I enjoyed a second slice of cake. After staring at me intently, Waya suddenly asked. Shin, are you on the 90th floor now? Yeah, I should get it over with quickly. I can't believe I never managed to catch up after being passed. Waya groaned defeatedly, and I stroked her head with a smile. You're already amazing. Humph. You can say that because you're better than me. That's it, I'm going to the dungeon. 
Waya, wait. Hmm. Ah. I stopped Waya and kissed her on the cheek. She widened her eyes. Shin, my stat just rose. That's why I did it. Kissing can raise stats. This time, Waya stopped me. Her eyes were burning passionately. Scary. I immediately confessed. Lo Loretta taught it to me. I can do it now because my league reached a certain point. It's not something anyone can do. Apparently, I can influence others because I can wield Enigma's power and several gods' powers. It's not permanent, but I figured ITLL help while you're in battle. You kissed enough times to learn something like this. As it poked at my consciousness, I couldn't refute what she said. According to Loretta, it was only possible for me to give blessings to others because I was the chosen partner of the elf queen Loretta. In other words, I had been intimate with Loretta to the point that I was recognized as her partner. Instead of giving Waya a direct answer, I replied with a smile. I'll kiss you too to make up for it. That's a different story. So you don't want it? No, I do. I might have given up on monopolizing you, but I can't lose to that woman. Waya, you sure choose to live your life the hard way. Hurry, do it ten more times. Does doing it on the lips have a better effect? Once I gave Waya enough blessings to satisfy her, this time, Ina and Sierra were watching me with sparkling eyes. First, I set Sierra aside as she didn't need to go to the dungeon. Hero Nim, if I receive a blessing, I'm sure I can foresee the exact time and place. That's just an empty illusion. It'll break it for you. Why don't we test it? No need. Go away. Shoo. But I did give a blessing to Ina. Ina simply smiled joyfully, but because of Sierra's increasingly clingy gaze, I also hurriedly escaped to the dungeon. First dungeon's 90th floor. Normally, there were monsters on the way to the floor master room, but the 90th floor was dead silent. No robots appeared and the Eliminator didn't try to snipe me. The only thing I had to do was cross a vast wasteland. Of course, I had an idea as to why this was happening. The Eliminator was likely the one controlling the robots I've been facing since the 86th floor. With only 1% of his main body remaining, he must be having a hard time even breathing. By the time I finished adjusting the cake I ate, I reached the floor master room. Near the end of the wasteland was a single giant iron door that didn't seem to fit in with the surroundings. Though faint, I could feel a bone-chilling energy pulsating inside. Hugh all right. As always, standing in front of a floor master room gave me a sense of tension. While only 1% of his main body remained, it was entirely possible that he was prepared for an instant burst attack. However, a sense of tension of this level didn't hinder a fight. In fact, it helped me prepare for battle and ultimately perform better. After taking another breath, I kicked open the iron door. Fight me, Eliminator. However, what greeted me was a giant ruin. Wow. I looked around. Giant machinery and structures were lined up endlessly, but they were all destroyed. Most of them seemed to have exploded, and the wreckage seemed to be the size of an entire city. If I actually fought here, that would have been quite the scene. I murmured with a smile. Amidst the mountain of scraps continuing endlessly, a conventional weapon seemed to be ditched inside. It vibrated weakly, signaling that the Eliminator wasn't dead yet. Looks like you'll have to find the real main body to end it. It's not over yet. Oh. It seemed the Eliminator even had the energy to rabble. The moment its voice rang out, I detected several presences pop up. Weapons. They were coming from the thrown aside weapons nearby. There were many guns that survived the explosion, but it seemed the Eliminator didn't have enough energy to move them, as the weapons that floated up were cold weapons like swords, spears, axes, and hammers. A weapon with a hero's power if I can have that. You want chaotic spear? You're quite greedy. With a smirk, I raised my spear. However, the Eliminator seemed to have some confidence. In this vast space will you be able to find me? Before then your weapon will become mine. I think I understood what it was saying. The floor master room was no different than its domain. 
Its main body was here, and it was overall the best place for the Eliminator to use its ability to manipulate weapons. Even now, I could feel an invisible hand reaching out toward Chaotic Spear. Though the Eliminator was barely breathing at this point, a world's enemy was still a world's enemy. Well, go ahead to your heart's content. Hugh. Weapons floated up. Countless weapons, similar to what I experienced against the Death Knights, aimed towards me. No, to be exact, they were aiming for my chaotic spear. Judging from what the Eliminator said, it seemed it could absorb the power of a weapon and make it its own. In that case, what I had to find was. Gaia Buster. I shouted valiantly and struck down on the ground. Black lightning shot out from the tip of chaotic spear and ran across the field of ruined machinery. An explosion erupted, but I ignored it completely. Cracks appeared on metals, shattering it and scattering millions of fragments. This is. Let's see if you can hide after I wipe everything off the ground. I raised my spear. That served as a signal. The Eliminator's weapons floating unnervingly in the sky were instantly swept away by Gaia Buster's current. An enormous explosion erupted. I indifferently struck the ground once again. This time, I released pure aura from the spear tip. Then, I easily located the Eliminator's main body. Kook. Let's see if you can run now. I pulled out my spear and swung it. The aura string connected to its tip pulled in an elegant longsword, which I grabbed with my hand. Although I felt an enormous recoil for a moment, Extort blocked a portion of it, and I also raised my aura and thoroughly destroyed it. The sword's defensive barrier shattered, and its real appearance came out. Well, this is surprising. An absurdly sharp and smooth sword body, and a hilt made from a leather of unknown origin. The guard of the hilt contained a green jewel, which shone with periodic light. Your main body is a sword. How, in just two months kook? The Eliminator seemed to be shocked just like me, but for a different reason. Indeed, it was true that I couldn't utilize my aura so freely two months ago. However, just by adding my thoughts about spearmanship into the aura, I learned to control aura like my limbs. But of course, it wasn't something I accomplished alone. Loretta didn't just teach me dimensional travel. She passed down all of her knowledge of mana. It was the kind of knowledge that my past self couldn't have carried out, but one that my current self desperately needed. Without it, even I wouldn't have been able to learn to perfectly control all of the different energies I had. Don't try anything funny while you act shocked. Even now, just by having the Eliminator in my hands, an authority surpassing my imagination attempted to invade and take control of all my weapons. I instantly realized the central source of the authority. It was the shining green jewel. What controlled so many weapons and robots was this tiny jewel. If I didn't destroy all the machinery and metals beforehand, finding the Eliminator's main body would have been difficult, to say the least. Just thinking about it made me sweat. However, that wasn't the reality. After all, the Eliminator's main body was in my hand. You won't be able to destroy me as long as weapons exist I will never be eliminated. Who said I'd destroy you? I replied with a grin. I decisively pulled the green jewel out of the sword and squeezed it in my hand. Thanks for the meal. Then, I began to steal his power. Chapter 329 the jewel resisted, letting out a dazzling light, but it couldn't do anything in its current state. Compared to when I used Peruta's circuit in the Beast King's body, this was a piece of cake. A human won't be able to contain me. Don't worry, you're not as amazing as you think. Because of the Eliminator's fierce resistance, Steel had to use some of its energy for defense, and thus the extort speed decreased. I concentrated on Absolute Soul and Peruta circuit and held the jewel tighter. A large crack appeared on the green jewel, and the Eliminator's resistance dropped by a huge level. I refused to die without having completed my mission. Mission? A rather interesting word was mentioned. While the jewel's energy continued to flow inside me and became mixed with my mana unable to withstand its flow, I asked. What mission? You're about to die, so tell me. The mission, I was given. The fact that the Eliminator was given a mission suggested that there was someone who gave it to him. Hmm, was this guy just saying this to disturb me on its deathbed? 
to eliminate the dungeon's creator. Around the large crack that appeared before, numerous thread-like cracks ran out. Before I could say anything, the jewel shattered into pieces and scattered into the air. That sure disturbed me all right. Of course, even if I kept the Eliminator alive, it was unlikely it would say anything more. I looked at the long sword that used to hold the green jewel. Although it no longer held the jewel or the enormous energy it held, the long sword was still shining brilliantly. At that moment, the long sword let out a faint light similar to when monsters scattered into particles of light. Immediately, I encased the long sword in my whirlpool, and the long sword's light returned to normal while its energy stopped leaking. This long sword was a weapon that the dungeon's power couldn't clone. It had stayed with the Eliminator's main body through the ages. Letting it return to the dungeon was a shame. Sherafina probably wanted to absorb it as always and give it back to me after she refined it, but I preferred now to have it my way. Great. First, they'll take care of what's inside me. I quickly absorbed the Eliminator's energy inside me and processed it to join the rest of the energies that I refined into one. But as I said before, the Eliminator didn't have that much mana. It was a lot, but it was still lacking compared to the other world's enemies I've met. What was amazing about the Eliminator was its authority to dominate all weapons. This authority was what made a lump of energy like the Eliminator rule as a world's enemy and even conquer a world. Of course, just absorbing the Eliminator didn't give me the power to freely control all weapons. However, I did obtain the possibility. With its potential to grow, this power could ultimately reach that level. Without steel, it would have been impossible to absorb the Eliminator's power so perfectly. At best, I only would have become more proficient in wielding various weapons. Sherafina could only have expected this much. The reward she would give couldn't have been greater. But because I absorbed the Eliminator's power myself, the reward she could give me disappeared. As Kong Shin Nim absorbed the Eliminator's power, the reward will become limited. If Kong Shin is willing to release a portion of it, I can refine it into the dungeon's power. No, it's fine. Even if I compare to receiving the help of the dungeon system, keeping the power in its pure form will be more effective against world's enemies. That is true. Of course, I was confident I wouldn't be disadvantaged and obtain all of the Eliminator's power. But since Sherafina couldn't read Steel's power, she wasn't able to understand this. In any case, I could always show it to her later. Her surprised face was something to look forward to. Sherafina, did you know someone's trying to get rid of you? There was no answer. Really, she only kept quiet at times like this. With a grin, I held up the long sword in my hand. This was likely an artifact crafted with the Eliminator, an ancient artifact serving to act as the base of the Eliminator's great power. It was yet another artifact that Sherafina couldn't read. This is enough as a reward. Understood. The Eliminator could no longer regenerate. It might be possible if the dungeon had the green jewel I absorbed and the long sword I was holding, but I had already absorbed the former. Will you also reject the dungeon's offer to refine that long sword? Yes. In planning on using it for something. I lightly rejected Sherafina's offer and held up Chaotic Spear. It's too dangerous. That sword isn't something the dungeon can analyze. If its properties are transferred, it might go berserk. Trying it won't hurt. I then strongly struck down on the longsword. In an instant, the longsword disappeared and an immense energy flowed into Chaotic Spear. A blinding light shot out from Chaotic Spear, and soon, Sherafina's notified me calmly. Has been absorbed by Crimson Chaotic Spear. Growth. I could only say one thing. It's a bug. In truth, I somewhat expected this to happen. It was just that I thought it was more probably for Chaotic Spear to undergo an evolution. It was almost at 98% growth. I didn't think it wouldn't evolve even after devouring the Eliminator's longsword. No, could it be? Was it also like this when it evolved into Chaotic Spear? Back when it was still Gluttony Spear and reached 99. 9% growth, it only completed its evolution after devouring all of my mana. If it was the same now, would the spear evolve once I poured all of my mana into it? Though I came to that conclusion, I returned the spear into its choker form for now. 
It wasn't something to be done here. I did everything I needed to on the 90th floor. Since Chaotic Spear is also stuffed, it was now time for it to go work out. Beyond's 40th floor master was waiting for us. The 36th to 39th floors had vampire lords and death knights. Vampire lords were different, but I was initially quite troubled by death knights. Although advancing in beyond wasn't difficult, as I knew what kind of being the floor masters from now would be, I couldn't help but be nervous. The 40th floor master is also a world's enemy, right? Yes. Do be careful, as it is extremely dangerous. Sherafina's answer was simple as always. Was there a reason she kept matching me with world's enemies? Why didn't these world's heroes finish them off, allowing the dungeon to take them? Was it on purpose? To help nurture people like me? If the demon lord wanted to enter the dungeon after losing to me, I didn't have the confidence to let him go. I would most likely tear even his soul apart. Perhaps, these heroes defeated them, but weren't quite strong enough to kill them and received the dungeon's help. No, that was strange too. This damn dungeon only gets more mysterious as I go higher up. I complained audibly for Sherafina to hear and entered the 40th floor. Of course, there was no reply. The moment I stepped into the 40th floor, an intense spiritual pressure swept over me. It was a stifling energy that seemed to reject life. I couldn't help but remember my encounter with Lilith. From the looks of it, it was possible that the 40th floor master was even stronger. As long as I won, there would be a lot to gain. From a certain point, as I climbed the dungeon, authorities and mana rather than levels and items were piling up. Did other explorers experience the same thing? Did they fight world's enemies, face their limits and obtain new powers? From what Kane told me, that wasn't the case. First, it was impossible for most explorers to absorb their enemies' powers directly, and no explorer wanted to face such an extreme test either. But one thing was for sure. Sherafina was offering me a unique path and I was accepting every power beyond her expectations. My previous battle with the Eliminator was one such example. Without relying on the dungeon system, I could extract the enemy's power on my own. If the dungeon had three different paths, other explorers were taking path A, Sherafina was guiding me to path B, while I took path C. It wouldn't have been possible had I not learned Peruta Circuit and Absolute Soul. Meeting Peruta and learning skill synthesis through the Collector's Pocket Watch were two biggest reasons I. Come in. A dreary voice abruptly cut off my train of thought. How long will you keep me waiting? I don't know, why don't you entice me to come in somehow? I retorted with a snort. Just like Lilith, the 40th floor master was blabbering even with the door closed. It meant that the dungeon's power couldn't fully contain him, that Sherafina couldn't control them completely. In any case, I somewhat had a guess as to his identity. I summoned Dordu and Pika before confidently kicking the iron door open. Let's fight. I've been waiting. The floor master room was a huge tomb. A chilling wind of a dark, damp limestone cave swirled around me. There were candles lit with blue flames burning on the sides of the cave's walls, and at the end of the line of candles was a truly grand throne. Hero, it's so nice to finally see you in person. The titan sitting on the throne spoke. Other than his size, he looked no different than a normal human. He wore a dark blue armor and held a giant bigger than his body. Ah, another thing, two blue flames were blazing inside his eyes. Along with the birth of the savior hero, that person has also woken up from her long rest. Being unable to see the end of the long, long evolution was my greatest regret, but now seeing the protagonist of this story in front of me, having spent my days sitting on this seat finally feels meaningful. You talk too much. I aimed my spear at him and spoke. First, fight me. Ha ha ha. This is my first battle in a long, long time. Perhaps, it might even be my final. Just think of it as me putting on airs. He held up his axe. Feeling the death energy shooting out of his body in that instant, I realized he had long since veered off of being a human. Rather than talking, I also prefer the sound of clashing metals and flowing blood and sweat. We truly think alike, savior hero. Like I said, you talk too much. Here, 
have a taste of heroic strike. This was probably the only way to get him to move. I immediately compressed over 500,000 mana into one point and shot out. It was the start of the battle with the 40th floor master, Death Lord. Chapter, 330. What an absurd mana. It seemed even he couldn't directly receive this attack. As he flew up to dodge, he swung his axe and shot a giant aura wave an ordinary human would have his bones and flesh rot just by being near to it. Hugh. I sucked it in using breath of death and received the impact of the aura with extort. But as his attack wasn't so weak that I could fully take it with extort, I weakened it as much as I could using absolute soul and stole only the mana I could steal. Steel could then block the rest of the attack with its defense. That's the ability of a death knight. You even absorbed my aura. Are you a mana eater? You should be worried about other things. After receiving his attack, I kicked off the round and leaped up into the air. The black energy swirling around his body instantly transformed into hundreds of thorns before hurling towards me. I didn't think of hitting them away. In front of steel, such minor attacks were useless. I jerked my spear by an inch. In the next moment, an explosion erupted on his back. The 500,000 mana I shot out had boomeranged back and hit him. The black cape fluttering behind him disappeared. I expected it to be a fatal blow, but it seemed his cape had the ability to completely absorb a single instance of attack. Kook, if I knew that, I would have only used 300,000 mana. You can already control the aura you shot out. Truly amazing. I haven't even started. Using death energy against him was likely to be meaningless. Thus, while I continued to use breath of death, I only concentrated on absorbing his death energy. Only chaos flames were burning on my spear. I am Dortu. Analyzing his armor. I'll leave it to you, Dortu. Pika, materialize. Got it. When a huge lightning dragon appeared in the air, the Death Lord flinched. On the other hand, Pika charged at him as soon as she materialized. The powerful lightning energy circulating around her body was fiercer than any time in the past. Cuckoo, I have never fought at a disadvantage. Save your hero, I certainly must recognize your strength. Do you know something? Of course. After all, I am the King of the Dead. Mm -hmm. King of the Dead. Didn't the Death King call himself that too? Then was this guy also a lich? At that moment, I closed my eyes and stretched my mana outwards. However, I couldn't find anything that could be his life vessel. It seemed he felt my manas movement, as he shook his head with a loud laugh. If you're looking for the vessel carrying my soul, I will tell you. It's inside me. Inside you. Indeed, extracting your soul from your body and storing it elsewhere is a good way to achieve immortality. But a soul will become tainted the moment it leaves its body. That's why I separated my soul and sealed it inside my body. If you destroy me, you'll be able to destroy my soul too. Well, aren't you kind? Was he telling me his weakness? Something was definitely wrong with this guy. However, he nodded as if what he said was only natural. This way, it will be a much more interesting fight. Fight. This bastard. Was he crazy? I gave him such a glance. Are you crazy? No, I was saying it out loud. The reason I held on to my life even while being reduced to this state was all in order to fight. To experience the clash of powerful mana and strength. That person's ambition to overtake all worlds swayed me, and for that, I endured all these years. Since I got to fight the savior hero at the end of it all, can you blame me for being so talkative? You're telling me you became a lich to fight? That's right. Dumbfounded, I lowered my spear. He wasn't done talking yet. Losing the world's power wasn't important to me either. What was important was that there was no one left in my continent that I could kill. That's why I raised the ones I killed into death knights and crossed over to another world. There, I killed and killed again. When there wasn't anyone left for me to kill, that's when I met that person. Who said only losers ended up trapped in a dungeon. I had to change this way of thinking. This world's enemy was telling me that he entered the dungeon of his own volition. He even gave up his world's power. 
though, I guess it wasn't important to an army of undead. Thinking about it now, the death knight I first faced also seemed to just enjoy fighting without caring about other matters. However, unlike the death lord, that death knight carried resentment against the dungeon, but perhaps, that was directed at the death lord who killed them and dragged them into the dungeon. The dungeon lord? That person made an offer. To let me fight a powerful enemy capable of defeating me. I took a step forward instinctively. It was a reflexive movement to not be pushed back by the pressure behind his words. The enemy in front of me loved battle more than anyone else I've met. Such an enemy was also the most terrifying one. You believed in those words and stayed here all this time. Of course. It was meaningless to fight weaklings. You waited for me. That only implied one thing. Sherafina knew that I would come here. Me, or some other savior hero. Well, that's not too important. My fight with the demon lord wasn't far off. If I could defeat the death lord and obtain his power, that would be an incredible boon for me. Are you done talking? You don't seem surprised. Not really. I grinned and held up my spear. Let's fight then. I like fighting too. Even if I had things to protect, I wouldn't be so all out if I didn't have fun. I shouted. Pika, Dortu. I am Dortu. Commencing nullification. Good, let's fight. While the Death Lord condensed an enormous amount of mana into his axe, Pika charged straight towards him. At the same time, Dortu began to destroy his armor. Not paying attention to such miscellaneous matters, the Death Lord stared at me and charged towards me. A massive energy was rushing my way. Will you dodge it? Why would I dodge such a weak attack? I poured hundreds of thousands of units of mana into my spear and formed a transparent aura. When the Death Lord saw it from a close range, his burning flames in his eyes widened in surprise. However, it was too late. A spear and axe clashed, causing a shockwave powerful enough to tear apart space. Kahahaha. <laughs> you are the first warrior to ever receive my axe head on. The hero of the world you invaded was just weak. With a smirk, I swung my spear once more. The Death Lord's armor was too unscathed for me to attempt a stab. Dortu was working hard, but it seemed that his armor had quite the resistance. Ait, evil energy, burn. On the other hand, Pika also released as much lightning as she could as she bit down on his helmet. The Death Lord's death energy resisted Pika's lightning, and his axe weakened as a result. With a strong flick, I struck his axe away before stabbing it with my spear. Why don't you summon something too? I always fight alone. That's why you'll lose to me. Crimson Roar. After making a stabbing maneuver and forcing the Death Lord to back off, I widened my mouth and let out a roar. The surrounding area immediately became covered in scarlet flames. Flames were just as effective as lightning when it came to burning death energy. What a lukewarm flame. Death Crystal. Oh. I like that one. Along with his shout, black energy rose up and solidified into a translucent crystal, protecting him from crimson roar. I carved the death energy's movement pattern into my eyes. Then, I raised my spear once and fended off the death lord's incoming axe. Like I said, you can't win. In battle, there's no such thing as absolute or impossible. Restrain. This time, death energy solidified into chains and snaked towards me. Cutting through Crimson Roar's energy filling up the surrounding space and seemingly unaffected by Pika's lightning, the death energy chains seemed to want to pierce through my body. Good try. However, the Death Lord didn't know a thing about Steel's power. Strengthened by my mana, Steel let out a dark light that engulfed the chains flying towards me. It'll make good use of them. The Death Lord shouted in surprise. The chains coiled around my arm and began to strangle the Death Lord's armor on their opposite ends. With a smile, I swung the chains down. About 200,000 mana transformed into aura and flowed into his armor through the chains. Kahak. The Death Lord coughed out a scream. It seemed these chains even had the ability to amplify the energy they were carrying. When I gave a victorious grin, 
the Death Lord coughed out a mouthful of dead blood before breaking the chains and bursting out into a laughter. Right, such petty tricks won't work on someone like you. Cool. Death energy erupted from all directions. Pika twisted her body and roared in opposition, creating the luminous lightning that scorched the death energy. Nevertheless, the sheer amount of death energy meant that it couldn't be erased entirely. Along with Absolute Soul, I once again started Breath of Death. Although Breath of Death didn't have any levels, the way the Death Lord wielded death energy was in a different realm. The energy I obtained by giving up being human, this energy made me stronger. Death is a weapon, a curse, and an armor that hides me from the brilliant light of life. Save your hero, do you know death? No, I don't. I retorted lightly. But I plan on learning it today. Then, I threw out another heroic strike towards the death energy concentrated on him. Chapter, 331 How can a human possess so much mana? Shooting a sphere of aura to weaken the momentum of heroic strike, the Death Lord asked as he backed away. However, it was impossible to completely dodge heroic strike. As such, the Death Lord held up his axe to block what he couldn't avoid. The toughness of his axe could be guessed by the fact that not a single scratch appeared. But it seemed that it still couldn't block all of heroic strike's might. Kahak. The shock delivered by the aura caused him to cough out another mouthful of dead blood. However, while his body might be breaking apart, the death energy he was outputting was only getting stronger. While the Death King used his death energy to control the undead, the Death Lord seemed to have his entire body made of death energy. If I hadn't learned Breath of Death, I might have been in danger. How can there be a limit to amassing mana? Of course, there is. For humans, there is a clear limit. In fact, even elves, dwarves, beast men, and even dragons have limits. Pika clashed with him once again. However, the black mana barrier he created was sufficiently powerful enough to block Pika's attack. Even elementals. Master, this guy keeps. Yeah, I know. The death energy emanating from his body split into several streaks and flew towards me like a whip. Although I could block them with steel, doing so would waste more mana than needed. Instead, I expanded Peruta's circuit and created a whirlpool to wrap around my body. The black whips then continuously clashed with the whirlpool, causing loud noises to ring out. Die! I charged towards him. Chaotic spear, carrying hundreds of thousands of mana, cleanly obliterated all other energies and shot towards his chest. Kuhop! His shout sounded out. Without thinking about dodging the attack, the Death Lord raised his axe and struck down against my spear. When the two collided, an explosive sound erupted. However, neither of us backed down. I pulled my spear out of the deadlock by twisting it slightly and swung down as though it was an axe. This time, the Death Lord blocked it with his axe. Ha! I kicked the Death Lord's leg, which was firmly planted in the ground, and jumped using the counterforce. His axe rushed after me like a dragon wanting to bite off someone's head. Clenching my teeth, I swung my right arm and rotated my spear. The concentrated aura on the spear blade hit his axe away and continued up to destroy a section of the cave it had also been flung away by the recoil, as it couldn't break through the axe's defense. Let's see if you can block this. Unlike your skills, you talk like a third-rate warrior. Seeing chunks of the ceiling falling down, I poured in my mana and Dordas power turned them into bombs in an instant. Then, using my spear, I shot them as though they were cannonballs. Using the death energy rising from his body, the Death Lord formed a whip and struck them down before they could reach him, but the subsequent detonations of the bombs reduced his whip to a sorry state. Seeing an opening, I activated divine speed and shot another ball of concentrated aura. P.U.K. With a dull sound, the armor covering his right arm exploded. It was the first effective blow dealt to him. You have no limit. Humph. He was praising me from the moment we met, but I was also surprised by his strength. His strength was as though the Beast King was compressed into a human form, and he was even using his death energy to strengthen himself. If I became careless for even a single moment, I had no doubt that he would send a critical attack that would penetrate Steel's power. Is it the natural talent of the savior hero? 
natural talent of the savior hero? What's that? I asked again. In fact, what's even a savior hero? I'm not too sure either. All I know came from what the dungeon lord told me. I simply came to my own conclusion using the information I had. Well, what's that conclusion? The death lord smiled. The axe he held up began to grow bigger. By sucking in death energy, it was growing sharper and tougher. Defeat me. Then he'll tell you. Damn guy. Where'd he learn that from? I called Pika back. What's wrong, master? Chaos flames don't work on him. To be exact, chaos flames worked, but because he was always covered in an enormous amount of death energy, chaos flames could only burn his death energy without reaching his body. Seeing him being unaffected by chaos flames even after the previous attack broke a part of his armor, I became certain. Chaos flames dealt continuous damage by staying ignited on a target, but Pika's lightning was stronger. Since chaos flames couldn't reach him, it was more efficient for Pika to be with me. You're literally quite the lump of energy. It's what I obtained by giving up both life and death. Save your hero, what did you give up in order to obtain that power? My life, fucker. As I retorted, I infused Pika into my spear and watched the transparent aura begin to crackle with lightning. Look at the power I have does it look like you'll enjoy a peaceful life? Kohahaha. Perhaps at the end of your growth, you might give up death as well. Unlike me who abandoned being human and became an undead, you'll be in a human's body. No, if that happens, you might not even be human anymore. Kohaha. What's so funny, you bastard. I bellowed loudly and used frozen roar while I was at it. The death energy hurling towards me froze, and a portion of the energy surging up on his axe fell off. At the same time, a surge of energy coursed through my body. I wasn't done yet. I activated both Twin-Headed Ogre's Tattoo and Giant Wolf's Tattoo. In an instant, the attack power of my close-ranged skills and charge-type skills increased by 50%. In other words, the skill I was planning on using would have its might doubled. Your power suddenly increased tremendously. Because the dungeon's power hasn't been working much, I've been holding them back. But now, I have some confidence in myself. Well, that's not a story for you to hear. There was no need to reveal my secrets. I held up my spear again. Since this wasn't the first dungeon, I summoned Sharana. At your command, master. Strengthen me with your wind. That's my specialty. A gust of wind began to blow around me. Mixing in with Pika's lightning, an ordinary person would find it difficult to even stare at my figure. The Death Lord seemed to have felt danger, as he sent dozens of black whips and aura waves flying towards me. In response, I summoned Ryue and created a barrier of ice. Although it disappeared when it collided with the whips and aura waves, it bought enough time for me to gather the necessary energy. I aimed my spear towards him and kicked off the ground. Wind King's Rage. Kohop. There was nowhere for him to run. The Death Lord let out an odd bellow and swung down his axe to cut the energy I was emitting. A huge black aura shot out from the path of his axe and charged towards me while cutting apart the ground in half. As I had already started charging towards him, I couldn't move away now. As such, I faced his attack directly. Kohahaha. Your courage is praiseworthy. Humph, as if that can even cut a radish in half. A lightning storm and earth-severing strike collided. The already crumbling cave began to rumble even more. U-O-O-H. I scraped together all the mana lying inside my body and poured it into the wind. Then, I activated Crimson Hell's tattoo and began to suck in the Death Lord's death-carrying mana. Filtering it with Breath of Death, Absolute Soul and Pryuta Circuit worked together to draw in mana to my body. Everything was happening in an instant. My body became a giant lump of mana. I won't die so easily. Take this, save your hero. This is my power. The Death Lord kicked off the ground and charged towards me. His entire body was covered in his black energy. After dissipating the aura he shot out, I also charged towards him in full force. D. I started the gathering of the fiercely spinning wind and lightning. 
using the one supreme talent I had, I concentrated every power into one point. In an instant, the surroundings became silent. Even the crumbling cave seemed to halt momentarily. In reality, everything moved extremely slowly because I was using divine speed. Thanks to divine speed, I was able to complete the energy concentration process in the blink of an eye. The Death Lord also noticed what happened. Seeing the energy compressed together on the tip of my spear, his eyes widened. I see, I see. So that's what made you the savior hero. You'll die if this hits you, so you better speak your mind now. Kohahaha. <laughs> I've already overcome death once, yet you're announcing my death so boldly. With a heartful laugh, he raised his axe. Coincidentally, at that moment, the death energy surrounding his body and the armor he was wearing disappeared. Even someone that wasn't me could kill him by attacking his weak point. In the center of his chest was a jewel shining like a star. I am Dortu. Nullification complete. Kook. It seemed the Death Lord didn't expect this to happen at all. I couldn't blame him as he couldn't perceive Dortu's existence. He immediately began to gather death energy to cover his body, but he was full of openings in my eyes. I thrust my spear and spoke. You have nothing to say. The savior hero is one who gathers everything. And. Unfortunately, that was it. Before his axe could reach my shoulder, my spear penetrated his chest. The jewel exploded with a boom, and the subsequent torrent of mana, lightning, and wind destroyed the death lord's body without leaving behind a trace. I took my spear back and stood my ground. Taking the crumbling pieces of the cave with my body, the corner of my mouth twitched. You should have said it earlier, damned guy. I am Dortu. Master, did Dortu make a mistake? No, Dortu. You did well today. You made the difference. Without Dortu, I wasn't sure my last attack would have killed him. His armor was sure to be an extraordinary item. In the short time that the two of us fought, Dortu managed to nullify and even eliminate his armor. It seemed Dorda's ability was growing stronger too. I'm all out of energy. I'm tired. You did well too, Pika. Go rest. I stroked Pika who left the spear, and she happily went back to Fairy Garden. I also sent Dorda back before raising my head. A giant boulder falling my way was struck down by a flying axe. Looks like you didn't know about this either. In the final moment, it became possible for me to control his axe using the Eliminator's power. I couldn't do anything about the energy residing in it, but I could make the axe aiming for my shoulder move slower and heavier. The Death Lord must think he lost because of the power concentrated on my spear tip, but I had actually utilized several different powers to defeat him. Although I could have defeated him earlier if I wanted, it was the first time I had met such a powerful warrior and I ended up getting too excited. I shouldn't do this next time. It's not like the demon lord will simply charge at me. He might even stay still and only shoot magic. In fact, I didn't know whether or not he would fight himself. But since he was the only one in the demon army that was capable of fighting, he would have no choice. To get better used to the eliminator's power, I spun the axe around and struck down the falling boulders one by one. Of course, I wouldn't die even if the entire cave collapsed on top of me. After some time, a message rang out. You succeeded in defeating the Death Lord alone. The Death Lord was a powerful warrior and mage who had never experienced a single defeat in his life. Granting him both defeat and annihilation is truly a grand achievement. You obtained five skill points as a reward. Current skill points, 39. You obtained the title, Death Lord Killer. All stats increase by five. The effect of the title will be applied even when it is not equipped. You cleared Beyond's 40th floor. You obtained the qualification to challenge the first dungeon's 91st floor. You obtained 5 bonus stats. Your HP and MP increases by 2%. Experience has been added to skills you frequently use to progress through Beyond's 40th floor. You received the unique reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations. Your luck stat increases by 10. Secret. Death Lords. The message suddenly stopped. The falling boulders began to rise up one by one. 
At the same time, I could feel a power slowly leaving my body. I narrowed my eyes. Ho oh, what interesting situation is this? The dungeon's power was disappearing from the dungeon. At that moment, the axe suddenly froze in mid-air. Perplexed, I tried to manipulate the axe again, but the axe no longer listened to my commands. That axe ceased being a weapon. I forgot, I had something else to tell you. Hey, you bastard. I cursed. Don't you know lying can get your hand chopped off? I didn't lie. To a warrior, his weapon is part of his body. So I did seal my life in my body. He retorted casually. Right, the voice was coming from the axe, which carried his life. Chapter, 332 After leaving beyond, I slumped down on the chair in front of Loretta's floor shop. Loretta stared at me intently and tilted her head. You didn't change much. Do I have to undergo some super transformation every time I come back? You've been doing that for a while now. I thought Oldi was pouring she has for Shin Nim. Thinking about it now, she wasn't wrong. I scratched the back of my head and retorted. Well, Sherafina will have some trouble filling up the higher floors again, but not this time. Even I can't stick a straw in and suck everything out from every enemy I meet. Ah, uh, by the way. Suddenly remembering what I just experienced, I clenched my right fist and raised my index finger before slowly moving it to the right. Yes. Mm. As Loretta didn't seem to understand, I went slower and gestured more clearly. Only then did Loretta seem to understand. Hoo hoo, I see. Yes. That's great I knew my eyes weren't wrong. Loretta smiled brightly as though she knew this would happen. I reached out and grabbed her hand before asking her what I've been wondering for a long time. Did you decide it was me from the very beginning? Of course. When Shin Nim was on the seventh floor, I was already certain. Loretta smiled shyly and grabbed my hand tightly before continuing. Though, I didn't think I would come to love that person. That was also when I gave you the key. Really, I can't win against Loretta. Now you know how amazing I am. Loretta strutted her chest and smiled confidently. Seeing her, I spoke as though I only just thought of something. By the way, I picked up an axe. Do you want it? What I took out from my inventory was none other than the black giant axe which carried the Death Lord's life. Chaotic Spear is full now. I already extracted the skill it had, but it shouldn't lose in terms of sturdiness. If it's a present, they'll gladly accept it. But you should know that giving an axe to your lover isn't common sense. Don't complain if you're going to take it. I grumbled and handed her the axe. Loretta swung the axe a couple times and seemed satisfied. Wow, this is a great weapon. Hmm. I can't appraise it it's beyond what Lord can read. It's perfect for self-protection, right? Shin Nim, have the monsters in the dungeon been that freakish lately? Yes, even Loretta might have trouble dealing with them. When I nodded seriously, Loretta made a tired expression before swinging her axe like she was angry. Just how many monsters did Lord put in the dungeon without me knowing? If not for Shin Nim, they might have swallowed up all of the dungeon's mana. The resources in the dungeon are infinite. Lord seems to be taking in monsters without much thought. How is she planning on dealing with the maintenance cost? Thank you for telling me things I didn't want to know. Anyways, stop swinging that axe every time you say something. It's scary. Loretta smacked her lips and swung the axe a couple times more before putting it away in her body. I couldn't get used to it no matter how many times I looked at it. Still, I now knew that it was Loretta's unique spatial magic. It'll take good care of it. Even if I'm not there, that axe will protect Loretta well. Or Shin Nim can just stay with me always. Loretta murmured as she slowly approached me. Seeing her shining eyes, I could tell what she was thinking about. I scratched my face and replied. I have to climb the dungeon. That spear, ITLL take some time for it to evolve, right? I'm sure it will. Now that she mentioned it, I indeed didn't have a reason to hold back from evolving the spear. I held up chaotic spear. Although it has been sucking in my mana for some time, it didn't seem close to finishing its evolution. 
I had to take a seat and focus on pouring manna into it. Fairy Garden has great air and great water. I'm sure being there will help Chaotic Spear's evolution. You have no basis for that, right? Yes. Loretta nodded confidently. She already had one hand holding onto mine, but now that she put away her axe, she used her freed hand to grab my shoulder tightly. If she had a tail, I'm sure it would be shaking fiercely. Come on, let's go. I can give it some of my mana too. No, it's fine. Just make me some delicious tea. Sure. As soon as I gave my agreement, Loretta opened the gate to Fairy Garden. With a bitter smile, I walked in with Loretta. Nunim, you're being rude. Leave. For some reason, when she saw Lin at her cabin, she tried to chase him out. However, Lin laughed shamelessly as he shook his head. Now, now, this is the final evolution of a weapon I made. As its creator, shouldn't I offer my help? Lion. It seemed Chaotic Spear automatically notified Lin when it became ready to evolve. But still, to think he would predict that I.D. come to Loretta's cabin. I pacified Loretta, who was in her battle mode and smirked at Lin's slyness. I didn't know I needed Lin's help. When it evolved into Chaotic Spear from Gluttony Spear, I think it wasted too much energy. Plus, I thought its attribute would become similar to yours, but for some reason, its fire attribute became strengthened, which I didn't like. Isn't Lin a flame dragon? That's how it was made, but it wasn't supposed to be like that when it evolved. This was the first time I was hearing about this. When I stared at Lin, wondering why he didn't tell me all this time, he slowly dodged my gaze and looked away. Hey anyways, it didn't fully digest everything it devoured either. I guess it's my fault for not knowing it would devour a holy sword. So I went and settled it out with Elian. How does Elian relate to any of this? Lin took out a small bead from his pocket. As you know, the magical tool Elian gave you was quite extraordinary. Until then, I was looking down on her quite a bit. But that magical tool of hers could raise an item's rank by a stage even when it wasn't part of the item's creation process. That's a feat that's hard to explain with words. So if we borrowed her power, I figured we could get your spear to evolve without having any energy indigested. And that bead is what you got from Elian. I placed chaotic spear on top of a table. Lin examined the spear before letting out a sigh. I expected as much, but it sure ate a lot of random stuff. Be thankful for my foresight. I'm always thankful. Lies. Lin snorted, but he seemed quite satisfied. At that moment, I saw a kiss mark on his neck. Thinking about the price he must have paid to get this item, a chill went down my back. Lin, you going that far for me is a bit creepy, so please. I know what you're trying to say, but this is from Loka. Lin almost smacked me. I obediently placed my hand on top of Chaotic Spear. Loretta and Lin, whom I trusted absolutely, were both here with me. After gathering nearby mana with Peruta Circuit and Absolute Soul, I began to push every ounce of mana into Chaotic Spear. This bastard I already had an idea, but just how much mana does he? Lin, if you're going to do it, do it properly. If possible, end it quickly and leave. I understand, so stop with that killing intent. As I poured mana into Chaotic Spear, Lin also placed the bead in his hand on Chaotic Spear before drawing out his mana. From the side, Loretta watched the scene of two horned men holding onto a single spear. After some time, the spear began to shine on its own. The amount of mana put into it easily surpassed one. Five million. However, Lin's gaze told me to keep going, so I continued to pour more mana in. After a truly baffling amount of mana went into the spear, the bead placed on top of it disappeared. Lin widened his eyes. Phew, there. Kong Shin, finish it. As soon as the words left his mouth, I poured all the mana I had left in a final spurt. Immediately, the spear released a blinding light. Amidst the light, the shape of the spear became more simple. After one powerful light filled up the cabin, the spear finally stopped devouring my mana. The smooth spear handle was revealed first. The reddish-black symbols covering the spear had disappeared, and an absolutely spotless platinum metal filled my eyes. 
Lin, did something go wrong? You think I know. After leading me on all this time, Lin betrayed me. I examined the spear more worriedly. First, the length didn't change much. The spear blade was a bit longer, making it more suited to stabbing than cutting, and it was made of an even whiter metal than the spear blade. I had never seen such a metal before. What a beautiful spear. Did it look different to Loretta? Her dazed voice made me re-examine the spear. Because of what she said, the spear suddenly looked prettier. Grab it, Shin Nim. Amim. I grabbed the spear like Loretta said. Immediately, an electrifying feeling spread from the tip of my fingers. Just by holding on to it, it seemed as though it had become a part of my body. Although Chaotic Spear was a supreme item in its own regard, it was incomparable to this spear. How is it, Kong Shin? Shin Nim, how is it? The Draconian and Elf were waiting for my reaction. I held up the Platinum Spear and embraced it. After confirming one thing, I spoke confidently. This I can't see its information. Sherafina's indignity had yet to end. Chapter, 333 When I climbed up to the 91st floor, I was met with an open world. The sky was high and blue and a vast sea was before my eyes. Under my feet were white sands. Did I come to the wrong place? I couldn't be blamed for thinking this. Suspecting that I was under an illusion, I raised my mana, but nothing changed. Even a god would find it difficult to trick me. That could only mean that the scene before me was real. When I turned around, I saw an unnaturally placed stairway that proved that this was the 91st floor. I had arrived beyond the 90th floor, which few people have ever seen. I don't know what this means but I'll know once I start walking. After preparing myself to deal with whatever might come my way, I shouted. Commence exploration. Plump. The moment my voice thundered out, I heard the sound of something falling in the sea. The sound didn't end with just the one time. Almost as if someone was throwing giant boulders into the sea, the sound rang out continuously. What's going on in the sea? Curious, I turned towards the sea, then met a building-sized leg filled with suction cups rising up from the water. If the leg was that big, how big was its head? You're kidding, right? I murmured with a frown. No. Though unnecessary, Sherafina quickly replied. I cursed inwardly and was about to step forward when I realized that I was sinking down. When I turned around, the sand behind me was falling as though a hole had opened up in the middle of the beach. From the pit, a giant monster with thousands of tentacles peeked its head out. An ant lion. The tentacles simultaneously hurled towards me. Not only was this ant lion making me slide down to its pit, but it was also attacking me with its tentacles. It was truly the final form of ant lion evolution. The sand had a suction power as though the sands themselves carried mana, and the tentacles were flying about everywhere. Any other explorers might have been in grave danger, but unfortunately for the ant lion, I had few methods I could use to fly. First, I summoned Sharana and infused her inside me before soaring up to the sky. Then, I summoned Dortu. I am Dortu. Creating bombs. Immediately after Dortu relayed his intention, several explosions erupted from the ant lion's pit. Thankfully, I was continuing up into the sky. Otherwise, the giant explosions might have affected me too. Amidst the explosions, the ant lion's body revealed itself. Just like I thought, the ant lion was incredibly big that it was hard to find the right words to describe it. From what seemed to be its mouth hole, the ant lion created few spherical mana balls and shot them towards me. Humph. No matter how large it was or how much mana it carried, in the end, it was a low class organism that couldn't wield mana at my level. As a human, I had to teach this insect where it belonged. I reached out to the air. A platinum spear popped out of nowhere, and I drew a trajectory that pierced all of the mana spheres the antlion shot. Then, I drew up the power of the lightning god. In an instant, the spear crackled with sparks, and I compressed the lightning into one point. Once enough energy came together, I shot the lightning without a moment of delay. It really does go well with lightning. At first, I was unsatisfied with it evolving into an unknown spear, 
but if Chaotic Spear was troublesome because it had too strong of an individuality, this spear matched me well as though it was made for me. Even just now when I shot out lightning or concentrated my energy, it was easy and simple as though there was another me helping. Its ability to amplify lightning energy was especially noteworthy. Even without mana, just having this spear would let me shoot lightning any time I wanted. The bolt of lightning that dropped from the sky tore through the antlion's mana balls. From afar, the lightning bolt would look like a skewer. Without missing this opportunity, I used steel's power through the lightning I shot out and made the mana balls mine. Hap. The moment I raised my arm, the bolt of lightning transformed into a whip and flew up along with my arm's movement. The skewered mana balls rolled towards the end and formed a single sphere. Eventually, it was as though I was swinging around a flail connected by chains. Goo. The antlion bellowed. Though I was now certain that it wasn't an actual antlion, that didn't matter much. I raised the flail and struck down at it. With a thundering crack, it tore through the antlion's giant jaws and broke down parts of its carapace. Then, lightning poured into the antlion's body, making it convulse. I swung the flail continuously without stop. Because of the sheer size of the creature, just one or two whips wasn't enough to end it, but when I repeatedly struck its injuries with the mana ball, the antlion finally became silent. I am Dortu. Finishing the job. In an instant, Dortu transformed the grains of sand into bombs. When they exploded, the flesh revealed underneath the carapace I broke shot up into the air. A disgusting bodily fluid erupted like a volcano before the twitching body of the antlion disappeared into particles of light. After confirming that the antlion died, I raised my head and looked around. I think I know what the concept of the 91st floor is. On the ground, I could see more antlion-like heads peeking out, and at sea, I could see the roiling tentacles of an octopus confirming that what I saw before was right. In that case, there had to be something in the sky as well. Found it. Not one, but more than ten dragons were circling around each other. Each of them was at least a hundred times bigger than Latte. It seemed they noticed my existence, as a few of them turned to glare my way. Gru. Their roars caused the earth to shake. For a moment, I couldn't help but think I was better off jumping into the sea and fighting the building-sized tentacles than fighting those monstrosities. However, I had already provoked those dragons to the fullest. With a deep sigh, I kicked off the air. All right, come at me, you damned lizards. Along with a spirited shout, I swung my spear. Then, I saw the lightning flail from before shoot up from the ground along the trajectory I drew. I immediately tilted my head. Why is it still here? Of course, Loretta had already taught me how to solidify and control the mana I shot out. Just like how I easily killed the antlion just now, this technique was convenient and perfect for anyone who hated wasting mana. The only downside was that it was hard to maintain for more than a few minutes. That was the reason for my surprise. Gru. The dragon that was closest to me breathed out fire. I hurriedly swung my spear, and the giant ball of mana at the head of the lightning flail received the dragon's breath. As it was connected to me by my spear, steel could convert the dragon's flames into the ball of mana. Then, the power stayed without dissipating. I get it. I murmured in a daze and looked down. The platinum spear was still shining mystically. Clearly, this spear had the ability to preserve and even amplify the power I imbued into the spear. When the spear evolved, I immediately asked Dortu to analyze it, but all he could tell me was that it was a metal of a form that couldn't exist. Now, I understood what he meant. If there was another spear like it, that would be a disaster. Well then, let's test it out a bit. It was possible that the spear had abilities I didn't know about. First, I pulled the ball of mana, which had absorbed all of the dragon's flames, back before thrusting it forward fiercely. Enraged by the fact that I was unfazed by its flame, the dragon was charging towards me when it was hit by the ball of mana and sent flying back. Ha, huh, I'm not very skilled at using flails. So I'll show you what I am skilled in. I tensed up my arms and poured all the lightning and mana I could wield into the spear. The ball of mana hanging at the head of the lightning flail slowly melted down into lightning, and the flail transformed into a single thick and long lightning bolt. Its width had room to grow, 
but its length had now reached the height of a skyscraper. Immediately, I held and swung this giant spear. Now get over here. Gru. The roars of the dragons resounded through the sky. As if to harmonize with the dragons' roars, the monsters at sea howled. The monsters I had to face on the 91st floor were these massive creatures. Each of their strengths didn't lose to any of the monsters I've fought in the past. In that case, I had to play at their level. It's a supersized elemental tempest just for you. Here. On the thick and long spear blade made of lightning, a countless number of elementals gathered together. A number of elementals I had never wielded before responded to my call and joined the storm brewing around my spear. Who, call all your friends. There's more than enough room today. Yay, I can finally join Prince Nim's ride. It's Pike and Im. Stupid, don't say the name. Feeling their impending doom, the dragons breathed out fire once again as they charged towards me. I immediately called Dortu. Dortu, block those however you want and send them towards Elemental Tempest's path. I am Dortu. Accepting Master's unreasonable demand. The dragons couldn't break the metallic barrier Dortu created. That was enough. Holding the several dozen meters long spear of lightning that had become a huge storm, I thrust it forward. Elemental Tempest. In a single moment, close to a million mana exploded. The monsters glaring at me, the monsters running away from me, and the monsters eager to break through Dordis Barrier were all swept away by the storm of elementals. Seeing all those dragons disappearing at once was truly a refreshing sight. Qua. Ki. However, many monsters still remained, both on the ground and in the sea. I looked around the endless sky. In the far distance, beyond the point Elemental Tempest could have reached, I confirmed the existence of more flying monsters. Immediately, I asked Sherafina. Sherafina. Just how big is this place? It is three times the size of Earth. I was given a mission to destroy an entire world of monster. Chapter. 334. I knew that the dungeon was mysterious in many ways, but it was hard to understand how a single floor of a dungeon could have the area three times the diameter of Earth. Not to mention, each monster in this place was big enough to end a large city or even a small country. But there wasn't just a few of such monsters, this entire floor was swarming with monsters like these. Just how did you bring them here? I moved a world that was waiting for its doom after losing its power. An entire world? Yes. Not all worlds are classified as winner or loser. If a hero escapes to the dungeon foreseeing his defeat, both the invader's world and the defender's world will end. In addition, if the power isn't directly taken from a hero, the world's power may suddenly disappear. In other words, just because one side has come out victorious, it doesn't mean that the winning world will survive. It was something I considered before. I already knew that Loretta was a hero who came to the dungeon after losing with her power intact. The other administrative guild masters were the same, and Kane was surely not the only runaway hero among explorers. After these heroes' defeat, extinction was the natural fate of the defending world, but what about the attacking world? If mutual destruction was the result of their struggle for survival, what could be more depressing? I couldn't cheer them on, but in the end, they were also victims of this senseless competition for survival. That's unfortunate. The dungeon had to prepare trials for its challengers, and these worlds rejoiced in knowing that there was a way to survive. Since both sides had something to gain, the dungeon is able to offer such an environment to explorers. It was truly laughable. The dungeon, the attackers, the defenders, all of them. Who wouldn't find it funny? This isn't the only floor like that, right? Sherafina just what is your? I stopped mid-sentence and swallowed my words. A thought suddenly crossed my mind. If Sherafina moved over entire worlds, wasn't it the dungeon maintaining these worlds? If Sherafina had such a great power, why did she need to nurture heroes and explorers through the dungeon? Couldn't she have solved it with her strength directly? Why did she need to create this system known as the dungeon? This is the first time since the dungeon's founding that a world-class floor has been opened to an explorer. To prevent the dungeon's loss of energy, everything on this floor is for one-time use. 
Though burdensome, it is a needed sacrifice to achieve the dungeon's goal. Goal As very little of the dungeon's power has been used, the dungeon has very little control over it. Do watch out for danger. Thanks for the advice. I smiled bitterly at Sherafina's kind message. The timing of her message was perfect as though it was an excuse she had prepared beforehand. Monsters in the vicinity charged towards me, as though I was their ticket to freedom. The sky was filled with countless number of dragons, the earth was filled with ant lions and other massive monsters hidden underground, and the sea was littered with supersized krakens and other sea monsters. This entire world was my enemy. I do feel sorry for you all, but sadly, we can't join hands and be friends at this point. I grabbed my spear tighter. The several dozen meter long spear blade of lightning cut through the air and cleanly severed the head of a dragon. This older brother is busy. Let's hurry up. I announced as I spread my mana out and increased my detection range. Currently, the most important task was to reach the end of the dungeon. I could think about other things later. Looks like the stairway to the next floor isn't nearby. Guess I'll have to clean this place up before I go. I am Dortu. Dortu will help Master clean up. In general, metals have high thermal and electrical conductivity. Although copper was the most widely used metal in practice, it was silver that has the highest conductivity for heat and electricity. It was only because of their high cost that electrical wires used copper. However, this was before mana or monsters appeared. With the advent of monsters, Earth came to discover new metals, and silver quickly had to give up its place as the number one conductor of heat and electricity. But of course, because of these new metals' sky-high cost, copper was still the most commonly used metal. In any case, Dordu had the ability to make a metal with higher thermal and electrical conductivity than any of the metals found on Earth. Not only that, his metal could transfer energy without any loss, and he could even turn heat energy into metal. What was so amazing about Dordus' ability wasn't that he could infinitely produce gold. It was that he could make metal with any property he desired. I am Dortu. Dortu will now make electricity torture hell. Sorry Dortu, but your naming sense sucks. I couldn't help but cut in. I am Dortu. Dortu will not make it. Don't sulk and make it, Dortu. I am Dortu. Dortu will now make electric hell. 1. He says this in English. Did he think it would sound cooler if he said it in English? Sorry, Dortu, but you're wrong by the way, what happened to torture? Don't tell me you don't know how to say it in English. From a single point in the air, a line of metal began to be drawn. As though a painter was moving his brush on his canvas, Dortu was drawing a line of metal using the air as his canvas. In a flash, the line extended far beyond the reach of my sight and even split into multiple lines like the branch of a tree. The lines then tore through any monster in their paths. Although enraged monsters destroyed some of the lines, broken lines were mended in the blink of an eye and continued to kill any nearby monsters. Scary. It felt as though the world was trapped in a birdcage created by Dortu. What started as a single strip of metal had now branched out to cover the entire sky and was beginning to advance to the ground and sea. My mana was being sucked out rapidly. It meant Dortus metal carried an immense power. I am Dortu. Preparation is finished. Im done too, master. Good, let's do this. In an instant, the elongated spear of lightning shrunk to its original size. When the lightning energy became compressed into the spear handle, platinum sparks began to crackle around the spear. Would Zeus lightning be stronger than this? Perhaps so with Sky God's rage, but without it, Pika and Dordus' power combined might very well match Zeus' divine lightning. Gru. A dragon with his wings pierced by dozens of metal lines roared and breathed out fire. The metal Dorda created had an extremely high heat conductivity. The moment it breathed out, Countless other monsters roared in pain. At that moment, I raised my spear and struck down on a metal line nearby. Hap! The spear severed the line and released the lightning inside at the same time. Immediately, the world became dyed in white. An absurd level of lightning erupted through the metal lines and reached every target in the world. Master, a lot of monsters are still breathing. 
It's fine, ignore them. It doesn't look like they can be a threat. I retrieved my spear and looked around. First, I could no longer see any monsters in the sky. Thanks to Dordis metal covering most of the sky, the sky was now nothing but clear and clean. There were many injured monsters on the ground, and the sea monsters must have received indescribable shock, as several hundred boiled octopus legs floated on the water. But if they were dead, they should have disappeared into particles of light. Since they were still there, they had to be alive even if their legs were cooked. I am Dortu. Monsters in this area have been disarmed, but the previous undulation of mana attracted more monsters. Master has low mana. It's fine. There's lots of scattered mana in the air from all the dead monsters. I smiled at Dordis' concern, immediately spreading out Steel's power and starting Peruta circuit. The mana particles saturating the air immediately began to rush into me. Every time I clear a floor, in conquering a world. After sucking in all the scattered mana, I murmured with a sigh. You said the 45th floor was the last floor in beyond? Yes. Just like the dungeon's 100th floor, no explorer has ever stepped foot into beyond's 45th floor. So if you don't enter beyond by the first dungeon's 55th floor, you can't reach its end. It's a rough place, so I understand. Beyond is a bit different than the rest of the dungeons. Normally, there would be a detailed explanation after this, but Sherafina didn't say anything more. Just when I was thinking she'd never tell me about it, Sherafina's message continued. Beings that can ignore a part of the dungeon's power even while being tied to the dungeon. Higher floors of beyond is a place to test whether explorers can come out victorious against such beings. And if they fail, they'll die. That has never happened to this day. Sherafina sounded like her pride was hurt. Since I didn't want to provoke her more and get hated, I changed the topic slightly. What happens when you conquer all of beyond? You will be given a world's power. Huh. Through the ages, countless number of explorers and numerous heroes have entered the dungeon. Heroes who died while staying in the dungeon didn't have a reason nor a target to transfer their powers to, and the dungeon managed to obtain their powers when they died. An explorer who has conquered beyond will be given a portion of such world's powers. What can one do a world's power? All worlds had powers that fit their form and size. But if a different world's power was brought to a world that lost its power it should be possible to revive it. Even if it might not be fully revived, even if everything couldn't return to the way it was. In that case, a similar reward might be given for conquering the dungeon. I should be the first one hearing about this, right? I felt a slight headache, but I regained my calm after taking a deep breath. He'll say it beforehand, but I don't need something like that. Give it to another explorer. In that case, as the conqueror, you have the authority to give the power to an explorer of your choice. I nodded without replying. However, most of the foreign explorers I knew were already heroes who carried their world's powers or were people like Ludia who was preparing to fight the one who stole their world's power. Although Kane's world went extinct, he still had his world's power. How many explorers wanted to grant their world a world's power? If I had to choose one to give a world's power to, how am I supposed to make my choice? You sure like troubling people, Sherafina. I spoke with a sigh. Sherafina then replied with a slightly different tone than usual, like a young girl full of emotions. I am always rooting for you from the bottom of my heart. Always and forever. Another month went by. I was advancing through Beyond's 44th floor. Chapter, 335 Monsters appearing from Beyond's 41st floor looked similar to demons. They were shaped like humans, but had black skin and violent nature, using their body parts as weapons. Similar to demons, they carried an explosive amount of mana, but they were different in that they could regenerate even if their limbs were cut off, relying more on their physical abilities than their magical abilities. These monsters called Alang had never appeared in the first dungeon. They are one of the oldest monsters in the dungeon. They existed even before the dungeon's founding. They're ancient monsters that should have disappeared in the flow of nature. And you drag them into the dungeon? Ilang. In front of these monsters, neither magic nor skills worked. It wasn't that they nullified the dungeon's power. 
It was just that the types of attacks made by refining a power into other forms didn't work. Only pure aura and power of elements could injure them. It seemed it had something to do with their league. He is coming. His growth seemed to have no end, but it seems it has come to an end. They also had a strange way of talking. While they tried to pierce my stomach with their hands covered in white auras, they talked politely as though to annoy me. He is tough. His armor has a very special ability. If we lose our focus, we will be killed in an instant. Let us ambush him to test him. Shut it, you bastards. With a shout, my spear covered in a transparent aura shot out and crushed an elang baring his teeth at me. Nearby elangs flinched and took a few steps back, but I charged towards them at full force. Swinging my spear like a baseball bat, I swept through all the nearby monsters. You aren't my match. You are right, but when our numbers multiply by 158 times, we will have a chance. We cannot understand how he has exceeded the standard. There must have been an outside intervention. To lower the error rate. Disappear. Even though they admitted to having no chance unless their numbers multiplied 158 times, they still attacked me relentlessly. As I took care of them one by one, I couldn't help but become curious about their boss waiting for me on the 45th floor. I was especially curious what he had to say about me. It is impossible to kill him. It is impossible for anyone. Like I said, you guys are noisy. Though I made it look easy, these elangs were incredibly powerful. To pierce through their tough bodies, I needed to compress more than 200,000 mana, and I to destroy even their ashes to prevent them from regenerating. The fact that not even a hundred of such monsters could injure me showed just how much of a monster I became. After I took care of another group of elangs, I reached a dead end. I had already used mana detection to check out other areas. I was certain this had to be the place where the gate was, so I looked around in confusion. Soon, as if to show that I wasn't wrong, a gate leading to the first dungeon appeared out of thin air. Hugh, it's almost the end. Thank God Beyond is small. Beyond was no longer bigger than the first dungeon. Unlike the first dungeon floors which came to be the size of a planet, Beyond's floors never surpassed the size of a country. Furthermore, as the 45th floor was the final floor, I really was close to finishing Beyond. I came out to the floor shop expecting to see Loretta flapping her ears happily, but she wasn't there. I tilted my head and sent her a whisper. Loretta, where are you? You you, two worlds went extinct at the same time so I'm busy taking care of some things. For some reason, lots of worlds are becoming extinct recently. It's like they're trying to take Shin Nim away from me. I don't think that's it. But he'll see you later then. Sob, see you later, Shin Nim. Loretta's words worried me. Was it wrong to think climbing higher accelerated the change in other worlds? Was someone coordinating these changes? Just when I thought I knew more about the world, but it seemed I was wrong. I sighed. All right, I might as well go straight to. No. Although I was a bit tired from fighting all those elangs on the 44th floor, I thought I would have no problem fighting the 95th floor master if I drank some potions and took some rest. However, my conversation with Loretta made me feel too uneasy. Even while I told myself everything was fine, I returned to Earth to regain my calm. When I went to the guild house in Jongyo, I saw several succubi moving around busily. What's everyone doing? Oh, dear husband. When one of the succubi shouted, the rest instantly froze and turned their sights towards me. This wasn't the first time this happened, but it was still a bit scary. We're investigating the next mass outbreak. Sierra Nim is very anxious. We're looking into past data to predict as much as we can. She's especially anxious today. Where is she? The succubi all pointed to the second floor. I nodded in reply and went up to Sierra's room on the second floor. You're here, Hero Nim. You knew I'd come. Sierra pulled out her face buried in papers to look at me. Her cross-shaped pupils were shining radiantly. If it's about Hironim, there isn't a single thing I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I retorted half-heartedly and approached her. Her pretentious side was annoying, but her hard-working side was admirable. 
Sierra then went back to focusing on the documents near her, a first for when I was around, and murmured audibly. As I thought. What's up? I finally figured it out. She put down the document in her hand, which I picked up after. It contained pictures of the dungeon gates from America taken from multiple angles. It even had data on the event raid that broke out afterwards. I had to give props to the cameramen who risked their lives. Remember what I told Hironim last. She raised her head and seemed to say something, but stopped in the middle and flinched. What? Why you're too close? Because I was looking at the documents, I had naturally went right in front of her. Sierra blushed and fidgeted away. Her breathing was rough. Sierra, you changed. I if you come closer, I don't know what I might do to you. That was scary in and of itself, but the fact that she realizes it was undoubtedly a rapid advancement. Sierra, you grew. Wyanim said shed kill me. Oh. It seemed she even learned to care about her life. After a sigh, I carefully sat down on the chair next to her. So. What did you find out? Yes, as I told you before, I've been trying to see the future with Wyanim's help. Yeah, I remember. Waya and Sierra wanted to know two things. The first was when the next event dungeon outbreak will be, and the second was where. Knowing these two factors was crucial in properly responding to them. You said you couldn't see any gates and only us fighting monsters in a place that didn't resemble Earth. Yes, Hironim. I thought it was because of my lack of ability. To become more skilled, I concentrated on learning Peruta circuit and ways to control mana which Wyanim taught me. I researched my ability in various ways too. Of course, my ability did grow as a result. So. Did you find out something new? Let me change the topic slightly. Sierra's cross-shaped pupils flashed. Hironim, do you remember Greenland? Of course I do. A lot happened there and it wasn't even that long ago. Originally, Greenland is a wasteland that's mostly ice. But somehow, the demons managed to switch Greenland to a different land mass. Hironim said it belonged to a world called Luca. Sierra skillfully manipulated a device on the table and turned on a hologram video. It contained footages of the changed Greenland. To be honest, how they did it wasn't important to us. Instead, I focused on just how perfectly the land swapped. With the succubi's help, we investigated the land mass, and our result was the same as what Hironim told us. For some reason, she looked really proud as she said that. Did she just like saying my name? The current Greenland is no longer a part of Earth. It is a part of the Luca continent. I immediately understood what she was trying to say. That was the reason for my silence. Sierra also understood that and stayed silent. If she was like this when we first met, I would never have hated her. So. After some time, I opened my mouth. You're telling me the Luca continent will move over to Earth? Sierra replied with confidence. And in place of the outbreak of event dungeons. You mean they can completely escape the dungeon's influence? Yes. I believe this was why I was able to foresee the future to this extent when I wasn't good at foreseeing things related to the dungeon. Of course, in exchange, there was another power hindering me. That must be the demon lord's power. I answered. Then, I stood up. I should get ready. Sierra, when is it happening? Less than two months from now. No, since we aren't sure whether it will happen at once, it might be even earlier. Got it. I nodded silently. Sierra looked up at me and sparkled her eyes. But I believe in Hironim. Hironim is someone who will be a conqueror of all things. You should really stop them. I don't even need to foresee it. I'm sure of it. Really, what do I do about this kid? I made a light sigh. Then, I bended down slightly and gave the dazed Sierra a kiss on her forehead. It was the blessing she so wanted. Kayak. If you want me to give you another blessing, don't say that again. Got it? I thought using a carrot was a better tactic than using a stick, but unfortunately, it wasn't effective. Sierra had fainted before hearing what I said. Chapter, 336. 
Revival's position on Earth left no room for doubt. In the past, Guardian or other government agencies closely monitored whatever actions Revival took, and practically all kinds of mass media flocked to analyze the situation. But now, Revival only needed to say the word to achieve anything they wanted. In fact, the extent to which this was true was reaching a terrifying degree. I only realized this while I was taking care of overdue work. Among them, the first thing I had to solve was the dungeon outbreak that would happen in less than two months. Thanks to Sierra, we knew that the fourth dungeon outbreak wouldn't be like any of the past outbreaks. This time, demons from the Luka continent would invade Earth directly. Although we wouldn't be able to stop them completely, knowing what will happen gave us time to prepare against it. I first summoned all the free revival members to the guild house and practiced dimensional magic while I waited. After about ten minutes, the door to the conference room opened and Waya sauntered in feebly. Last time I heard, she was going through Beyond's twenty-fourth floor. I doubt she died on purpose to make it to the meeting, which meant she cleared the floor in such short period of time. That also explained why she looked so exhausted. Shin, Sierra was humming around me with a proud boasting look, did you do something? Waya, didn't she tell you something more important? Yeah. Waya immediately changed her manner and let out a deep sigh. It was the kind of sigh a middle-aged assistant manager who had little chance for a promotion. She spoke with a pitiful face. Your blessing didn't last long. Give me another one. A stronger one. I know you want to escape from reality, but this isn't a joking matter come here. When I gave her the blessing she wanted, her expression brightened. But it seemed she wasn't satisfied with just the blessing as she walked into my embrace with open arms. Compared to her high level, Waya's constitution was worryingly low. The lightness of her body made me worry about her even more. As if to confirm my thoughts, Waya whispered in a slightly dazed tone. Shin, I know we're in a hurry but let me stay like this for a bit. Sure. Hoo-hoo, unlike how you act, your shoulders are reliable. Shut it. Waya only had a few people she could act spoiled around, and with how much she supported me emotionally, I was glad I could help her this way. Things were quite comfortable as neither of us talked. At that moment, the door opened again. Amem. The one who walked in at this timing was none other than Walker. Because Waya had her face buried between my shoulders, she didn't know who walked in. As for Walker, he immediately grinned when he saw us. Looks like I came in at a bad time. Shut up and sit down, Walker. Waya grumbled without turning around or getting up. If it was like any other day, it wouldn't have been weird if she shot a fireball at him. Walker seemed to have known this too as he sat down with a bitter smile. You better take care of her, Kong Shin. When she's not in front of you, she's noticeably weak and exhausted. If you abandon her, you'll go to hell. That won't happen. You just worry about Sophie. Sophie then walked in through the open door. Not only her, but Yua, Lydia, Yiyun, father and other members walked in together. Yua furrowed her brows the moment she saw Waya and me, and Waya finally got up while grumbling once more. Using my freed hands, I picked displayed the document I looked over with Sierra on a projection. Simply said, I wanted to talk to everyone about the upcoming dungeon outbreak. Everyone should know about Sierra's foresight ability, right? With that, I explained how the Luka continent might overwrite parts of Earth. Everyone listened in in a daze. Overriding Earth's lands. It was similar to how event dungeons became field dungeons when they were left uncleared. Lands that underwent such transformation couldn't be changed back. W8. Sophie spoke with an expression that seemed to say that her head hurt. The outbreak scale any predictions? Sophie, this might be a bit shocking but. I wonder when it started. Was it when I mastered Peruta circuit and reforged my body? Or was it when I killed the Beast King? I didn't know exactly when, but from a certain point, I seemed to gain a bit of an intuition. Furthermore, it was especially strong when it came to matters relating to the world's power, heroes, and world's enemies. It wasn't something like Sierra's foresight ability. I believed it was a natural product of my league increasing. In any case, this intuition of mine was speaking strongly. I relayed the message my intuition was trying to say. 
This will be the final one. Final one. Ah. Sophie and the others who weren't sure of the situation turned pale. I then projected the world map. It was result of all the succubi's countless hours of investigation and analysis. We don't know how big Luca continent is, nor do we know how big the monster's world is. But we did find a rule that the previous invasions followed. What's that? Dungeons won't appear where they've already appeared before. With that, I manipulated the projection. Parts of the world map began to turn red. Watching the map, Yiyun asked, tilting her head. Didn't event dungeons appear more than once in Yangdumpo district? The exact location didn't overlap. It's the same for other places. But if those two dungeons in Yangdumpo became field dungeons, they might not swallow all of Yangdumpo together. So that's. Over 60% of the map was red. I nodded and spoke. Those are areas that the Luka continent will overwrite. Monsters and demons will be crawling in these red areas. Up until now, we had destroyed many event dungeons. Considering how quickly they came and how uncooperative other ability users were, our accomplishments were truly praiseworthy. But even with that, we had not covered even half of Earth. This is hell. None of the other worlds faced something like this. Lydia agreed with someone's remark with a bitter smile. I've been thinking about this for a while. Event dungeons are occurring too quickly on Earth and there are too many of them too. When Luca Continent got invaded, demons didn't move their previous world's land. They only crossed over to our world themselves. Panon Continent also didn't go through anything like this. How can Earth be this unlucky? Though, I have to admit, it's lucky to have someone like Crown Prince. Ren agreed with Lydia. Kane, who came surprisingly, made an audible hurumph. This isn't the first time something like this has happened my world faced something similar. Monsters and their lands crossed over in the middle of densely populated areas. It was quite a tragic scene. Tragic scene. Don't say it, I get it. Don't listen to him, everyone. I tried to interrupt him, but Kane continued resolutely. It's simple. Monsters or objects suddenly appeared where humans were, exactly on top of them. It wasn't too bad when objects crossed over. If you were one of the unlucky ones who were at that wrong place at the wrong time, you would die, but at least it would be swift. But when monsters crossed over, it was a bit of a pain. Humans becoming chimeras was one thing, but monsters gained superior intellect and they fused with humans, becoming an even scarier threat. UUK. See, I told you not to listen. I mocked Walker who ran out of the conference room with a pale face. Wait, Walker. Eh sorry. For some reason, Sophie apologized in his place. Seeing her apologetic and embarrassed face, I asked with doubt. Sophie, are you? Uh, yeah. He has Kavad syndrome. Silence descended. Yiyun was the only one tilting her head, wondering what Kavad syndrome was. After Lydia whispered her an explanation, she became silent. Lydia knowing more about Earth's knowledge than Yiyun was unexpected, but that wasn't important at the moment. Hoping to change the mood, I made a soft remark. See congrats. Thanks. But I couldn't say it because of everything happening recently. Seeing her extremely apologetic face, I sighed. I'm sure they were being careful, but I knew things didn't always go as one planned. Waya spoke quietly. This is great. Come on. It is. Congrats, Sophie. I thought I was going to be the first one. I'm jealous. Says who? Ha. Lydia sneered and Waya snorted back. Thanks to them, the awkward atmosphere went away. I know each of our strengths are important I'm so sorry. We were careful, we really were. I know, you don't have to feel sorry. How long has it been? Three months. I'm fine, but Edward is still like that. I closed my eyes and opened them before making an announcement. Sophie, rest from now. But I'm fine for now. No, rest. We don't know what's going to happen, we can't overwork you. Don't worry, we'll make Walker make up for it. You you. 
Sophie became silent. At that moment, Walker came back in with his head down. I spoke. No excuses. None. You better get ready to work your ass off. I'm at your command. Let's also talk about this now. We can't do anything about what already happened, but everyone should be more careful so as to. With that, I closed my mouth. Along with Waya, all the girls were looking at me with sparkling eyes. As I knew understood exactly what they were thinking, I stealthily changed what I was going to say. Ren, be careful with Le Beak. Hmm. What is this Kavad syndrome? Le Beak and I have to be careful. Is it a disease contagious to beast men? It seemed I didn't need to worry about Le Beak. With a sigh, I clapped to signal this talk was over. However, it seemed Kane wanted to keep talking about his damned chimeras, as he looked at me and asked. Did this never happen in Earth? Never. There were monsters that appeared on Earth without going through event dungeons, I don't know if it was luck, but no monster ever fused with a human. Though, maybe we just never discovered one. Do you think it will be the same this time? Of course not. I shook my head vehemently. That's why we're gathered here. To prevent incidents like that. We have to take such a huge land transmittance into account. Walker spoke unconvinced. Land transmittance, it was the perfect phrase to describe what would happen. Looks like there will be a mass migration. Samire added quietly. I nodded. Well contact each country's guardian and government. Directly. And that's exactly what I did that day. Along with announcing humanity's need to evacuate, I revealed the areas of land transmittance. By a single sentence from me, a mass migration began the next day. Chapter, 337 This is the map provided by Revival's guild master, Kong Shin. He predicts 60% of Earth will become the target of what he calls land transmittance. These areas are the areas that have yet to be affected by gates. Governments across the globe are preparing to relocate their citizens to safe areas. The Korean government submitted a formal request to Revival, but Revival's guild master has declined the request and is now working to sweep the currently remaining monster territories. Two weeks after my announcement, I was the only news topic no matter which news media I looked. 60% of Earth becoming a danger zone sounds absurd even to me, but everyone was taking my words as the absolute truth. I couldn't help but find the feeling scary. A footage of Revival's guild master clearing a monster territory has gone viral. I have also taken a look, and I can only call it incredible. We've brought a guest analyst to break down the video. Selected by Mr. Kong Shin himself to become a dungeon explorer, it's Korea's ability user, Mr. Choi Yo. Hello, it's nice to be here. First, I can hardly be called an analyst. No ability user on Earth should be capable of analyzing his power. Next to the host was one of the first ability users to become an explorer. Instead of climbing the dungeon like he's supposed to, it seemed he accepted a news cover offer. Pointing to the video footage playing on the corner of the screen, he explained. Can you see them? Those metallic fragments in the air are most likely one of his special abilities. Just like the gold he created in the Vatican City, he seems to have the ability to transform anything into metal or create it from null. Just this ability alone would make him one of the strongest ability users on Earth. You mean Heroes Road of Vatican City? Then can Mr. Kong Shin's metallification power be considered a one-of-a-kind power? It's not just Earth. The dungeon I can enter is full of people from many different worlds, but no one had the ability to create metal like him. His ability is unique and will continue to be unique. In any case, what's important is that these metals only serve as a medium for his true ability. Excited, the man then went on to make guesses about my evil eyes and how it worked together with Dorda's power. Surprisingly, he was pretty good at explaining everything. Finished. Kong Shin, no more monsters, on Earth. No demons either. After I turned the screen off, Daisy spoke as she flew next to me. Next to her was Mary. I looked down at the Arctic Sea. As she said, I couldn't feel any presence of life. That was quick. Anything in sight, Kong Shin already killed. Daisy added with a small smile. 
Kong Shin's nickname, God of Judgment. Don't give me more nicknames, ITLL only make me tired. I retorted brusquely and put away the phone in my hand. Daisy then stretched before putting Mary away in her inventory. Looking at her, I asked. Can you not use dimensional magic? Inexperienced. It'll teach you, so learn it for when the dungeon's power suddenly becomes limited. Kong Shin will teach me. Who, Kong Shin is always hitting on me, sometimes pitiful. Daisy shrugged without changing her expression. I nodded and added. Don't learn it. A man's word is worth a thousand gold. Where are you learning these things? After sighing, I returned to the guild house with Daisy. While the rest of the country was busy relocating, the area around our guild house was especially quiet. Zhangnya wasn't part of Earth's red zone, and with Revival's guild house being here, the district was planned to be used for ability users' base camp. Along with other succubi, Waya was looking at a projection on the wall, covering the changes to the world in real time. Ever since the last meeting, she was working non-stop without rest. The loss is going to be immeasurable. We won't be able to save everyone's lives, and when the land transmittance happens, countless public and private properties will be lost. Who to think the result of us being prepared? Just looking at the screen won't change anything, Waya. Go rest. She shook her head. I can't continue being here anyways. The succubi said licorice will come out soon, so he'll stay until she comes back. No, leave things to the succubi and rest. We did everything we could. We notified the world of the upcoming danger and killed every last monster on Earth. What more could we do? Use our abilities to help humanity's evacuation. That was too inefficient. Your body is more important. Rest and make sure you're in your top condition. But. Rest. I sighed and dragged her away. Daisy, who was looking at us from a distance, asked aloud. Are you two going to bed? In putting her to bed. You get ready to learn magic. Un. W with just the two of you. No, let me be there too. We don't do anything weird, so you just focus on getting some sleep. Waya seemed intent on not moving a foot unless I moved her. With a sigh, I picked her up. Waya struggled to free herself while Daisy commented on the situation. Calculating woman. We'll take number of precaution. I pretended to have not heard her. At that moment, a part of the projection on the wall suddenly flickered off. It was clear what that signified. Transmittance. Waya, who was making a fuss in my arms, and Daisy both froze. The transmittance has started. A succubus reported. The location is Japan, the scale is all of Honshu. It's the entire area other than the part under the influence of one of the previous gates. Didn't we have two months? Waya asked quietly. I shrugged and replied. Sierra said two months is when the transmittance will complete. Though, I didn't think it already start. Ihu. Unlike how she was acting previous, Waya leaped out of my arms resolutely. Let's go, Shin. I'm ready. Staring at Japan's map, I nodded. With the transmittance already happening even with all the preparations we were making, I felt like going insane, but we had to make haste as much as possible. Even a single second was precious. Japan was undoubtedly only the beginning. All right, let's go. I immediately summoned all the members available and headed to Japan. While Japan was also carrying out a countrywide evacuation, two weeks was realistically too little time. Not to mention, the demons that appeared in Japan began their massacre immediately as though they knew what they were going into. If the appearance of the monsters was like natural disasters, the appearance of the demons was a clear proclamation of war. They had a clear goal and did not save their strength to accomplish it. After several members gathered, we teleported to Tokyo using the return location I had set beforehand in Tokyo. All this only took seven minutes to happen. During these seven minutes, the number of casualties surpassed seven. Five million. Ooh. Wasn't Earth supposed to be an uncivilized place? How can there be so many interesting things? In comparison, Luca Continent was too boring. But why are the humans here so weak? 
Kayak. And monsters. Who called us monsters? There was no need to look around. A slaughter was continuing in the city even at this moment, and the numerous tall buildings were crumbling down as though they were competing with each other. There wasn't a single direction where no scream rang out. Everyone spread out. It'll take care of this place. I announced to Waya, Daisy, Leon, Yua, Father, and Kane before kicking off the ground and releasing my energy fully. I was making myself known to all the demons. What's that? It's the hero. The hero? Don't joke. The sharp voices of demons rang inside my ears. Ignoring them, I shot up into the air and began to create metallic fragments and ice fragments. To increase the number of fragments, I summoned both Dortu and Ryue. How can that be? It's only been a few minutes since we came here. How can the hero be here? In Luka Continent, the hero needed at least two days. What kind of a hero is he? The fragments began to reach ground level. Most demons simply destroyed whatever they set their eyes on, but the smart ones slowly backed off while keeping their eyes on me. I don't know what he is, but his mana is absurd. Weren't we supposed to retreat when the hero comes? It's too late. I murmured quietly and widened my eyes. The countless number of metals and ice received my eyes' power and reflected them in all directions. Even if they began to run the moment I arrived, it would have been too late. With my mirrors helping me, the power of my evil eyes could reach far beyond the scope of this city. In an instant, all demons were petrified before shattering into pieces. Kayak. Hook, hook what just. I, am alive. The demons shattered for a simple reason. By using steel's power through the mirror, I had absorbed all of the petrified demons' mana. I multiplied the number of mirrors using the mana I absorbed, and the mirrors spread out rapidly. Although it might be hard to cover all of Honshu, I knew the other members would take care of that. Who is that? Kong Shin. It must be him. Thank God, we're safe now. After confirming that no demons were left alive, I led my flock of mirrors and moved to another area. The hero's coming. I heard that. Run away from. A power like this Kahak. Once they saw me, it was too late to run. Tens of thousands of demons died every moment. The small number of demons strong enough to withstand my evil eyes couldn't withstand being hit by mirrors being used as bullets. So many monsters all died in an instant. It was all real. Just by being here, he. I wanted to tend to the injured people, but I had too little time. As such, I ignored what the people below were saying, whether it was a plea for help, words of gratitude, or words of resentment. I moved solely to decimate the demons. It was the same for the other members. After spreading out into all directions, they fought against demons where my power couldn't reach. It was thirty minutes later that I came to be certain that all of Honshu was cleared of demons. However, before we could clean up Honshu, Japan's other islands underwent land transmittance. As such, we had moved non-stop to combat the demons. Glory to His Highness the Demon Lord. Save us. Shin Nim, Shin Nim is here. Three hours, all it took was three hours. Moving without rest, I killed all non-human targets, stealing their mana in the process. Thankfully, none of the demons that appeared in Japan were strong enough to cause trouble. But during the three hours it took to kill all the demons, Japan lost 30% of its population. At the same time, they also suffered a catastrophic loss in properties. But rather than worrying about lost properties, more people were simply glad to have survived this ordeal. When they saw me, they let out all sorts of screams and cheers, which I ignored completely. Shin. Waya, are you done? Why yeah. We're done with our Shin. You what are you wearing? We gathered at Tokyo's return point where we first arrived at. While many survivors murmured to themselves from the distance while looking at us, Waya shouted at me the moment she saw me. What am I wearing? I only have a helmet. I don't even have it on right now. Above your horn. Horn. Dortu immediately created a mirror in front of me. Seeing my face reflected on it, I tilted my head. 
The moment land transmittance occurred in Japan, he appeared at the scene of slaughter. In an instant, he turned all monsters into stone before continuing on to eliminate Japan of all monsters. Turning everything to null, he acts solely to save humanity. Some are saying he is a god created at the time of two moon in order to save humanity. Above my horn, a small ring of light was spinning around. I reached to touch it, but it only felt warm and had no tactile feeling. What is this? I murmured. There was no one to answer me. Something no one knew about was happening to me. Chapter, 338 After finishing up Japan's crisis, we quickly returned to Korea. While the land transmittance was underway, we didn't know where the next place would be. When things began happening exactly as Revival said, the minority of people who doubted us began to evacuate in a panic. While a mandatory evacuation was already underway, people began to be more proactive in doing so. At the same time, footages of the massacre in Japan and Revival's quick cleanup spread and increased talks about me even more. I wasn't the only one there, but I was the only one everyone was talking about. What was even more terrifying was the ring of light spinning around my horn. As time passed, it only became firmer and more stable. Pointing at this ring of light, Waya asked. Have you heard of Halo? I retorted jokingly. I do, but I haven't played it. Not the game. I smirked and shook my head. Of course, I knew what she was talking about. Don't be absurd. I'm not an angel or a saint, why would this be a halo? What else would it be then? At a loss for words, I touched my horn. I could still only feel a faint heat. I couldn't feel the halo at all. Closing my eyes, I concentrated on the horn. As expected, it didn't feel any different. With a shrug, I asked Waya. Waya, how do I look like? A handsome man with a halo and a horn. Not that. Do I look different? Waya immediately replied. It's hard to put it. It's a hard to approach kind of feeling. Even if I wanted to hug you, I would hesitate right before doing it. Something like awe. Or admiration. You know how I'm not affected by most mental magic, right? But you go right through it. Damn. If Waya was saying this, something was happening to my body for sure. But I didn't feel any different, and although I learned to control my bodice energy, I couldn't do anything about this ring of light. After touching the horn and struggling to control the light for a few more minutes, I gave up and fell on the couch. What is this good for? That's what you're thinking about when something strange like that happens to your body. Waya spoke with a wry smile. I thought you got too far out of reach, but it's nice to know that you're still the Shin I know. What do you mean, far out of reach? If anything, I'm closer to you than ever. If your wife had a light bulb on her forehead, I'm sure you'd be scared too. I couldn't help but laugh at Waya's words. Scared? You are. I might not be scared of other things, but thinking about bad things happening to you or my mother makes me scared to death, so don't laugh. Waya frowned, and a few fireballs popped up in the air. It was a trick she learned to do after she got her evil eyes and had her flame-wielding ability strengthened. I decided to take this moment to say what I needed to say. Don't worry, Waya. It'll be with you forever. You better not let the demon lord kill you after saying that. Don't worry, I won't die. The only thing that can kill me now is myself. You also can't suddenly say you're bored with the human world and transcend into heaven. The heck is that? Anyways, there are so many things I haven't done yet, so don't worry about something like that. Come here. Since I didn't know how busy things would get from now on, I had to service her when I could. When I pulled Waya into my embrace, she didn't resist and even dug deeper into my arms. Good, that was 99 points. What about the other point? You know. Waya looked up into my eyes with a shy smile. Because of her lovable smile, I completely forgot about that halo or divinity. While Walker interrupted us last time, thankfully, no one interrupted us this time as I slowly obtained my last point. The sudden start of the land transmittance and the tragedy in Japan were more than enough to stir up the world. Those who work to seek personal profits realize the gravity of the situation, 
and the worldwide evacuation sped up. It seemed my existence also put a check on these greedy people. Unlike in the past where I looked around for monsters to show off my power, this time, I had appeared in the middle of Tokyo and swiftly cleaned up all of Japan. As a result, people were beginning to see me as an existence that had transcended humanity. While I was still treated as a human in the past, now, it was as though I was in a higher realm. It was a truly strange feeling. Revival's master, Kong Shin, came into this world on year XX in XX Hospital in Seoul. Oh, it's about you, Shin. Yiyun, turn that off. Just listening to TV nowadays gave me goosebumps. Come on, came into this world. Instead of turning the TV off, Yiyun changed the channel. Unfortunately, it wasn't any different. Look Shin. It's our school. Because I was focused on climbing the dungeon, I barely remembered about the university I used to attend. Just when I was thinking about it some man was excitedly blabbering in front of the camera, I realized it was a business department professor. Why is a professor that I don't even remember seeing talking about me? He was an extraordinary student. He rarely came to school, but his grades and performance on assignments were always excellent. I should have known it back then. Many female students had a crush on him too. Just by being there, he caught people's eyes, truly a remarkable trait. He was writing a novel. Plus, because he mentioned female students, all of the girls in the guild house turned towards me and gave me funny looks. I vowed to get my revenge on the professor and turned the TV off. The bigger problem was that something like this was happening on a daily basis. It was as though a sleeping volcano has finally woken up. There's going to be a church of Kong Shin at this rate. I'm afraid it might really happen, so don't even mention it, Walker. I'm surprised it hasn't happened earlier. On the other hand, Lydia acted as though this was completely normal. In this regard, she shared the same sentiment as Sierra. People of Earth need to be more thankful. Most worlds fail to prepare properly at first, so their heroes don't end up on the top of their worlds even after tens of years passing by. Worlds like these generally end up losing without standing a chance. But Shin managed to rise to the top in just a few years and came to minimize damages this much while being invaded by two worlds at the same time. It would be weirder if no one worshipped him. That's because Earth already had several widespread religions. Plus, there are more educated people on average compared to people of other worlds. They probably felt weird worshipping someone who was alive. But because we have a friendly relationship with the Vatican and displayed an undefeatable might in front of everyone, we managed to topple this perception of theirs. Those things aren't important at all. I interrupted the others who were analyzing what happened. Of course, if possible, I want them to stop doing that, but if that helps more people survive, I'll leave it alone for now. I'll leave Earth for a while once I defeat the Demon Lord, so it won't matter then. Kong Shin, your horn decoration got bigger. Kook, don't mention it. I don't want to think about it. The golden ring of light, what Walker called a horn decoration, was indeed slowly getting bigger and strutting its presence. I didn't even want to imagine what would happen once ordinary people found out about this ring. Of course, as I had a lot of other important things to worry about, I didn't have the time to think too much about it. Kuhum, anyways, what's important is how to divide ourselves. We can't all just stay in the guild house when we don't know when the land transmittance will occur. We still have many things to obtain from the dungeon, so we'll have to form a rotating shift. Of course, we'll have to leave out people who need to enter beyond. But since I'm about to clear beyond, you can leave me in. It was important that the guild house was never empty. Revival's members consisted of Earth's strongest ability users. I formed teams based around some of the stronger members and had them stay in the guild house in the time slot allotted to them. That way, everyone else would be informed of a land transmittance whenever it happened. What an incredible world and what incredible subordinates. To think you can receive information and react based on it so quickly. Kane seemed extremely impressed with how smoothly everything was executed. Seeing him making a surprised face for the first time, I laughed. It's meaningless if we don't have the strength to support it. In that sense, take care of us, Kane. They'll just do what I'm contracted to do. As long as it's within the terms of our contract, 
I can do whatever you want. I was satisfied with his reliable reply. I added with a gentle smile. As you know, we don't have a lot of time left. I'm looking forward to it. By the time the aftermath of Japan's land transmittance was resolved, many things had changed. However, things that were important to me all stayed the same. I headed to the dungeon once again. I wanted to see the end of the dungeon that was now within my sight. Next on the list was the 95th floor master. The difficulty of the world breaking that started on the 91st floor continued to escalate, and by the time I reached the 94th floor, it took my current self a whole 10 days to reach the floor shop. Just like on the 91st floor, I continued to face gigantic monsters, destroying dozens of giant golems or krakens. I expected the 95th floor master to be similar, but my expectations were a bit off. Unlike the previous floor master rooms, the 95th floor master room was an entire room. The moment I went up to the 95th floor, I could hear a voice ring out. There's finally a human who managed to reach me. How truly incredible. Although I couldn't see even a tiny fraction of him, I could clearly hear his voice in my ears. Born in a human's body, yet trying to transcend humanity, I give my utmost respect to you, challenger. But a league must be given to one who fits it. In an instant, the surroundings became dark. I guessed the reason without even looking up. There was a giant being eclipsing the world's light. Thus, I will test you with due diligence. Are you prepared, human? Looking up, I saw a dragon. Chapter, 339 I thought I wouldn't be able to find someone with more mana than me. But I was wrong. The dragon in front of carried more than my one. Five million mana. The dragon spoke unenthusiastically. Be careful not to fall and die. Just when I was wondering what he meant, the ground began to shake and fall. I couldn't even feel his mana move, so I was surprised to say the least. Of course, as I could now fly with my power alone, I wasn't affected by the ground disappearing. But I caught a glimpse into his shocking magic. Floating in the air, I reached out towards the countless debris of the ground falling to a seemingly endless underworld. Dortu. I am Dortu. Following Master's command. Some of the debris stopped in the air and began to turn silver. The dragon looked on with an extremely amused expression. A material transformation, interesting. It's my elemental's power, but mm. While continuing to transform the debris, I felt something was out of sorts. At the same time, I caught sight of something in the middle of the crumbling land. Overflowing river of blood. The blood did not belong to the dragon. The moment I realized that, I turned around towards the entrance to the 95th floor, but the entrance was gone. I should have realized it when the entire floor was the floor master room. You already noticed. The dragon spoke and reached out with his foreleg as if to imitate what I did. With just that single action, most of the falling debris turned direction and shot towards me. Dorta transformed his metallicized debris into maces and spun them around me. Thundering clashes began to ring out. Dorda's metal maces and the dragon's debris were colliding fiercely. Right, I am not tied to the dungeon. Because I was so used to the dungeon's power of leaving me recently, I didn't notice that the dungeon's power disappeared. I was dumbfounded. How did you come in here? It's not too difficult. Her power is too strong even for me, but tricking her is extremely simple. Tricking her, eh? She should be watching a human fighting a giant right about now. Ha! This was what the dragon was saying. That he killed the 95th floor master and was tricking Sherafina with an illusion magic. As someone who felt Sherafina's power before, I could say this for certain. This was different than simply ignoring the dungeon's power. The dungeon's power was Sherafina's power which is refined in order to be passed to explorers. An ability to nullify the dungeon's power, which Lespina had, wasn't necessary. To isolate an explorer from the dungeon's power, it was enough to simply cut off this link between Sherafina and the explorer. However, that didn't mean anyone could ignore Sherafina herself. The difference between the two was as great as the difference between heaven and earth. Tricking Sherafina required an extraordinary amount of effort and mana. Simply put, this dragon wasn't at his full strength. Dumbfounded, 
I asked. Why are you in the dungeon? Prove to me your league. With Dorda's army of metal maces fighting the countless debris of land, it was hard to see what was directly in front of me. However, I could clearly feel a terrifying amount of energy amassing near the dragon I could faintly see. Immediately I realized that it was the symbol of dragons, dragon breath. I used frozen roar in a hurry, but frozen roar could only weaken the breath by a fraction. Meanwhile, his breath became increasingly bigger. Against a dragon, I wanted to fight with Pika so she could support my lightning, but because of his breath, it was smarter to summon Ryue for defense. I clicked my tongue. No choice, Ryue. Got it. Leave it to me. This wasn't the time to save my strength. Ryue appeared in her materialized form and immediately created barriers of ice with dozens of layers. Starting from where I was, a flower of ice bloomed towards the direction of the dragon's breath. Qua. The dragon finally breathed out. I recalled Lin saying that an EX rank flame was something the demon lord could create by giving up one of his arm, but thinking about it now, that must have been because the demon lord normally didn't wield flames. There was no way that this flame breath didn't reach EX rank. Ryue must have felt the flame's power, as she turned towards me and confessed. Shin, I don't think I can block that. Don't say that now, Ryue. Even now, there were debris flying about and colliding everywhere. I couldn't move now as I was more or less trapped by all the debris, but there was also no way to block the dragon's breath by staying here. In that case, I'd have to use one of my once per day skill, Shadow Blink. I am Dortu. Master, this isn't the dungeon. Yeah, I know that. Ah. I'm stupid. I am Dortu. Yes, Master is stupid. Shut it. Sharana. Although this place was technically the dungeon, it was a completely different world isolated from Sherafina's power. Since the dungeon's power couldn't be used, there was no way the dungeon's rules would apply here. I immediately summoned Sharana, who immediately materialized and bolstered Ryu's ice barriers. In an instant, the thousands of petals Ryue created became more brilliant. The dragon's breath then struck the barriers. Unable to withstand its force, hundreds of barriers instantly shattered and each of the remaining layers could only hold out for a few milliseconds before shattering. Although the breath was still far away from us, I could still feel its powerful heat. Take more of my mana. I won't lose. Well stop him, master. I am Dortu. Dortu will help too. Dortu. My mana began to plummet. Ryue exerted more strength into her ice petals and Sharana strengthened them. At the same time, Dortu exerted his power on the debris continually hurling towards me. Though Dortu's metal maces were simply smacking them away until now, they now began to transform into a red metal. I am Dortu. Firing. Then, they tore through the ocean of debris and shot upwards. Clearly, they were targeting the dragon's breath crashing down towards us. I am Dortu. This metal absorbs heat and converts it to freezing energy. So you can create any metal you want. I am Dortu. Not any metal, only metals that Dortu knows. The first few debris melted immediately, but as more debris struck the breath, the incredibly powerful breath began to weaken gradually. With Ryu's ice barriers blocking the breath's way, it became noticeably weak by the time it was just a kilometer from me. The dragon seemed to have noticed it too as he drew up mana from a much deeper place. Kwa. Protect Shin. He is someone who cares for all elementals. I will not let him become food for some lizard. I am Dortu. The elemental's power shot up to the limit. To handle their mana consumption, I drew Peruta circuits, absolute souls, steels and crimson hell's powers to the limit, absorbing all the mana I possibly could. Although I.D. experienced using a large amount of mana instantly, I had never experienced such a large sustained usage of mana nor absorbing such a large amount of mana. We did it, we won. Hearing Ryu's cheerful shout, I gathered my senses. Now, there wasn't anything around us. The dragon's breath and the countless layers of Ryu's barriers had both disappeared. There was one layer of Ryu's barrier left, which was especially thick and hovered about two meters from us. 
In other words, I was only a single layer of ice barrier away from that terrifying red light flame. Of course, with how close the breath had gotten, the surrounding debris had all melted. Dortu then got rid of his metal maces, and the dragon finally opened his mouth. You really blocked it. How long has it been since I saw a human stopping my breath? I'm truly pleased. Well I'm happy you're pleased, shitty lizard. That bastard, to please him a couple more times, a world would have to be destroyed. Even though I cursed him, the dragon continued while maintaining a pleased tone. Then as promised, he'll tell you why I am in this place called the dungeon. The dragon created a countless number of fireballs in the air. I am not very pleased with the dungeons and her goal. It is preposterous and arrogant. But my world and my race were facing their doom, and I realized what she was aiming for could become my goal. I'm thus waiting for that result in the dungeon's highest floor. This goal you're talking about, is that me? Yes, precisely. Ryue also created a countless number of ice balls, which struck the dragon's fireballs and let out a blinding steam. I cannot allow you to walk into her mouth. I must take you for myself, or else. The steam created by the colliding ice and flames suddenly began to rush towards me. Not only that, the abundant mana in the world disappeared. Dragon, a creature that controlled mana. He truly fit that description. While I was shocked by the sudden disappearance of mana, I felt inexplicably calm. There was something I could feel only after the mana disappeared. Come, savior. Hugh. With my eyes closed, I took a deep breath. Then, I opened my eyes back up. The ring of light spinning around my horn let out a bright light and a thick black mana began to cover my body. This mana was none other than Enigma. Good, I finally get it. I grinned. Then, I charged towards the dragon without a moment of hesitation. Chapter, 340. That's. The dragon's voice had been calm until now, but it now carried a hint of surprise. It seemed he realized what the black mana surrounding my body was. You already took that step. Stop saying things I can't understand. I thrust my spear forward. The platinum spear devoured Enigma and instantly elongated to dozens of meters in length. Without me having to think about it, my mana moved subconsciously along the path of divine speed and pierced through the center of the dragon's wing. Shocked, he flapped his wings and shouted. This speed and power and this mana pattern I can't grasp. It's as I thought. Countless fireballs appeared in the air once more. At the same time, a crushing pressure descended on my body. Clearly, he was trying to prevent me from moving with divine speed. The fireballs then hurled towards me and detonated. Ill protect Shin. Ill help too. Ryue and Sharana reacted before it was too late, but because of the sheer number of fireballs, they couldn't block them all with their power. And since the fireballs were part of a dragon's magic, Steel's extort was limited against it. Show me more. Your power, prove it to me. I will even if you don't tell me. Pika. I clenched my teeth and shouted. Pika immediately infused herself into my platinum spear and boosted the spear's lightning power. Now that I think about it, I had to give it a name soon. Something like Rose Spear. Hap. I pulled my spear back before thrusting it forward heavily. At the same time that Ryue and Sharana flew to the side, the dragon's flaps became fiercer, and a powerful gale blew towards me. My spear of lightning strengthened by Enigma collided with the dragon's calamity class blades of wind. Sharana's quick interference weakened his wind blades to an extent, but they were still incredibly powerful. Kook. To think you can even clash with me directly. Since a while ago, the dragon had nothing but praise for me. Even so, his attacks never seemed to slacken. He simultaneously used two or three magic at all times. His favorite magic seemed to be applying sporadic pressure, creating and shooting countless fireballs, summoning and dropping down huge boulders. I'm curious as to how long you'll last. That's what I want to say. Enigma wasn't just a strong type of mana. It stood above other mana and could nullify or dominate them. In a way, it was similar in position to Steel's extort. And now, I could fully control Enigma without having to use Overlord. 
When steel absorbed the enigma covering my body, it immediately began to transform. While Dorta couldn't strengthen steel with his power, things were different now that enigma was under my control. The transformed steel was still thinner than the old pure black desire, but it became thick enough to be called an armor. Reinforced by Enigma's power, steel began to extort everything that hit my body. However, the dragon let out a snort in response to seeing this. Indeed, it's powerful. But that's all you can do with that threatening mana. If anything, the dragon's ability to use magic was a cheat. Without any preparatory movement, a torrential acidic rain began to fall from only the sky directly above me. Even Ryu's ice barriers reinforced by Sharana's power couldn't withstand its force and shattered. That is a mana I can't use. If that's all you can do with that mana, then you do not have the qualification. I will retrieve that power for myself. It wasn't yours, to begin with, don't take things that aren't yours. I tighten my grip on my spear. Concentrating Pryuta circuit's power on the spear tip, I created a whirlpool of enigma. Then, I thrust it into the air. Take this instead. Again, an immense pressure descended on my body, but I stole it using extort and added its energy to the whirlpool I shot out. Instantly, the whirlpool spiraled up and sucked in the torrent of acidic rain. After devouring the acidic rain and all of its mana, the whirlpool changed direction and shot towards the dragon. Not bad, but not enough. Who? The dragon easily created a barrier of giant mana comparable in defensive power to the barriers Ryu e created before. In response, I thrust my spear towards the barrier. The stream of enigma shot out of the spear tip and stuck to the edges of the barrier. With a smile, I yanked on my spear. Hmm. The barrier disappeared. Soon, the whirlpool of enigma and acidic rain struck the dragon's body. Following up, I took the giant barrier I stole from him and compressed it down to a ball. Using the spear as its handle, I swung it down on him. With a boom, his scales popped up into the air like petals falling from a cherry blossom tree. It was the first effective attack I landed on him. Indeed, that's a fearsome power. Now you know. Looks like you're all mana and no brain. I detonated the mana to round off the attack, but he flapped his wings and blocked it with his own mana. At the same time, he created mana bullets in the air. The sky was filled with the mana bullets he created. Like stars in the night sky, there was a truly countless number of them. It showed just how much mana he carried. Will you be able to steal all of these from me? Why don't we try? The mana bullets shot towards me. With the sheer number of them, dodging them was simply impossible. Preparing myself for anything that might happen, I imbued mana into steel. At that moment, intense flames that were impossible to nullify ignited around my body. I already knew he had multiple means of attack. Thankfully, I was completely immune to status effects. Otherwise, this fight would have ended as his victory a long time ago. A dragon was skilled in all types of magic, and with this particular dragon's absurd level of charm, mental attacks and status effect magic were also possible. Let's see how long you can keep up that mana. How long? I don't have a time limit anymore. I shouted as I shot towards him. I was still under the effect of divine speed. The halo that began to shine radiantly from the moment I began to use Enigma asserted its presence to the dragon. A dragon's magic, let's see it. From that point, the fight continued for ten hours. While the dragon's magic was powerful, my elementals limited the types of magic he could use. At the same time, it was also hard for me to pierce his magic power defense and deal a critical blow. However, there was something I gained during this period. I had grown more used to using Enigma and Steel. I got used to the dragon's power, and I could now gauge his power to an extent. Ah, uh, I see. I suddenly came to a realization. This is how Sherafina expresses other strengths with numbers. Understanding your power and understanding the target's power, setting absolute numerical values to express one's strengths. It was simpler than I imagined. Sherafina's ability to quantify my strength was shocking at first, but after fighting the dragon for several hours, I had also learned to do it. Still, 
Sherafina shortened this process to an absurdly short amount of time. She was truly an amazing existence. That power of yours, I've witnessed it well. Though he didn't show his emotions, I could tell he was tired. His body was full of wounds from our drawn-out fight, and his left wing was completely tattered. Many of his silver-colored scales had also been torn off and were now floating in the air. But you don't quite live up to my expectation. The scales suddenly began to change. In Greek mythology, there was a story where a prince sowed a dragon's teeth in the earth to make powerful warriors. Similarly, this dragon was imbuing mana into his scales and creating miniature dragons. Let's finish this. I will take that power. Humph. I snorted. At the same time, Dorta received my mana and began to create numerous metallic mirrors in the air. It was my small fry elimination skill. You've made a mistake. Hmm. In the next moment, the dragons created from his scales all became petrified. Dorta then transformed them into metal, and Pika imbued her lightning into them. All of this happened in the blink of an eye. I then shot everything towards the dragon. It seemed even he didn't expect this to happen. The dragon's blood shot up in the air as a countless number of metallic balls dug into his body and frazzled with lightning. I then took in the dragon's blood with Enigma's power. Attack. I am Dortu. Following Master's command. Dorda's metallic mirrors absorbed the dragon's blood and began to shine. In the next moment, they transformed into crimson knives and hurled towards the dragon. Kahak. This was the first time I heard him scream. But my attack didn't end yet. Activating death collection, I poured out my overflowing death energy and summoned a large number of death swords. When I applied enigma and death energy to everything, a terrifying amount of weapons comparable to the number of mana bullets the dragon previously created filled up the air. You were hiding that power. I wasn't hiding anything. You just couldn't detect it. Enigma surged up. It wasn't something I received from someone, but something I created myself. Before I noticed, another ring of light appeared above my spinning halo. Now die. The weapons all stabbed into the dragon. It seemed he planned to blink out, but I was holding him still with my spear. Flesh, blood, and bones burst out of his body. But instead of screaming, he shouted happily. Right, you should have at least this much power. Now I'm satisfied. For the first time, I felt the circulation of his mana. However, this mana didn't just flow inside his body. It was resonating with something in this world and rising up explosively. Realizing where it was coming from, I looked up. Previously, I thought the dragon was covering the world's light, but that wasn't it. It was the dragon that was creating the light in the first place. To be exact, what was endlessly shining was an absurdly large object. But you are still unqualified. Since I can't be sure I can't defeat you, we'll just have to die together. Are you crazy? This was the first time I was seeing something like it. A true meteor. Judging from its size, heat, and kinetic energy, it could very well destroy several planets in our solar system. Let's see if you can petrify this. I can't petrify objects anyways. While I worked my brain to think up a way to survive, the dragon retorted with a grin. The dragons I created before weren't alive either, what nonsense are you talking about now? I immediately thought back to what happened. Indeed, the dragons he created from his scales only learned to move thanks to his mana. At best, they could be called artificial lives. They weren't truly alive. But at the time, I petrified them without much thought. Did I overcome this limit unknowingly while using Enigma? But still, I can't petrify that. Right, you can't. That's why we'll die together. As I wasn't a dragon, I wasn't able to read his expression well, but I was sure he was feeling quite happy with himself. You bastard, you were planning on doing this from the start. Not from the start, but from when I realized I couldn't beat you. Wah! I threw my spear at him. But it was impossible to kill him, when he's entirely given up on attacking me and was focusing on staying alive until the meteor killed us both. In the end, there was only one answer. Fine, they'll show you. I clenched my teeth. As I pulled my spear back, 
I closed my eyes. I stopped thinking about controlling Enigma, focusing all of my attention on a single point on the tip of my spear. You don't have time to fool around. I am Dortu. Master is focusing. Dortu will stop you. Perhaps because he absorbed power from the metals I threw at the dragon, I could hear Dortu's voice with my ears rather than my mind. Has he materialized for the first time? I'm curious. I want to look, but I can't. What I had to look was something else. The attack I succeeded for the first time when I was showing some ire. That miraculous attack which was the result of my talent for concentrating energy. Hugh. After gathering everything I could and concentrating them on the spear tip, I took a deep breath. Before I noticed, an intense heat was in front of me. I could tell without opening my eyes just how close the meteor has come. I shot my spear forward. The world became white. Chapter, 341 I opened my eyes. Countless pieces of rock were falling from the sky. With most of its boundless mana gone, it was descending to the groundless world without strength. Shin, the dragon. I succeeded. For a moment, that was the only thing in my mind. But as the dragon charged towards me the moment the meteor was destroyed, I didn't have time to drown in a sense of achievement. Because I released most of the energy I had just now, I quickly gathered nearby mana and created a barrier around me. The slowly rising mana of Enigma added to its strength, yet the dragon opened its huge mouth seemingly unperturbed by the barrier. You crazy bastard. Really? Don't look down on dragons. Like I expected from when he started approaching, he shot out a fire breath. Right in front of me. Not to mention, because his pressure magic was pushing me down, I could barely move an inch even with divine speed. With my mana not recovered yet, I couldn't utilize Steel's power either. I am Dortu. I will protect Master. Someone jumped in front of me. It was Dortu. Now I knew for certain that he had materialized. He looked exactly like a knight, his entire body covered in a thick armor and holding a large shield with his hands. Shin, mana, give me mana. Master, ill help too. I need mana. Ryue and Sharana also flew in, doing what they can to help. Just like the two of them, Dordu had little to no mana. It was hard to say how long they could last. Because of the close proximity of the dragon breath, it took even more mana to combat it. There was just no way to know how much mana we would need in total. Gritting my teeth, I shouted. Guys, dematerialize. With my unyielding command, the elementals cancelled their materialization and flew into my embrace. The dragon shouted while increasing the force of his breath to break the remaining barrier. You don't want to sacrifice your elementals. At least you're kind. Bullshit. I gave him a middle finger. In any case, as long as the elementals weren't materialized, they wouldn't be injured by the breath. After letting out a breath of relief, I waited until the barrier shattered before using Shadow Blink and teleporting behind the dragon's neck. You attacked me at a good time. He'll give you that. I placed my spear on his thick neck and tapped on it as though I was praising him. Don't you have a weak point or something? Cool. It seemed he didn't. He twisted his neck as if he wanted to continue his breath, but because I was stuck to his neck, he would end up frying his body if he did so. Wait, he was still doing it. Didn't I tell you? Let's die together. You crazy. Using divine speed, I ran down along his neck. Changing my position along with where the breath was coming from, I meticulously ran circles around the dragon's neck. However funny it might look, I was dead serious. If his breath hit me, I knew I would die. Things were more serious than I imagined. His breath changed directions with impossible angles, as though it was a guided missile. Cool. Arg, too hot. A dragon breath was nothing to scoff at. I could tell he was giving his all, as his neck and abdominal regions were burning from his own breath. There could be no hotter flames anywhere in the myriad worlds. In any case, what was important was that the dragon was also getting burned while I ran down his neck. Drawing Steel's power to the limit, I absorbed even the mana in the heat, but it was still excruciatingly hot. If you're going to die, can't you just die peacefully? 
I gritted my teeth and held up my spear. Then, I squeezed out what little mana I had available and squashed in onto the spear tip. Even though I was using Enigma, a transparent aura was faintly undulating on the spear tip. Thinking I was getting the hang of this, I let out a small smile. Immediately afterward, I stabbed the spear into the dragon's neck. I slowed down abruptly, but knowing that the dragon breath would incinerate me if I stopped completely, I clenched my teeth and ran forward while keeping my spear cutting across his neck. Kook. Let's see if you can continue that breath with your neck cut. Dortu, he'll leave it to you. I am Dortu. Spreading seeds. The dragon's body was truly enormous. Not only was he the biggest enemy I faced, he also had the greatest amount of mana. Simply making a circle around his neck took me twelve seconds. Considering my speed, this was an extremely long time. Regardless, a clear red line was drawn around his neck. However, his breath hadn't stopped. That's not enough. It is. I jumped up high. Without missing this opportunity, he turned towards me and shot his dragon breath straight towards me. However, I shouted first before the breath could reach me. Along with Dorta's calm voice, a thunderous sound boomed out. Dortu had detonated the metal he planted in the dragon's neck. The shock from the explosion then caused the dragon breath to miss me. I heard his scream once more. At that moment, the empty air suddenly exploded and injured my cheek. With that as the starting point, as though unseen bombs were planted in the air, series of explosions began to occur. A great flow of explosion that steel couldn't do anything about. While I frantically gathered nearby mana in shock, Sharana shouted in a hurry. Mana itself changed into an explosive. Be careful, master. The mana I absorbed into my body then exploded. After coughing out a mouthful of blood, I gritted my teeth. He really is full of all sorts of tricks. But as long as I knew about it, I wouldn't fall for it a second time. The dragon couldn't wield enigma, but I could convert mana into enigma. I reached out with my hands and began to convert mana into enigma. Consequently, the nearby mana stopped exploding. I could safely absorb them and recover my mana. However, the dragon was continuing. Was he trying to copy what I did? A terrifying amount of mana gathered together and formed giant blades. Several tens of them. I looked at the closet blade slashing down towards me and reached towards it with my hands. Hap. The moment I touched the blade, I activated extort with all my strength. The blade flung back into the air as though it hit a hard wall, and before it completely left my field of view, I grabbed the center of the blade with my injured hand and swung it horizontally, destroying all the other blades. Then, I aimed the sword at the dragon. Dorda's explosives seemed to have worked, as blood was pouring down from his neck. Of course, as I knew the absurd regenerative power of a dragon, it didn't surprise me when I saw his deep wounds recovering. However, it wasn't too late. How persistent. That's what I want to say. The blade made of half-transparent mana was dyed in grey. The entirety of the huge blade was being converted into enigma. If I couldn't wield enigma properly, I would have died to the dragon long ago. I couldn't be more thankful for the halo spinning on my horn. Without it, I wouldn't have realized I could wield enigma with my own power. Hugh. The tattoos engraved in my body all began to glow. My mana filled up, and my arms and legs grew stronger. The tattoos slowly melted into my body. In the end, they were mana refined by Sherafina. Now that I learned how to control them, they were returning to their original form. I could feel myself emitting a brilliant light. The mana blade grew larger as it sucked in more and more mana. Even some of the magic the dragon used was sucked into it. I am Dortu. Starting reinforcement. It seemed not even Dordu could transform this giant mana blade into a metal. His power only drew a thin line of metal along the blade's edge. At that moment, the dragon shouted. A spear user wants to finish me with a sword. Who cares? Without a moment of hesitation, I swung the blade down. The blade fell as though to sever the world in half, and although the dragon let out a final dragon breath against it, the blade absorbed even the dragon's breath. 
It was only then that I realized what Dorta meant by reinforcement. The metal he added to the blade was what he created from absorbing the dragon breath's heat. That's why it could cut through the dragon breath. Until the end, the dragon used all sorts of magic in disbelief of what was happening, but the blade absorbed them all and finally severed the dragon's neck. Seeing the dragon's head separate from its body, I snorted. What matters is that you won, not how you won. Then, the dragon's body began to shine. I'm satisfied. God damn it. I cursed softly. Is not dying some new fad? Aren't you a living being? How are you alive with a severed head? If it's you, you can do it. I will entrust myself to you. Entrust what? I don't want it, go away. I'm going to start. I can keep us hidden for six months. Do what you can to obtain my everything. The dragon's voice rang out. I then realized that this was a magic. It was prepared the moment I entered the 95th floor, set to trigger when I killed him. It was an extremely simple magic. A dragon's power, will you be able to contain it, human? Shut it. I'm not even a human anymore. Grumbling in a low voice, I closed my eyes seeing the dragon's body flying towards me as particles of light. One month later, when I finally left the dungeon. A single dungeon had appeared on earth. Chapter, 342. I saw it the moment I came back to earth. It was hard to miss something so big flying in the sky. How big was it? You could most likely see it no matter where you were on earth. That's. I immediately got a headache. When I first awakened as an elementalist, I saw a dream. This dungeon looked exactly like the dungeon I saw back then. In that dream, the sky was reddish black, the sun couldn't shine down on earth and countless number of people had died in the dungeon. If I remember correctly, father and I talked before entering the dungeon. Oh Appa. Turning around, I saw Yua walking in through the door. Yua. It really is Appa. Yua murmured seemingly in disbelief. Luna wasn't in her arms. Where's Luna? Luna grew up. I can't carry her around anymore. In just one month. A lot happened. Follow me. Many people have been worried sick about Appa. We were seeing each other for the first time in a month, but Yuo was acting strangely calm and collected. I thought only a month passed, but did ten years somehow go by? I was filled with all sorts of thoughts, but I decided to be content with seeing Yuo safe and sound. As we came out through the door, Yua spoke in a soft voice. I'm glad you're safe, Appa. I was worried so much. Sorry, it won't happen again. Of course. It's almost over too. With that, I made a bitter smile. Yua looked a little surprised as she looked up at my face, but she soon nodded and smiled. I trust you. Good. But is Appa's confidence coming from that strangely shaped horn? Ah, you have two of them now. Don't mind the horn, ha ha ha. Rubbing the two horns curving up on my forehead, I smiled sweetly. Shin. Where were you until? Waya, who was looking at a projection screen on the wall, shouted the moment she saw me entering with Yua before stumping down on her seat. With her eyes trembling and tearing up, she spoke as she glared at me. I feel like I lost thirty years of my lifespan worrying about you. Sorry, I couldn't do anything about it. What about now? Are you okay? Phew hick. Seeing Waya break out into tears, I softly stroked her head. Waya then let out what she had been holding in for the past month. It was so hard by myself. Everyone only listens to you. It was so sad and annoying at the same time, I. You did well. I want suddenly cut off contact again, so don't worry. Waya pouted and rebutted. You said you'd always be by my side before you disappeared. But for real this time. I pinky swear. Though I didn't have much choice, since I had left everything to Waya for a month, she deserved some praise and comfort. Just looking at her, I could see she was on the verge of collapsing. She might have looked fine to others, but I knew how troubled she must have been. Thanks, Waya. I'll take care of everything now so don't worry. Un. You you, 
I, I have to endure it. It seemed Yua was feeling great pain for my intimacy with Waya. There were many things I wanted to say, but I decided to wait until later. Looking up, I happened to see the screen Waya was looking at. Then, I froze. What's this? Areas that underwent land transmittance. Look at the areas in red. But this is. Well that's how it is. Waya spoke rather calmly. I pointed at Zhangyo, where our guild house was located, and asked. Wasn't there an event dungeon here before? Yeah, but that event dungeon had monsters, not demons. I immediately felt a chill go down my back. I had understood what she meant. Then. Don't worry, Shin. It's not your fault. We were all fooled. Although Wyatt seemed calm about it, I couldn't calm down at all. We had made a critical miscalculation. Thinking about it now, the previous land transmittances had only been between the Luka continent and Earth. But we included event dungeon areas from the monster's world into our safe zones. We didn't even stop to think. Why? Why didn't I think of it? Why did I assume the Luka continent and the monster's continent operated under the same rules? I knew the answer. It was because the demon's event dungeons had never overlapped with the monster's event dungeons. As a result, we concluded that the land transmittance would follow the same rule. But that had been a trap. The demons might have even planned their invasion paths to be that way for this moment. When I thought of it like that, the hair on my body stood on ends. We were played for a fool. We thought we were prepared, but that was arrogance. The demon lord and the demons had completely tricked us. I asked solemnly. How many died? Two. Three billion. Seeing my expression stiffen, Waya added. It all happened in an instant. Land transmittances in areas that we believed were safe zones my heart dropped when I heard the news. What about now? It's been taken care of. It happened about a week after you disappeared. Almost as if they knew you weren't here. Waya's expression darkened as she recollected the past few weeks. None of Revival's members died. Elida and Lydia made sure everyone survived that's why people resent us more. Resent? It's not like we wanted other people to die. How can they resent us just because Revival members didn't die? It's precisely because we didn't die against those strong and fearsome demons. Countless number of ordinary people died but we didn't. I could imagine how hard Revival's members worked to protect others. But people were resenting us because none of us died. The absurdity of the situation left me speechless. At that moment, the door opened. Lydia quietly walked in. Sorry, I only planned to listen in but I couldn't calm down until I saw you with my own eyes. Lydia looked just as exhausted as Waya. I then remembered they were on the same shift. Lydia quickly approached me and closed her eyes as she held me. After the energy she released covered me, she got off with a satisfied expression. Great, you're not hurt. Sorry, I planned on seeing everyone after talking to Waya. Don't worry, I understand. Lydia didn't seem to mind it too much, as she turned towards Waya and spoke. You forgot something important. Something important. Lydia nodded her head. That Shin is seen as separate from Revival. What do you mean? In Revival's master. This disaster happened when you were gone. People are saying this wouldn't have happened if you were here. I understood what Lydia was saying, but I was still dumbfounded. What kind of a nonsense is that? Nothing would have changed even if I was here. Without replying, Lydia put up another video on the screen. It was a live news coverage. The voices of condemnation against Revival is becoming louder and louder. Many are supporting the theory that Revival's members have plotted against Kong Shin, who has not appeared for the past month. Revival's spokesperson, Miss Waya Masterford. Waya sighed. This is why I didn't say anything. I was afraid you'd get angrier. I am angry. See. Since when did you become a spokesperson? Aren't you the vice guild master? People don't care about it. Waya spoke bluntly. To them, revival is Kong Shin and Kong Shin is revival. Without you, 
Revival is nothing more than a militant group that can't be controlled. The timing was too perfect. Ludia said with a shrug. At first, we ignored it and thought it would go away, but the voices became louder at a speed we can't understand. To the people, you were no different than God. It became worse over the past month, practically to the point of blind worship and we were the devils that killed God. I pressed my forehead. I began to understand you as strange calmness and why is frustration. Even I wanted to cry. Damn, why now? I thought to the month I spent absorbing the dragon's power. It was a necessary time to grow my strengths and reaffirm what I learned about my halo and enigma. But during this time, the demons made a frontal assault as though they knew about my situation. Revival's members managed to stop them, but it couldn't be called successful by any means. A third of humanity had died. It was hard to say whether the world could go on the way it was. The demons must have taken a catastrophic damage too. What they did wasn't what invaders would do. They were practically on a suicide mission. Or maybe, they didn't care about the number of casualties. After thinking that far, I raised my head. I looked at the entrance to the dungeon in the sky. Has anyone entered that dungeon? Not if you were here, Shin. Hearing Waya's words, I shut my eyes. Ludia added to the explanation. No matter how many demons we killed, people wouldn't believe us. Almost like they were being controlled, they hated us and cried out your name. We were certain the demon lord was in that dungeon, but we didn't have the confidence to go in without you. That's good. I would have been furious if you went in without me. But other people didn't listen to us. I slammed my fist down on the table. Sierra's prophecy was coming true. Even after devouring the blood of countless number of ability users, the dungeon in the sky seemed hungry for more, spreading blood red light across the entire world. Chapter 343 The Demon Lord is indeed in there. After flying to the aerial dungeon, I immediately recognized the energy inside it. I had met the Demon Lord in the Luka continent. What I felt from him back then matched the energy I felt in the dungeon. But Shin, what are you going to do? The land transmittance isn't over yet. Ichem. I looked down on the ground. Even if everyone went a bit insane from the continued calamities, I couldn't just leave them to die. In truth, I didn't really care what other people did or what they called me. I was only annoyed because they were targeting other member of revival. I was protecting humanity because I could. If people important to me had to get hurt or killed, I would abandon humanity without hesitation. That was one thing I never changed my mind about. So from now, we wouldn't move separately. Of course, only a few of the strongest members would enter the Demon Lord's dungeon, so I had to think of a solution for the members who would stay behind in case powerful demons remaining in the Luka continent crossed over while we were gone. Right, I can just deal with them first. I clapped my hands at my sudden insight. Waya, can you show me the areas that land transmittance hasn't happened in? Areas that land transmittance hasn't occurred, in other words, these were the areas that demons could come to from now. Picturing the terrain of the Luka continent in my head, I nodded. All right, it'll need one hours and thirty minutes in the worst case. That should be quick enough. Shin, what are you thinking about? Wait, Waya, is Ina in beyond? No, she should be in the first dungeon. Why? I want you and Ina to support me with mana. There's something I want to do before I go into the Demon Lord's dungeon. You need more mana on top of that absurd amount you already have. Yeah. I can't use all of my mana right now, so I need your help. Waya tilted her head, but realizing that I made my decision, she nodded and messaged Ina. Ina immediately ran out of the dungeon and flew up to us. Ina had grown immensely in the past month. The moment she left the dungeon, I could feel the colossal amount of mana she carried. Of course, I had called her precisely because I expected to have grown this much, but it was still surprisingly nonetheless. Solely in terms of quantity of mana, she might surpass Waya and Daisy. It was truly shocking, especially considering she was only ten years old. Daddy. I'm back, Ina. Ina smiled sweetly and charged towards me. This charge was strong enough to injure even the Beast King, 
but I easily received Ina into my embrace. Ina sniffed my scent like a dog before digging her head into my chest. It really is daddy. Where were you? Ina wanted to see you. Yeah, it's the real daddy. Sorry for being late, Ina. Seeing Ina acting spoiled like Wyatt did, I smirked as I patted her. Waya looked at us with a complicated expression before asking Ina. Who do you like more, Ina? Daddy or mommy? I see. Well if you ask that now, of course Shed say it's me. After spoiling Ina a bit more, I asked. Ina, daddy has something he needs to do. Can you help me with your mana? Un. I have lots of mana. I can give lots to daddy. Ina seemed happy to be of help, shouting joyfully as she flew around the sky. Seeing her so cheerful after what she must have gone through in the past month put a smile on my face. Should we start now? Ina and Waya placed their hands on my hand. As I received their hot and cold mana, I released my own mana and combined them into a single ball. In just a few seconds, close to two million points of mana agglomerated in the air. This is enough. I held the ball in on hand. In the next instant, a halo shot up on each of my two horns and began to spin. I held up the ball of mana and threw it at the dungeon in front of me. Stay put for just two hours. My words became the trigger for a magic spell. From the ball of mana I threw, platinum-colored chains shot out and coiled around the huge dungeon. Waya seemed to have felt something from my spell. Shin, you. For the next two hours, not even Sherafina will be able to undo those chains. Of course, that means the demon lord also won't be able to. Just where were you for the past month? Just like how my enemies know about the dungeon, I simply studied for a bit. I gave a light reply as I watched the chains completely encase the dungeon. At that moment, a black ripple spread across the chains and a deep voice rang out. Hohu hero, you. Shut it. I waved my hand and added more mana. The voice was cut off and the dungeon fell silent. Now, no one would be able to enter or leave the dungeon. The demon lord used the dungeon's power for himself to perform this cute trick. This is what he gets for not expecting that someone else could do the same. But Shin, if the demon lord could have come whenever he wanted why didn't he when you weren't here? Right now, Cain is in earth. Just Cain might not have deterred him but he didn't know exactly when I would come back, so he used his subordinates to test the waters. I was certain. The demon lord knew that earth had someone on the same level as my old self. Otherwise, he wouldn't have encaged himself in a dungeon. Ah you mean. There can only be one reason that he brought over a dungeon when he could have come through a land transmittance. It's because he didn't want to fight me and Cain at the same time. The dungeon he's in right now has an entrance limit. Cain and I can never enter together. At best, only me and two other revival members would be able to go in. The one who created this dungeon isn't Sherafina, but the Demon Lord. The Demon Lord completely discovered the dungeon's mechanism. Then what was the point of us climbing the dungeon? We wouldn't be here if we didn't. I gave a simple rebuttal. Waya immediately acquiesced and nodded. Right, I wouldn't be able to stand next to Shin if I didn't climb the dungeon. Hoo-hoo, if I think about it like that, I'm quite thankful. That's not what I meant. I replied with a sigh. But of course, I knew why I understood what I really meant. Anyways, once I carry out what I'm planning, the demon lord will notice it and try to leave the dungeon. Until now, he didn't know when I would be coming back, but now, he would know for sure. How? I plan on going to the Luka continent. Why I understood what I meant. And the demons in the Luka continent would be able to contact the demon lord. Right. So once the demon lord knows I can't come back to earth, he'll try to kill Cain. But since I closed the dungeon, he won't be able to for the next two hours. Shin, are you trying to do what I think you're trying to do? I replied. I'm going to sweep the Luka continent. Alone. Alone. I'm going to get angry. It's fine. The demon lord is here, so no one in the Luka continent can be my match. Waya became lost for words at my confident tone. Just when I thought she'd stay silent, she blurted out. 
Shin, you're super cocky now. I know. But also really cool. I know that too. I grinned at her and continued my words. The monster continent might move too. That's why I'm leaving you on Earth. We already took a massive blow because of their tricks, we don't know what the monsters would do while we're focusing on the demons. So stay on guard. But didn't their five kings die? But there's a monster above them. We don't know if the five kings were the only powerful monsters, so please, I feel like they'll do something. Will you be fine on your own? After confirming that the dungeon was sealed tightly, I contacted Kane. It's Kong Shin. Kane, I'm going to leave Earth for a bit. Please be on standby. You're back. Did you get stronger? Yes he'll finish everything before the day ends. Hoo, I like how straightforward you are. Good. It'll come soon. Soon after Kane's reply, a tremendous energy descended above our guild house. It was Kane. Feeling his mana, I nodded in satisfaction and contacted others. Leon. Hey. You're safe. Where are you now? In the first dungeon. I'm on the 91st floor. You don't need to climb the dungeon anymore. Come back to Earth. There's something I need you to do. Just say the words. I told Leon my request. Is that okay? Don't worry about the consequences and just do it. You should be able to, right? I can, but. I'll have the succubi support you. Understood. Leon also began to move. Good, with this, I made all the preparations I could. Before I left, I entered the dungeon for the last time and went to resting place of the angels. I came to get clean, but surprisingly, both Latte and Licorice were there too. Latte, Licorice. H Hero. I knew you were safe. Latte rubbed her eyes the moment she saw me and greeted me cheerfully. I grinned and stroked her head. I then turned towards Licorice. For some reason, it didn't feel like I haven't seen her in a while even if she looked different after her awakening as the Empress. Dear husband, did you come to take Pleen? Yeah. Licorice, I'll leave Earth to you. Help Leon. Got it. I already know everything. Indeed, Licorice knew everything on my mind. I didn't know exactly when it happened, but Licorice and I came to share a consciousness just like she did with the other succubi. It was around the time I finished absorbing the dragon's power. I suddenly knew that Licorice completed her awakening as an empress and realized that a new link between us was made. This link wouldn't be blocked or severed no matter what or who was interfering. Licorice had gotten stronger, and as we could transfer our thoughts to each other, she was someone I needed by my side. Little bat how foul. Humph, this is the difference between our leagues. Despite Latte getting stronger, the two of them stayed the same. I grinned once again and patted Latte one more time. Please, Latte. Wait with Licorice for just two hours. It'll be back soon. Let's go Pleen. I need your help. I brought Pleen and used my version of dimensional travel. When dimensional travel completed successfully, Pleen and I found ourselves in the place where we used return to go back to Earth in the past. And this place was surrounded by demons, as if someone had told them I would be coming. When they saw me, they seemed frightened out of their minds. It was rather funny. Damn it, the hero really. Run. We need to live. We're all dead, we're screwed. No, please. They were acting like the end of the world was upon them. I couldn't blame them. There was no way they couldn't feel my magic power. I spoke. You might be able to kill ordinary people, but you won't be able to kill me. You could have lived peacefully in Luca Continent without invading another world, but that's not what you did. I will no longer let you be. I raised my hand into the sky. I am Dortu. Creating a mirror. Dortu's power activated, and a giant metallic mirror appeared in the air. I looked up. The power of my eyes dyed the mirror, and in an instant, the light reflected off the mirror covered more than 10% of the entire continent. I have arrived. Chapter, 344. No one had the time nor the ease of mind to say a word. 
In the next moment, every single demon under the mirror's light disappeared into dust. In just an instant, 10% of the continent had been annihilated. Hugh that took a toll. I summoned Sharana and calmed the blowing sandstorm. Absorbing the demon's mana, I replenished my own. As I swallowed an entire dragon hole, I wouldn't need to worry about running out of mana, but it was still good to replenish my mana when I could. Wow, amazing! Seeing hundreds of thousands of demons dying in the blink of an eye, Pleen clapped in excitement. I couldn't tell whether she was innocent or ignorant. But Shin, is there anything for me to do? Pleen looked around the empty field and tilted her head. Your power is very important. You can draw out the demons that are hiding. That's true but I'm weak. Pleen replied with a sullen face. While she was strong in her own way, she was the weak one compared to Latte or Licorice. She simply wasn't a competition starting from her mana pool. No, your ability is just as important as Lottie's or Licorice's. It's exactly what I need now too. Will I be able to do it? You can if I help you. Pleen widened her eyes. I placed a hand on Pleen's shoulder. Sing, Pleen. Just think about bringing all demons here. You, Un. I'll try. I feel like I can do it. As she had an obedient personality, she immediately began to sing when I ordered her. At that moment, my horns shone with a fierce light. Pleen continued to sing as though she was oblivious. Meanwhile, her song was spreading out faster and wider. It took less than ten minutes for a change to occur. Kayak. M. Moon Giant Moon. I could hear the voices of demons from far, far away. Soon, I could see a sandstorm blowing in the horizon. Demons specializing in movement techniques were the first to enter my sight, while demons that could fly were the next to shoot towards us in lightning speed. However, what they faced was nothing but the end. The ones that managed to let out a scream were the powerful ones that could resist my charm. But most others simply turned to dust the moment they came under the effect of the mirror. Even with other demons dying in front of them, demons continued to flock towards us like how moths flocked to a flame. They were already unable to think clearly. As she continued to sing, Pleen widened her eyes as though she couldn't believe what she was seeing. When she looked at me disbelievingly, I gave her a smile and gestured her to go on. The golden light my horns were emitting were getting stronger and stronger. I'm letting you borrow my charm. La la la. Amazing. She seemed to say. So don't worry about anything and continue singing. It shouldn't take longer than an hour. La 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 la. This much is a piece of cake. She seemed to say. It was my one-sided interpretation, but that was probably okay. As time passed, more and more demons flocked towards us before turning to dust. Consequently, a large amount of mana began to fill the area. I continued to absorb them as I enlarged the size of the mirror. Eventually, the mirror became too big to be captured in my sight, and the amplified power of my eyes seemed to turn even the flow of air slow. Of course, as Pleen's song wasn't targeted by my evil eyes, I didn't need to worry about the song spreading slower. Pleen's song spread out as if to cover the entire continent. It would have been nice to close my eyes and appreciate her beautiful voice, but sadly, I had to keep my eyes open to use the evil eye's power. With a smirk, I added more power to the mirror. Dortu, let's wrap it up. I am Dortu. Understood. The giant mirror rumbled. A crack ran down its center, and the mirror began to split. Uncountably many mirror fragments were created, which then quickly flew to their position as though to form a constellation. Pretty. Pleen, who finished singing, looked up at the sparkling mirror fragments in awe. I spoke as I nodded. It won't look that way to the demons. A giant mirror might look better on the surface, but many smaller mirrors were actually better for spreading the evil eye's power. In just a few minutes, the galaxy of mirror fragments killed the continent's remaining demons. Well done, Pleen. We're done now. Rowley. Hee hee, that's great. I wish my charm would grow too. It will in the future. Anyways, let's take care of one last thing and go back. Pleen tilted her head adorably, but I only made a small smile in reply. 
However, not long afterwards, a man appeared in the air. A demon with a long horn. The magic power in his body was undoubtedly of the highest class. Just like the army commander I faced on earth, this demon was most likely the strongest demon in this continent apart from the demon lord. You're late. I am. He gritted his teeth, and I made a sly smile. Don't be so mad. You were just weaker than me, right? Indeed, I immediately set out when I heard the news from the demon lord. Ha, huh, you see, that giant mirror didn't just carry my evil eye's power. Magic power began to surge from the demon's body. He spread open his bat-like wings and shouted furiously. That giant mirror, it was a magic circle to trick me. Well, it wasn't just you. It was just a little illusion magic to prevent you and other demons who could withstand my evil eyes from finding me. When I broke the giant mirror, the illusion magic naturally disappeared. I assumed there would be at least five demons who survived, but it seemed the enraged demon in front of me was the only one who could withstand my evil eyes. Causing a mess here won't change anything. Earth will be conquered. But did you know that all the demons that came to Earth have been wiped out? I waved my hand in the air. The mirror fragments filling up the sky moved along the path of my hand. It was as if I was drawing the night sky, almost like a god. Seeing that, I spoke in a leisure way. It's just you and the demon lord now. Why you devil? Oh please. I snorted. You guys were the ones who came after us first. You think we're different? No. Just because we had our world's power taken away, you called us invaders. But you started to look for other worlds after conquering Luca Continent. Luca Continent's world power it didn't disappear, right? The demon lord still has it, doesn't he? Don't tell me you're going to deny it, when I know new demons have been born. He didn't answer. I shrugged. But still, he'll admit that you guys were the same in the beginning. But you got a twisted start. He'll correct it now, so something like that won't happen again. Of course, you'll still die. Arrogant. You'll correct it. That's what the demon lord seeks to do. To claim everything and correct the twisted worlds. You speak just like the demon lord. The demon lord is wrong, and indifferent than him. I retorted coldly. Comparing me with the demon lord? Absurd. This demon was ignorant. Of course, being ignorant wasn't a sin. He might not have had the chance to find out. It wasn't right to fault him for that. However, it also wasn't deserving of praise. As I didn't plan on explaining everything to him, I prepared myself to hear his final words. Doesn't the demon lord have a weakness or something? You know, don't villains betray their leaders when they're about to die? Kill me. I will curse you with all my power. You will carry a curse that not even the demon lord can shake off. You will never succeed. This nightmare that reigns over us will continue infinitely without end. As he shouted at the top of his lungs, blood was pouring down from his orifices. It seemed he really was casting some sort of a curse. However, I simply snorted at the grotesque sight. Sorry to tell you. I pointed my index finger towards him. The mirror fragments all shot towards him. But I'm immune to curses. He widened his eyes. In the next moment, he was swallowed by the flood of metal. Just a few seconds later, the mirror fragments returned to their position following the flickering of my finger. Nothing remained in the demon's place, and only the small number of bloodied fragments served as a proof that he ever lived. All right, Pleen. Let's go back. We're done now. Woo, you're amazing, Shin. So cool. Pleen's sparkly eyes lit up even more. I patted her head, as I told myself to not let Ina see such a sight. When I returned to Earth, everything was still the way it was. Truthfully, I was worried that another 50% of humanity might have been wiped out, but thankfully, it was just my imagination. That said, it seemed the monster continent really attacked. I could tell what happened when I saw the golden spear in Cain's hand. Something happened. Just a light exercise. If he had to take out a god's power, it had to be an intense exercise. It seemed Cain liked to act aloof. 
Thinking he wasn't a bad person, I asked. Is it over? Yep. Earth will meet its own outcome. Cain spoke in a low voice. So start now. I will. Before I noticed, other guild members flew over. No one was in the dungeon. Waya, Daisy, Labik, Father, Yiyun, Ren, Ludia, Shuna, Ina, Yua, Samire, Walker, Michelle, Aleda other than Sophie, who couldn't participate in fights because of her pregnancy, Leon, who was given an important task, and Licorice and Latte who were helping Leon, everyone was present. Good work everyone. I started off in a casual tone. Today, everything will end. Celebration can wait until it's over. You're not taking everyone, right? Yiyun asked carefully. I nodded. I can't break the demon lord's dungeon, so only me and three others will go in. Magicians whose magic power is lower than the demon lord won't be effective against him, so he'll take those who can fight in close range. First, father. Including the demon lord, demons had a higher affinity to magical combat than physical combat. Waya and Aina were catastrophic to other demons, but their power shouldn't be effective against the demon lord. Hearing my words, father raised his spear happily. Now you're respecting your father. You're the only father who'd think that way when being taken to such a dangerous place. Next, Yiyun. I'm ready. Yiyun had a god's true name. I couldn't leave her out. Fighting the demon lord. In front of such dangerous task, Yiyun's eyes only reflected enthusiasm. She couldn't be more reliable. Finally, Samire. Yes, Shin Nim. I'll do my best. Samire shouted valiantly. Kane looked at me as though he couldn't understand what I was thinking. There's one too many. I don't think that dungeon will allow more than three people to go in. I put my hands on it before. When those chains come off, the gap in the dungeon will widen slightly. ITLL be enough for four people to go in. Though, you won't be able to. Humph, what a shame. I would have liked to see his face. I smiled at Kane's leisurely reply. You have something to do too. I'll leave it to you. No problem. Then, next. I looked up at the sky. It was time. The chains binding the dungeon blew off, and the darkness trapped within began to fill up the sky. The sky turned black. Under the artificial sky without a single stream of light, the dungeon opened its mouth as though to swallow more challengers. From inside, I could still hear the screams of despair and smell the scent of blood. Son, are you ready? Holding a three-meter-long spear, father turned towards me. I retorted lightly. I needlessly inspected my equipment. Steel was covering my body as always. In my hand was the platinum spear that could pierce through anything, one that wouldn't lose to a god's divine armament. Also. Sharana, Ryue, Pika, Dortu. I'm ready, master. Me too, me too. I'm ready to show off my power. Hoo-hoo, with master's power, such a boring dungeon will be a piece of cake. I am Dortu. Following master's command. With them by my side, I wasn't afraid of anything. Thinking that to myself, I gave them a confident smile. They also answered with a bright smile. I can do it. An abundant confidence filled me up. I pointed my spear at the entrance of the dungeon. We're going in. Chapter, 345 The Dungeon Reeked of Blood Just how many ability users died that the smell of blood irritates me this much. The dungeon's power. Samire and Yiyun seemed taken aback. I expected as much. While this place was more or less an event dungeon, it also completely rejected the dungeon's power. To be exact, this space rejected Sherafina's power. After losing the power they had for such a long time, it wasn't surprising for them to be shocked. Yu Yu, I expected to lose the dungeon's power, but I didn't think I'd feel this weak. I've experienced it before but I just can't get used to it. I glanced at my companions. Prepare your god's power. I don't have one, son. You're strong without it, father. Father succeeded in taking a step into the realm outside the dungeon, 
and he didn't lose to anyone in his mana control. Perhaps because of it, he seemed less affected than Yiyun or Samir. Knowing that, I retorted curtly as I drew up my true god name's power. An invisible something descended on my spear and a pair of wings sprouted up on my back. Ho! A man's voice rang out. So this is your power, Earth's hero. Interesting. Truly interesting. It was the demon lord's voice. Oddly, I couldn't grasp his presence in the slightest. I slowly looked around. The first thing that caught my attention was the blue moon shining down on us from above. The next to catch my attention was a river of blood shining under the moonlight. It hasn't been long since then, but you sure changed a lot. In the blink of an eye, the number of presents increased. I should have killed all demons other than the demon lord. Could he have kept some in the dungeon? However, my question was soon answered, as human-shaped creatures made of blood began to pop up. Demon Lord, there's something I always wanted to ask you. Go on. I'm very curious about you too. My eyes flashed. In an instant, the rising blood creatures and the entire river of blood turned to stone. Who told you about Earth? Then, the petrified river began to flow once more. This time, however, it wasn't blood, but a mercury-like metal that was liquid at room temperature. I raised my hand lifting up the river water and molded it into a single giant ball. Who told you where I was? What do you mean? I simply opened up a path to another world, and Earth just happened to be on the opposite end. That's not funny. Hmm, is it not? With that, the demon lord finally made his appearance, bringing along countless number of black mana balls. Indeed, I received help from the one you know. It wasn't a particularly pleasant experience. He was a beauty. Of course, I didn't think the demon lord would look ugly, but he was beautiful to a shocking degree. If I wasn't here, my companions would have fallen under his charm. But regardless of the method, I ended up meeting you. He spread his arms open. In a moment, the black mana bullets shot down towards us. Without exaggeration, each of them carried enough power to obliterate a large city. The demon lord had an unusually large amount of mana. Almost like me. I am Dortu. Blocking all attacks. The metallicized river spread out across the sky and received all the mana bullets. The demon lord's tone went up a notch. Yes, that power. That looks interesting too. Pieces of rocks began to float up from the ground. The demon lord's black mana enveloped the rocks glowing under the moonlight, strengthening them. At that moment, father charged towards the demon lord. You talk too much. I'm not interested in you. Speaking apathetically, the demon lord focused his magic power on father. I immediately destroyed it, and father successfully shot his spear towards him. It seemed father's attack was enough to threaten the demon lord as he reached out with his hand and actively blocked the attack. Meanwhile, I reinforced the metallic river water with the demon lord's mana I stole and shot it towards him. Hugh. The demon lord took in a deep breath. Immediately afterwards, the floating pieces of rocks shot out in all directions. The metallic river water could not block them. Thankfully, Samire quickly stepped in and protected us with Athena's power, Aegis. How annoying. This time, it's my turn to ask a question. The demon lord created a sword made of black demonic energy and received father's spear with it. After greedily devouring the vibration in father's spear, it spat it back out. Father also took in the vibration and returned it back. Who told you that? You should already know. I raised my head. Something has been on my mind for a while, and sure enough, the light emitted by the blue moon began to change to a blood-like crimson color. Les Pina. That wench betrayed me. I must have been more charming than her original master. As I retorted playfully, I scanned the magic power within the moonlight. Father continued to attack the demon lord, and Samire soon joined in with Athena's spear. Realizing that a single hand wasn't enough to deter them, the demon lord took out a strange dagger with his other hand and received Samire's attack. Careful, that dagger can suck out your soul. Good, you're well informed. Samire struck the demon lord's jaw with aegis. Immediately, 
the demon lord's jaw began to petrify. The demon lord looked stunned, while Yi Yun suddenly appeared behind him. She immediately swung her dagger at the demon lord's neck, but soon spoke doubtfully. Shin, I think he's fake. How did you find out? The beheaded demon lord reappeared unhurt. With an annoying smile on his face, he held a different weapon than before. Shin, this one's fake too. I know. The demon lord shot out another wave of mana bullets. This time, the bullets were far stronger than before. I frantically operated Dortu and Ryu's power in defense. Hero, do you know the value of your power? Another demon lord appeared. Then another appeared, and another appeared. Each carried an overwhelming amount of mana, and I stared at them in disbelief. Hero, do you know why you were born with that power? I don't. I answered. In truth, I wasn't really interested in what he had to say. I was more concerned with trying to kill him. I was beginning to understand why Sierra said I needed to save Shiva's power. Wait, I was just about to think of something. Hero, do you know what that power is for? I know it's not for you. Shin, leave the ground to me and do what you need to do. Yi Yun finally activated her god's power. Her body became enveloped in a golden aura, and arms equipped with powerful weapons sprouted up. Hmm. Ill handle these guys. Surprisingly, she had activated both Kallus and Durga's powers, but she didn't use them both. Instead, she transferred Kallus' divine power to Durga's weapons to strengthen them. While the two gods' close affiliation likely made it possible, Yiyun was still incredible for being able to accomplish it. In any case, what was important was that Yi Yun could deal with the demon lord's clones that were popping up on the ground. The clones had multiplied to dozens and each created countless mana bullets, carpeting the entire airspace. However, Yi Yun charged towards them without a hint of hesitation. Countless number of hands appeared in the air to combat the mana bullets. In the end, you're only clones. Yi Yun began to make her move. Mana exploded here and there along with the demon lord's clones. Some Iyer protected me from the explosions with her shield, and father struck down the clones flying towards Yiyun. Koha ha ha ha. The demon lord laughed heartedly. I couldn't tell which of the clones were laughing, even while many of them were being erased under Yiyun's attacks. Humans sure are interesting. You're quite different than the humans I met in the Luka continent. Those self-proclaimed gods, to think about obtaining power from those relics of the past. Who would have thought of it? It doesn't matter whether gods were born or created. What matters is that they're strong. They worshipped by billions of people, and their heroic tales are passed down to this day. I began to activate Shiva's power, one of the strongest among them. The center of my forehead opened up and a red eye appeared. Foolish. Truly foolish. You dare to fight me with such fake power? Hero, if you think of doing the same, that will be your downfall. A god is someone like me. The moon shone. The light emitted by the reddened moon illuminated the demon lord's clones and illuminated us. This light seemed to want to forcefully tear apart my body. I swallowed billions of souls and made their mana mine. What would this power be if not the power of a god? The demon lord shouted. Having swallowed two, three billion humans from Earth, the red moon was shining fiercely. Just the light it was giving off was a powerful attack. It was incomparable to what I did in the Luka continent with Dordis' giant mirror. Power of souls that couldn't be imitated with mana, the resentment of billions of souls made that moon the worst magical tool of all time. You think you can destroy it with that eye? Kohaha. The demon lord sneered. However, I retorted with a smirk. You're not a god. You couldn't create a moon, so you brought one over. Admittedly, he was absurdly powerful. Using his magic power, he had brought over the moon in Luca Continent's gravitational pull. Not only that, he also placed it in this dungeon he created. This dungeon did not look big from the inside, but that moon was denying that proposition. That moon was too far for our energy to reach it, but its power could easily reach us. That's why I needed Shiva's power. I could sense it the moment I activated it. Befitting its description of all-destroying power, 
this I would destroy this entire space along with that moon. The only problem was that I couldn't exclude my companions from its target. When I realized this, the third eye slowly closed down. I murmured in disbelief. Isn't this power too useless? Have you realized it's futile? Have you given up? Your friends are still energetic. I wonder how long they will last. The moonlight absorbed power from all beings on earth. It seemed similar to the dungeon's power Sherafina had. While it had a different basis of power, its basic structure seemed extremely similar. No, it wasn't just that. She taught me too many things, not realizing it would come back to bite her. No, I don't think so. I shook my head and reached out with my hand. Following my hand's movements, Dorda's liquid metal slowly formed a long sharp spear. Then, the golden light from my hand enveloped the spear. You were used. This was her goal from the beginning. Why do you think so? God's powers are molded into suitable forms by Sherafina before being given to explorers. That's why explorers can use them as skills and wield them without having a suitable body. But that's not what a true God's power was. A true God's power only existed as a concept symbolizing the God. It was Sherafina who turned the destruction God Shiva's power into an eye form. Sherafina was manipulating Shiva's mighty and destructive power to her will. How could a god given the title of destruction god not be able to distinguish what to destroy and what not to? The power that formed Shiva's eye was now being extracted into its original form and being imbued into the giant golden spear. It was the same for Zeus' power. Lend me your power for the last time. Afterwards, I won't use them again. I whispered. As though my words worked as a catalyst, the spear carrying Zeus and Shiva's power let out an eerie light and changed its form. For a moment, the red moon stopped functioning. Yiyun could finally catch a breath, while father gritted his teeth and stabbed his spear on the ground. Shin Nim, the power of gods are disappearing. Some Iyer, who was protecting me from the demon lord's attacks all this time, turned towards me and shouted in shock. I replied with a grin. I still have Hermes' power. I need to borrow his power for something. Will you be able to stop it? You may be enlightened, but you should know, that enlightenment is just another word for helplessness. The red moon had only lost its power for a moment. Soon, it began to beam out as if to not lose. A ball of resentment created by billions of souls and mana, as though to devour all existences, it was applying more and more pressure. Ite. I threw my spear. Although I made a joking shout, the spear's effect was evident. The moon stopped giving off its light. For the first time, the demon lord let out a shocked voice. In that instant, above the moon shattering into countless pieces, a giant appeared. It was the demon lord's real body. The moon was his method of attack, and at the same time, a magic circle to hide his presence. Staring at the moon, our eyes widened. It wasn't just because he was humongous. Of course, he was bigger than any existence I've ever faced, but that wasn't the only reason. What is he? I see. Father nodded. Yiyun and Samayar did the same. Although everyone was confused, there was something they realized amidst the confusion. You still don't get it. Even Lespina might be more knowledgeable than the demon lord. Lespina could perfectly nullify Sherafina's power. In our fight against her, this unique ability of hers made us struggle greatly. However, the demon lord's method was different. He created this dungeon with his own power and he made it so that we couldn't use the dungeon's power here. Although he seemed to be unaffected by the dungeon's power, he actually wasn't. You're being reinforced by the dungeon's power. At this moment, the demon lord had more of the dungeon's power than any explorer. On the other hand, my companions and I did not have even a fraction of the dungeon's power. Almost as if someone had planned things to be this way. Right, an explorer who didn't know the situation would say this. That a single demon explorer was fighting several human bosses. Chapter, 346 The power you're using isn't something you came up with by analyzing the dungeon's power. Because of the size of the demon lord's body, I didn't know where to aim my spear. For now, I aimed at his gigantic neck and spoke. That's just the dungeon's power. 
the demon lord didn't say anything. Or perhaps I couldn't hear him. However, the dungeon was steadily creeping towards us to claim our lives. The earth shot up and the air froze. The river of blood I got rid of before reappeared. The fragments of the moon I destroyed with Shiva's and Zeus power were falling as countless meteorites. Do you expect me to believe you? That I am being controlled by her? I don't see a reason you shouldn't believe me. She controlled me and put the dungeon's power into me without my knowledge. Yep. To claim you through me? I don't know about that. Could be, or. I thought back to the first time I became a dungeon explorer. At the time, I was just an ordinary yet not so ordinary boy. I climbed the dungeon and grew stronger through Sherafina's help. And within a year, I was able to meet with her face to face. She was powerful beyond my imagination. She also favored me greatly. If she ever wanted something from me, she could have taken it whenever she wanted. If the person the demon lord was talking about was indeed Sherafina, things just didn't add up. I couldn't understand why she needed to take such a roundabout way. Except, if what she wanted couldn't be obtained from my weak self and could have been obtained only when I had gotten strong to this point, then things made sense. I also had a guess as to what that was. An ability that no one else has. Not the ability to wield elementals, not absolute soul nor peruta circuit, but an ability that belonged only to me. An ability that I honed throughout all these years. An ability that I had yet to see the end of. If my thought was correct, even the demon lord could be a sacrifice for my growth. Of course, it was unlikely that the demon lord would believe me even if I told him. Putting these thoughts together, I asked the demon lord lightly. What are you going to do? Ha, ha 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 ha. Suddenly, the demon lord burst into laughter. Because of how big he was, his laugh resonated through the entire dungeon and even injured our ears. Parts of the dungeon flying towards us suddenly halted in midair. Good, now I understand. Ill acknowledged that I was played by her. The demon lord raised his hand, where crimson mana began to gather. But both you and she are too arrogant. You shouldn't have told me about this. The demon lord shrunk slightly. On the other hand, the mana gathering on his palm became larger. I was very familiar with this mana. It was none other than the dungeons, Sherafina's mana. Now I know. I believed it to be mine, but it really wasn't. His voice was getting smaller, but the power I was feeling from it was increasing. Eventually, the energy on his palm shone with a brilliant light and tried to envelop him, but the demon lord released a black demonic energy with his body and cast the light aside. No one can control me. This crazy guy. Immediately afterward, the dungeon shattered. We came back out to earth. Beneath the still dark sky and blood-red clouds, screams of despair rang out. A countless number of massive monsters were running amok. As I expected, the monster continent had started their final attack. I am the king of all things demonic, reigning supreme over all things evil. None may air me and none may stand above me. The demon lord spread his arms open. The ground was full of death energy, and he was clearly trying to absorb them. I quickly opened up an extra-dimensional space and sent a flurry of metallic fragments towards him. At the same time, I tried to absorb the death energy before he could, but it was almost as if he got stronger by casting aside the dungeon's power, as he began to absorb all negative energy on earth. It wasn't just death energy. He was using a power I hadn't experienced before. Demon Lord, this title surely didn't come from simply being the leader of the demon race. As such, I will obtain you and rule over all worlds. It's about time you stop dreaming. His body had shrunken to about half its original size. Seeing the mana in his hand being compressed, I clicked my tongue. To think just some words affected him this much. He's more talented than I thought. You were too careless, son. Huh. I shrugged. What do you mean? I was purposely stalling for time to come up with a way to take the dungeon's power out of him. I troubled father, Samire, and Yiyun because of it. You mean you made him do this on purpose? Shin Nim, are you saying you controlled the demon lord? You finally entered the realm of gods. No, it's nothing amazing, 
so don't be so exaggerating. While father and Samire couldn't close their mouths in shock, Yiyun, who was ready to restrain the demon lord with her golden chains if given the chance, turned her head slightly and asked. Why did you click your tongue, Chin? Well, if you see a talented person, a demon, in this case, you naturally get jealous. That's why I clicked my tongue. The situation itself is very favorable for us. It is. I said that and raised my spear. The demon lord's killing intent also became focused on me. It didn't take a genius to figure out he wanted to kill me and take my power. First, the dungeon is now our enemy. So what good would it be to stay in that dungeon? You're saying you provoked him to destroy the event dungeon? There's another reason too. While the demon lord brought earth's demonic energy together to a single point, his right arm was cut off. The severed arm bloated up for a moment before losing all its power and disappearing. In the nearby airspace, he appeared. Cain. Indeed, with this much power, he should be one of the strongest among world's enemies. Qua. Give up on that arm. I won't be able to use any divine power in exchange for that attack, so ITLL be hard to recover your arm. With a truly light-hearted tone, Cain twirled a spear that was beginning to lose its light. Riding Odin's famous steed, Sleipnir, he prepared himself to charge forward at any time. Ku, kuku kuku ku. How painful. The demon lord screamed in pain at first, but soon he broke out into laughter. Rather than blood, black demonic energy shot out of his wounds. Putting his uninjured left hand on the wounded area, he continued to laugh. Right, this is it. This pain and hostility from many. This is what I felt when I conquered the Luka continent. Ah, how foolish was I, relying on a power that wasn't my own. After conquering the Luka continent, I believed I had gotten stronger, but no. I had just blinded myself with a power I couldn't control. So what, you're going to give up on taking my power? Of course not, hero. You should know the answer to the question. Your power is different than the dungeon's mishmash power. It is an authority. Eternity is granted to those who strive for power. Come. I will step over everything, including that arrogant fool above the Tower of Babel. Without even a single warning, demonic energy detonated around the demon lord. It was powerful enough to critically wound even me. As I now continually maintained divine speed in battle, I could thankfully react quickly. To be exact, I controlled the metallic fragments I previously took out from my extradimensional space and blocked the explosion of demonic energy. The metallic fragments flooded forward, enveloping the demonic energy and obliterating them. However, the demon lord's attack didn't diminish. Is that all? Show me that power once more. The power that will become mine. Spears of demonic energy began to hurl towards everyone. In addition, magic spells that made me recall my fight with the dragon filled the air. The only difference was that the demon lord's magic belonged to demons. As they were different from the magic of dragons, I couldn't analyze them at all. Seeing small wounds beginning to appear on my companions, I asked worriedly. Samire, can you block them? Yes, Shin Nim. Hu hu hu, it just got more exciting. While Samaya replied nervously, Yiyun's battle hunger seemed to be triggered. In an instant, the golden aura she had transformed into a bluish-black aura. Play with me. Use more of that magic. Kook, I'm not interested in you. Yiyun charged at the demon lord and began to push him back with the weapons on her aura arms. However, she was exerting much more energy than before. Even if she could injure the demon lord, I couldn't leave her be. Leon. My voice rang out, spreading across the sky. The reply came just as quickly. The preparations are done, friend. Then start. In that instant, a deafening sound capable of burying the numerous explosions of demonic energy resounded. Thousands of fighter jets shot up into the air. It was truly a sight to behold. I could imagine how difficult it was to protect all these fighter planes with so many monsters running amok. Mm. Scraps of metal that can fly. Is this Earth's power? Normally, it wouldn't be effective against you. But Leon was controlling them. Leon, 
and nobody else. I can't do any elaborate maneuvers. I can't even have them all at full power. It was as he said. No matter how amazing his mana control has become, it was impossible to control several thousand fighter jets to attack a single target. It was already surprising that he could pull up thousands of fighter jets carrying explosives. Don't worry, this is good enough. It's dangerous, so stay back and send licorice. I'm already here, dear husband. As though she learned teleportation or blink, licorice appeared behind me before I noticed. After evolving into an empress, Licorice looked more beautiful than ever. She could easily claim the title for the most beautiful woman in the myriad worlds. The two horns growing from the forehead were like accessories that adorned her beauty. For the first time, the demon lord examined Licorice's body and my body closely. Hero did you become a mare? I stopped trying to distinguish that long ago. I replied with a snort. The demon lord's follow-up was rather surprising. It does not matter. To think I d meet another woman that is to my taste. When the hero dies, his power will become mine. Beautiful mare, come to me. I am the king of all things demonic, king of all things evil. I will become the sovereign of all. Licorice made a dumbfounded face and whispered to me in a daze. Dear husband, is he crazy? Didn't you realize it when you saw him? At that moment, one of the fighter jets suddenly exploded. It was the demon lord's doing. Hero, why haven't you made your move? Are you afraid of me? Or did you really plan on these scrap metals to be your trump card? His demonic energy began to spread out in tentacles. At the same time, Licorice leaned against my back with a soft smile, and the boundless mana in her body began to flood into me. It wasn't just her mana. She served as a medium to transfer the mana of all surviving succubi. Using their mana, I activated my power. The power of the Eliminator that I perfectly molded into my power. The power to reinforce and control all weapons. Thousands of fighter jets charged towards the Demon Lord, each carrying my mana and using divine speed. An enormous explosion erupted. Chapter 347 Shouting at the top of my lungs, I concentrated the explosion of thousands of fighter jets to the Demon Lord. However, the Demon Lord's vigor didn't diminish and in fact, increased. As if he'll be taken out by something like this. The Demon Lord's shout of anger cut through the explosion and rang in my ear. His large bat-like wings spread open and a burst of demonic energy began to devour the damage from the fighter jet's explosions. I will not yield. Is it me or is that guy still powering up? When I murmured in a half-joking manner, Licorice narrowed her eyes and glared at me. It's because dear husband is too strong. Compared to humans, demons are organisms with no limit. As long as they have the talent, they can grow extremely quickly. Why are you telling me that now? I didn't think dear husband would get so strong. Eventually, the explosion subsided. The demon lord appeared from within, his clothes tattered and his body wrought with wounds. Still, the amount of power in his power was more than enough to send a chill down my back. Die. Eck. In an instant, I got in front of father. Steel let out a black light, and I spat out a mouthful of black blood. The demon lord curled his mouth into a smile. Good defense. I wonder how long you can keep it up. What's he doing now, Licorice? If I knew, I'd be the demon lord, not a succubus empress. I do have a guess. Language spell. Language spell. It skips over all the annoying steps in invoking a magic and manifests whatever's on the caster's mind. It's mana costly but extremely fast and powerful. Fall. This time, it's going for some ire. A spell that I couldn't see the start of sent some ire spiraling down in an instant. I quickly sent a wave of aura to catch her, but the demon lord's tentacles of demonic energy flew over to cut it off. Father swung his spear at the tentacles and shouted. You keep doing unmanly things. You can die too. Ha! It seemed father got a feel for his attack with the previous one. After creating a powerful vibration in the air, he twisted his body meticulously. Other than coughing out a mouthful of blood like I did, he wasn't injured. 
Unless the source of an attack is internal, there's bound to be a change in external energy. Predicting his attack isn't hard, just that. Continue dodging then. I understood what father was worried about. Numerous attacks that came consecutively. I quickly moved my metallic fragments around, but it seemed the demon lord's attacks weren't something the fragments could block. Licorice quickly cast a barrier spell. Of course, even that wasn't enough to completely block the demon lord's attacks. The baits have done their work, so send them back. Kane spoke as he blocked the attack sent his way. Yiyun protested angrily. I'm not a bait. Bait, don't trouble Kong Shin and get back. When my name came up, Callous energy wavered for a moment. At that moment, the demon lord made another attack, and when I pulled her out of the way with a string of aura, Yiyun reluctantly nodded. Fine, they'll get back. As if I'd let you. The demon lord was truly shameless. The demon lord's incessant attacks on the weaker members of our party seemed to have irritated Kane, as he hurled his spear towards him. Try using that spell again. You think I want. In the next moment, the demon lord flipped upside down. He was bleeding from his entire body. Meanwhile, Yiyun took some iron and safely got out. Father held his spear up as though he didn't want to leave, but I bowed and pleaded. Father, take care of the ground. There are too many monsters. TSK, fine. I wanted to put in a proper blow, but none of my attacks seemed to be working anyways. Be safe, son. Leave it to me. By the time father finished leaving the area, the demon lord managed to stagger up. The wounds on his body were clearly critical, but it felt like he wouldn't die no matter how much damage he took. A never-ending stream of demonic energy energized and healed his body. Magic reflection, you bastard. Serves you right. Cain spoke boastingly as he received his spear that flew back into his hand. As his previous attack clearly changed the flow of battle, I gave Cain a thumbs up. However, the demon lord concentrated his overflowing demonic energy into his eyes and shouted. But it doesn't look like you can use it a second time. I acknowledge your strength but in the end, you will also be devoured by me. It's coming again. The demon lord's language spells flew towards from all sides. To analyze his hardly detectable magic, I rolled my brain. At the same time, the halo on my horns accelerated. A mana of indescribable light rose up around steel. I see, so that's your final weapon. That incomprehensible mana. How can you wield that power? Because it's originally mine. I retorted casually and accelerated the concentration of mana. Though it was impossible to see his language spells and break them, strengthened to the limit by Enigma, Steel was withstanding his attacks. The Demon Lord asked in doubt. Your power. It's in the same realm as God's power, but in truth, it's no different than God's power. Enigma is just a different form of it. When I obtained a halo, I truly understood Enigma. Although the halo itself was still a mystery, I knew it was a mark that my league had taken a step into the next realm. Because of it, I learned that I could wield Enigma with my own power. The Overlord skill simply gave me a sample of the power I would come to wield. Of course, if I didn't grow since the time I obtained Overlord, I wouldn't have learned to wield it. In any case, I didn't think this was the power Sheriffina wanted from me. If it was, the Demon Lord would have reacted differently, and this much was something Loretta could also do. Additionally, wielding this power didn't make me a god. It could be a requirement to becoming a god but in the end, it was on the same realm as the dungeon's power Sheriffina had. But a power only holds meaning when it works against an enemy. Your mana is indeed lethal and resembles those damned gods. But it will become mine in the end. Bastard, how are you so greedy? Spells continue to fly without stopping. I spread my arms out and released Enigma out in all directions. Now, I felt like I was beginning to understand how his language spells worked. Converting my mana to bullets of aura, I shot them at the demon lord. Cain, licorice. Restrain him for a moment. Cain held his spear up even as he snorted, while licorice immediately set out with divine speed. Approaching the demon lord in an instant, Enigma was also gathering on her hands. 
It's dear husband's power, so I can use it when we're together. Licorice scratched at the demon lord, which he blocked with his hand. Meanwhile, Cain charged towards him on Sleipnir and stabbed his spear in from his blind spot. The demon lord's demonic energy exploded fiercely and pushed them back. All the while, his language spells continued to shoot at them. Eight. While Licorice and Cain resisted his language spells, this time, countless beads of demonic energy rose up in the sky. Having absorbed all negative energy on earth, the beads were emitting a chilling light. I am the king of all evil. Kayak. The two of them couldn't dodge this attack. Still, remembering my request to restrain the demon lord, they protected me from the beads with their bodies. I'm good now. At that moment, a flood of metallic fragments swept over the demon lord. It happened right after Licorice and Cain were sent back from the explosion of demonic energy. The demon lord detonated more demonic energy to stop the metallic fragments, and from the outside, it seemed as though my attack had little effect. D dear husband, you asked us to restrain him for just that. Did you make an error somewhere? Licorice and Cain looked at me dumbfoundedly. I replied with a shrug. Licorice nodded in understanding when I transferred some of my consciousness to her, but Cain still seemed clueless. However, the mystery was soon solved. Kohuk. The metallic fragments were indeed powerful, but they didn't have enough power to deal a fatal blow to someone like the Demon Lord. However, after the metallic fragments were destroyed by the exploding demonic energy, the Demon Lord became pale and oozed out black demonic energy from his body. This demonic energy didn't come out of his own will, but because it wasn't under his control. Why you? What did you do to me? I spoke in awe. You were right about this curse. Not even the demon lord can shake it off. Right, the metallic fragments I just used carried the blood of the last demon I killed in Luca Continent. I was sure he'd be happy if he knew his curse came in useful. Something like this. Something like this. The demon lord's horn shrunk. In return, his demonic energy exploded in several places. Seeing explosions that could ruin a world, Licorice screamed. What do we do, dear husband? He's gotten even crazier. But ITLL work now. That curse cut down his league by a step. Work? What will? Kayak. Licorice, who turned towards me, screamed as she blushed. Worried that it was too much, I asked Dortu to create a mirror for me to see. A woman of unsurpassable peerless beauty was reflected in the mirror. Oh! I exclaimed in surprise. Then, I was surprised once more at the voice I uttered. All I did was transform into a woman with my power. I have to admit, I'm quite beautiful. What do you think, demon lord? Why you are? Hero! The explosion subsided slightly. Seeing the demon lord noticeably flustered, I winked at him and shouted. Lilith's Temptation. Chapter, 348. Immediately, blood burst out from the demon lord's body. Kuhak. The demonic energy he was emitting was cut in half, flowing smoothly into my body. Twirling demonic energy around my hand, I laughed. How is it, demon lord? Is your heart beating? Cook. In truth, I had never planned to use Lilith's temptation on the demon lord. He was one of the most powerful among all world's enemies. He was already strong when he had the dungeon's power, but he got even stronger when he cast it aside. At the same time, the possibility of Lilith's temptation working kept increasing. Countless injuries from the prolonged fight made him weary, and most importantly, the curse from his subordinate demon lowered his charm to the point I could influence him with my own. It was only possible because I learned to quantify a target's abilities in my fight with the dragon. I could double the power of my charm against someone of the opposite sex, and after I absorbed the dragon's power, I learned to change my appearance without having to borrow a god's power. With the right conditions laid out, there was no need for me to hesitate. Licorice asked in shock. Didn't Zeus' power disappear? How? This is my ability. Zeus isn't the only one who can transform into whatever he wants. For example, the dragon I fought could change his appearance too. 
As I had the dragon's power and had Zeus' power until just recently, it wasn't hard for me to transform into a woman. Kulhuk, this this is the dungeon's power. It's the power of my pocket watch and charm. Skills stored in the collector's pocket watch could be used even when the dungeon's power was restricted. Although they didn't work against Les Pina, that wasn't because the pocket watch was the dungeon's power, but rather. Anyways, what's important is that this fight is over. With a grin, I held my spear up. Then, I frowned. My arm had gotten caught. These are so cumbersome. How do girls fight with these things? Dear husband most peoples aren't that big. Was Cain disappointed? For some reason, he turned away without a word. I snorted. You should be ready to do anything to win. It might be embarrassing, but isn't it better than losing you comrade because you holding back? Indeed, how you win is none of my business. Cain murmured. Then, the demon lord shouted as he staggered up. My, my demonic energy my demonic energy will devour you. Sorry, but that won't happen. The demonic energy twirling around my hand streamed into my body along Peruta circuit's flow and smoothly mixed with other mana. Not only was my mana replenished, but my mana pool also continued to grow to an unprecedented level. How can you use demonic energy so easily? What nonsense are you blabbering? Demonic energy is mana too. Seeing Licorice shake her head from the side, it seemed that wasn't completely true, but it didn't matter since it didn't make a difference for me. I pointed my spear towards the half-dead demon lord. The aura coursing into the spear became compressed to the limit. I see, your true ability so that's why all worlds. Are those your last words? Humph, I can still kook. The moment demonic energy rose up from his body, I reached my free hand towards the demon lord. Grabbing him by the neck, I strangled him to prevent him from escaping. It wasn't just a physical restraint, but an absolute restraint that used enigma. I won't let you escape. I, I am someone who will become the ruler of all worlds. No matter how strong he could become, he stood no chance after Lilith's temptation and additionally effects cut his power to a fourth. He attempted an attack by throwing the remaining demonic energy he had, but I simply took his attack with my body with a smile. At this point, I didn't feel a thing from such meager demonic energy. Then, I cut him in half with the spear in my hand. While his body was powerful, it was tattered by Cain's divine spear, fighter jet's explosions, and Lilith's temptation. It simply couldn't withstand my spear which was strengthened to the limit by Enigma. Quiak. As expected of the demon lord, he didn't die simply by having his body cut in half. Hearing his bloodcurdling shriek, I stuffed my spear back into my extra-dimensional space, then grabbed the two halves of his body in each of my hands. Like I said, I won't let you escape. I drew my power up. It didn't matter whether the power was extort, crimson hell, or absolute soul. It wasn't necessary to distinguish them when they shared a common purpose. All I needed was for them to carry out my will. Ku, Kua. Few looks like this will be the final test. Kwa. The demon lord severed have seemed to be shriveling up. Soon, they began to scatter away as particles. After letting out a sigh, I roused Peruta circuit and collected the particles together onto my hand. Stop trying to run, will you? The black particles glowed as if to respond to my words, but that was it. Immediately afterwards, I absorbed all of the particles. The last handful of demonic energy and the power of the Luca continent rushed into me. Good, now it's over. Feeling the demon lord's energy fusing into my body, I stretched in satisfaction. The moment I felt the numerous attributes and energies in my body merge into one, I became certain that I had obtained something special. Immediately, I suspected that this was what Sherafina wanted. D dear husband. Hmm. What? When I turned towards Licorice, she flung her body at me at full speed. Whoa, what? When I received her in shock, Licorice rubbed her face on my chest and shouted. Dear husband, I think it's fine if you stay that way. Stay. Ah, I'm still a woman. I'm okay as long as it's dear husband. Kiss, do you want to kiss? I'm not okay. I quickly transformed back. 
Licorice got off as she made a noticeably disappointed expression. What a shame. I only transformed to take down the demon lord. I smacked her head. Cain, it's over. Let's go take care of the monsters on earth. Cain. Cain didn't speak. When I called his name a few times, he finally looked back at me and spoke. My world's power disappeared. At that moment, Sherafina's voice rang out. Kane Zirahard Grand Raid commences. You encountered one of the enemies aiming for the world's power. The dungeon's power is not fully effective against world's enemies. The Grand Raid system exists to give what little support it can to explorers who are fighting against the world's enemies. The enemy can ignore up to 5% of you and your party members' skills and levels. Daisy Ectradian Grand Raid commences. You encountered one of the enemies aiming for the world's power. The dungeon's power is not fully effective against world's enemies. The Grand Raid system exists to give what little support it can to explorers who are fighting against the world's enemies. The enemy can ignore up to 5% of you and your party members' skills and levels. Renverotud Gold Ion Grand Raid commences. You encountered one of the enemies aiming for the world's power. The dungeon's power is not fully effective against world's enemies. The Grand Raid system exists to give what little support it can to explorers who are fighting against the world's enemies. The enemy can ignore up to 5% of you and your party members' skills and levels. After hearing the messages, I exclaimed. Kane continued. You should be feeling it, right? The world's powers of all the heroes on earth are going towards you. It was as he said. Before I noticed, three world's powers were flowing into me. This feeling was similar to the increase in league I experienced when I leveled up in the dungeon. Kane seemed to have realized it too as he shouted in a hurry. Kong Shin, hurry. Once the pathway opens, there is no turning back. Damn it, what a mess. I'm on it. Sherafina finally made her move. I quickly twisted open the door to the dungeon. PZZT. After fixing the door rejecting me with Enigma's power, I shouted at Kane. Kane, you remember, right? Do as we talked about before. That's more important. I know. I obtained this God's power just for that. God's power? What God's power? I recalled back to my first encounter with Kane. I had heard Kane had Odin's power, but the power I first felt from him was a different God's power. I had noticed it because I had Zeus and Hermes' power. From now on, all explorers will gather in one place. The moment I stepped into the dungeon, Kane activated the power he had been waiting to use. The biggest reason I took him into our guild was now in effect. From now on, all members of Revival except Kong Shin will disappear from Earth. Dear husband, at least explain what he's doing before you go. Thanks. Revival members, gather. Ignore the monsters you're fighting and get over here. Immediately after I shared my consciousness with the flustered licorice, she flew about in a hurry to bring people together. In a way, it was quite cute. Still, I had to acknowledge its effectiveness, as more succubi and members of Revival showed up as she moved about. While most were confused as to what was going on, there was no time to explain things in detail. I already had my hands full with deflecting Sherafina's power that began to pour over us. Is everyone here? Everyone's here. Except Sierra. She's not an explorer, so she should be fine. Before the dungeon's door closed, Kane shouted sonorously. The space around him already became his personal space that Sherafina couldn't invade. Kyun. The golden helmet of Hades, which had the power to hide from any entity, covered all members of Revival. Waya who caught a glimpse of me reached towards me, while I waved my hand at her. It'll be back soon. Dear. Then, I entered the dungeon. Here, Loretta was nowhere to be seen. Chapter, 349. I stared at the empty floor shop. Though I was expecting it, I was still shocked. I worried for her safety but decided to trust her. Sherafina, are you ready? There was no reply. But I knew how to get one. I threw my body at the gate to beyond. Monsters that began to appear from beyond's 41st floor, Elang. 
they had a unique trait which prevented them from taking damage from non-pure aura attacks. Furthermore, the way they talked suggested that they knew who I was. Though I wasn't sure until now, I became certain after obtaining the Demon Lord's power. Elangs should be puppets that use Sheriffina's power. From the beginning, she wasn't trying to hide it. The 45th floor wasn't big. It was a tranquil marble room that was extremely silent. Moreover, this room was full of the dungeon's power. I've been waiting. A creature with black skin and a pair of white wings spoke. I believed you would accomplish it one day. The voice belonged to a man, but I knew it was Sheriffina. What are you? I'm not sure myself. Too much time has passed for me to remember the past. But I do know that I was once a girl. He. She. Sheriffina said that and asked back. There's something I can't understand. How did Kane Zirahard hide his ability from me? The power he got was the ability to conceal himself and his comrades. That's. Yeah, it was to hide from you. For a moment, Sheriffina became lost for words. She then asked again. How did you enter the dungeon? I can do at least that much. Not according to my calculation. 95. Floor. So it's as I suspected. To be capable of deceiving my eyes, was it a dragon? I nodded. From Sheriffina's jet black skin, eerily crimson eyes opened. So there was a dragon left alive. I thought I got rid of them all. What a mistake. It can't be described as a simple mistake. It threw off my plan that had an absolute chance of succeeding. But you'll still try. The goal I've been working for my entire life is now in front of me. Kong Shin, if you were in my position, would you stop just because the chances decreased? I wouldn't set such an annoying goal in the first place. Of course, that's because you were already born with everything. Born with everything, huh? The question I had when I first entered the dungeon remained to be answered. Now, it was time for me to find out. After taking in a deep breath, I spat out. You're the one connecting two worlds. She acknowledged it straightforwardly. You're also the one stealing world's powers and designating the attacking side and the defending side. Yes. I've been setting worlds without possibility into attackers, worlds with possibility into defenders. Possibility? Yes, the possibility of you existing. The puppet Sheriffina was controlling didn't show emotions well, but I knew that its current face portrayed joy. I asked again. You've been doing all of this just to find me. You brought countless worlds to extinction, tricked powerful ability users into creating the dungeon, and shared your power with explorers as if you were generous. Everything, just for me. People would call a being capable of such feat this. Are you a god? What is a god? On your head, there is a shining power I can't comprehend. Is that the proof of a god? I don't know. I also don't know if I am a god. But, other existences would indeed call us gods. I chuckled at her words. God. The ones who created this word were humans and other beings with intellect. Zeus, Odin, Hermes, Shiva, Kali, Durga, Ignis, all of them. They were birthed from humans. Still, to think this is how she would respond to my question. It seemed she really didn't know. Right, you're not a god. If anything, I'm closer to a god than you. That's also what I think. Do you want to become a god? Not at all. You becoming a god is not part of my plan. That might be where the plan started to go awry. But that's it. I expected you to have a power or two beyond my understanding. Sheriffina sounded surprising calm. Almost as if it didn't matter how strong I was. I have the ability to wield world's powers. I know. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to put world's powers into people's body as you like. I can't put these powers into just anyone. They have to be a hero. In other words, the designation of heroes wasn't under her control. When the world I lived in became connected with another world, I learned of the existence of world's powers and became stronger from it. Soon, I realized I could freely move any world's power. That's how I came to create pathways to all worlds. 
and I wanted to contain all world's powers inside me. I thought it would be possible if I used my ability. The way she spoke sounded as though it was the most natural thing to do. I could already feel myself getting a headache. Just because of that. You brought countless worlds to extinction. Yes. The pursuit of power is a natural instinct. Is it not the same for you? I wouldn't kill everyone I know for the sake of getting stronger. Even if you got stronger, what would you have left? An absolute power. Speaking as though it was a matter of fact, the corner of Sherafina's mouth twisted into a smile as she stared at me. You should know the nature of your ability, and you still say this? Knowing the nature of my ability and destroying other worlds have nothing to do with each other. I can wield world's powers, but I couldn't succeed in containing all of them in my body. I didn't have the ability. So. But you have the ability to fuse any power, any number of powers into one. Simply put, it is the concentration of all into one. I shut my eyes. After so long, I finally found you. You grew up magnificently and your ability bloomed excellently. Though it might have gone a bit overboard, it is still within my control. That's it. The reason you connected different worlds and the reason you created the dungeon. Just for that, you made so many people suffer. I only accelerated what was happening regardless. She continued calmly. In earth years, it only took 4,200 years. Even I didn't think it would be so quick. I was prepared to have the dungeon's administrators, its form and name change several times. What made you like this? Humans, elves, dragons, anything. You shouldn't have been alone from the start. So why? Is a reason required to pursue power? No matter what it may be, is there a need for a reason to pursue it? She laughed. Though it was through her puppet, it was the first time I was hearing her laugh. Why do you seek a reason? Since when was there a reason for every act? Kong Shin, you are too knave. I do not question why I am the way I am. I simply do what I wish to do. And that is to pursue power. No matter how many worlds disappear in the process, no matter how many existences perish, that is none of my concern. Why should it matter? You. Don't you have anyone you cherish? If not now, in the past. Elo's face immediately popped up. He was a man of passion who was selected to become a first dungeon explorer. He met his love and lost her to the world's enemy. For him, a single woman was more important than himself or his world. As a result, he sought to get revenge by pulling me in and died because of it. I didn't pity him. The moment he schemed against me, he was no longer my friend. He was just my enemy. But thinking that he was simply toyed by Sherafina, I was filled with nothing but pity for him. The moment you place a value on others, you become weaker. She said assuredly. And in reality, you split your power to protect your family, friends, and Loretta. Ha! When I tried to secure Loretta, I felt my existence threatened and had to give up. To give Loretta so much power, you must have spent quite a bit of your own. Am I wrong? I smirked. Rather than my power, it was the axe's power. But no, you're not wrong. Where was Loretta hiding? I wondered. In any case, it was good to know that Sherafina failed to secure Loretta. As I was worried quite a bit, I was greatly relieved to hear Sherafina's words. Sherafina continued talking. I didn't know whether she understood what I was thinking. As such, no one holds any value for me. No one, except you. As such, I must have you. With that, the puppet finally began to move. Of course, I am only going to measure your ability for now. I wouldn't dare to think I could defeat you with a puppet. Smart. I reached out with my hand and grabbed the empty air. Above my head, the halo let out a fierce light before the mana of Enigma obliterated the Elang. But something like this is no longer capable of measuring my power. It seemed I underestimated a god's power. This time, the voice didn't come from the puppet. I could feel a slight trembling in her voice. When I grinned, she gave me a surprise. It seems I really will need Sierra Kinex's power. What? She should be. 
she's in the dungeon. Sherafina said. It was smart to try to hide her from me, but you made one mistake. The selection of explorers doesn't only occur with designations of other explorers. Sierra Kinex is working hard to climb the dungeon to be of help to you. I began to run. Casting aside the restrictive force of the dungeon's power, I returned to the first dungeon. Then, without hesitation, I ran up to the 96th floor. I will be waiting for you on the 100th floor. If you do not hurry, you won't make it in time. Shut it. Sherafina spoke in glee. Her power is connected to yours. Once I obtain hers, I will get to know you more. Wop. The earth twisted and the space distorted as I charged straight through the 96th floor. However, the 100th floor was too far away. If Sierra was really in the dungeon, she was practically in Sherafina's hands. Kong Shin, when the time comes, you will no longer have the qualification to fight me. I ran. Towards the 100th floor. Chapter, 350. From its birth, the dungeon was deeply tied to Sherafina and undoubtedly belonged to her. It was Sherafina who chose what monsters appeared on the dungeon's floors. That said, there was one rule she couldn't violate. The dungeon had a clear end and she couldn't increase or decrease the number of floors as she wanted. As the dragon and the death lord showed, she couldn't control all aspects of the dungeon either. Thinking about it closely, the dungeon actually had many flaws. For example, the escape of a single administrative guild master could halt the dungeon's operations. Sherafina surely had the ability to interfere, but she maintained an eerie silence. Because of it, I felt even more rushed. Not to mention, the 96th floor was too big. Even if I could ignore magic spells, mechanical traps, and monsters that lied in it, it still took me a long time to break through. Having spent five minutes to rush through the 96th floor, I headed up to the 97th floor while gritting my teeth. Even though I strongly told Sierra not to become an explorer, she went into the dungeon when she was selected. It was vexing to no end. When Sierra couldn't be located at the time Kyun activated, I should have known something happened. Sherafina was right. I told Sierra not to enter the dungeon because I didn't want her power to be nullified by world's enemies. That was a lie. The truth was I didn't want her to be exposed to Sherafina. Her innate evil eyes were already surprising, but carrying countless abilities in her body and creating new ability users, that was something even Sherafina couldn't do. Like mine, this authority of hers was an absolute power that had never existed before. Though Sierra herself might not be aware of it, she was deeply tied to me. There certainly was a reason that she was born in the same world as me. Sherafina said that I was connected to Sierra. Was it because Sierra had part of the world's power of Earth? Perhaps, but that was unlikely to be the only reason. A hero with the power to concentrate all powers into one. A saintess that appeared on Earth only. Though I didn't want to admit it, her existence had to have been prepared for me. Not by Sherafina, but by someone else. I broke through the 97th floor and immediately went up to the 98th floor. Thirteen minutes had passed since I completely conquered beyond. From now on, ITLL only be a matter of seconds. I murmured impatiently. I did everything I could and that made me more impatient, as it meant I couldn't do anything more than that. Sherafina was an enemy in a league of her own, and I couldn't easily estimate the limits of her power. At that moment, the dungeon stopped. The monsters appearing here and there all disappeared, and the traps activating endlessly also ceased their function. This could only mean one thing. It's as I thought. Sherafina was absorbing Sierra. Sierra's authority was truly powerful. Sherafina, who didn't have the ability to concentrate all powers into one, couldn't control the dungeon and absorb Sierra's authority at the same time. If that was possible, Sherafina would not have needed me. Thus, the dungeon was bound to stop the moment Sierra entered the dungeon. There was no need to hesitate. I charged through the silent dungeon as if my life was on the line. With no monsters or traps to get in my way, it became much easier to break through each floor. 98th floor 99th floor I hoped Sherafina wouldn't finish absorbing Sierra by the time I reached her, but it was fine even if she did. I arrived. 
For a moment, I stood still without a word. The 99th floor shop. Looking at the empty storefront, my worry for Loretta grew. I didn't think she was in any danger with what Sherafina said, but without seeing her with my own eyes, I couldn't feel at ease. See you in a bit, Loretta. Beyond the storefront was the staircase to the 100th floor. Wasting time here would only benefit Sherafina. Throwing off the remaining worry and hesitation, I climbed the final staircase. A place I had visited before was waiting for me. The place I had visited from Fairy Garden with Loretta. As the dungeon's challenger, I had entered Sherafina's realm. You're here. She turned towards me. It was definitely Sherafina, the one I remembered meeting before. However, what she said next made me freeze in place. Here on him. I rebutted with a frown. Sherafina, I would rather you not imitate Sierra. Sherafina, who became my enemy, was imitating Sierra who I originally hated. Consequently, I was feeling more uncomfortable. Hearing my words, she widened her eyes before suddenly breaking out into a joyous smile. Oh my, my apologies. I'm still in this form. Then, she changed into Sierra's appearance. At a loss for words, I asked. I know you have a transformation ability. What's the point of doing this? Sorry, Hironim. I just forgot to change back to my appearance after checking out this new body. Don't be so angry. At that moment, I realized that the girl in front of me was the real Sierra Kinex. I couldn't tell with the energy I could feel from her. Sierra's energy was incomparably lacking compared to Sherafina's. However, my intuition, which became strengthened to a level of absolute correctness after obtaining the halo, suggested that the existence in front of me was closer to Sierra than Sherafina. How did you survive? I asked in a dumbfounded voice. Did you think I would get eaten or something? Yeah, I did. Of course not. We're in a completely different league. An old hag who could not even embrace world's powers and at best move them among heroes. Me who can distribute abilities among people. It's obvious who's superior. Indeed, Sierra had the power to distribute her power to people who weren't heroes. However, the scale of the power they wielded was too different. But Sierra said this imposingly. Hero Nim, a stream wanted to devour an ocean and ended up becoming one with it. Then should this stream now be called a stream? Or an ocean? What are you saying Sherafina is the stream? Someone who had such boundless mana and lofty league? The amount of mana one has means nothing. Even if Hironim has no mana, Hironim will still be a hero. She spoke as though it was the most obvious matter of fact. It's the same for me. Even if I have no mana, I am a saintess. A saintess, whose task is to support Hironim by his side and eliminate all who dares to get in his way. Although my league is shabby compared to Hironim's lofty league, I still wouldn't lose to a mere irregular. If what Sierra was saying was true, everything Sherafina had done was in vain. Even if she managed to defeat me, she would have failed in absorbing me. I would have just absorbed her back. But of course, there was no way to test this hypothesis at this point. No matter how absurd this situation seemed, I couldn't say it didn't happen. The girl in front of me was certainly Sierra Kinex and she certainly had Sherafina's power in her body. I didn't expect this at all. Really, I didn't think Sierra would be the one waiting for me here. What I expected was Sherafina who obtained Sierra's power, that was it. I couldn't stay silent forever. From what she explained to me just now, I picked out the phrase that weighed the most on my mind. Did you say irregular? Yes. She suddenly barged into my and Hironim's plan. What else would I call her? Plan. At my follow-up question, she answered with a confident smile. Didn't I say it from the start? That hero name will be the one to rule everything in the end. The plan is to ensure that happens. The plan to concentrate all world's powers into hero name alone. What? Whenever I heard her say this, I thought she was simply being a kid. No, wait, isn't that strange? Sherafina created this plan over 4,000 years ago. What do you mean she barged into our plan? What are you talking about, Hironim? It's only been 4,000 years ago. 
hasn't Earth existed for billions of years? Sierra said as she tilted her head. That woman only realized that the number of world's powers were decreasing and tried to snatch them. She's a bug that shamelessly flew in the middle of our plan. Without her, our plan would have gone much smoother. You, just how much do you know? Well, of course, I know everything there is to know about Earth. She answered as though it was a simple question. I wasn't like this at first, but Hironim helped me open my eyes. Literally. Uhuhu, I still can't forget the moment when I first opened my eyes. To me who only knew the reason for existing, you gave both power and direction. With these eyes, I came to know everything that happened on Earth and everything that will happen on Earth in the future. You tricked me. It was for Hironim. She spoke without batting an eye. Hironim is too kind. You care for even the tiniest insects that have no value. That will only delay our goal. Do you remember, Hironim? What happened in Antelope Canyon? I was really shocked. I only did what I did for Hironim. Ha! When I sighed at a loss for words, I suddenly remembered something. It was because she mentioned Antelope Canyon. Not too long ago, something similar had happened, except on a completely different scale. Land transmittance. Hoo-hoo, that's right. I knew everything, of course. But if I stopped it, all of humanity wouldn't be worshipping Hironim like they are doing now. Two. Three billion people had died. If Sierra really knew what would happen, everything she told me and showed me had just been for show. I, I knew Hironim would give me a kiss if I did that. I thought Sierra had changed. That she was narrow-minded because she was young and grew up in a sheltered environment. I believed she could change as she spent more time with us. But I was wrong. She hadn't changed at all. She was the same. Now, I knew. When two. Three billion people died from land transmittances, all resentment was centered on revival. But strangely, none of the resentment was directed at me, Revival's leader. Instead, I was treated as a messiah who would solve everything. Frankly, it was too unnatural. But now I knew why. It was you. Someone had designed it to happen. That someone was in front of me. Chapter, 351 Sierra strutted her chest and spoke proudly. Yes. The more difficult things are, the more people will look for a savior. With two. Three billion people dead, I was confident in making Hironim into a god. I just had to cut off the few dissenting voices and amplify the positive voices. It was simple. She had experience controlling the media with her clan's power. Contrary to my belief, she hadn't cut off her relationship with the Kinex clan. In fact, she was most likely its ruler. With her clan's power and the power of her future sight, manipulating the popular opinion should have been simple. Setting me aside, how did you trick Daisy? Hironim, I am an evil eyes beholder. The cross in her eyes shone fiercely. My league isn't so low as to be analyzed by such low-grade evil eyes. I see. Hironim, please ask if you have more questions. I will answer any questions you have. Why did you enter the dungeon? Were you afraid I would lose to Sherafina? Of course not. There's no way someone who can't even beat me could beat Hironim. Right, that was the same conclusion I came to just now. A conclusion that made all the preparation I made against Sherafina look foolish. Sierra continued to answer my question. It was to make use of that irregular's ability. Immediately, I began to feel uneasy. How? Her league might have been low, but her ability was certainly shocking. To think she could transfer world's powers as she wished. With an ability like that, we can quickly complete Hironim's power. An even more cruel thought arose. Then, you mean? Yes. I will connect Earth with all other worlds. They'll transfer their world's powers to Hironim, so Hironim just has to absorb them. Our plan will be complete. Sierra's eyes were shining incomparably. So Hironim, please don't defy me. I don't wish to bring harm to Hironim. It will hurt for just a moment, so please bear with it. What? You. 
suddenly, it became difficult to talk. Why? Obviously, it was because this space was densely packed with Sherafina's now Sierra's mana. An immense pressure was pressing down on my body. Though somewhat ridiculous, with Sherafina's power, Sierra was undoubtedly stronger than me. If all world's powers became concentrated into me like she said, the situation would be reversed, but it would be too late once that happened. Just separating the few world's powers I had in my body would take ages. Once countless other world's powers became forcibly fused, it would be impossible to reverse it. No, in the worst case. You, what will become of you afterward? Yes, I will become a suitable existence for the name Hero Nim will have. What if I kill you, take the power distribution ability you have and give back world's powers? Hero Nim, absorbing the world's powers is simply a process, not a goal. I understand you have lingering affection towards other worlds, but please give up. Once you wake up, it will be irreversible. Sierra continued to squeeze our mana as she hummed joyfully. Sherafina's mana flew towards me with a different power than Enigma. Though it was Sierra who was controlling Sherafina's mana, she was doing it naturally and effortlessly. Her talent in learning Peruta circuit surprised me before, but the level of control she was showing had far surpassed the talent she showed me. I fought back with Enigma, but Sherafina's mana suppressed it with raw power. But this wasn't too unexpected. If I was confident in beating Sherafina with only Enigma, I wouldn't have been so nervous in the first place. Not to mention, we were in a space created for and by Sherafina. Even if I moved just a bit, her mana reacted sensitively. I tried to attack her with divine speed, but it was futile. Manipulating her mana fluidly, Sierra easily blocked me with a smile. Then, while I contemplated the moves I could make, she sighed and curled her fingers to a hook shape. It can't be helped. ITLL hurt, but please bear with it. I'm not as skilled as Hero Nim, so I can't control someone else's power too well. It. I immediately realized what she was trying to do. Sherafina's power rose up and a devouring pressure overwhelmed me. She was trying to suck out all of the dungeon's power from me. Ridiculous. She could wield Sherafina's power to this extent already. Although I was shocked by her skillfulness, I was relieved by her action itself. Eh. Give it up, Sierra. How? Hero Nim, you should have that woman's power inside you, right? I did, but it's a bit different now. Oh wow. Sierra acted surprised as she tilted her head. Don't tell me, Hero Nim completely absorbed it. She must have put several locks to prevent Hero Nim from doing that, how amazing. Hero Nim is really amazing. You sure are detestable. How mean. But it's okay, I know Hero Nim loves me deep down inside. You fixed my eyes after all. That's my life's greatest regret. As I blurted out curtly, I became certain of one thing. She couldn't use her foresight ability in this space. If she knew she couldn't absorb the dungeon's power from me, she wouldn't have carried it out. It could only mean she was unable to achieve a perfect future sight in this space. Of course, the reason she couldn't steal the dungeon's power from me was simple. Currently, the dungeon's power was tied to me by a certain medium. This medium was an item that had stayed with me for a long time, the collector's pocket watch. The pocket watch was an odd item even in terms of the dungeon's rules. Whether it be the power of the dungeon or the power of an artifact, the pocket watch could absorb it and let me wield it. At first, the pocket watch was just as mysterious as any other dungeon item, the more I climbed the dungeon, the more I came to know that it wasn't a simple item. Once the pocket watch let me synthesize skills, my suspicions became solid doubt. From it, I obtained Overlord. In a way, the pocket watch was what made me reach where I was today. And it was none other than Loretta who gave me the pocket watch. Not long ago, I asked Loretta if she had my identity in mind when she gave me the pocket watch and she nodded unhesitatingly. Right, Loretta had known for a long time that Sherafina had tricked her, and the pocket watch was her secret weapon against her. Not long ago, the pocket watch went through a final change. The final product was simple. It stored any number of external powers, synthesized them and let its user wield them freely. Its purpose was even simpler. 
that was to transfer Sherafina's power to a different medium and convert it to a different power, and thus even if Sherafina tried to take the power away or tried to use it to harm me, she would be unable to. As long as I had this item, I would be released from the fate of explorers, which was to be at the whim of the dungeon lord. However, the pocket watch's power had been blocked once before. That was when I fought the demon Lespina. Other than that one time, it had never been blocked. Then why was blocked against Lespina? Lespina was a deviant who was unique even among demons. Unlike the five kings or the other world's enemies I've faced, she didn't simply reject Sherafina's power, she rejected any power that wasn't pure. That was why she could reject the pocket watch's power after she perceived it. In any case, the fact that Sierra was oblivious about the pocket watch's existence proved that she was no different than Sherafina in this space. Though I was quite shocked at first, fighting Sherafina or fighting Sierra was no different. Geez, it really isn't easy, is it? Hironim is just too excellent. Though, that's what I like about Hironim, hoo hoo. I might like you if you just die here. Hee <laughs> hee, there you will again with the teas. I already know how much love you have for me. Her mana shot towards me from all sides, but my control over mana didn't lose out either. Even against an enemy who beat my mana both qualitatively and quantitatively, I had the confidence to stand firm. As I thought she would predict my attacks with her foresight ability at first, my shoulders lost strength. Looks like you really can't use your foresight ability in this place. My evil eyes isn't something like evil eyes of future sight. Hironim, these eyes let me see vividly the record of all past and future of the planet called Earth. They're also what lets me help Hironim. So it was like that. I thought Sherafina's power was resisting her, but it seemed Sierra's evil eyes had an absurd ability. Her evil eyes weren't the eyes of an ability user, but an administrator. She said her league was lower than mine. She was only being humble. Someone who knew everything about a world couldn't possibly have a lower league than me. If she returned to Earth, there might be no way to stop her. But thankfully, it seemed the power of her eyes was limited to the premises of Earth. That explained why she had trouble using her ability on matters related to the dungeon. Another suspicion rose up. How did you find out about Sherafina? I didn't know her name. I simply found out about the existence of the dungeon and its hindrance to our plan. The rest was easy. Once I have the keyword, I can pull out any information about it from Earth's memory. What heaven-defying ability! In other words, the only thing Sierra couldn't see among everything I did was what I did in other worlds. Even at this very moment, Sierra was working to connect Earth to all other worlds. She knew that an infinite number of worlds and an infinite number of beings would perish. Yet, her expression was bright. Rather than her might, her distorted will was much more frightening. Sierra, why are you going so far? It's because I love Hironim. I only exist for Hironim. I don't need something like this. But you do, Hironim. I know it. You might not be able to understand it now, but trust me and just wait a bit. It was impossible to get through her. The values we had were hopelessly different. Talking to her was meaningless. If anything, it would only serve as a way to relieve her boredom while she connected Earth to other worlds. Even so, I couldn't help but ask. There was still something I wanted to know. Staring at her, I asked. Do you remember Lespina? Chapter, 352 After thinking for a bit, Sierra soon replied with a nod. The female demon, right? The one who had the ability to ignore the dungeon's power. You said the next demon army commander I would fight would be a strengthened version of Lespina. Yes, I did. But that was my mistake. I realized it after I obtained this woman's memories. That woman was an irregular among irregulars. If this Sherafina woman knew such an odd thing would be born, she would never have given information to the demon lord. Lespina's power was unique even among the countless demons that ever existed. The demon lord seemed to have vowed to birth more demons like her, but in the end, no demon like her appeared again. Even the demon lord was toyed by Sherafina's hands. But after subjugating Lespina, there was something I always considered strange. Before I defeated Lespina, I met Sherafina for the first time. 
At that time, Sherafina told me about two things. First, the danger of demons. Second, Sierra Kinex, to take you in. That was a magic spell to force someone to act a certain way. A mental suggestion, right? Yes. Because Hironim already had absolute soul at the time, it was impossible to instill a mental suggestion without absolute soul activating unless she met Hironim face to face. I see, so she did the same to Loretta. I remembered thinking Loretta was acting strangely by suddenly bringing me to meet the dungeon lord. That was the only time Sherafina met with me directly. At the time, I didn't think it was strange, but thinking about it now, it was too unnatural. If she wanted to tell me something, she could have done so through the dungeon's messaging system. If she wanted to stay in her automated message-like character, she could have relayed her message to Loretta. Moreover, if Sherafina wanted to eventually obtain my power, it was better to not show herself in front of me until the time arrived. Because I met her before, I was able to deal with her mana much easily. There was no way Sherafina didn't know this. It was just that she had to see me at the time to instill a mental suggestion. The way she achieved this was simple. She put in a mental suggestion to Loretta to bring me to her. After meeting me in person, she successfully put in a mental suggestion to me. It would have been impossible had I mastered Absolute Soul, but I had not completely adapted to Absolute Soul at the time. That was why I fell for her mental suggestion. What happened afterward, I remembered clearly. Even though I didn't want to meet Sierra again, I decided to pull her in without much thought. Most importantly, I killed any demon I came across mercilessly and ruthlessly. Of course, I never hesitated about killing an enemy. But at the time, it was almost as if I was blinded by the thought of killing Lespina. I massacred demons without caring for my own safety or thinking straight. But why? You should know since you absorbed Sherafina. Why did she need to go so far as to meet me to put in a mental suggestion? They were important to her. She was confident in being able to absorb me and feared that female demon's power. Also, that woman, Lespina, knew part of the truth. She knew about the connection between the demon lord and Sherafina, though, she ended up dying by Hironim's hands without being able to do anything. As I thought, Sierra didn't know. There should have been one more thing Sherafina was worried about. Me finding out that she was the one giving information to the demon lord, that she was the hidden ruler behind the monster's continent. Sierra said Lespina died without being able to do anything, but the reality was a bit different. Right, that was when I became certain that Sherafina was my enemy. The moment Lespina fell under the effect of Lilith's temptation and became my subordinate, the mental suggestion Sherafina left in my head disappeared. The dungeon lord met with the demon lord. That was what Lespina said as she was burning to death. But Hironim, why are you asking about her now? Sierra didn't know what Lespina told me. There was only one reason. Her power wasn't pure. I wanted to make up my mind. Make up your mind. With a nod, I reached my hand out to the air. In an instant, more than half of the mana inside me became concentrated in my hand. It was a technique that I could do, a miraculous ability that is only granted to me. Sierra quickly interfered with her mana, but I roused Extort's power to the maximum and stole some of its power. The reason I hadn't used Extort until now was for this moment. No matter how overbearing Sherafina's mana might be, I wouldn't lose to her so easily, especially with a trump card or two in my pocket. Sierra looked astonished. Hironim, that's. It's a magic called dimensional travel. A magic I learned in Loretta's cabin, where neither Sherafina's nor Sierra's magic could reach. This magic lets me travel through dimensions to other worlds without the dungeon support. Looking noticeably shocked, Sierra shook her head. Hironim, don't tell me. Are you trying to leave this place? I apologize, but I cannot let that happen. I thought about that too. It should be possible if I use Hermes' power, but I decided otherwise. I hesitated between two choices. One was to escape first and make a surprise attack later. The other was ending it all here and now. After analyzing her ability. No, just based off of what Sierra said, if I escape, Sierra would go back to Earth. That would only make her stronger. 
If I were to fight Sierra here, it would be no different than fighting Sherafina, and I would be able to use everything I prepared against Sherafina on Sierra. Since Sierra couldn't use her evil eyes ability, the outcome was already decided. Through the dimensional gate that opened up, I threw in a single coin. Immediately, Sierra's irresistible mana swept over the gate, closing it all too easily. Hironim. What was that coin for? Sierra asked with an expression that seemed to say she couldn't understand. I answered. It was a signal. Signal. Seeing Sierra tilt her head in a cutesy manner, I drew in the urge to smack her head. For now, I nodded calmly and replied. Do you remember when I finished off Lespina? Of course. I watched all of Hironim's fight with my eyes. Ah, no matter the situation, Hironim was magnificent, glorious. As for that female demon, Hironim burned her to death with chaos flames. Right, and you know what chaos flame is, right? An inextinguishable flame that burns until the target is dead. Sierra's eyes lit up. It was as though she forgot about the dimensional gate I just opened. This child was really too dangerous. Having an absurd amount of mana and the ability to see the history of the past four. Six billion years was one thing, but her personality was too twisted. Hironim used to favor that power in the past. Ah, I still remember how much my heart fluttered when I first saw Hironim use that power. My only regret is not having been there to see it in action. To tell you the truth, there are actually two ways to extinguish those flames. Do you know them? Yes. The first is for the target of the flames to die. And the second? With an undulation of space, a gate opened up in the air. I didn't open this gate. It was opened from the other side by the one who received my signal. At that instant, Sierra's expression paled. Here on him. I spoke with a grin. It's for me to extinguish it myself. From the gate, a supple bodied woman walked out. Violet hair and light blue skin. Other than the complete white pupils she had that made her eyes frighteningly creepy, she was a rare beauty. Before the target dies. A demon. Master, I'm glad I made it on time. Yeah, Lespina. It's good to see you again. Me too, Master. H. How. Seeing the dumbfounded Sierra, I kindly explained. I faked Lespina's death. To prevent Sherafina from finding out. How? No, just where was that woman? Edias. I spoke briefly. I had the feeling Sherafina was closing in on me and Lespina was also reaching her limit. I released her to a different world so she wouldn't have to live in hiding. It seems I managed to trick you because of it. Edias. The world's enemy. Yep. She was also a safeguard I prepared for my trip to Edias. Do you really think I would go to a world filled with danger without a safety net? Lespina was my safeguard. Mastering Peruta Circuit wasn't part of my plans. Only a fool would rely on a lucky encounter to save his life. I thoroughly planned for my survival, and that was to bring Lespina along. With Lespina's power to reject all impure power, I had the confidence to survive in any situation. But one unexpected happening after another occurred, and I ended up not using Lespina. But I managed to carry out my second purpose in going to Edias. A place filled with Peruta's mana, Peruta mountain range. There couldn't have been a better place to hide from Sherafina's eyes and recover at the same time. If not for this, I would have made all of Peruta's mana in the continent into mine. Why else would I have left behind such valuable mana? How did you achieve? Dimensional travel? You need two things for dimensional travel. First is the spell to cast dimensional travel, second is the mana is to use dimensional travel. I gave Paul all the necessary ingredients. I didn't just give Paul his world's power as he went back to the Edia's continent. I also placed magical knowledge that would allow Lespina to find my coordinate and the mana she would need to use dimensional travel. With the previous coin, I sent Lespina the signal, and she managed to find me successfully. But how? Sherafina should have kept a close eye on this man called Paul. I only asked Paul to do one thing. To go to Peruta Mountain Range and make a tomb for Peruta. I was no fool. 
why would I explain Paul everything? His task was finished when he went to Peruta mountain range, where Lespina was staying. The rest, Lespina could figure out. That's why Sherafina didn't find out. Who, ho who? But a single demon won't change anything, Hironim. You're wrong. If I wasn't sure, I would have taken everyone and escaped. There's little you can do with that demon, Hironim. Don't underestimate the league of my ability. I devoured Sherafina's power in my powerless state. No matter how much I love Hironim, I might get mad if you look down on me too much. No, Sierra. If that power was yours, I wouldn't have been so relaxed. But. Turning around, I spoke as I shook my head. It seems that power isn't yours. If that power purely belonged to Sierra, she would have known everything in regards to Lespina. If she did, things wouldn't have come to this. She would have done everything she could to prevent Lespina from crossing over to Edia's continent, and she would have been hell-bent on having Lespina killed. The fact that she failed to do so proved that Sierra's power was rejected by Lespina's authority. Lespina rejected all impure power. Her power rejected Sierra. Then whose power is it? Sierra shouted. Lespina had already taken action. I transferred the remainder of my mana to Lespina and using my mana, she separated Sierra from all of her powers. This included Sherafina's power, the league she possessed, and Earth's power. Sierra tried to draw up her mana, but it was futile. Her desperate attempts to resist became laughably sad. As I pulled these powers towards me, I became certain. M. Considering how only Sherafina's power was being sucked in, it seemed Sierra's original power really wasn't mine. In that case, there was only one other candidate. Not telling ya. Speaking tauntingly, I grabbed Sierra. I could finally catch her. With her boundless mana and lofty league disappearing, the Sierra in my hand was no different than an ordinary thirteen-year-old girl. P please save me. She said. Please save me. You were the one who told me about Hironim. I felt like I knew who she was talking to, but this being didn't reply. Save me. I need to give Hironim his power. I must. Otherwise, Hironim is too pitiful. Hironim should be a king that rules over all. Oh, please. Do you like me that much? Hironim, I've been saying it from the beginning. You are the only one for me. From the moment I was born, I knew about Hironim and I lived only for Hironim. She should know what I was about to do to her. Still, Sierra's eyes were only filled with affection and longing. Hironim, it's not too late. Connect all worlds to earth. Hironim will become God, and by your side, I. But I hate you. I have since the moment I met you, and I still do. Hironim. Without hesitating any longer, I tore her in half. Then, with my power of lightning, I incinerated her body without leaving behind a piece. Ah, master, so cool. You did well too, Lespina. You know what to do now, right? Yes. Lespina placed her hands over my own and began to transfer all of her power to me. Though it was a bit difficult when I had yet to fully absorb Sherafina's power, I still successfully took in her mana. Lespina's power was vital for what I wanted to do next. My unique power, Sherafina's power, and now Lespina's power to reject all impure power. It was incredibly unnatural for these powers to mix. In the first place, it was contradictory for a power to reject impure power to combine with other powers, thereby forming something non-pure. But the talent I was born with made this possible. Under my watchful eyes, all three powers fused into one unbelievably smoothly. The inside of my body expanded endlessly, and my mana grew explosively without limit. It was hard to believe that a simple fusion of three powers could result in something like this. My appearance also began to change. I grew taller, my skin began to glow, and another golden circle appeared in my eyes. Finally, my halo let out a brilliant light before beginning to change shape. Master, it was an honor to serve you. Yeah. Afterward, Lespina raised her hand and tried to stab her stomach. But looking at her, I reached out and stopped her. I planned on killing you at first, but you've been too helpful. 
Plus, I don't feel like killing anyone else right now. You should continue living by my side. Master. Lespina shouted with a touched look. The fact that she was alive and would continue to live went against the creed I lived by until now. But, in a way, this didn't seem so bad. Though it was an act of mercy I made on a whim, thinking about it again, that might have been the final catalyst in making me reach this position. The position of godhood. Then what will you do now, master? Though she lost all of her power and became an ordinary demon, Lespina asked with a voice full of energy and happiness. Compared with the moment she submitted to me, her change in attitude was almost a bit unnerving, but I believe this was for the best. Reaching out to her with my hand, I filled up her mana and spoke. I don't know. There's definitely a lot for me to do but. Putting the dungeon back in operation, cleaning up earth, taking care of other worlds. There was just too much work for me to do. But for now. Let me sleep a bit. Yes, master. After sleeping just a little bit, he'll take care of the rest. Thinking that I snapped my fingers. Looking at the golden bed that appeared in front of me, I furrowed my brows. Dortu, try to make it softer. I am Dortu. Metal is normally hard. It's definitely not because I hate Master for sleeping with another woman. Well, I won't be sleeping I guess. Chapter, 353 I first looked for Loretta. I had no idea where to start, but Loretta was in her cabin. The way she was crouched down in the corner of her cabin holding on to an axe was cute, but also a bit scary. Sure, Shin Nayim. First, put that axe down. Loretta came running into my arms with teary eyes. I kindly removed the axe she was holding before I received her in my arms. I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you're safe too, Loretta. I knew the axe would help. I looked at the axe, which still contained the Death Lord. Thanks. If you want to repay me, make me a cool new body. Ill consider it. When I was having a staring contest with the Death Lord, Loretta asked with her face still buried in my chest. What happened to Lord? She's gone. I see. Loretta let out a small sigh. She must have spent thousands of years with Sherafina. I'm sure she had many things on her mind. It hasn't been long since I noticed Lord's plan. Even Lynn noticed earlier than me. You found out after what happened with Cain, right? Yes. Loretta nodded with a bitter smile. Then, she shook her head. It's over now so I won't think about it anymore. I'm just happy that Shin Nim came back safe and sound. I'm happy to have been of help. Without Loretta's pocket watch, none of this would have been possible. Hoo hoo. I asked. How did you obtain the pocket watch? It's an artifact that was created in my world. Lin really wanted it in the past, but I didn't give it to him. Lin said he could beat Lord if he had it, but I didn't think so. Plus. Plus. No, I'm keeping it a secret. Loretta looked away with a reddened face. As I knew what it implied, I simply made a small smile. As we were in a hurry, the seat of the dungeon lord was given to Loretta. But she wouldn't be chained to the seat for eternity. I planned to carry out what I planned to do from the beginning. With the power I had now, it was possible. To disconnect all connected worlds and return worlds' powers to their proper worlds. The number of worlds' powers wasn't decreasing at all. They were simply combining with another. Now that I could wield worlds' powers as I pleased, separating them once more wasn't a difficult task whatsoever. It might be difficult if all worlds' powers fused together into one no, having taken a step further, I felt like I could divide them again even if that happened. In any case, once this was done, the dungeon would disappear. There was no need for it to exist. Members of the administrative guilds who were chained to the dungeon would finally be set free. And of course, Loretta was included. Hurry up and free me, Shin Nim. It won't take long, so just wait a bit. I had the confidence in redividing world's powers, but I had trouble giving Sherafina's power to Loretta. What resulted from the fusion of my original power, Sherafina's power, and Laspina's power was a shocking power no one could have imagined. Because of the origin of this power, it was hard to isolate Sherafina's power. 
but that didn't mean I had to become the dungeon lord. I was Loretta's partner, so I could give her a blessing, and I could put in a portion of Sheriffina's power into it. Once Loretta received my blessing, she could act as the dungeon lord for a month. I had to give her the highest grade blessing to have it last for a month, but Loretta had no qualms about it. In fact, she enjoyed it very much. Mohuhu, Mohuhu. Stop sticking to me and restart the dungeon. Earth is in trouble too. You you, okay but you have to come back after you're done with Earth. After confirming that the dungeon had started operating again, I hurriedly returned to Earth. The moment I sent Kane the signal, he deactivated Kyun. Cool hair accessory. That was all Kane said, and that was enough. He saw that I had reached my goal, there was no need for me to explain anything to him. Dear husband. Uck, Shin changed again. Hugh. Shin. You're safe, son. Revival's members rushed towards me as they checked for my safety. I became a bit depressed as they reminded me of the ordinary people who came to worship me, but such thought flew away when they all charged into an embrace. No, now's not the time for this. Guys, I know you're happy to see me but pick your weapons back up. I shouted, pointing at the monsters running around on the ground. We can talk after we kill all the monsters. Kane's Kyun. Postponing the celebration for later, everyone scattered to all sides. In the center of it all, I raised my spear and shouted. Fight me, you bastards. My strengthened evil eyes shone and the monsters on the ground all became petrified. At the same time, people's gazes became focused on me. Shin Nim. Shin Nim is back. He came to save us. Whatever, you guys can call me what you want. I decided to give up. Cleaning up Earth took four whole days. Sheriffina's final wave of monsters was truly wide-ranged and carefully planned. The fact that it took me four days with my evil eyes showed how dire the situation was. But of course, it didn't matter too much as we ended up killing every monster without leaving even a single goblin behind. Once the monsters were annihilated, the world continued to roll along even with the massive damage it suffered. I believed all of humanity was thinking the same thing. That the world continued no matter what happened. There was also an unwelcome news. Appa, it looks like an official church has been established. That's the last thing I wanted to hear. You are reported with a happy face to which I retorted with a frown. Can we get rid of it somehow? Licorice, who knew my thoughts the best, burst into a laughter and poked my cheeks playfully. Hoo-hoo, humans need someone like dear husband to get through this dark time. Just bear with it. Dear husband will leave Earth soon anyways, right? Ehu. Sierra's legacy ran too deep for me to erase. If I wanted to, I would have to raise my spear against the surviving humans. Since that was obviously out of the question, I reluctantly accepted the situation. At that moment, the light the halo was giving off became thicker. Damn, I don't know anymore. I gave Daisy, Kane, and Ren their world's powers back. I'm currently researching how to prevent heroes from being burdened with world's powers. Once I get results, I'll tell you all. Kong Shin, are you abandoning me in Silen? No. I'll follow Kong Shin until I die. Even after death, we'll be, together. Ha, ITLL be a while before I die. Un. So I'll follow you, forever. She sure knew how to throw the right pitches at the right time. Looking at Daisy, who was staring at me intently and asserting her will, I stroked her head once and shrugged at Kane and Ren to hide my embarrassment. The two of them spoke one by one. Crown Prince is really amazing. He's the number one Casanova under heaven. Want me to take your powers away? After taking care of urgent matters, I prepared to leave Earth. The amount of blood flowing across dimensions would diminish the faster I went, so I hurried as much as I could. Waya, who noticed this quickly, cut in strongly. Leave after we get married. When I didn't give a reply, Waya's eyes narrowed. I'm going to hit you if you say you won't get married until you're done with all of the worlds. Waya, I've always admired your sharp intellect. Someone grab him, I'm going to hit him. 
Just when I was wondering who could hold me down, Yiyun, Ina, and Daisy activated their god's powers and grabbed a hold of me. There really was no one you could trust in the world. In the end, my wedding was planned at the age of 23. If possible, I wanted to marry Loretta first after freeing her from the dungeon, but that would only mean I was ignoring Waya and the rest. After careful consideration, I decided to hold two weddings, one on earth and one in fairy garden. That way, Loretta would also become a bride. While the wedding at fairy garden only had fairy garden's guild members to worry about, the wedding on earth was God's wedding, so it was difficult to hold it in peace. Because of it, the bride seemed to be looking forward to fairy garden's wedding more. Loretta Uni, can you make my mom an explorer? She wants to come. Don't make things more difficult. Also, I'm only 17, so don't call me Uni. Loretta rejected Waya's request to make her family members dungeon explorers. Instead, she created a one-time guest system, which only allowed guests into Fairy Garden. It was a power fitting of the dungeon lord. Thanks to her, the bride's families could visit Fairy Garden too. The wedding day arrived in the blink of an eye. For both weddings, we only needed to prepare the wedding hall, since we only needed to invite Revival's members and the bride's families. As for me, I was hiding in the corner of Fairy Garden. Shin, why are you hiding? Yiyun, who was in her wedding dress, discovered me quickly. Seeing Yiyun in her pure white dress, I realized once again how beautiful Yiyun really was. Yiyun, you look really beautiful. Eh. Ihihi. Really? Hee hee, you look cool too Shin. Like you always do. Yiyun smiled brightly. She was especially cute when she smiled. So, why are you hiding? But she didn't let me off. Damn. I'm too scared to see my mother-in-law's faces. Six brides. I knew what position I was in in the world, but that didn't make the situation any better. I could only imagine what my mother's-in-law were thinking. For example, if Yua were to marry someone with several wives. You might be scared, but don't destroy Fairy Garden because of it. Sorry, I got worked up. That was from rage rather than fear, but thankfully, Yiyun didn't know my inner thoughts. Even if you say mother's-in-law, only Waya Uni's mother and my parents are here. Still. Ludia, Loretta, and Daisy had all lost their parents, and Licorice didn't have one, to begin with. As a result, only Yiyun's parents and Waya's family were in the bride's guests. Not to mention, Yiyun had not stayed in touch with her parents for a long time and only called them because it was her wedding. Yiyun's parents were treating her like a monster since the day Yiyun awakened as an ability user, but once they saw Yiyun in her dress, I was sure they would change their mind. Though, it might be too late to mend their relationship. I just have a lot on my mind. It'll be there in time, so don't worry and go get ready. An. Uhuhu ait. After laughing innocently, Yiyun gave me a peck on the cheek before turning around and running. She was undoubtedly embarrassed. The moment Yiyun disappeared, Lydia popped out from the ground like she was waiting. Shin, there's a lipstick mark on your face. Your ability to control the earth sure improved, huh? I had to get stronger to be with Shin. Lydia said with a small smile, while I wiped the lipstick mark off my face. Did you guys do a baton pass? No, I came a while ago, so I was waiting for you guys to finish talking. Didn't you notice? There's too much power concentrated in Fairy Garden right now. If I start releasing my power, it's sure to collapse, so I'm holding it in. So unless someone bears any hostility towards me, I can't notice anyone hiding. Loretta and Waya aren't hiding nearby too, right? They wanted to come with me, but I stopped them. It would have been troublesome if all brides disappeared. I laughed out loud at Lydia's words. She then spoke firmly. Shin, thank you for killing the demon lord. I only did what I needed to do. Then he'll think of it the way I want to. That you killed him for me. I'm happier that way and it makes my heart flutter more. For a moment, I became lost for words. Lydia slowly approached me and leaned against my arm. Thank you for accepting a spoiled girl like me as your bride. But is that okay with you? 
After this, it'll be traveling countless dimensions. I'm fine as long as Shin's there. Lydia's voice carried no hesitation. I finally learned to be honest with myself. I'm going to do what my heart's telling me to. I don't want to regret anything. It feels like everyone is maturing except me. Lydia chuckled at my complaint and dug closer towards my shoulder. Seeing her beautifully arranged hair being messed up, I let out a sigh. You're going to have to get your hair done again. It's no big deal. That's my honest feeling right now. I'm going to start with Luca Continent first. I have to transmit back the land that came to Earth. On. Ho ho, thanks to my husband, they'll be able to hold my head up in front of my people. Lydia spoke proudly. After staying still for a bit, she kissed my cheek and got off. Then, staring straight into my face, she asked. There's something you need to do here, right? Un. Good, then they'll take the others with me. Make sure you come back straight away once you're done. Ah, uh, wait, Lydia. Dear husband, me too, me too. I also, with Kong Shinut, don't grab me. W with Kong Shin, with Kong Shin. Lydia dragged away Licorice and Daisy, who were hiding gods knows where. Even if they weren't resisting at full strength, to be able to drag them away just how strong did she get while I wasn't watching. They'll make fine wives. They're all so beautiful too. I think so too, Pryuta. Hearing the voice ringing in my ear, I answered without being surprised. This will be the last time I talk to you like this, huh? I guess so. Leaving world's powers in their original form, that was a good decision. Because of it, you'll be able to take the next step. I shrugged and retorted. Take the next step I don't know if there's even a foothold to take my step, but that's nice to know. They'll look forward to meeting you again someday. Things are interesting over on this side too. More interesting than what I experienced in the dungeon. You think something like the dungeon is even remotely comparable? Ha, there's just no end to it, is there? Do I have to transcend the physical plane if I want to cross over? Hearing my complaint, Pryuta laughed heartily. You're most of the way there, so you don't have to think of it as something so far off. Well then, it'll be going now. I'm sure we will meet again one day. When the time comes, spar with me with your real body. I'll be looking forward to it. I felt something snap off. I could feel that the connection between Pryuta and me vanished completely. It made sense. Now, my body wasn't too different from Pryuta's. There was no way he could manifest in my body. Sherafina and Sierra, they both had a huge misunderstanding until the end. They had both tunnel visioned badly. If they had widened their sights by just a bit, they would have been able to grasp what was on the other side. If they did, they would have been able to achieve what they sought as instead of having to resort to their destructive and wasteful plan. I let out a small sigh. By the way, Pika. On. Pika immediately appeared. Because Fairy Garden empowered elementals, Pika manifested in her beautiful girl form. Today was a joyous day. Pika also looked extremely happy. I asked her. Why didn't you answer Sierra? What are you talking about, Master? Before she died, she was looking for you. Why didn't you answer her? Pika tilted her head. She opened the parasol she was holding in her hand, covering the sunlight shining down. As she looked at me, she seemed a bit teary. I don't know what you mean, Master. Oh. Suppose there's a really 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 old elemental. Among the countless stars and countless worlds, she was born in an especially old world at the same time as the stars. Right. Even an existence like that would naturally perish. That's because eternity isn't allowed for an elemental without a master. Is a master required? Un. Elementals are incomplete by nature. They become complete by meeting their master and forming a contract. Just like I did, Ryue did, Sharana did, and Dorta did. Pika increased the size of her parasol and covered me with it too. The elemental thought, I want to continue living. The best way to achieve that was to make her master live forever, the master that she would be fated to meet one day. Aha! So the elemental began to think about how to make her master live forever. 
Eventually, she realized the best way to achieve it. As I already knew what that method was, I gave the answer as I stared at Pika. To concentrate all world's powers to that master. Un. That was the safest, most risk-free way. Safest, most risk-free. Pika continued. That elemental was extremely powerful. In reality, she was no different than the star's representative. It was the same for other star's powers. Right, it wasn't particularly difficult. And? The elemental set her plan into motion. She connected worlds together and waited for her rightful master to be born. She then picked a suitable person to bestow her power to and made that person connect her with her master. Why didn't that elemental give her power to her master? Why did she go through an intermediary step, Sierra? The talent of the master the elemental was waiting for was too high. He couldn't be controlled easily unlike that Sierra girl. Ah. But that only made the elemental happier. Nothing brings more joy to an elemental than having an excellent owner. With all the plans she made, even if a slight miscalculation occurred, she believed she could bring about the result she wanted. So then the elemental formed a contract with her master. But? At that moment, Pika made a small smile before continuing. But that elemental made one mistake. She had never formed a contract before, so she didn't know how deep the contractual bond was or how much influence it would have on her. Even if she did, she would surely underestimate it. After being alive for billions of years, she had come to look down on almost everything. That was the problem, huh? Her plan continued as planned, but the elemental began to grow weary. At this rate, Master might become sad. What if Master dies before the plan finishes? So she gave him the power of lightning that was only permitted for her and even helped him learn about a powerful mana. She also bit women who tried to seduce her master. Stupid things like that. Ha ha ha. I ended up just laughing. The elemental was just a fool. She lived for billions of years, but she only really began to live after being connected to her master. Through him, she came to realize many things. Quite a cute elemental, huh? In short, the priority of the elemental changed. Between her unhappiness and her master's unhappiness, she realized her master's unhappiness pained her more. Pika finished as she reddened her cheeks. An elemental like that would have wanted to hide her true self because she wouldn't want her master to hate her. So that's why she ignored Sierra's dying call. A psychopathic woman like her wasn't worth her master's smile. With that, Pika dropped her head. She looked like a kid who was waiting to get punished. Looking at her, all sorts of thoughts crossed my mind. Even though I expected this to happen from the day I fought Lilith, hearing the truth from Pika's words still shocked me greatly. I let out a deep sigh. Pika. Un. I'm going to need your help a lot from now. So let's do our best together. Un. Pika threw away her parasol and jumped into my embrace. All sorts of thoughts filled my mind, but this was the best outcome. Unlike Sierra, I couldn't just push away Pika because I wanted to. Elementals were like that. Just like how I became more important to Pika than herself. When I was consoling her silently, Pika carefully lifted her head and asked. Then Master, can I be the seventh bride? Ah. It seemed my troubles wouldn't end any time soon.